All right, I think I'm I think I'm live now. Take a second here to check the audio quality because it's usually either really good or it's complete shit. It's one of the two. So give me a second. It always takes a minute too for the stream to actually fucking catch up, which is annoying as shit. Because I'm sitting here looking at it right now and nothing is coming through. God, fucking Google needs to learn to get this shit to sync up much much better than it does. Oh. oh. All right. No, I think we're we're live. All right. Awesome. Figured I'd do a stream tonight. I had nothing else to do, so I had some time to kill. Figured what the fuck. Uh, yeah. Good evening, uh, fellow neckbeards and sock puppets. It's always always good to see uh, you people around. God damn, Kharkov vodka is just fucking brutal. It is horrible stuff, but. It really does the fucking job. Let me check the audio quality one more time here. Live. All right, awesome. Sounds good to me. Probably going to cut in and out because I'm fucking technically inept, so what does it matter? Audio is good. How old is my dick? My, my dick would be the same age I am, which I'm not going to tell you, but you're free to guess it as much as you want. You can, you can guess that dick as much as you want. Pull just got wrecked. I'm not watching a stream. I don't know what happened. <laughs> oh, shit. That reminds me. Somebody tweeted this to me before I started, so. And I, I just fucking lost it. Oh, oh, there we go. Somebody tweeted me. Well, it wasn't somebody. It was Camera Lady. Uh, tweeted me a, a picture that showed Thunderclap. <laughs> tipping their hands, it says at the top, with 3,700 people clicking a button and then comparing it to the stats of Gama Sutra, Polygon, Lay Alexander, Zoe Quinn, and Feminist Frequency, and saying that Intel should have crunched those numbers instead. Well, those are empty numbers, though. They don't directly relate to how much of a shit the company gives. Intel's going to look at how much feedback they're getting from customers. That's why they pulled their ad. They know who their consumer is. They know who their target market is. And besides, you know, the thunderclap thing is just a one-off event, so it's not really a metric to measure anything. But if you want to add up all the thunderclap supporters and their total number of followers, it blows all those numbers right out of the fucking water. I mean, shit, just excuse me, just total biscuit alone. Uh, yeah, total biscuit alone beats every one of those numbers. Uh, Adam Baldwin, I think, beats a majority of those numbers. You you add people like that in, and it these Twitter numbers mean nothing. So I'm not sure exactly. I'm not sure what this graph is trying to say, but it doesn't come across that well. It's good. Um, it's a good little shitty piece of propaganda, I guess. It's trying to say that you shouldn't listen to gamer gators because they have less of an impact, maybe. But it's not true. You could see that from the stat page of Thunderclap itself, the amount of reach that that one tweet had, or however it fucking programs it and sends it out. Oh, what is the chat saying? God damn it, Jim, I have to do homework. Well, fuck homework. Homework can wait. You're not going <laughs> to... The world's not going to end if you miss one night of homework. What's the news on the docs that got posted on you, Jim? Which one? I get docs posted every day, so which you're going to have to link me. Or somebody's going to have to point me to whatever docs I got hit on me this time. So far, I'm actually, let me go take a look because that Encyclopedia Dramatica article is up. And I think it's got like two or three up there right now. So let me go take a look. We'll see what my docs are. Let's, let's read through my docs. Uh, where is it? It would be the third screen cap up on there. Oh, the James Albert Tristan. Is that the one you're referring to? Or are you talking about the, was the other one Jim O'Neill, I think? Uh, so you got you to gotta be a little more specific of what exactly, um, <laughs> of what talks you're talking about. And I, I don't see another, I don't see another message from you. I can't tell. Are we talking about me getting docs as Mr. Tristan or is Mr. O'Neill? Because I got a lot, of, I've got a lot of more out there. Uh, Dumase is one of my favorite. There's another one where I'm living in a homeless shelter. That's a really good one too. But nobody's found that one yet, which is really fucking disappointing. Because I was, I you know, I was looking forward to that. That would have been funny. Please tell me that's not your last name. 
But if I told you that, I'd be confirming whether or not the docs were real or not. So I can't, I can't say no and I can't say yes. Do a call-in show. I can't really do a call-in show. I, the last stream I did, I had a couple of people um, that I, I, I talked to occasionally on Twitter that wanted to come on, but I don't know how to get it to work. People wanted to call in, but it's done through Google. I'm not running Skype in the background, so I can't, I can't pull an audio from that. I'm technically inept. If I, if I had a decent setup, I'd be fucking, I don't know, streaming shitty gameplay on Twitch with my fucking portrait taking up a, you know, 80 or 90% of the screen and my man tits hanging out until, you know, somebody named Abed gave me $9,000 or whatever crazy amount of money uh, Twitch streamers get for no fucking reason. Oh, James Olsen. That's a new one. I haven't heard that one yet. Is that like an Olsen twin? Are they my daughters? David D. Davidson. No, that's not what I've gone with. Uh, to meme. Yeah, I am Tom Alama Ding Dong. You got me. Like I said last time, they rejected my game and now they all have to pay. So I'm going to burn the fucking industry to the ground to teach them a lesson. Is my boner salad? Yeah, that is my last name. You've got it. You've you fucking nailed me. I've been I've been just up against the wall, right right through me. You got me. Oh, this goes so fast. I wish there was a way not to slow down how fast people can you know chat. I don't care about that, but just how I read it would be nice. Oh, Jimmy Olsen. Oh, God, I'm fucking retarded. Never mind. The fourth Olsen twin. Start a Patreon account. I don't see a reason to. Listen, I get it. I, I, I should make my position clear on this because I keep having people bring this up. I don't care if you want to make money off the internet. If you're good, whatever the fuck it is you do, if you're good at streaming games or if you make YouTube videos or fuck it, I don't, I don't know, if you do art or whatever whatever crazy shit you're into if you're really good at it and you want to make money off it more power to you as for myself I just don't feel a need to do it when you take money from people even if they're strangers even if they're just giving it to you you're beholden to them and it just it to me that feels awkward that's why I don't have ads on videos that's why I don't put ads on streams that's why I don't have a patreon account or a tip jar or a PayPal with a donate button I just for me as I am my own weird uh, I don't know, set of standards. I just don't feel the need to. If one day I'm forced into the gutter, maybe, but I, aside, I'd probably get a job, you know, another job or a better paying job rather than, you can't make, it's not a career, I think is the other thing. Sure, you could make a lot of money off YouTube or whatever the fuck you want to do, and there are people that make a ton of money doing it. Don't get me wrong, like, you've got Total Bistit, or Bistit, you can tell that vodka's kicking in. Total Biscuit, who I'm sure makes a really good amount of money doing what he does, and you got people like PewDiePie who make insane amount of uh, of money. But for most people, it's not a career and it's not stable. There's no security. There's no future in it. And you're thinking you're going to make all this money. I know I've talked to people who think they're going to make all this money doing it. And what they don't understand is everybody takes a cut. First, you've got whoever you're doing the ads through. If you're doing that, they're taking a cut of your money. Um, then you've got to pay your taxes on that, which will bite you in the ass if you're not paying attention to that, if you're not declaring the total amount you're making because it is a taxable income. Or, yeah, like, look at Patreon, right? Um, if you've ever gone to Patreon and look at what it's like when you sign up for an account. Here's my problem with Patreon. And, you know, I got a little backtracking on my part, or at least I should own up and admire the guy for doing this. I thought um, I thought he was going to shut down the Sarkeesian Effect documentary. He was going to cave into pressure and it was going to be this big clusterfuck, but he didn't. That actually really impressed me. I really, I thought he was going to cave in and he, he fucking didn't. He stood his ground. He let him stay up. So maybe that's changed. I don't know. Whatever. But um, if you go to Patreon and you go to sign up for an account, it's going to ask you for an email and a password and all that shit. But if you want to take money, and here's what I think is risky about Patreon. I don't know how good their security is, but they want your social security number or they want your TIN number, which is your tax ID number. So if somebody knows your email account and they brute force their way into your Patreon account, they don't just get your address and your phone number and your name. They get your fucking social security number and your tax ID number. And that is, that is fucking horrible if that were to ever happen to you. That is the last thing you want to have happen to you. So I, I don't know. Maybe they have a layer of security I'm unaware of. Maybe once you enter it, the information is never shown again. I don't know what it is exactly, but fuck, that kind of stuff would really scare the shit out of me. I'm just saying, that's not something I'd fucking want to do. 
Jim, why do you hate money and generosity? <laughs> I don't hate generosity. I don't listen. I love you know uh, people watching. Should I do? I mean that it feels nice, I guess, but. Uh, it's easier for me to be hated than it is liked, and I don't. It makes me uncomfortable having a high sub number. It makes me uncomfortable having, I don't know. People say they like my stuff. It's weird. I'm a weird person. I don't know what what else to tell you. First time I've ever caught one of these live. Well, hello, Snakebite42. You've joined just at the perfect opportunity for me to get really drunk and make an ass of myself. Just just wait for about 40 minutes till I'm really shit-faced, and then somebody asks a question, and I answer it honestly. Like, where do you live, or what's your name, or how big is your dick, Jim? Because that's a real popular one. And then that clip gets everywhere, and I fucking regret this for the rest of my life. Eric Kane article. What do you want to talk about the Eric Kane article? Uh, you know, I put that video up. I wasn't, don't get me wrong, I'm not shitting on Eric Kane. I'm not saying Eric Kane is a bad person. Um, it, it's not meant to take the piss out of him. It's meant to take the piss out of the argument that he's making. Uh, that, you know, YouTubers and journalists are the exact same thing. They're not. And while I feel he's probably coming from a, a, you know, like an honest and decent place when he's talking about what he's talking about, it's pretty obvious that um, people using that same argument that he's putting out there aren't being, you know, um, genuine about it. They want to use it to take heat off people like Leigh Alexander. They want to use it to take heat off people like Nathan Grayson or Totillo or, you know, uh, what is it, Chris Grant or any of the other uh, editors-in-chief or any of the other reporters or journalists that are out there. That's that's my, my feeling on that. Get Jesse Ventura on the stream. I will try to get Jesse later. Right now I'm just drinking and answering stupid questions. It's, it's great chat. It's a good chat so far. Wrong article. Uh, you're going to have to tell me what uh, Kane article you're talking about then. I don't know what the new article is. People are putting articles out so quickly, it's really hard to keep up from all sides and from different um, venues. You know, you've got shit like coming out of The Verge, which is just this, it's like somebody took a shit on a plate and tried to get you to eat it. That whole, yeah, don't support Gamergate. They're all right-wingers bullshit. And then that little update that he had to put in at the end because he got his shit slapped so hard in the comment section by people who were like, what the fuck? I thought The Verge at least tried to pretend to be neutral, but this really doesn't come off as that. Legally changed my name to Internet Aristocrat. God, I don't think even my ego is that big. Drink whiskey, you fuck. Oh, no. No, I've had my encounters with whiskey, and that's a bad fucking idea. Drinking whiskey is asking for trouble. Uh, the new one about Gamergate being good, well, I'm, that's great. I'm glad Eric Kane's coming around. Listen, I say listen a lot. That's uh, just a side note, and this is going to happen a lot while I drink. I'm going to fucking meander off in thought. The one thing I hate about doing videos is when you re-listen to the audio you record, you're going to find out all those little... Um, idiosyncrasies that you have, all the things that you repeat. And I notice I have a tendency every time I want to make a point to say, listen, and it drives me nuts, especially when I catch myself. But in regards to Eric Kane's newest article or him saying that, I guess, Gamergate is good, is that I'm getting the gist of the article. Um, I'm glad that he's come around to it. I'm glad that he's changed his position on it. Uh, I think back to his original position, which was almost one of disinterest. You know, when you look at somebody like Milo, right, from Breitbart, People shit on him a lot, and that really does annoy me. People will say, "Oh, it's a political make, you know, it, it, it's a political website, it's a political news outlet." Uh, he's only writing because he's a conservative. He's a right winger. He doesn't care about the issue, and they have all this laundry list of reasons they don't like Milo. But when you look at the beginning of this, nobody was giving us even a second glance. Milo did, though, and you can question his motivations as much as you want, but he went to bat for us. You know, people like Kane and others who we really were depending on kind of were disinterested. They they didn't think anything was really there. When you watch that stream that Kane had done with Total Biscuit and was it Greg uh, Tito or is it Tito? I don't know how he pronounces it. Uh, that, I kind of can't remember her name either. I'm sorry, my mind is going a little blank. But when you look at that stream that they had done, um, and he talks about, you know, I hadn't really thought uh, Gamergate, you know, or the corruption angle was really a big one. And then Game Journal's Pro came out, and it made me a little worried because I was thinking back to interactions that I had had online with different journalists. 
that when you when you go back and look at that video, the one where I'm I, I'm a little bit mean to Eric Kane, that was my point. You know, if, if Kane or others that we had you know put a lot of faith in, if they had really looked at it, if they hadn't kind of just shrugged it off, and they really looked at it, he would have been the person to find Game Journal's Pro, or somebody like him would have, and all the other pieces of information that came out, they would have found it, but they they didn't do that. And so here comes Milo, and he fucking finds it out for us. So he'll always have my gratitude for that. And I, I know they're two separate things. I'm not saying that Eric was shitting on Milo. He's not. But I've seen a lot of people do that, and it really does piss me off because I don't care what his outlet is. I don't give a shit if he's the biggest neocon, or neocon on the planet. He did good by us. And he did good by us not by giving us favoritism. He did good by us by just even you know bothering to take five minutes and look at the issues. So that should count for something. Okay. I'll stop ranting though. Hey IA, did you watch the newest South Park? Yes, I did. You're talking about the sissy episode? I thought it was good. Um, I was hoping it would have gone in a more extreme di direction. It turns out that episode wasn't. I thought the motivation for that episode was going to be uh, making fun of shit, making fun of uh, Tumblrettes, making fun of special snowflakes. That wasn't the motivation for that episode. Somebody had linked me to an article that had taken place between their last episode and the newest one where um, some, some fucking magazine or some online outlet had just ripped into them for, you know, daring to have Randy dress up as Lord. And the reporter they have in the newest episode is, is from that same uh, journalist group, whatever the fuck they are. So it, that, this whole episode wasn't really set up to make fun of Special Snowflakes. It was made, I think, to make fun of that one journalistic outlet. Which kudos to them because they whipped that up really quick. It was a, it was a decent episode, but I, I wanted more from it. No spoilers. Way too late. There's a delay, so you're fucked, man. There's spoilers galore in there. No, I'm not hiccuping. Actually, I'm burping because I ate a lot of. Uh, anytime I have really heavy Italian food, that happens. Play Russian roulette. Not on your life. I have horrible luck. I'd be the motherfucker to get shot right just the first time yeah there's no way I'm doing that spin magazine yeah it was spin magazine so I, I'm guessing that's what encouraged them I, I don't know 100% but that's my guess I am Lord la 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 it, yeah again South Park has been pretty decent this season um, I kind of lost interest in them for a while there but uh, this season and some of the last season were pretty good they seem like they're firing on all cylinders again, or getting close to it. Will you co-op Tales of Grace F? And then it just went by too quick. So I'm, I, I uh, probably not. Uh, I don't buy a lot of. I buy most video games um, when they go on sale. I don't have a lot of money to throw around. I did finally get an episode. Or I was going to say an episode. Fuck. I got a copy of Smash Brothers for the 3DS. So I'm just I'm just starting that. I'm just trying that out and being fucking horrible at it because using that thumbstick, it feels like it's impossible to dash. Maybe that's just because I'm not used to using the 3DS, but you know, what are you gonna do? Funny junk or 8chan? I actually don't use funny junk, so I don't know what the site's like. I do use 8chan, so it just by default wins in that situation. Though again, funny junk lets you say whatever you want, which makes it better than 4chan in my opinion. Thoughts on what Gamergate is doing as of today, or as of late? They seem to be doing well. Um, my suggestions, and I, I put a few of these up on Twitter, have somebody run a Twitter account dedicated to putting up stream times, and have the people that want to do streams tweet that information at the account. Then everybody can follow one Twitter account and get all the information for every stream that's going on, and everybody knows when they're planned, so nobody has a stream running over somebody else's, and people aren't you know, doing a stream for four hours and only 12 people show up. And then you got eight other streams that are competing for the same, you know, viewing audience. It just it it ends up motivating people more, so they don't feel like, oh shit, I went to all this trouble to do this stream, and I got these people in to do an interview with, or I got a dev, or I got a reporter, or whatever, and nobody nobody's even watching. So what's the point? Uh, as for like other stuff, hitting the advertisers is really working. That's scaring the shit out of them. Um, that is really scaring the shit out of them. They mocked us and kind of ignored us and, you know, were silent for a good majority of stuff or got pissy with us. But when you start fucking with their money, they suddenly really get nervous. And a lot of these attack articles you're seeing coming from sites that aren't even gaming related, that are taking the anti side of it, uh, that, you know, are siding with these idiots, these corrupt morons, 
are doing it, I think, more out of fear that, holy shit, if this group of people can influence advertisers on these sites, they can do it to us. So we gotta, we have to put that, you know, put a stop to it now, or we're fucked. If consumers get the, you know, if customers and readers and our demographic, if they get it into their head that they actually have power and influence, we can't treat them like shit anymore. You know, we can't um, be assholes in our moderation in our comment section anymore. We can't talk like, the, you know, talk to them like they're retards anymore. We can't dictate narratives to them anymore because they'll fucking cut us off at the kneecaps. They're terrified of that shit. And why shouldn't they be? I mean, it's been a buildup to this point for about 10 years. I'm not talking about gaming. I'm just talking about consumers. How many times have you heard the phrase entitled uh, in relation to anything? Entitled, you know, user base, entitled gamer, entitled this, entitled that. They've put it into our heads that, you know, we're nothing. We're just, you know, eyes. We're a click to them. And we have no power and no influence. And I think Gamergate is showing people we really do have an influence. If we fucking hammer advertisers, we can make our voice heard. And I know you see people like Jaffe and others coming out of the woodwork and saying, how is that not censorship? Or not, I shouldn't say Jaffe. Jaffe retweeted something or was having a conversation with Patrick Klepek, and Klepek had said, how is that any different than censorship? We're not censoring you. We're not telling the site that you can't say that. What we're saying is, to the advertiser whose products we buy, we won't be visiting this site, so your advertisements here don't make any sense. Or we won't be buying your products, or if you pull your advertisements, we'll buy more of them. We're using the free market to tell you that you can say whatever the fuck you want, but we're not going to finance you doing it. You want to call me a fucking man-baby neck-bearded asshole? Go ahead. But I'm not going to let you know somebody pay you to do it when they're making that decision on whether or not to pay you based on if I'm reading your crap. So it's a completely different fucking thing. Oh, let's see. I'm just scrolling through the comments here. Let's see what we got. Favorite African country would well, have to be, oh, I don't know, there's so many great ones to choose from. Um, wasn't it Liberia that it was it 2012 or 2013 where the entire country flunked out of college? There was one where like 25,000 students applied to get into colleges that year and none of them passed. It was 0% got in. That was pretty funny. That would be my favorite country. Hey, are, hey, IA, are you taking in call-ins? Because I've been wanting to talk to you a lot. Short Fat Otaku, holy shit. I went on Twitter today, or Twitter, I went on Skype today to get this message from some guy who was claiming all this shit on 8chan um, and saw messages from you, like dating back to the last stream. You understand that I was sending those invites through YouTube, right? I don't, I don't have Skype integrated to this, so talking to you on Skype isn't going to get you into this stream. I sent them through Google, through YouTube, to pull you in directly through the site. What is my job career? I'm not going to tell you what my job career is. Why would I do that? Why do people volunteer information about themselves that makes it easier to dox them? This is why I don't use social media. I don't drag my ass across the internet. What sense does that make? <laughs> hey, what's your job, man? By the way, what's your address? Give us your zip code. How about your social security number? Can you give me the four last digits on your credit cards? What's your routing number to your bank account? I'm not putting that up. Favorite disease? Ebola. The TGWTG tard. Yes, that would be the person. Lightweight gem. I'm not a light. I'm, you know, well, maybe I am a little. Can we all join the call? Yeah. I'll let, like I said, I'll let people in the call, but I'm going to get real drunk before we start doing that. You got me. I'm a male gigolo. <laughs> you can find my ads on back pages. If you're if you're interested, I'm up on back pages. What's my shoe size? Ten and a half. Are you satisfied? Is that is that good enough for you? Waifu, I don't have a waifu. We've been through this over the last like five streams. Now everybody's my favorite brand of cigarette. I've already said I, I smoke camels. Oh, what in the fuck? Don't smoke. I like I said, I, I plan on living until about fifty, so I'm I'm fine. And then when I hit fifty, I've been thinking about this. You know, there are a lot of suicide videos on um on the internet. You can go to like live leaks and see people blow their heads off like Bud Dwyer, that kind of stuff. But I've never seen anybody kill themselves via volcano. I might be that guy. 
I might be the guy who live streams himself chucking himself into an active volcano. You can't tell me that wouldn't be entertaining. Nobody does that. And I've always heard like, oh, you'll die this way first. You want to actually get burnt up by the lava. Why not find out? I'll tell you what. When I do that, I'll let you donate then. Because then I never see the money. I'm fucking in a volcano. What is my average size shirt? Well, you're very... Are you planning on sending me a suit? Would you like my tailoring measurements? That's right. I want you to all smoke camels. You got me. That's why I don't take advertisements off YouTube. I'm actually a cigarette salesman. I'm the last one that exists. We killed Joe Cool, and I replaced him. I actually skinned him alive, and I wear his pelt. <laughs> I wear his pelt for his power to get you to smoke camel brand cigarettes. The smoothest cigarette that's out there. Marrying a feminist or a colonoscopy. I'd rather take the colonoscopy. You know, I'm going to check Twitter. I'm going to see if anybody's got a question on Twitter. Oh, wow, there are actually some shit on Twitter. Have I tried vaping? This is from Twitter from Random Gamer. Let's say gay -mer, I like the name. Um, yeah, I have. Uh, I do have a problem when I, I use a vaporizer. What is it in the mixture that um, that adds in the fake smoke? Glycerin or, or whatever the fuck it is. Glycol, I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm too drunk to look this up. But... Uh, that shit, it uh, upsets my throat. So I just, like I've tried vape, uh, vaping, I, I've tried a bunch of different blends and brands and all that. Whatever, fuck it. It just doesn't, it doesn't do it for me. Uh, pretty please, some of us are in poor California and can barely get 360 on a good, good day. What are you asking me? Oh, uh, for the love of God, ask uh, the streamers, give viewers the option for low res. That's beyond my control. I mean, you it's not a bad idea, don't get me wrong, but I don't even know. Uh, to the people watching this right now, what resolution is this defaulting for you guys? Um, I would think it's 360. God, I would hope it's not like 240 or 188. But I can't imagine, you know, at the highest, maybe 480, but nothing above that. Because they're they're asking for a lower resolution, so I'm thinking that has to do with Hitbox and Twitch and the other the other websites. Because I'm pretty sure YouTube's very straightforward and just throttles it based on your personal selection and options. Uh, what will you do when we win GamerGate? Shut down the fucking Twitter account. Probably shut down my YouTube account and go back to doing dumb anonymous videos without a hassle. Would be my fucking plan. That's probably more than likely. Um, let's see what else we got here. Oh, this is hard to scroll through. All right, look, <laughs> there's like 90 different numbers. Who the fuck's getting 4K on this? What kind of future machine are you fucking using that you're pulling 4K? Are you on like a T3 line or something? You must work for Google. I don't know how you're pulling 4K. We got two 4Ks. All right. 420? How, do, how are you even getting 420? Oh, I get it. Oh, that's cute. You got me. 1920 by, that can't be, you're, I guess you're saying 25 frames. If you're getting a resolution of 1920 by 25, what fucking device are you watching this on? That's crazy. Only peasants go below 4K. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, let's see. Grimrock 2, are you excited? Yeah, probably be a fun game. Yeah, so it looks like the majority from what I'm, I'm seeing on the stream chat, between 360 and 4... Uh, I was going to say 420. 360 and 480. I, I don't know if I can make that setting lower for the guy that was asking on Twitter, saying that uh, it's too much for their, their internet connection. I can look into it and see if I can offer you a lower, a lower um, stream rate somehow. I'm not against it. I mean, it's just audio only, so it shouldn't really matter. What is the width of your, your left shoulder blade? I have no idea. <laughs> it's equal to my right shoulder blade. Uh, do you think that gaming will eventually be successfully co-opted and ruined by SJWs? It could be. 
unless people fight back. We've seen shit like this before. I mean, it's come granted from different groups with different concerns, but believe me, this sort of mentality has existed before. Um, it's just SJWs are doing it right now, specifically relating to gaming, but you had the Hollywood blacklist, you had the comic book code, you had moral authorities in television in the 50s and 60s. Like, this shit happens in every medium. You even had uh, parent groups in the 70s and 80s pushing against certain forms of music, or God, even in the 50s and 60s. But they fought back. They didn't just roll over. Well, with the exception of comic books, because uh, if you've gone to Co, it's a depressing journey as they talk about their female Thor and their uh, you know, midget wheelchair bound Spider Man with 14 different headmates and 18 presenting tulpas. But um, gaming doesn't have to go that, that way. Uh, what's your kink, baby? I'm not telling you my kink. Sorry. How can I get a voice like yours? By smoking Camel Brand cigarettes. The smoothest cigarette that's out there. Camel Brand is a satisfying drag. Do I sell propane and propane accessories? No, I don't. Be a fun job, though. <laughs> Who's your favorite architect? I am. I am the best architect. Uh, suggested somebody fix the, the infograph. Boom. There you go. Yeah, look at that. Total Biscuit. Uh, I'm looking at that same infograph from earlier. Uh, fart to continue. Tweeted it out. But when you add, that's great. When you add Total Biscuit's number up on the top, that, that is more, isn't it? Oh, it's not. Okay. It's almost dead even. Total Biscuit by himself equals the amount of followers that Gama Sutra, Polygon, Leigh Alexander, and Zoe have. So he blew them right out of the fucking water. Go. You should have put Adam Baldwin on there because he, he did the Thunderclap thing, and I think he's got one of the higher ones, doesn't he? He's got like a fucking crazy amount of followers. Let me go check Adam and see what he has. I, maybe I'm wrong. Though, yeah, he's got like an absurd amount too. What the fuck? How are people getting these absurd amounts of Twitter followers? Well, I, I guess being famous probably helps. Yeah, that's the one. That's the one flaw in my analysis. I forgot that. Okay. I am retarded. Disregard that. How much karma do you have? I have? Are you talking about like shit on Reddit? I don't use Reddit, so I have no karma. But yeah, I did play WoW. I said I played MMOs before, but I don't play them for the quests or the raids or the dungeons or any of the fucking exploration shit. I play them to parkour. I just want to see what I can get on top of. Can I climb that building? Can I glitch my way past that mountain? Can I get stuck on that topography or on that item? That's all I care about. I used to have groups of people that I'd play MMOs with, and all we ever did was break the game. Just to climb up on a building and laugh at the other people who couldn't figure out how to do it. That was the whole point. Am I jealous um, of you leaving me hanging? These comments are going by quick, so you got to like put the whole question there. Lots of bots. No, I, I don't think. I, I don't think people like Biscuit or Adam Baldwin or you know any. I don't think they're botting. They don't need to. There's no you know. There's no need for them to do that. What do I use? Are you talking about websites? Um, well, I used to browse 4chan pretty much exclusively. Now I've moved over to uh, 8chan, Infinite Chan, or whatever the fuck they want to call it. I call it 8chan because that's the URL. I know it bugs some people. They're like, no, no, it's Infinite Chan. Sorry, you got to tilt that 8 sideways to get me to call it Infinite Chan. It's what I climb your building. That's, that's, you're dirty. I get that. It's an innuendo. It's a, it's a double entendre that you're doing there. I confirmed for bitch nigga. Uh, you got me. You roasted my ass. Uh, zero, one, nobody, ten. Yes, I noticed you. Should we be investigating Shadows of Mordor on YouTube more? I mean, if you're inclined to do so, feel free. But it's different, in my opinion. It, this is just my opinion, but it's different than our gripe with game journalists. YouTubers don't have a code of ethics. They're not journalists. They didn't take a fucking creed. They didn't go through the classes. They didn't get a diploma. They didn't understand the, res you know, they understood the, I should say journalists understood the responsibility when they took that job and that, that as a profession, it comes with a set of standards. You're meant to adhere to it. Um, YouTubers are just people doing shit for a hobby. It's a completely different thing. I agree. It's shitty. I don't want to watch a video and then think, oh my God, did the guy say that because he's getting paid under the table? But 
it's again it's different it's it's business uh compared to ethics if you think it's uh, underhanded business practice then sure by all means pursue it but it is a different thing than ethics with the audacity to blasphemy <laughs> What am I eating? I'm eating nothing. I'm drinking right now out of a shitty plastic cup because I'm too lazy to go clean off a good one. What is my mom's maiden name? Dead. My mom's maiden name is Dead. D-E-A-D. -E Caps lock. Good choice. Let me pop back over to Twitter here, see if there's anything else that popped up. You ship me. Somebody said they ship me with pleb comics. Pleb comics? I don't know. My ability to speak while it goes out the fucking window the drunker I get. Uh, discuss the nuances of dodging or dogging in the woods of Minnesota on your stream. I know I recognize your voice from somewhere. Duh, if you think you're going to find me in the backwoods of Minnesota, I don't think you're recognizing my voice. But holy shit, if you if you think you know me in real life, by all means, come up to me and start talking about docking. <laughs> because that is going to be awkward as shit. And funny, too. You should record it, because I want to see the video of that. Uh, do you think a game crash can be a good thing for core gamers? And do you think it can be spoken into reality? What? Do you think a game crash can be a good thing for core gamers? And do you think it can be spoken into reality for... Are you? Are people fucking with me now because they know I'm drinking, or did you mistype that? I don't. I, I don't know. More doctors smoke Camel brand cigarettes than any other. They do indeed. Do you sell Camel cigarettes and Camel cigarette accessories? Yes, I do. I'm the vice president of Camel cigarettes. That is how I can afford to be such a uh, a lazy fucker. I sell cigarettes. I am the vice president of that company. Come and get me, social justice warriors. <laughs> Come and find me at the uh, headquarters of Camel Cigarettes. How do you feel about Sargon criticizing Anita, or Anita Sarkeesian and receiving money for her work when Thunderfoot and Sargon himself are paid to be are paid by their viewers? Uh, again, I mean, it ties into what I said earlier. If you want, if you're going to do something on the internet and you're good at it and you have a fan base and people like it. And they're willing to pay you fine. Uh, I, I don't do it because I have my own reasons for not wanting to do it. Um, the difference I would say between somebody like a Thunderfoot and a Sargon and a person like Anita Sarkeesian or a Zoe, well, uh, specifically an Anita Sarkeesian, she's a fucking con artist. I don't know how many times that needs to be said to, to like sink in for people that are unfamiliar with her maybe or haven't really looked into it. She got $168,000 to make a series of videos that she said she'd have out by August of last fucking year. If you donated to that Kickstarter, you technically should have had the whole DVD box set in your house of by August of last year. Instead, she's released five videos. And the reason she's releasing five videos and not a ton of them is because she's making money off speaking engagements and because industry people are giving her bullshit awards. So she's getting publicity and money, and she's, you know, she's probably going to go into the uh, education industry. Look at stuff like Pearson Publishing and all these different groups. Education, you can make a lot of money screwing people and conning people in education. So that is a that is a cash cow. Um, so if she's getting into that and she's visiting schools and talking about coming up with a feminist frequency, I don't know, a classroom kit or whatever the fuck she's talking about. Oh, she's going to make so much money doing that. So of course she's not focusing on the videos. She doesn't care about that. She already got your fucking money. She'll release the videos whenever the fuck she feels like it. And, they're, you know, in regards to, I, I believe, I could be wrong, but I believe people like Thunderfoot and Sargon get paid per video. So it's only when they actually release a product they actually get money. Sarkeesian already got the money, and she's not releasing the product. So I guess that's the biggest difference at the end of the day. Uh, what do you think of Cracked? Uh, I said this a couple times in the past, but... I made a promise to myself not to go back to Cracked until it was funny, and it's been like four years, so why break that streak? Um, are Anita's Jimmy's rustled yet? Of course they are. Um, the whole routine that she does uh, to get money, her whole shtick, her whole con, 
is kind of falling apart without the support structure around her to perpetrate it. So when you see sites like Gama Sutra and you see Kotaku and Polygon all getting shit on, when you see the credibility of people like Chris Grant and Steven Totillo and Leigh Alexander going down the toilet, she no longer has that infrastructure to keep perpetuating her bullshit into the mainstream, or at least into the subculture on the internet, however you want to look at it. The point is, she, she probably is rustled because her con is falling apart, and they don't like when that happens. Part two when? Part two will be up by Saturday night. Uh, Sunday morning at the latest. That's real time. That's not gym time. That's actual real human time. What do I think of Matt Lee calling Christina Hoff Summers uh, a prick and scum? Didn't he do that after? Well, I can't talk. Um, I think Matt Lee's an asshole, is my opinion. Um, that's all I got to say on it. Matt Lee's an idiot. And uh, everybody. She seems like an nice lady to me, as far as summers go. Um, I, I have, I'm unfamiliar with her to a large degree, but nothing I've seen of her makes her seem to match up with anything he's saying. It'd be different if Matt Lee had said, Internet Aristocrat's a prick and an asshole, or Thunderfoot is, or Adam Baldwin is, or Milo is, or anybody else, but I don't know why he picked her uh, to tantrum about. It just makes him seem like a fucking dick. Coffee or tea? Ah, uh, I hate hot drinks, so neither. If I was gonna have a if I was gonna have a cold drink, it'd be iced tea. Jim, will you be my waifu? No, I'm sorry. I don't swing that way. How much would I pay to jeer at uh, Nita at an audience at a live event? Do you think I want to go to some cult event? Are you fucking kidding me? It'll turn into Jonestown, uh, knowing my luck. And they'll all start drinking the fucking Kool-Aid and singing hymns before they put a bolt in their head. Like, I don't want any part of these people. They're fucking crazy. The last thing you want to do is be around cult members when they're doing their weird shit. Like that XOXO stuff. Ugh. There's no way you could get me into that room. No amount of money would have got me to put my ass in one of those seats. I don't know what venture... It must be a, um, it must be a West Coast thing. Venture capitalists on the West Coast must be very different than the ones that I'm familiar with on the East Coast because I don't understand why they're going to these events to pay people money. Something weird is going on with that. I'm not, I don't mean corruption and collusion. I just mean with those individuals that are going to these events thinking they're going to find the next hot thing, they're going to cult meetings. So, you know, maybe take maybe take some fucking lessons from the guy, the guys in like New York and shit who can point point you to how to do it the right way so you're not flushing your money down the toilet. Uh, do I read uh, Song of Fire and Ice? Or Ice and Fire? Or either or? No, I don't. What's my fetish? Never going to tell you, sorry. Unless we date, and then you'll find out. Tell you what game to buy on Steam. Why would you ask my advice? Uh, this is a big flaw in giving people advice. I don't know what kind of games you like, and I don't even know if we like the same type of game or even the same type of series. We'd agree on what games in that series are actually good. Don't ask my advice. I'll probably give you terrible advice. Go with what interests you. Go find a game you like and buy it, and then you'll be happy. Heaven's Gate with 80% less misogyny. There you go. Except there are no comets in the sky. Didn't they off themselves to get on Haley Bob or... Bob Marley. I don't know what the fucking name of the comment was. The kid had a big, like, dreadlocked head and a giant fucking joint in its mouth as it shot past Earth. That's why they hopped on. Is that a statement or a question, Arg1212? It's just feet. And then above him, amputees. Amputated feet. Sounds like a very bizarre fucking fetish. Uh, Jim, please date me. I don't even know who you are. I'd probably be probably end in disaster. Probably be two different people. Do I like Fallout? No. Radiation poisoning sucks. Buy Alien Isolation. I'd buy video games if I had the money. I've just got to be, you got to be smart. You need to learn to budget. It's a good thing to know in your life. Wait for shit to go on sale. You don't need to buy it this very second. You can wait a couple months and it'll be on fucking 50% off on either Green Man Gaming or Steam or Amazon or some other fucking site. Uh, Radeon or GeForce? I don't know. I, I bought this fucking computer, uh, tinkered with it a bit, and it's been sitting here. 
uh, I, I don't even know what I prefer because I haven't really had a chance to go out and buy a bunch of fucking different components to test out what I like the most. Um, you know, like my last encounter with NVIDIA and shit. Um, I can't remember what card it was, but I got some kind of fucking driver update that basically stalled the fans and cooked my card. So ever since then, I've I fucking steered clear of them just because I don't want to waste the money. Uh, spoiler, Jim dies in the end. Well, that would be a fairly accurate spoiler. Five dollars in six months. Are you talking about the price of Shadows of Mordor? I don't know if it'll drop that much. From what I hear, it's I mean, from what I hear, it's a fairly decent game, which it boggles my mind as to why the advertising firm would have done what they did. It doesn't make any sense. So maybe they were worried it was not going to be well received, but people seemed to like it. So there was really no reason to have these oppressive contracts with the YouTubers. Uh, check Twitter. Check Twitter. All right, let's check Twitter. Seven plus one, Chan. They're very good. Uh, can you talk about signal boost, not your shield? Um. Okay. I, I mean, what do you want me to say about it? Was it event status? I, I just watched his videos recently, and I've, I've seen a couple of his before, but the one he just put out most recently talking about Gamergate and not your shield was fucking great. Like, that guy's video was really, really good. Um, he should probably get more attention. And I, I know he was talking about not your shield and kind of talking about how it's running uh, parallel, I guess, with Gamergate and wanting to get a little more attention. Dude, that's the guy you want to talk to. I hope he puts out more content like that because I, I agreed with pretty much fucking everything he said in that video. And I like long videos, and his video was long, so I watched the whole damn thing. Can I be your new phone girl? Daffles. <laughs> I, I don't know. You'll have to send in some resumes so I can see who's the, the best person for the job. <laughs> Are Carlton Banks and Patrick Austin the same person? That is a... <laughs> I don't know, man. That, that is a question for the ages. Uh, didn't Green Man Gaming give Anita an award, Jim? I have no idea. Wait, what award are they going to give her? It's a fucking, it's a, sh it's a website you buy video games on. Do they actually get, wait, does Green Man Gaming give out awards? There's no fucking way. Uh, somebody said he blew DSP the fuck out. Did something happen recently with Darkside Phil, or are you you're talking about something in the past? How hard will... Uh, I can't even read that one. Uh, Jim is drowning in the... Uh, okay. Time to have another drink. Let's sort out these crazy questions. Hey, Jim, is IA one of your headmates? I stopped having imaginary friends at about the age of seven. Ask us a question. Okay, stream, I'll ask you a question. What would you like to talk about? What should I do for this evening's stream? Because I have an entire evening to kill, and I don't really give a shit. So what do you guys want to do? Jay goes, GDC gave Anita an award, you idiots. Yeah, again, Green Man Gaming is GMG, not GDC. Okay, that makes sense, because it wouldn't make any sense for for a fucking website that sells shit to, to give stuff out. Uh, why do you want to close the channel? Uh, question. I, it just, I'm uncomfortable with a lot of subs. I don't know. I just, I like being a nobody. I like just being able to be a little guy. And then people find your videos if they're interested in them. And that's really all there is to it. I don't know. I don't like, I don't like, I don't know, attention or popularity. I don't like being liked. It's easier to be hated. It is much easier to be hated. Uh, laugh at King of Pole. Uh, I mean, I, I'd laugh at him, but he won't be able to hear me all over the ads he's playing probably right now to make all that, all those shekels as he shills his audience. King of Pole, are you in the chat right now? Are you are you queuing up your next ad? Oh, and comment volume just broke. Let's try that again. Oh, fuck, now it's flying by. It must have been, must have been clogged. 
make prank calls. I, I can't. I, again, I'm doing this through Google, not through Skype. So I can't actually make. Um, I can't make any prank calls. I don't think Google. I don't think they put that feature into this yet. If they did, it'd be fucking great. When will you return to Tumblrisms? I don't know. Um, I, I wanted to do an episode on Other Ken. I wanted to do one on rape culture. I wanted to do one on at least the brand of feminism that we're all familiar with. Uh, I wanted to do... There were a fucking lot of ideas for uh, Tumblrisms. There's a lot of fucking weird shit on Tumblr. What is my favorite fighting game? Do I like Skullgirls? My favorite fighting game would either be Guilty Gear or King of Fighters, and Skullgirls is okay. Uh, it's not bad or anything. It's just not one of the ones that I'm really, really into. But I play it because I have friends that play it. All right, I'm going to pop back on Twitter here. Here it is, an award sponsored by Green Man Gaming. Are you fucking kidding me? Green Man Gaming announced its headline sponsor of Golden Joystick Award 2014. I'll be damned. I did not know that. Uh, will you talk about the Verge article and why they did that? I actually already did. Maybe you missed it. it, it in summary, um, they're idiots who don't really understand the issue. That would be my that would be my summary of that. Uh, and they're probably scared because they see consumers kicking the shit out of sites that are treating them badly, and they don't want that to start going around to other sites. See, they'd rather have uh, you know, they'd rather have a readership that thinks of themselves as entitled consumers, or you know, uh, entitled uh, yeah consumers, rather than um, one that thinks of themselves as empowered customers. If they make you think you're entitled and they they whip you down enough, you'll put up with anything. But if you think you're empowered and you can actually have an influence on the way they behave, oh fuck, that scares the shit out of them. Uh, what type of Tumblr snowflake would you least hate to spend a whole day with? Fuck, man. I, oh, what was that turtle chick? The one that thought she was a tortoise? That would like, you know, was arguing with her mom about that and shit? That would probably be the one, that would be the snowflake of all snowflakes that I'd want to steer clear of. How much money do I think is there? Well, I see the 10 and 3 ones, but you could have a bill hidden under there. You got a lot of, I'm seeing, it looks like there are quarters, dimes, and nickels, and even pennies in there. Oh, shit. I'm going to say that's probably like, Four fifty to six dollars and change, so it's under twenty dollars. It's above fifteen dollars, under twenty dollars. Am I black Irish? No, I'm not. Do you speak another language? Yes, I do. <laughs> hey, baby, want some fuck? Sure, why not? Oh, why is it stalling up on me now? Give me a second here, chat, while I pour another drink. I want to marry you. Well, that's lovely. Was Shadow of Mordor a bad game? I have no idea. I haven't fucking played it. I gave it the most accurate V rating I could give that game, which is, I didn't play it, it's terrible, don't buy it. Was that a real chick from that Tumblrisms video or the ableism video? The tortoise girl? I have no idea. I'm just saying if that was a real person, that would be the one I'd want to steer the fucking, you know, most clear of. Seven dollars or seven dollars Sanchez wants on. Angry Joe doesn't watch this. There's no way he's watching right now. Do I speak Hebrew? God, no, I don't. No, I don't speak Hebrew. I don't speak Latin. I you know, like you gotta you got to give me something a little different than that, if you want an answer. Oh, let me see. Chat just died on me again. i got to refresh the shit. Jim speaks German, hence going to pull. You got me. Favorite Guilty Gear character? Jam. Talk about Common Core. Talk about SJWs and Common Core. 
there are already videos out there that show that uh, people who had an influence over what was put in and what wasn't put in, the people who wrote the standards were influenced by SJW bullshit. You had one guy saying he wrote the standards because of white privilege. You have other conferences that are highly tied into academic circles like the white privilege conference that's been going on for 15 fucking years where these people attend it. And, you know, they're friends with the people or they know the people or they help write the thing. It's just, it, Common Core is ridiculous. Common Core will do for academic rigor what political correctness did for um, self-confidence. You know, we the millennials kind of got the short end of the stick with a school system that basically made everybody feel like a winner and there were no faults and there were no problems. They didn't have to address any behavioral problems. That was a direct result of political correctness. And it turned out terribly because then when they go into the real world, they're not equipped to deal with it because they all think they're winners. They can't imagine themselves of making a mistake or being wrong. Uh, now you couple that with what Common Core will do for the academic side of things. It's not just the behavior, but now we've got academics. And you're not going to just have arrogant people. You're going to have arrogant, stupid people, which is the worst fucking combination you can get. If you think the generation we've got now is bad, holy shit, wait 20 years. They're probably going to be burning dumpsters to keep warm. I mean, it's going to be fucking bad. What would it take for you to say we've won, there's nothing more to do? You mean in relation to Gamergate? Uh, capitulation on the part of the affected websites. Polygon, Kotaku, and Gamasutra are the three primary ones. Uh, Stephen Tatillo would have to let, you know, Nathan Grayson has to go and Patricia Hernandez has to go. Those are the two most egregious uh, violations on that site. Uh, I think it was Kirk Hamilton gave money through Patreon to Zoe Quinn, but I don't believe that Kirk Hamilton, like, like his actions, he should get a slap on the wrist, but I mean, he should definitely get something. They need to readdress their ethics policy, and at this point, I think Tatilla would have to step down. Uh, Chris Grant would have to step down. You'd have to get people like Caller and uh, Kuchera most definitely would have to be fucking gone from Polygon. Uh, Gama Sutra would have to shit kick Leigh Alexander to the curb, uh, and again, all these sites would have to look at their ethical policies and be very transparent. Uh, I don't know if that's going to happen, but those are the three big ones. Pinky, uh, why is Haberman a fag now? You would have to ask him. Uh, you're talking about Haberman. Listen, he went through, I don't know what the fuck you want to call it, uh, a change of viewpoint, uh, midlife crisis. He saw the light. I don't know. I don't know what his exact explanation for it is. But he is what he is, and he's off doing his own fucking thing. And so I just, I don't, you know, I don't fucking interfere with it. There's no reason to. He doesn't like me. I'm not particularly fond of him, so we just steer clear of each other. And it's worked out fantastically up until now. Uh, bring down Gawker. Listen, you know, Nick, the uh, what is it, Denton or Denson or whatever the fuck his name is, the owner of Gawker, the guy who started it. I know that there have been articles over the past, I think, three or four years talking about him wanting to sell. I don't know if they're accurate. I don't know if they're true. But fuck, man, if you're looking to sell your product, probably now is not the best time to do it. I also find it funny that Gawker released that shit article going after Vice and talking about their problems on their website with all the shit that's going on right now. Or that even Kotaku recently, Grayson released that article talking about YouTubers taking money. Again, you know, Stephen, if you ever happen to hear this, that doesn't strike you as fucked up, that you're working for a website that will call out site after site after site and you won't address your own fucking problems? So you'll shit on Vice and say they have an issue, but you won't talk about your issues. You'll shit on YouTubers, but you won't talk about your issues. You'll bitch at 4chan for releasing celebrity nudes at the same time, what was it? Is it Deadspin? Which which um, subsidiary of Gawker was it that released the photos of the Major League Baseball player's girlfriend naked in the mirror? You know, they're showing her tits off and her ass off at the very same fucking time because those pictures got leaked. And again, Gawker will criticize other websites. They'll talk shit about other websites, and they're doing the same fucking thing. Gawker has got some major fucking problems. Hot Wheels is leading the way. I saw that Hot Wheels moved up on some kind of popularity list. Uh, right now, what Hot Wheels is going to experience is the same thing that Moot experienced when 4chan was on the rise. People liked for you know Moot when he was promoting the site and letting people do what they wanted, and he stuck by his word. And now we found out that's not the case. People will like Hot Wheels the same reason. Hot Wheels lets you go on the fucking site, lets you do what you're going to do, and doesn't fuck with you. So, yeah, more power to him. Hopefully he'll get up to number one, be one of the most popular people. 
What do you suggest for a wannabe indie developer during the current goings on? I feel bad for indie developers. What I've seen with the IDGA, what I've seen with the um, Independent Games Festival and Indiecade, it seems like all these days, this is what really bothers me. Um, like, uh, Listen, I got into the Gamergate thing because I was pissed off about the situation that was going on with Zoe Quinn and Nathan Grayson. And then you find out about Robert or not, you know, in this relationship, and these people are making money off each other, and they're they're setting it up to to profit essentially and to boost their careers. And I didn't like that. It just it's dirty. It's not how journalism is supposed to work. They have a trust, the public trust. They're supposed to respect. But the issue got so much bigger, and one of those secondary issues that's grown out of this um, is what happens to indie devs. Indie devs are in a shit fucking position right now. All these organizations, all these award shows that are supposed to look out for them, that are supposed to help promote their work and help get them some fucking recognition, are dirty as shit. They're not out there to help fucking independent developers. They're out there to make money and to suck each other off in their shitty little colluded circle jerk. I feel fucking terrible for indie devs. I wish there was a solution. I wish there was a way that players could give them a way to promote their work up front and give them direct feedback up front where they didn't have to go bribe fucking Reddit to do an AMA, where they didn't have to go put up with shit from the IDGA. They didn't have to pay $100 to the Indiecade committee or the fucking uh, Independent Games Festival committee and get shit on. It's just... Indie devs are really fucked right now. And it, it's crap. It shouldn't be that way. You know, as gamers... You know, as a gamer, we're used to shitting on big companies, right? We complain all the time, and then we buy the games. And now we have indie devs that are kind of coming into the scene, right? And this has been going on for a while now, but it's getting bigger and bigger. It, it, it just feels like a different situation. I wish there was a way for gamers to directly help independent developers that didn't involve any of these shitty fucking corrupt organizations. They could promote their work. They could help financially support their work and give them fair fucking reviews and just cut out all the bullshit. Because it's just, it sucks. What is the final solution to the Kotaku problem? The final solution to the Kotaku problem would be Stephen Dottillo remembering that he has a master's degree in journalism and finally just admitting there is a fucking major problem wrong at that organization and not half-assing, um, you know, halfway apologies and not trying to cover for his employees and just step up to the fucking plate. Steven, I know you're not a bad guy. I don't understand why you're fucking rolling with this shit. You know it's wrong. You know that fucking shit is wrong. Step up to the plate. Lead the fucking way. Look at how people have really, you know, Greg, uh, Tito, Tito, whatever, from The Escapist. I don't agree with any of his fucking positions, really. But I respect him. And a lot of people respect him. And they respect that website because at least he was up front. He fucking just stepped out front. And he was out in the open on his own. You can do that too, Stephen. You could fucking redeem uh, Kotaku. You could die for their sins, so to speak. But you got to step up to the plate to do it. Okay. Somebody, uh, what is that? Will Rob Four, Fire Patricia Hernandez. She absolutely should be fucking shit canned um, for her relationships with two people that she wrote about without disclosing it. That's fucking unacceptable, unfucking acceptable. And wasn't she didn't she did this with Christina Love? And I remember from a thread on HN talking about Gamer X that a lot of the pushback, a lot of the yelling that Gamer X got on Twitter was from Christina Love. So here's this person involved with this controversy, leading a little uh, fucking mob of uh, you know pitchfork wielding angry SJWs to go decl you know demand that Gamer X uh, do what they want, that they can't just give a neutral position, that they have to completely decry everybody, and then there goes Gamer X, and they say everybody shit, we hate Gamergate, fuck the employees that think it's okay, we don't want to deal with uh, you know SJWs throwing a fucking temper tantrum. Short fat otaku wants on your stream. I will bring him on. Uh, Lo Peng, I see you're in there too. You want to come on? I'll bring Lo Peng on. Okay, I'll, I'll try short fat otaku again. I, I've tried this before, and it fucking ends in disaster. So let's let's try it again. Again, it's not coming through Skype. 
it's coming directly through YouTube, directly through Google. You have to be logged into your YouTube account to actually see the invite. It'll show up in notifications. Um, all right, short fat otaku. All right, invite sent. What am I drinking? Kharkov vodka or paint thinner, as it's known in the West. Oh, I might have got somebody joining here. Okay, uh, short fat otaku, are you there? It's showing you in the room, so either I got the wrong guy or your mic's not working. Hello? Yeah, are you there? Yep, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you just fine. Awesome, it works. Uh, you got it this time? Yeah, I don't know what happened last time. Uh, I just never got an invite. Yeah, I tried sending out like three or four of them. I'm not sure if there was a delay or if it was going to the wrong account. Who knows? So how's it going? How's getting drunk? Uh, getting drunk's good. Uh, people keep you know telling me to drag your ass in here. So what, what's new with the what's new with the channel? What do you guys have in the works? Well, man, what's a good way to put this? I guess what's basically going on right now is we're just going to take the content of the uh, the previous two videos mm -hmm. and just make it so that we're not going to go to jail for them. <laughs> That's pretty much how it is. So you had this vetted by an attorney, I guess? They looked over it to make sure that you can put up whatever you're going to put up then? Yeah. Uh, the, the problem was not with the actual uh, content. It was, the, it was that we were wording it like it was... Like basically, an, like a legal accusation, like a, like a statement of fact rather than just speculation about public figures. So you're just going to have to put the word allegedly in front of every sentence and you'll be good to go? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> okay. Because people were concerned. They didn't understand what the issue was. Some people had been commenting they thought it was the opening um, that, you know, what did it say? At the very, you know, the, the modified opening, they thought, oh, maybe that's bringing you issues. Or maybe, um, you know, some portion of the videos were bringing you issues. But it was just... It was just that. You need to change the wording a little bit. Yeah, that, that, that's pretty much it. And, um, I mean, we're, we're Canadian, right? And mm -hmm. and uh, Phil Fish is Canadian, and his, his company's Canadian. So he can very easily uh, sue us <laughs> for this stuff. Because Canadian law is a little bit different than American law. Like, I don't think Zoe could ever go after us for anything like she went after Aaron, just due to the, the whole international law thing. But hmm. um, Polytron could definitely take us to court, and we don't really want to do that. Yeah, but I mean, isn't Phil Fish selling his company? There's really not a Polytron to sue anybody. <laughs> I, I mean, is he? I think he was just saying. Or, or, well, better yet, could, couldn't you just buy Polytron yourself and then put up the video? Because then you can't really sue yourself, so you'd be safe. <laughs> if I had the money, I would. Yeah, you you could buy him a bunch of I don't know what the fell or fuck Phil Fish likes. Buy him a bunch of plaid T-shirts, iPads, and black wear, or rimmed glasses. Seems like something that hipster fuck would enjoy. Would be my 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 guess as to what Phil Fish would want in his personal inventory of items. I'd buy him a razor to get him to shave. God, yeah, that would be a fucking great <laughs> suggestion. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> so, did you guys get any blowback? Um, I mean, I guess you pulled the videos because there were some legal concerns. But did you get any blowback from uh, SJWs? Did you get any blowback from reporters, or was it fairly mundane? It was just the legal issue. That's why you had to kind of take it down. Well, well, basically what it was, was we got sent a uh, cease and desist. Okay. Which, I mean, we've got maybe 20 of those, because our channel does, like, it does Let's Plays, it does anime reviews. So we get those all the time from various companies. We just kind of laugh them off, right? Mm -hmm. And then there were actually uh, pro Gamergate lawyers who kind of stepped up, and they're like, listen, we actually support you guys, and there is a real way they could fuck you here. So we suggest you do this before you go any further. So, so it was basically at, at the at the advice of like people helping us out. Okay, all right. Uh, did they suggest going the what is it the Glenn Beck route, where it's not the accusation, but I'm just asking questions, like you know. Yeah, yeah, why, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like why could why can't Glenn Beck just you know give us evidence that he didn't rape and murder a girl in 1990 in Florida, that kind of thing. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm. I'd like to think I have, I mean, I'm, I'm no journalist or anything. I didn't go to school for journalism, but I do want to have a bit more integrity than that. I just like to, 
put out the stuff that I found and be like, hey, this is what it looks like, what's going on, if they'd want to comment on it, you know? Right, right, and that, that's not a bad thing either. Uh, I wonder if, do you think there are any countries that don't have uh, these kind of, uh, I guess, civil litigations or extradition where somebody could host a YouTube account or a streaming account in that country and then people could send videos and clips to them that are legally in the gray area that they could host and then nobody ever gets hit for it because they can't go after the channel? I mean, I, probably somewhere in Eastern Europe. I mean, yeah, well, something like that. That's the whole thing with uh, Hitbox TV right now, because that's kind of very slowly taking over Twitch after Twitch kind of had to sell out. Um, Hitbox TV is based in Eastern Europe, so they're like, we don't care about copyright. Come do whatever you want. Oh my God, that's fantastic! If I'd known that, I'd have been going to Hitbox TV more. Because <laughs> that—that's what I liked. I used to go to a site called uh, Stage Six when Divix used to run it, and it was a uh, competitor, direct competitor to YouTube. And they had buyout offers from everybody. Microsoft, Yahoo was getting pretty big for a while there. But they didn't give a shit. And the great thing about uh, Stage 6 was they'd have adult content. So, I mean, you could watch a porno and then go watch a fucking episode of anime in the same fucking website. It was like <laughs> the fucking promised land. And it got yanked down. It was really, it was really a shitty day when Stage 6 went under. What well, happened to him? That's a really interesting story. And it'll probably bore the shit out of the stream. So I'm going to tell it. <laughs> um, basically, basically what happened was the guy that had pitched the idea to Divix had said, we can make a competitor to YouTube and make it really, really good. Um, and so he built the site, and he had a team of people working with him, and it did really, really well. And Divix was very happy. But you see, at the time, Divix had a codec, and they wanted that to be used in Hollywood. Like, you know, their uh, DVDs and um, Blu-rays and all that shit were coming up and becoming more popular. And so they wanted to ensure that their codec was going to be used by these specific studios or some shit like that. Because uh, at the time, most of their revenue came from phone sales. They were big into phones in, like, uh, Japan and Asia. Um, so they didn't care about copyrights on the website. But when they started talking to Hollywood, like the MPAA and those kind of groups, told them there's no way we're going to do any kind of business deal with you as long as you have this website open. You have to shut it down. Now, at the time, Stage 6 had a massive amount. Like, the way you see YouTube today is what Stage 6 was like back in 2006. They had HD uh, videos at 1080p. They had 60 frames per second. Uh, they let you do, you know, video lengths up to, like, fucking 24 hours. It was just crazy shit, really great features. So they had a huge amount of this archived on their servers, right? Um, the problem was they had to basically get rid of the website. And so they had all these buyout offers come in. Microsoft, Yahoo, people were putting a, a huge amounts. And now their official reason when they said we're going to close down, they didn't talk about the Kodak thing, right? Um, they tried to deflect it away and make it look like it was related to the Hollywood deal. So what they had told people was uh, we're going to shut it down because we're not getting enough money to keep the site up. We can't handle the amount of traffic we're getting. And then Yahoo happened to let it leak that, oh, well, we have you know a deal when you download the Divix player, you're getting the Yahoo browser bar or something like that, and we're paying them essentially a million dollars a month to do that. And that's about the cost they needed to run the fucking site. So it turned out to be bullshit. So what happens is the guy that originally pitched the product idea for the website goes into a meeting with the board at Divix and says, I will personally buy the website from you. I will give you, I think it was like some absurd number, and like you know 20% of the revenue that the site generates for the next decade or something like that. And they, what happened was apparently one of the really high up people at Divix hated this guy. So he sunk the website to spite him. So they, they, they basically killed a really great website they could have made a lot of money off of because this one asshole on the board of directors didn't like the guy that designed the website. And the funny thing, you know, the funny ending of that story is after they got rid of the website, Hollywood said, fuck off, we're not interested. <laughs> That actually that reminds me of um, another story I heard where like you, you know Lord Cat right? Mm -hmm. Basically, he he was up for I think a job offer at Twitch TV, and he would have been great on that because he he's he's really big into streaming. He knows a lot about the back end of streams and stuff. And this was back when Twitch TV was in its early days. But the one one guy hated him, so it didn't happen. And it turned out it turned out it was that one furry guy that made the whole shitstorm a couple of years ago about Twitch. Ah, that's see, I'm not big on like uh, Twitch's history, so I, I don't really know. Was this like a prominent streamer on the website, or what was it? No, it was basically an admin um, who started putting up furry shit as 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 emotes, and it was <laughs> against Twitch's rules to do that. Okay. And so you know there was the usual uh, giant revolt, 4chan spamming a bunch of of uh, of streams, and then streamers 
who also, like Twitch TV streamers who opposed it, started running streams as they played games and talking about it, and any stream that was found on Twitch talking about it was shut down. Really? Yeah, they just censored the whole thing. And that was kind of the, the start of Twitch's descent. So did you see, um, I, I don't know if you visit Infinite Chan or not, but did you see the stream they had up on the GG board uh, with the guy that was claiming to have been from uh, the site, that guy with the glasses? No, what, what's the story there? Yeah, so somebody basically come out, uh, they didn't want to give a name, um, and they said, yeah, hey, I'm, I, I'm at this website, and um, I, I wanted to do a Gamergate video, but they told me I couldn't. And they told me I couldn't because certain site, or site members are really big SJWs, essentially. Um, and so he's like, I'll, I'll verify it with somebody. And he was saying, I'll verify it with like Milo or, uh, or me or somebody else. So I, I got him on Skype, finally. And he, he gave me a screen cap, and he's like, see, it's proof. And I asked him to do something to validate it. I'm not going to say, because maybe at the end of the day, this is all a weird coincidence, and he really is telling the truth. But I gave him something really simple to do that would have been 100% proof he was who he said he was. And he just said, oh, hold on one sec, I'm trying to do it, and then logged off and left. And I waited like 10 minutes, and he never showed back. So it turned out to be a whole fucking uh, bullshit red herring, essentially, because it was like a <laughs> huge, it was a huge threat, and everybody was really like, oh my god, this is going to turn out to be a big thing, and it was nothing in the end. <laughs> well, I, mean, I could tell you a few stories about that guy with the glasses anyway. Um, I mean, that is a, Go like for a, it. a SJW haven. It's, it's a shithole over there, I gotta say. Um... Like, I started doing YouTube stuff in, like, 2009. I was doing anime reviews, just basically copying Spoonie at the start of it, because I really like Spoonie. And I, I wanted to get on That Guy with the Glasses, because back in 2009, that was actually a pretty good site. Um, yeah, Walker, I mean, I, I've said this before. I, I think, like, the Nostalgia Critic in the beginning was really great. I don't, I'm not embarrassed to say that. I liked his videos. But when he started doing all the skits, it kind of went downhill. Uh, and then some of the people that he brought on as talent were a little bit of an issue, I think. Um... But it, not everybody. Like, what is it, Brad Jones, I think, is the one person universally loved on that site. Yeah, and I think he's he's the one guy who doesn't want to be there anymore, but he's kind of contractually obligated now. But mm -hmm. um, the most recent thing, and like Lord Cat is a former, that guy with the glasses dude, which is, which is how I kind of got to know him. Mm -hmm. And he, um, basically, the most recent thing is they... They kind of had a, I think it was a Kickstarter, it was either an Indiegogo or a Kickstarter, where that guy with glasses asked for $90,000, and they got it. And they were going to basically take that money, and then by, I think, February of this year, put up, uh, a ga start a game show. And that was going to be, like, their new show, they're going to push this show really hard. So they got their $90,000, uh, they haven't started the game show yet, but I received a, uh, a screenshot, or, or, or like, like, like a a photo of, of the game show set, and it looks like they spent about $150 on it. <laughs> it's it's plywood and shitty paint and glitter, and it looks like a grade 3 art project. Are you shitting me, really? Yeah, and that, that, that picture was passed around Lord Cat stream, and it went all over the place. It was really made fun of. No, and, I, I, I've heard information, too, from the inside from people that have worked there uh, previously over the years. Um that paints an interesting picture of kind of like the, I guess the back background information. Uh, like if you, uh, well, I guess I'd have to ask Lord Cat since he was the one who was there. But I'm kind of curious what his opinion on Mike Machado is. Is he ever talked about it or? Oh yeah, he's talked about him. He he fucking hates him. <laughs> See, that's the general consensus I get from people that have worked on that website. Is not a lot of people are fans of like Mr. He, Bar Fiesta. He's just apparently. He like I just lazy. Like he doesn't do anything anymore to the site. He just owns it and then does nothing and then doesn't doesn't know why everything's tanking around him. <laughs> he can't he can't seem to figure that out, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to find that picture. I don't know if I have it on hand right now, but I'm sure uh, it'll be easy to get. Actually, I'll, I'll just go check out Twitter. I think I, I think it was posted on there recently. I'm just trying to bring some people in here for some reason. The the way this is set up is so bizarre. Uh, oh, that's probably why it's doing that. Oh, the Hangouts? Yeah, you can enter names and stuff, but sometimes it does it, sometimes it doesn't. Um, I can just grab a direct link and send it to these two people. Sorry, just give me one sec while I'm doing this. So aside from the, uh, I guess, the remixed videos that you're going to be putting up, do you guys have any uh, anything else that's going to be popping up? Well, the thing about the videos is, like, if you remember, the first video was about Maya Kramer and Brandon. It's either 
Boyer or Boye. I say Boye because I'm Canadian. Mm -hmm. But the first video was about them. And it is being remixed. We're also going to add like new info about Silver String because some more stuff's come out. And the second video that had all the uh, all all the leaked kind of you, you know the, the the Polytron hack stuff, which yeah. I still think is fair game to use when we're talking about investigation. If, if, yeah, I, if it's if it's already out in the public domain, it's already out. It's not like you're the one exposing it. If it's been leaked, it's leaked. It's out there. I don't see why you can't use it. Well, the argument that that we got from them is that they're they're meant to be private files, so even if they're public now, you shouldn't be using them which I think is BS. Yeah, but the, again, the, the cat is so out of the bag. I mean, it, you can find them everywhere. Yeah. I know when we like went to go get it, we basically just asked uh, 4chan's V, and they said, like, we, we, po we posted in a, in a Gamergate thread, and then after about five minutes, there was ten links up, so it's not hard to find at all. Okay. But basically, uh, we're going to cut that video probably into do, into two videos, one on the IGF and one on NDCade. And the main reason for that is because the biggest problem that video had was that people were confusing the two because we had definitive, like, smoking gun proof, in my opinion, on NDCade. Okay. We didn't have that on the IGF. The IGF just had some kind of... There was circle joking there. There was shady business practices. But we didn't have a smoking gun like we did on Indicade, yet everyone was saying, you know, the the IG we had the smoking gun with the IGF because they were because because they were it was in the same video and I was like, no guys, no, that's that's not how it is, but you know, things were already rolling by then, so I couldn't really fix it. No, and and that's understandable too. I, I'm glad that you're gonna be able to get the videos out. I watched both of them. Um, before they went down? I thought they were both good. I mean, it, you know, the issues with maybe getting this wrong or, you know, maybe, I guess, drawing too much of a conclusion on this or whatever, it doesn't really matter. You know, people researching into it, finding out information, putting it out there for people, I liked it. It, it. it gives people more shit to look through, you know what I mean? It creates more connections and it lets you look deeper at what's going on. It, it Like what happened with the Ralph retort, he put up an uh, article talking about, was it Liana Kay, who had basically uh, gone to an IDGF or whatever it is. Um, or, uh, no, IDGA, I'm sorry, uh, event in Canada. And it said that she was changing review scores so people got bonuses. She was intentionally doing that. And at the same time that report came out, the IDGA and people associated with it started supporting Leigh Alexander and Gama Sutra saying that Intel was being sexist <laughs> for pulling ads. So, it, it, like, a, But, I mean, without the Ralph Retorts, you know, story about that, you wouldn't have any connection, you know what I mean? So your videos kind of did the same thing, which is great. Oh, by the way, it looks like we've got both King of Pole in here and Lopeng, yep. so welcome, up, guys. I know we had a hey, great discussion last time we talked, me and you. I really want to talk more about it on my show sometime. Oh, yeah, sure. That's a that's actually a pretty good idea. Uh, dude, that was a fantastic conversation we had last time. I know you don't know what we're talking about internet risk crap, but um, me and Lopeng had, like, some really interesting debates going on when we added each other, which was very good stuff. It was really good stuff. Oh, uh, if you could hold on one second, King of Pole, I need to run an ad. Oh no, wait, oh, yeah. <laughs> no wait, no, I don't do that. Never mind. We're good no, to talk. No. I'm just, I'm just, yeah, never mind. You know, I don't, it, I don't run ads, so we're good to talk. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, did you, uh, did you catch my show earlier or no? Yeah, I, With, uh, I was able to watch. Yeah, oh, I was geez, able. Uh, I was able to watch a few minutes of it. Yeah. Jenny's a fucking troll. Uh, <laughs> wait, did you guys fall for this shit again? I thought Andrew taught everybody a lesson. Uh, no, the chat was going ridiculous. She thought it was hilarious. She likes, um, she likes to fuck with the chat as much as I do. So she was just like, run with it. And I was like, oh, God. Oh, so I see what you're saying. Okay. Um, so no, uh, I did, uh, I did that. I was doing the social stigmas because a lot of these guys want me to do more of the, uh, the hashtag not your shield stuff. Besides that, and then getting Liana K to want to debate something, which is very interesting this morning. But, uh, on that. Here, uh, IA, check out your Twitter. I just gave you that uh, that guy with the glasses picture I was talking about. All right. Uh, let me see here. And see how ridiculous that set looks. I could build that in an afternoon. I don't need ninety thousand dollars for that. Oh wait, yeah, no, no, shit. I was watching this with uh, another group of people. Okay, yeah, yeah. I've seen this. And then, um, did you see that video with Linkara and Doug Walker where Linkara was talking about was it white privilege? No, I didn't see that one. Oh my god, he has a conversation talking about SJW shit. With he actually is being legitimate about it. It's like two minutes long. If I can get a hold of uh, Andrew, who's the guy that does the Jesse Ventura and Alex, uh, Alex Jones voices, 
uh, <laughs> was a guy was a guy that linked me to that clip originally, or it was somebody he knew. But goddamn, he was actually really nice to let us use that uh, that modified opening. Wh whoever did that did a good job. Oh, oh, yeah. Um, that was a very good opening, and I get a lot of shit for not, you know, using that myself by the person that made it because they're, you know, you know people from that region of the world are real pissy when you don't use their shit. Did you, uh, internet, I did you uh did you read that new article by The Verge? Was it wasn't it The Verge that wrote it? The like stop supporting Gamergate. <laughs> um yeah no I, I got a chance to see that um that was the one that was calling everybody right wingers and then went back to change it to say. Uh, what was it? Uh, conservative extremists. It was the same. It, they were basically fucking about changing the language, but not really changing the intent. But yeah, I think that's the one you're talking about. Yeah, yeah they were pretty yeah. much throwing everything at the wall and just seeing what would stick. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I, uh, as I was reading it, laughing my ass off, uh, I, I was reading that, and then uh, Leia, Leia Alexander was tweeting me uh, fucking responses, which ironically I found out she watches my, my show. I didn't know that until she retweeted me some things, which I found was interesting. Because she would have never done that, in my opinion, if she didn't. Is Lay Sun Sun for you, dude? What's that? Lay Sun Dada for you? No, I, she... Okay, so I, on one of my shows, I called her out specifically, saying, and her and Anita specifically, and saying, if you really are as feminist as you say you are, then you would care more about what happens in third world countries to women than you will about first world problems. Uh, and, and the social stigmas of that, but you're not going to do that. And uh, I didn't upload the video at all for like five days. You guys were bitching at me, and I finally did it last night. And then in the morning, she tweeted me an article that was just written that she approved uh, that was calling Bill Meyer and uh, CBS Network uh, Islamophobics, bigot, racist, uh, sexist, or sexist pig men, male pigs, uh, for and just take one-sided bias, just taking like them saying, talking about Muslims, uh, they were they were ask, an, answering questions or asking questions of people about Muslim women in society over in like Syria and stuff like that. And uh, she was just like bashing them. And she tweeted that to me. And uh, I was just like, this is a biased uh, this is a biased article. You why would you why would you ever want to support this? And her response was like, oh, you you're not educated enough to understand that because your name is King of Pole. So I was like, all right, why don't you come and debate it? And she just fucking blocked me outright. Uh, you know, <laughs> I had I had a screenshot. I think I got like a hundred retweets on that thing. It was fucking ridiculous. Between that and the free, feminine uh, frequency troll. Yeah, I, it was pretty pretty transparent what happened there. I uh, think her was, dad was a glass maker. Her dad was a glass maker? I, I, no, I thought she just had a bottle in her hand. I don't know. People were, like, linking her bottles. Like, are you drinking this as we talk? I don't know, you know? Um, I'm gonna, hey, you were speaking about the Ralph retort. I'm going to be on his show on Saturday... I don't know what you're doing. If you want to come on there and discuss some things with them, are you, who are you talking to? I'm talking about you. If you were going to be free oh. on Saturday at 3 p.m., he's going to be doing a show with me and somebody else on his stream. And he wants uh, to I'm not 100 percent sure because I have to. Um, basically, I'm, I'm blowing out the irrigation system, getting it ready for winter, and I got some other shit to do around the house. But what what time exactly is it? Afternoon, uh, morning, three, evening? Three 3 p.m. Eastern, I think. Is what 3:30, 3, 3 p.m., something like that. I'm not entirely yeah. sure. He was asking me to ask you, and I just never got a chance around to do it. Yeah, I, I can do that. That's probably fine. And uh, and asking where the fucking video is as well. That was his other question. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting a lot of shit about where that fucking video is. Uh, it's gym time, which means I'm lazy as shit. Uh, but I'll, I'll more than likely have it up Saturday night, Sunday morning at the latest. I've I've gotten kind of the same the same amount of flack because like we haven't put out um, an indefensible video in a month now, and uh, basically like I I I have to admit. I don't do any research on it. Camera lady does it at all. I just voice it because she can't talk. Um, mm -hmm. And she said, "What happened was she got a girlfriend, and she's like, 'I'm I'm too busy, you know, being a lesbian to <laughs> be on the internet.' <laughs> that was pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it, like it was been like a month, and I was like, okay, listen, uh, people are getting angry at, and they're getting angry at me because I'm." the public face of the channel. It's like, they're getting angry at me because you're not making a video. So you have to eventually get back to do it. <laughs> oh, I see. Now now the uh, chat is convinced I'm a farmer. Yeah, I was going to say that. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, why not? I'll be a farmer. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> now, um, Lo Ping, uh, I haven't really, I don't think I've ever had you on the chat before, or, sh or Short Fat Otaku. Uh, do you have anything coming out lately? Like, what, what have you been doing lately, I guess? 
Uh, no, not really. I mean, everything that I've done is uh, pretty much done with. They finished uh, work on the musical not too long ago. Uh, the only thing I'm doing is actually doing one of the music videos for uh, Once Upon a September, uh, which okay. is just going to be out about last year's musical. Uh, not really much beyond that, but I am kind of proud. I, I mean, you know, not to toot my own horn or anything, but... But beep, I, beep. I got you. <laughs> uh, I got a couple of my uh, songs that uh, turned out to be better than I thought it would be. Uh, I kind of, like, my only regret is I didn't get to any do any of the mixing myself this year, but it was pretty okay. You know, couldn't couldn't ask for a worse thing to happen. No, no. Uh, the, I mean, the musical stuff was great, so, I mean, that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's always fun to see, like, people take, like, frustration and, you know, angst and turn it into something, like, constructive, like, you know, a musical or, you know, videos. I'm always, like, a real big fan of seeing people, you know, take a negative and make something positive out of it. That's always, always smiled upon by me. I, like, I really dig that. Like, I, like, uh, where's, uh... Oh crap! I forgot his name. He's this fella who does the people of Gamergate, like these amazing caricatures. And oh, you're talking about the guy who does the um, the drawings. Yeah, and and they're just like so like I'm a sucker for the drawings, the, the original content that comes out of this. And this guy's work is just it like he it's, needs to um, sit he needs to sit on a pier somewhere and just rake in money. His uh, his handle is uh, Toshi T N E, uh, but the name up there is Alejandro Aragadona. I think mm-hmm. I'm probably butchering the name, but yeah, those fucking pictures are amazing. Oh God, that picture he did of Base Mom, he, it's just, it's glorious. Like it's 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 nuanced, and at the same time, it's really just outlandish. And I just, you couldn't you couldn't ask for a better thing to happen. No, I, I think so far my favorites are um, the one that he did of Ben Kuchera was fucking amazing. <laughs> like Phil Fish was really good, but I think my favorite is the bobblehead guy, uh, the not disrespectful <laughs> to you guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I remember that guy. That was and, and like this, this, like this guy legitimately draws fucking amazing. I I was blown away when I was looking at these. Like holy fucking shit, are they good? Did you uh, did you see the conversation I had when me and Sargon interviewed Eric Kane? Uh, at all about uh, no. his uh, recent article? I, I had uh, business uh, to do out of town or out of state, really, uh, for a couple of days. So I was I was gone. I was off the grid for about two uh, days. Ah, that's why everybody was asking where you were. Okay. Um, yeah, we did a we did an interview on Eric Kane's new article. Uh, and he came on and he was just kind of throwing things around there, and um, he was trying to stay as smart as possible. I, I, if you ever get a chance, go listen to him. He had a couple good things he had to say, and a couple things me me and Sargon disagreed with, and we had talked to him about uh, mm-hmm. openly. Uh, I think he's looking to get you and, and a couple other people, including myself, on his next show that he does. Um, well, listen, I mean, if you get a chance, because, um, like, everybody knows what I'm going to say. There's, there's no point in bringing me on. I want him to get Greg Lisby. He need, no, I'm not kidding. He needs to get Greg Lisby on his show because um, that, that guy has already done an interview. His name's already out there, and he teaches law and uh, journalism ethics. That would I, I really think if you had somebody with that kind of authority who teaches this subject. Wait, is he the one that did the uh, interview with uh, he's, yeah, Bunny he's Rabbit the one, or whatever his name is? He's yeah, I was the uh, one that was asked the questions and he was like, no. Uh, it, I, you know, ironically, we kind of brought him up a little bit. I didn't say his name. Mm-hmm. I brought him up a little bit and uh, I brought it up in the in the face. I was asking Eric Kane, I said, what's the difference between journalists and bloggers and do you see the difference and does it matter? And he said it shouldn't matter if they're journalists or bloggers if their writing is appropriate. And I, me and Sargon didn't agree with that, but uh, he was explaining it as a whole collective. Because I was like, well, you, you know, he's like, if you're if you're writing stuff online and you're technically a blogger, no matter if you're a journalist or not, and that you don't need a degree to be a journalist, was what he was kind of going for. Though I don't, he was, I, I don't want to put words in his mouth because I know he probably, uh, we'll probably talk with him later on it more. But I'll definitely let him know. Get it. No, no, I mean, feel free to put words in his mouth. When I put that video up talking about um, Shadows of Mordor, I put a quote from Eric Kane in there that fully endorses buying the game. Eric Kane thinks that game is the game of the year, so put all the words in his mouth you want to. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, when we, I, when I, like, we, that's what we came on to discuss, because we discussed that Mordor article in general. That was what we were going to talk about first, and we steered off into his interviews with people, because uh, he was talking about how that should be focus of Gamergate, and uh, and that's what we should really be mad at. But as me and Sargon to explain to him, I was like, look, this isn't the first time they've done this with the PS3s, and the what is it? The Nexus Sevens that Ubisoft gave to everybody and stuff. It was like it's they. It's like the way they look at it is they they look at it like uh, it's like WB, like Hollywood looks at it. They're buying ads. They look at it from old television to new television. Uh, though he was dismissive of that kind of stuff. He 
uh, and was explaining that he uh, he doesn't have time to look up into the logistics of things. Wait, 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 wait. Are, are, he's still giving that fucking excuse. I'm, I'm, an ex I'm an, okay, forbade because I do remember him saying he doesn't have time for these things, and he did touch up on that because people were bitching at him in chat, and so me and Sargon call, uh, called him on it, uh, because he... Uh, he wants to write about video games. He doesn't want to write about video game social problems. He wants to write about video games. So well, then, well, no, no, no. Then what is Eric Kane even talking about Gamergate for? If you just want to review video games, go fucking review them. He says it's relevant. It, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm, like I said, he says it's relevant because that was the next question, ironically enough. He says it's relevant, but it is not what should be talked about. It should be about video games, and he wants to make it about video games. And... Uh, and that he doesn't have the time to look into everything because we were going through the details of Gamergate, and he literally had no idea. All the stuff we were telling him, like we were, we went from one spectrum to another, and he didn't have really a clue or, or anything he wanted to say into, or he felt that he couldn't say anything to it because of uh, because then he would be taking a side or. Uh, oh, you, you know, you know, no. I, I, now I'm getting pissed off. Was this after his stream that you did your stream with him? Yeah, yeah, I did my stream with him. And he still, no, it, 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 it was, he still said this. He still no, was, fucking said this shit. Well, time. I mean, to be to be fair, the the entire thing is a big, involved, convoluted mess. I mean, the only reason we're as involved in it as we are is because we follow. This is pretty much the only thing we follow right now, you know, in terms of the industry. So we're able to dedicate time and energy to it. It was, it was the Daily News with socks, and the Nexon guy had to go back to work. He didn't have time because he's in Luxembourg. He didn't have time. That's fine. Uh, and so Eric Kane was tweeting me as he was listening to my show, uh, saying, "Hey, I'll come on." And I'll, see, cause I, I also talked to Total Biscuit too on Robin's stream, uh, when right after the stream. And he's like, "I'll come on, and we'll talk this." And Socks had to go, so Sargon wanted to come on, and we were going to talk to him about the uh, because he didn't believe that the he wanted he didn't believe that it was that Gamergate was correct on focusing uh, on, that was correct on focusing on other things besides the Game Journal pros list. And that if you remove a couple game journal pro people, that it will fix things. But uh, that if you wait, wait, I, I just want to make sure I'm clear. Total Biscuit said that, or Eric? Kane no, no, Eric Kane. Total Biscuit was on Robin stream. It's, that's different. Okay. So my Eric Kane on my stream because he he was talking about how that uh, um, that he believed that we should focus on the game journal pros list, and that me and Sargon and everybody else is wrong by for looking at academia and blaming. Uh, the extreme SJWs or the uh, the third wave feminists, if you are, they like like Anita Sarkeesian and stuff like that. Uh, for that, they think that Zoe is a catalyst, but uh, but she she and them are irrelevant. Which I would say yes, so yes and no. Uh, no, no, but, no. Wait. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, now, now I'm I'm legitimately angry. So, okay, I, I just want to make sure I fucking understand Eric Kane here. This is the guy that said, "There's nothing here. There's no." Uh, it, when this very when this all began, Eric Kane said, "Who fucking cares?" We oh who the fuck's talking? I am not. Someone's bleeding. Yo, who's bleeding? Uh, I'm gonna guess it's Low Ping, probably talking to mom and dad or something. What uh, no, I mute my mic when I'm not talking <laughs> because I'm not a rude person. Uh, oh, it's oh fuck! Short, 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 short fat attack. fucking shots fired? Anyway, um, Jesus Christ! Somebody's bleeding. Short fat attack. Are you bleeding right now? Yeah, it's short fat attack. Uh, Sorry. But, well, hold, hold on. Before you jump into it, I, I will explain this much. You know, we did try to correct some of those things, and like I said, we both agreed. It's like we came with disagreements, and we didn't agree things. But the things he, we, we were trying to press, like we were talking about, like listen, he comes from academia. You have this sitting here. You have the silver string media stuff, and he was like, well, that's not important. We need to focus on the game journal pros list. These people we know about. That stuff is not. That stuff is shouldn't be focused on. He's like, that's spreading out. You know. And, uh, yeah, but, uh, but who is Eric Kane to say that? Eric Kane <laughs> wouldn't even have the Game Journal's pro list if we hadn't have fucking dug it up. At the very beginning of this, he said there's nothing here. Who cares about Zoe Quinn? Who cares about Nathan Grayson? Games Journal Pro came out because we kept pushing. So now he's saying don't look at DIGRA and don't look at all these other connections. Don't yeah, look at the IDGA so, and all the other shit. Exactly, because we brought up the, we didn't we didn't so we sort of touched on the DIGRA stuff. So me and Sargon weren't trying to say DIGRA. We were just like, listen, you know, these people affect what happens in the gaming industry as this. We they're openly saying it. I even brought up Adrena Shaw, and I was like, they're openly saying these things. And he was like, well, that you know, he's like that. He's like, I can't really. He, he couldn't really talk on that because it is speculation or something like that. I can't remember well, what he was talking I mean, about. To play devil's advocate. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, he has a point here. I mean, maybe he's seeing that perhaps the movement might get you know mired and bogged down by these issues that he probably thinks are tangential. Whereas if we if hold on if we focus on maybe just reforming the journalist aspect of it, you know, reforming this platform and making it more transparent would probably 
cut that kind of narrative at the knees. Wouldn't right, you think? But, I, but I mean, I, I think I see, I, I'd say, a couple issues here. When when people first started this whole uh, Gamergate or conspiracy, whatever the fuck you want to call it, but after Aaron Grange posted his blog post and people started looking into this, one of the core reasons that there is such corruption and collusion going on in games journalism is directly tied to SJW mentalities. These people wouldn't behave like this if they didn't adopt those ideologies. So where are the ideologies coming from? Who is feeding that to them? You have to look at the organizations that are related to it. If you look at the Gamers Are Dead articles that uh, all came out in a 24-hour period, they were all inspired by a blog post. Go look at who that guy is, who he's connected to, what academic circles he's in. I'm not saying Digger will end up giving you anything, but it definitely isn't fruitless to go right. look at it. Exactly, and that's what me and Sargon were trying to tell him, and uh, his responses were like, well, I don't really want to touch on that subject. It's skeptical. Uh, you know, and he was just like, this is what we do know. And he's like, thinking that there's a pseudo-political thing behind it, you know, he was kind of pointing to conspiracy theory kind of oh, stuff. Oh, no, I'll tell you what he's pissed off about, and, and this goes back to the Milo thing. He wrote about this. He actually said this in one of his articles. He doesn't want this to become politicized, but he, you know, what? Okay, so what are we supposed to do? What would Eric Kane have us do? If Milo hadn't have written about any of this, if Breitbart hadn't gone to bat for anybody, if Adam Baldwin hadn't have started that fucking hashtag, we would be where? Dead in the water. Yeah, exactly. Eric, Kane, Eric Kane wasn't coming to rescue us. He told us to fuck off. So what, what do you mean you don't want it to become politicized? You don't want people to come into bat? The only one I see coming to bat for us are the fucking right-wingers. Now, you may not like them. And you may think they want to politicize it, but fuck, they're doing something, Eric. Where are you? Exactly, and that's what I explained to him. I said we, we went off into a little bit because I was like, listen, you know, academia comes into it. You got Common Core and stuff like that. I was like, you can't deny that these people do that. And then we brought up the XOXO Fest stuff, and he was like, well, I haven't seen that yet. Then we brought up the the, the what was it the the director of EA making that statement about how the community. Chris got, Mancini. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, he was like, oh, I haven't read that yet, and I got him the link in there. No, uh, no, no. See, this is bullshit to begin with. Why is Eric Kane even involved in this then? Why is he doing streams with Total Biscuit and other people talking about Gamergate if he's not going to put the fucking effort in to look into this shit? I, you know that, that was my no. That was my main problem with him to begin with. I like Eric Kane. I like his you know his writing style. I don't think he's a bad person. But part of being a fucking reporter, aside from being unbiased and neutral, is actually looking into what's going on. You can't come up to the table uninformed. That's crap. Right. Well, I mean, in terms of the stream he did with Total Biscuit and them, I don't think he acted as anything beyond more than just a moderator. Oh, and no, he was. In that stream, he was perfect. He, he mm -hmm. was a moderator, completely fair. He gave Greg Tito and Total Biscuit. And what was the, uh, the woman's name? I feel bad. I don't know her name off the top of my head. A anybody? Uh, who, I remember who her candle was like something Spooky Shoe or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I, I'm sorry, well, but I mean... like a Halloween name. <laughs> no, no, she was... Uh, the Was it the editor-in-chief or one of the writers of the head editors at Gamers Front? Or Games mm -hmm. Front? But, uh, you know, and don't get me wrong. On that stream, that's fine. Eric was great. He was a moderator. He was completely fair. He gave Tito a chance to speak. He gave everybody else a chance to speak. He didn't... He wasn't biased one way or the other. He did a great job as a moderator. But if he wants to write about Gamergate, if he wants to get involved and start, you know, pontificating on it, he at least needs to put in the effort to actually look in the background. This was the fucking problem with him from the start, is he said, I don't see what's going on. And it comes off feeling a little bit shady when he's focusing on Games Journals Pro. And why is he focusing on that? Because Ben Kuchera was a big player in that, and he was shitting on Greg Tito, even though Tito says he wasn't. Well, the reason that Eric Kane's interested, or the reason that it looks like he's interested, is because he had issues with uh, Ben Kuchera shitting on him. So we is that, about that. We right, about that. right. So Eric, are you interested in this whole issue of Gamersgate just because you're upset with fucking Ben Kuchera, or do you actually care? Because if you actually care, you need to start fucking looking into this shit. Uh, I, I, you know, and that's that's kind of what we brought into as best as we could. It, it, you know, I, when I talked to him, he, he seemed like a humble guy, but it was like different things we brought up. You know, he brought up like like the whole both sides are attacking each other, and that's why he's neutral. And then I use the example of uh, the guy, the editor in chief of uh, GameSpot, linking that one. What was it that trans woman that tried to kill herself or wrote a suicide note? I don't know, fucking know. It's irrelevant, anyways. But I was like, look, you know, they, this had nothing to do with it, but they will throw that against us. I brought up the ISIS stuff, and I was like, now you tell me how that links to, you know. That, that links to us, and he was like, well, you know, it's on both sides. And I was like, okay. And he's like, I don't want to take it. Yeah, but, but when, uh, uh, maybe I'm just... Oh, yeah. No, yeah, no, I mean, the, maybe... Guy in your, chat, your chat's perfect. There's a guy in here that goes to my thing regularly. His name's Atari, and he was like, everybody's making fun of him because he said the entire time he was deflecting everything that was criticized towards him. They right, like, but, like, but I mean, maybe, maybe I'm being... 
maybe I'm being a mean drunk here. I don't know. I, I am. You're pretty really good. not. You're not in, in every street because honestly, I'm drunk. Honest, my, chat, my chat was pretty good. Pretty good. My chat was more upset with him, <laughs> upset with him than anything else. Like I didn't realize how much he was deflecting as me and Sargon were talking. And so I looked at my chat and they were going insane, saying like counting the amount of times he deflected shit. It was like at 32 times. I don't even know all the questions we asked. I mean, is it, so, is it so much to ask for just to have one fucking journalist, just one fucking journalist come to the plate and look at the background, read up on all of it before they start fucking giving opinions? He's saying both sides are doing it. Well, fuck, Eric, if you don't know about Eric, uh, about Chris Mancini's post, if you don't know about the ISIS comments, if you don't know about all the shit that's going on left and right, how do you know? Like, why would I take your opinion on anything to be relevant or on point if you're not even fucking familiar with the background information? But, um, I mean, yes, yes, no. I, like I said, I like the guy who talked to him, and we had a lot of good discussion. Uh, it was just uh, when we were talking about all this stuff in England. Well, yeah, but, but Paul, I mean, I like a lot of people too, but that doesn't make him right. Like, Eric may be the nicest guy on earth, but if he's doing a shit job, he's doing a shit I, job. If you want my opinion, if you want my honest opinion about yeah. it. Like, like I told him, I said, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna do streams on Gamergate, I said these are the people you're gonna want to bring on, and the reason why is because you're gonna have to get more informed. You know, as I was linking him articles, we were t I told you know you gotta get more informed. If you're gonna give a shit about this, you're gonna write about it, you're gonna stream about it. You have to be more informed if you're gonna come to the table. I don't want to slap his shit so much because I do like his writings and stuff like that, and I well, do like some of the points he says. But at the same time, I do not. If you're gonna come to the table and you don't understand shit, and I have to give you things that are very simply out there, and you are a journalist, that you should. There's something going on. If I'm googling shit better than you are, uh, in my opinion, it's your job to google shit. Could it be it. maybe he might be? I mean, uh, this is just 100% speculation. Go ahead. But yeah. Could it be maybe because he? Is on the fence on the information. I would not, think so. not not stand not standing by the fence. You know when it's clear which side he's on and right. just leaning on it and saying he's on the fence, but actually on the fence. Absolutely. He's aware of the information right. and maybe he's just you know I, pulling I, a Columbo on you. To be honest with you, after the discussion me and Sargon had, I think that's what it was. He stayed on the fence on a lot of things. I don't think he wants to really stay neutral, but he is pro Gamergate in the sense. I think I, he's I, like maybe pulling a Socratic type of thing on you. This, if you listen to the stream, Eric, they, I mean, look at when we brought up the whole Total Biscuit thing. Look at what happened to Total Biscuit. If you are going to get involved, you must understand that these things will happen the same way it happened to Total Biscuit to the point where he had to either take one side or another. So as you slowly are getting involved with your streams and writing more articles, whether you say that I don't really want to research too much into it and focus on video games, you must understand, Eric, that you have got to you've got to take a side eventually down the road. It's going to happen. I know you don't like the the his and her side. We discussed that on my stream, but I, you've got to understand that's probably what's going to happen down the road. That's a prime example of what happened to Total Biscuit and anybody else who puts their stakes in this. It's you know it's your well, money for the world. Yeah, and I mean, listen, I. I look at it a little differently. Uh, I don't even care if he takes a side. All I want him to do is, before he starts speculating and holding streams and writing articles, is to fucking research it. Eric, if you want to remain unbiased, that's totally fine with me. But when you're when you're basically saying, I don't know, I haven't read this, I don't know, I don't know, I'm not familiar with that, that just tells me that you're fucking disinterested still. Like, I can't stand that. That's what pissed me off in the first place. I'm amazed that he's still doing that. Well, he's in your he's in your chat. We're talking right now with your chat. I don't know. Well, Eric, Eric, if you're in the chat, let me bring you in. I am good and drunk at this point, so I'm probably going to be a <laughs> fucking asshole. Well, well, it, I mean, I do you mind if I if I talk about it? I haven't really. Oh no, yeah, go ahead, man. I, I don't I mean, mean to. Like, like I said, I, I ramble when I'm drunk, so go ahead and yeah. come in. And like like a, uh, I don't know, about five minutes ago, I had to go to the door, so I missed a bit, and I heard you kind of talking to me in my in my wireless headphones, but I didn't really get the whole story. Um, just just first like. Well, first off, the, the the woman we were talking about was uh, Janelle Bonanno, and she's the editor in chief of Gamefront.com. Just oh, thank just, thank you. Say that say that one more time so people get it, because she was good on the stream. I just yeah, I she was. Uh, Janelle Bonanno. Do you have her Twitter handle? Does anybody know what her Twitter handle is? Yeah, it's a uh, so sleepy with its S zero O and S L E E P I E. Wow, I wasn't even close. <laughs> No, no, I, and I liked her on the stream. I just, I, like I said, I feel really, really bad that I didn't know her name. So I'm glad that you. Yeah, I just took a quick, uh, quick look up of it. Um, <laughs> one of the topics, uh, maybe, geez, what is it? Four topics back now was just uh, the idea that these can can be can, can be considered side issues. I don't think there's any side issues in in Gamergate at all. Like when. When I finally had to take down the the indefensible videos, um, due to all the reasons, 
Mm-hmm. Uh, one one of the thi- like people started calling us shills, and I mean that's fine, that's that's four chan for you. But uh, one of their main arguments was that the IGF was a side issue, and that our our form of shilling was getting people away from the journalism. And I don't think that's true. I think it's all related. You know, I think it's. I mean, like, like since since that game general pros list came out, Brandon Boye is on that list. You know, so it it is related. It's not a side issue. Well, it's no, I'm not yeah, really that, that is very in terms of the IGF. I'm talking about more like the social justice aspect of it. I mean, that IGF thing is totally symptomatic of you know more far-reaching, uh, more possibly insidious nature of the corruption. But I'm talking more along the lines of you know, I, I would say thing and Digra. Well, yeah, I, I would say the uh, the SJW ideology directly influences these people's mentalities, which directly plays into their ability to be so corrupt. Mm-hmm. When you when you're looking at the, even if you take out the academic aspect of it, remove Digger from the table, right? When you're looking at people or key players like let's say Lay Alexander, go look what she said and go look where that kind of ideology lines up with, and then look at the people she's influenced. It's like Cucheros and the others who then go and bully people. And conversations on different, uh, you know, Game Journal Pro List or on Twitter. I mean, fuck, Kuchera, I don't know how familiar the chat with is, uh, with this is, but Kuchera tried to fucking destroy Eric Kane. Like he, and this isn't like a joke. He wasn't being playful about this. He tried to fucking ruin Eric Kane's career. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And and uh, to give you an idea of like the character of Ben Kuchera, and I have screen caps of this, so he can't weasel out of it. He went on to Giant Bomb onto their forums. And he started a thread about how shit Eric Kane was. Or he jumped into a thread talking about this. And he got his ass kicked. Giant Bomb wasn't having fucking any of it. He actually messaged oh, yeah. a, he, he messaged a mod and had the no, mod... I didn't see this. Shit. Yeah, he had the mod shut down. Shut down the thread, yeah. No, he didn't just get it shut down, though. You, you're being too nice in his cred. At, at the same time, he got little fucking rewards for being cute and cuddly with the fucking mods. I, you know... I, when you talk about Ben Kuchera, he's a uh, ooh, I, I, he needs to be fucking gone. He's one of the people I can't stand. At, at, like Rebecca Watson, that's another one. But oh wait, uh, one one other quick thing, and then I'll let you guys go on. Uh, for the chat saying bring Eric on, uh, he had said on Twitter he's got a game starting up here that he's got a DM for. So that that's fine. We'll have him on another time. We'll talk right. about him another time because I don't want to. I want to yeah. give him a chance to talk. But uh, anyway, yeah. go ahead. Go ahead. Well, before I do that, because I know Eric just posted something, I just want to say, Eric, I, I understand you want to be a moderate. But it, you've got to do the research, dude. It's the same thing that me and Sargon were telling you. If we're going to talk to you about stuff like that, and you're going to dismiss academia stuff being linked to this, you're going to say, well, just because uh, Nita Sarkeesian goes to XOXO Fest and is talking about you know, all crazy shit and then and talking about video games being changed in a culture war, that doesn't relate to Gamergate. Uh, just do your homework, man. I get it. You want to be a moderator. Be a moderator, but be educated on what you're moderating. Oh, um, uh, Paul, would Ralph retort, would he let him in the chat? Because uh, Kane is saying tomorrow. Uh, could we bring Eric yeah, Kane yeah. on? Yeah, of course. Ralph, if you're down for it, I love your shit. I, I talk to Ralph all the time. Uh, like I said, if you, Ralph, you want to come on. I, like, I have no problems with Eric. I love the guy to death. And I fuck Ben. Just, I don't care. Just like Adam <laughs> Sussman. We're back to watch him. I can't stand any of those people. Well, and that, that's, that's what I want Eric to take away from this. Listen, man, I like your writing. And uh, really, I, I don't know if Eric understands the kind of influence he wields, but when you when like if you went on to V like on 4chan, Eric, you're you're really one of the only people out there, one of the only journalists people actually fucking respect. Like so it when just, Eric says something, they really take things to heart. No, I like, mean, and it gets them mad yeah, too. Yeah, legitimately, people really respect you, Eric. So it just it pisses us off when it seems like you're you're just not doing the research. I don't want you right. to think I'm attacking your character or saying you're a bad guy or a bad writer. I fucking respect you. That's why it upsets me. So we'll bring you on to the the stream tomorrow and talk about it then. Yeah, exactly. We do respect you, Eric. It has nothing to do with that. And in just touching on what you said, I know on my stream, Eric, that you did say that you don't feel that you influence people a lot, that there's more important people out there. And touching up on IA says, I think that you should look at it, and you have a lot of people who look at your writing as a, for at least in gaming, uh, as a catalyst to the shit that is out there. And we've looked at it for a long time. That's why we took you back when Ben Kuchera threw his little fucking hissy fit like a five-year-old. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, well, yeah, that's the, that's the thing. I don't know if... No, like, but when, when Ben Kuchera threw his shit fit, the reason that got shut down so fucking hard and so fucking quick is because people respected you, and they knew it was absolute bullshit. 
And like I'm saying, there, there's a lot of shit I want to talk about, but I'm, I'm not going to go on about it more. If you can make it tomorrow, dude, we'll, we'll talk, and Ralph can moderate, or we can have somebody else come on and moderate. But yeah, yeah. I, I'd like to talk to you in person, because there, we gotta get, we, there's some shit we have to talk about. <laughs> but just come tomorrow, man. I'm sure I'll get it. He said tomorrow. Just three, it's 3 p.m. Eastern time, so if you have a time to blow your house down or whatever you're doing, uh, and then come on. I'm sure it'll be on the Ralph's, Ralph's thing. So. And I well, won't be a, a drunk slob that's rambling on. Okay. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, there was um, couple, there was like a, actually a bunch. Of, they, they've they've long since scrolled away, but there was a bunch of comments I actually wanted to just to just very quickly talk about again. Um, some people asked what happened with the indefensible videos. Um, basically, because we're Canadian and uh, Phil Fish and Polytron are Canadian, we got a cease and desist, um, which we usually laugh yeah. off because we do anime reviews and like we get those all the time. We don't give a shit. Um, but then like actual. Lawyers uh, who are who are pro GamerGate who just did it for free came up to us and said, "Listen, there's actually a legitimate way for them to go after you with a lawsuit under Canadian law, and you have to change your videos in this manner and put them back up." And that's what we're doing. Um, actually, I should probably be uh, recording a video, but I'm I'm here instead. So, <laughs> so so people are asking, like, you know, the IGF thing wasn't uh, a side issue for for me. That's what got me into it and things like that. Well. Uh, they'll be back. Like we, we're not hiding from lawyers forever. We just want to do it right because I don't want to go to jail for the internet. <laughs> well, well, okay. So chat, your chat's going insane talking about talk about this. So Rebecca Watson thought it was a good idea to attack a Gamergate person and dox them about and mention their doctor and have them having an STD uh, and you their full name. Uh, and they're linking the Kotaku and Action article to this. Are you fucking kidding me, Rebecca Watson? Why? I God, I can't stand that woman. Well, here's the funny thing about doxing. Um, Camera Lady got doxed. They got her old address, where currently three people are living that she absolutely hates. So she's like, "Yeah, uh, go ahead. You can you can harass them all you want." <laughs> but uh, what I don't understand, okay, this is the same woman that I reached out to to get on a discussion regarding her video, and I was going to reach out to Thunderfoot and have them all come in there. I was going to moderate and get regarding their video on the Gamergate stuff that she fucking put out there, uh, and I did it within eight hours, and she decided to, to slander me and call me a misogynist and stuff like that because of my views on Gamergate, not because of who I was, and then blocked me, then unblocked me to retweet me shit of people talking shit about me. Uh, and then block me again, and then laugh about it later. Uh, oh, all right. Um, okay, hold on. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna bring. <clears throat> I'm gonna bring Eric Cannon. Oh yeah. Is that you coming? Uh, it looks like he can make it. Uh, just to oh, be wow. fair here, so I don't talk over him like a drunken idiot. Uh, Low Ping, you seem to be the most neutral out of us all. Will you moderate? Ah, uh, sure. Well, here I can. Before... I can DM your little IRL. Fight him, sus. Watch on. <laughs> Before like thing, things get rolling with Eric, because I mean I, I actually haven't uh, looked into Eric that much. I, I wanted to really cover one uh, one topic, if you don't mind. What what topic is that? Oh, j just I mean I've I've heard a lot about how um and I'll be really quick about this. I've heard a lot about how like a gamer gets supposedly a, a conservative movement, and I, I know uh, King of Pole, and I know IA that you're both. Uh, you seem to be. Uh, I don't know how conservative you are, but you seem They're to be. They're in love with Marodes. They're <laughs> carrying, obviously. But like, I, I, I have no problem admitting that I'm actually very liberal, and yet I'm still pro Gamergate. I know there are a lot of pro Gamergate people that are very liberal. Um, Camera Lady is not only a feminist, but she has a master's degree in women's studies. <laughs> so, like, it's. To say that this is an, an anti-feminist thing or a misogynist thing, I think, is, is just ridiculous, you know? Well, yeah, I mean, they already did the political spectrum thing, what collaborated, uh, collated, what, like, 300 different quizzes that people in Gamergate did, and we're all, like, moderately liberal to leftists, uh, for the most part, and except for, like, one or two really right-wing people that people kind of point and laugh at, but that's... <laughs> I mean, it's if it's majority. It's it's if what it, what this whole thing is is a bunch of extreme leftists pissing off a bunch of moderate leftists and calling them right wingers. I mean, that's basically what it is, which is silly. It's a silly thing by silly people. D did I disappear? No, nah, I don't know.
I think. I think he's, he's away. I think I just <laughs> blew his mind or something. I think, I think he's. I think he's refilling his drinks. <laughs> he went back to his watering hole. <laughs> Oh, I, I guess I guess I mean not to just monopolize the this the stream, but no, I mean dude, get 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 your fill. Okay. Oh, he's gone. Shit. What happened? Post some new sinks. He left his own thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I mean, some some people have have asked why I voiced the indefensible uh, indefensible videos and she didn't. Um, I mean, she's got like ten various disabilities. One of them means that she can't talk. She has autism. She has for Sopaganosia, for those of you who know what that is. Like, it just... <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, is it still going? Yeah, it's still going. Yeah, oh, yeah, fuck. It's still my, going. My, my computer just... My, yeah, my computer just hitched up on me. I thought I fucking killed the stream. Uh, yeah, epic. <laughs> no, you, you've, been, uh, you've been here. Just everybody's waiting for you to come back and get You've been candy. here in spirit, spirit Mr. Uh, yeah, Eric, yeah. I, know you, I know you're listening right now. I know you're about to come in here. Uh, no, I, I know that, I, like I said, I said don't quote me. I couldn't remember exactly how you said it, but yes, I, I know you said uh, that it... Uh, hold on, where is it? All right, I'm gonna, really I'm gonna send him an invite right now. Sorry uh, about that, Eric. No, go ahead. Yeah, but I know you said you, I can't really offer insight. That's what I was talking about by saying when I was giving you stuff, you couldn't any offer any insight. We, you were still on the fence about things, and that you weren't really, you really didn't know some of the stuff that we were talking about, which would made it very awkward. That's what I was trying to say. I, I that's why I said don't quote me because I couldn't remember off the top of my head. I, I'm not literally looking at the video and listening to everything you said again. Well, well, yeah. I, I basically what you missed was we were kind of just discussing how stupid it is that gamer gets labeled a uh, a conservative movement. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it's not. If you if you look at the pol or political compass thing that was posted, uh, you'll see the majority of people were left leaning libertarians. I, I think, honest to God, the only people you'll see that are more conservative than that are myself, Milo, and maybe Adam. And even I'm a fucking constitutionalist, and that you know I'm not a conservative. By any fucking stretch of the imagination, if you ask me about any social issue that you know conservatives would be talking about, you'd find that I'm fucking vastly different than them. Yeah, and I mean, like, I'm I'm a pretty uh, bland, very normal type of liberal. Like, I I do kind of like Canada's healthcare and the high taxation and just so some of the benefits we get from that, which I know puts me completely against you, but I'm still What's pro gamer gate, right? Oh, uh, hold on one sec, Eric, you there? I am. Hey, oh, but is, is everybody coming in? Can you hear everybody? Yeah, yeah, I can hear y'all. All right. Uh, so I'm, I'm probably getting... I'm probably behind on the on the stream. I I came into it a few minutes late, and I, so I probably fine. haven't heard the last few minutes of whatever everyone hey. has been saying. So, uh, but hey, hey, thanks for having me on. No, hey, no, hey, 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 I want you to have the opportunity to speak. I, I don't want to feel like it's us uh, flinging shit and then you can't respond, so by all means. <laughs> uh, what, what, like a bunch of shit slingers? A, a bunch of slitch or shit slingers, yep, that would be the appropriate terminology. But, I mean, if you have anything to say in response or if we took you out of uh, context or if it wasn't verbatim, I mean, go ahead and start us off here and we'll let you have a go. Uh, well, I mean, I don't, I don't remember exactly what I said on the stream um, yeah, the other day. I, yeah, I was just I just responded to you, Eric. I was just talking about that. I was like, I, I know I don't remember either verbatim. I know there was something around those words, but don't quote me on it. That's what I was just saying from what I understood. So I, I was think, talking about that. I think there's a number of... I, I think that everyone has to have their own approach to this. I think that certain people are in a position to, to do one thing, in a, and, and other people are in a position to do another, and I think that where I come in, I don't, I don't think it's, I don't think it's, first of all, I don't think it's my job to take a side, and I think that would be detrimental to, to what I am trying to do. And I agree with I that. The side. I think that would be a very, very bad idea. Um, I think that there are a number of issues that are, are that, that have been discussed in terms of specific instances of potential corruption, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I have looked into those, and I think that again, from where I stand and from the platform I have, that those are not, at this point in any case, what I need to be talking about or or discussing. That's it. I, I, I'm not saying that I'm completely uninformed or that I don't have an opinion on all of this, but I think it's important that I, that, that what I do and how I approach all of this with Gamergate, etc., it has to be done carefully. Well, Eric, if I, if I were to give you a, just one specific example, not even talking about Grayson or Zoe, but just another reporter, uh, if you were to look at the situation with, let's say, on Kotaku with Patricia Hernandez, well, she had a relationship, a landlord... Um, renter relationship, so there's a financial tie. She also had a, uh, a potentially romantic relationship.
relationship, or at least a close friendship, with people like Christina Love, and I, I'm, I'm blanking on the other person's name, so maybe the chat knows it, but it was another indie dev. She wrote major pieces, and we're not even talking like on the scale of Grayson, where it was just positive press. Are you talking about uh, anthropy? Yes, thank you, Anna Anthropy, mm -hmm. where she wrote reviews for the games and said, you need to buy this game and linked to the store page without informing the reader that she had a pre-existing relationship. So when we hear like an interview with like a Greg Lisby who teaches about law and journalism ethics, who says that that is clear cut, there's no middle ground on that, that is unethical in any way you look at it, I guess uh, what I'm curious about in, in that specific example is, uh, you know, from your perspective as a reporter on Forbes, right? How do you look at that? What would you say about that very specific example where there is direct evidence through conversations on social media, and this is self-admitted from Patricia herself, and it's admitted through the updates that Stephen Tatilla made her put into the articles? Do you think that's unethical behavior? Do you think she should have been reprimanded or potentially fired for it? I think it's, I think it's definitely unethical behavior, and I think... I don't know what's gone on behind the scenes at Kotaku, uh, but yeah, I mean, I don't think there's any question in that in that instance. I, I think that the Grayson Zoe Quinn uh, association is much fuzzier, but I do think that yeah, if you if you're living with if you're good friends with or if you're in a romantic relationship with a subject that you're covering, I think that's that's obviously if that's not disclosed, that that is is certainly a, an ethical. Issue. I, I I don't know what I honestly I can't say what what is the the result of that? Do you do you do you fire somebody? Do you reprimand them? What do you do? I I don't know that, but I certainly I certainly agree that that's that's an ethical breach. Well, and I can only talk from the experience of what other uh, I guess fourth estate or mainstream media would do. Uh, when you're looking at the situation that happened, if you remember back to Keith Olbermann or uh, you know other examples in mainstream media where they had a relationship or they had some kind of financial tie to a political pundit or uh, you know a commentator that had come onto the show or some political spokesman people got fired over that uh, they were let go for that uh, even you know Milo had mentioned in the Breitbart articles when he was talking about Games Journal Pro somebody was let go over that similar situation happening on uh, you know um, the individual that went on to work at Vox Media and then the other individual and again I'm sorry I'm a little drunk so you have to forgive me uh, but, you know, when we're looking at, like, cases like Patricia Hernandez, I think that's, again, cut and dry. I, I guess I would ask you, from your perspective, again, as a reporter, I don't know how familiar you are with how editors-in-chief work or, you know, kind of how it works on Forbes, but if something like that happened on Forbes, let's say, the uh, reporting on an industry was fun to have relationships, uh, either financial, sexual, or even really just close friendships with or was living with, somebody they were reporting on, uh, they were giving basically positive press to them and giving them a, you know, an advantage to financially benefit from that relationship and never disclose it, would Forbes, in your opinion, or at least from what you know of them, would they basically fire that person? What would happen on that uh, particular website? You know, I'm not sure. I can't speak for Forbes. Um, I think that it would depend on the situation, the specific details. The uh, I think it would probably be very, very much based on, on a lot of different things, but uh, I mean, it would be problematic for sure. I mean, okay. because it, 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 depend on those. It, it would reflect on the publication and in a very, very bad way. So um, I don't know. I mean, I can't speak. I think that would, like with any job, mm -hmm. there's going to be a lot of considerations that go into something like that. So I couldn't say for sure that someone would be fired. Would they be reprimanded? Yeah, probably. Well, and, and again, and uh, I don't know. I know you're doing these streams, and you know, people have said bring me on. You know what my opinion is. Everybody does, so it's not. There's no point in doing that. I, I would love. I know you're doing these streams. I would love. I'd fucking love to death if you could get people on, who are authorities on this. I mean, it really is speculation. I'll admit that's very fair. Speculation on our part. Speculation on the other part. Um, whether whatever side it is on Gamergate, of what the reaction should be. It would be good to get authorities, people who either teach about these subjects or people who work in organizations that are third parties that oversee these kind of things, like uh, Greg Tito had mentioned on your stream when you had done it. What was it, an ombudsman? How do you pronounce that? Does anybody know? Ombudsman, yeah. Yeah, um, something like that. If you could bring something like that on and just ask them straight up, you know, if a reporter had a financial tie, if a reporter had a sexual relationship, if they had a deep friendship, if there was some kind of a landlord-tenant relationship, what would the reaction be? What should the ethical considerations be? How should the site management uh, or manage it? I, I think that would be great because, uh, you know, I hear what you're saying. It, it is a lot of speculation, but I think... Well, one, well, of, one of the uh, things to consider is that, uh, you know, th there's... 
So a reporter has a specific job, but then within the organization you have your legal team and mm -hmm. you have people who can look at the ethics of, uh, you know, how, how reporting is being, how, how relationships are handled, how, you know, there, I guarantee you that when this, uh, when this Game Journal Pros thing happened, a lot of lawyers were consulted afterwards to make sure that, that you know, what, what ethical breaches were happening or, or how close it came to an ethical breach, etc. Um, so, so I agree. I think getting some experts, you know, I'm not an expert in in journalistic ethics, but there are no, certainly there I, are yeah. there are professors. I did watch uh, the video with I can't, I can't think of his name right now, but I, I know I know that would be really good. And I am I am actually working with a lot of different people trying to get people to come on to my podcast and talk about these things. And, and, it's, and it's, I think that's it's, very, it's, it's going to take time, but I would like to get a lot of different people with different expertise and viewpoints talking about this because I think the best thing we can do is get a lot of different people talking about it because right now the problem is we have a lot of people shouting in one room and a lot of people shouting in another room and there's not a whole lot of discussion going on. And I think that's really, really important because you know nobody listens to the people shouting in the other room. They just mock the people shouting in the other room. So if we can bring people together and talk about it, if we can bring in experts and talk about it, yeah, we can make. I think we can make game journalism better. I think we can make the community healthier. Right now, it's it's fucked up. I mean, that's it is, and, and, and I, I agree with that. It's been fucked up for years. It's been fucked up since I started writing about video games. I mean, I started writing about video games basically when the Mass Effect Three controversy landed, and yeah, that was a good timing. Yeah, well, it, it was good timing in that, in that it was. I mean, it was extremely surprising to see kind of how everything was going down, and uh, and just to just to have have been observing this for the last few years. Um, I mean, something something has to give at this point, and I think the thing about GamerGate that's really interesting to me is that unlike a specific game, like. Like you had hold the line with Mass Effect Three, you had uh, you know outcry over um, DMC Devil May Cry reboot. There was the Dor Doritos Gate thing. All of those things were most of them were focused very specifically on a on a video game on a specific event. What what I what I've been observing with GamerGate is that it seems much broader, and I don't think it's going to burn out and fade away the same way that some of these other controversies have. And I think that's what. I think a lot of people are banking on it fading away. I think that's why you see so much silence and so little um, dialogue. I think people think, well, it's going to just fade away. It's just the next big game that comes out. Everyone's going to get distracted, and I, I just don't. I don't actually think that's going to happen this time. Hey, well, uh, that's the thing, because all these little controversies that happened in, in the past, they were little build-ups to essentially this pot boiling over as we have it right now. I mean, even going back all the way back about 15 years with the Pound of Flesh article that was done in the print media, I mean, every little thing, every little perceived transgression and little outcry and little, little you know, protest from us that got essentially beat down by the use of buzzwords or deflection or just not caring, I mean, it's contributed to this powder keg. It's a decades-long powder keg that's been building, and eventually, you know, we've had a match head that came by and just struck it and blew it up, and that's what we have right now. Well, and I guess uh, another question I, I'd have for you, Eric, um, just because, I mean, you have a different perspective on this, being a journalist uh, and writing for a website. I mean, none of us in this room do that. Um, specifically looking at somebody like, I'd say, Stephen Tatillo or maybe even Chris Grant from Polygon, right? Uh, when these allegations got brought up, the one with uh, Nathan Grayson or the one with Patricia Hernandez or even the uh, ties between Collar and Cuchera with uh, Zoe Quinn through Patreon, the sites address them, but I guess what my question is, editors-in-chief, uh, how much oversight do they have? I think one component of this is the unethical behavior on the part of journalists, but I think the other component of this is the fact that you have people who aren't reporting to their superiors relationships and pre-existing um, circumstances. So, I mean, doesn't that add more into it when you're, when you're kind of looking at this? Um, well, I mean... If an editor in chief doesn't know what's going on, that I mean, I'm not exactly sure what what the question is. Oh, uh, uh, let, let me rephrase I, it. Um, okay, looking at Patricia Hernandez, she had a relationship with people she wrote about. Uh, mm. So I had I had asked you, should she be fired over that, uh, or what would the reaction be at Forbes? I guess. 
Um, so Stephen Totello is the editor in chief. If he is not aware that Patricia Hernandez is engaging in this behavior, does that reflect poorly on him as an editor in chief, or does it mean that Patricia Hernandez should be let go because she's not disclosing conflicts of interest to her superior? Um, I, I really can't. I really can't say you know that she should be fired over this. I, I think that's that's absolutely not my place at all. I don't know the circumstances. I don't know the conversations that they've had. I don't know what anybody knew. I don't know how it came to light to them, et cetera, et cetera. There's, there's so many details that I am just not privy to. Um, I, I think, I, I do think, I mean, I think that Kotaku and, and Totillo came out with, they, they responded to this, and they, they banned donations to Patreon and Kickstarter, I believe. Is that correct? I, that's, that's what I'm remembering. Uh, Kotaku did. Uh, yeah, Polygon. I think that was right. Poly, Polygon didn't go as far, so I think Kotaku did respond to this in a pretty responsible way. I don't. I think firing someone is a really, really big decision. I mean, it's a it's a serious, serious decision that is made, you know, with a lot of considerations in mind. I mean, it's very easy to say, you know, observing from the sidelines, yeah, that person should be fired. But we don't have all the details. We don't know what conversations were had. We don't know, uh, you know, all the all the 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 considerations that went into that sort of decision. We just don't know, and so it's hard for me as an observer to comment on that with authority, being so in the dark on what went on, what went on there. Now I think that 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 Kotaku and any other play any other publication. Needs to make it very clear that that won't happen again, and because it's 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 really 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 bad for those publications to have stuff like that going on. It looks horrible, and and it should. Well, so, yeah, but, yeah, but yeah. when it comes to firing somebody, like that's somebody's livelihood. That is that's you. We just don't know what kind of conversations were had. We don't know how the wrist was slapped. We don't know, and so you know. It, I, well, I, isn't isn't that a, a major issue, though, Eric? I mean, we don't know because there isn't any transparency on these sites. I mean, all the information we get is from either the editor in chief on them, uh, giving us a basically a blanket statement saying we've looked into it, we don't see an issue, but they never provide information. So as more things come to light, it just compiles on top of it uh, itself. So I mean, you have Grayson at first, then you have Patricia Hernandez, then you have Caller and Cuchera, then Games well, Journal Pro come out. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, well, what what information would you like Kotaku to make more public, uh, specifically? Uh, I would say, uh, in the case of let's say Patricia Hernandez with editor in chief uh, Stephen Tatillo, I would like mm -hmm. Tatillo to come out and say either I was aware ahead of time that Patricia Hernandez had these relationships, or I wasn't. And this is a reaction that the site had, because all that happened was updates were posted. He never publicly addressed what the reprimand was or the site policy was on how. Uh, Patricia Hernandez was dealt with. Instead, all we got were updates that were added to articles that were two years old, one years old. Um, nothing ever happened. And, you know, Patricia, on her part, if you look at, and there are archives of this because she's deleted some of these tweets, is mocking people as they're coming about, you know, coming up with this information. You know, what was it that she said? Go ahead, nerds, dig it up, I don't care. I, uh, I linked it in the, uh, in the chat in the box. I got a whole, like, imager thing from... From a wonderful Infinity Chan, Mr. Bates. Well, and the thing too is, I, again, I don't know. Um, that's I brought somebody else into the uh, chat. If you guys want to uh, welcome him in, uh, Milo uh, was nice hey, enough Milo. to join us. Hello, how are you? Uh, great. I, I was hoping you could join <laughs> us because I, I had a question in relation to the similar situation that happened um, outside of Games Journals Pro. There was another list like this, wasn't there? Yes, um, there was a list called Journalist, which was a scandal in 2007 and again in 2010, um, which resulted as, well, we only know for sure that one person got fired, which is Dave uh, Weigel or Weigel, um, from the Washington Post, and on that list he was mocking conservative politicians um, about whom he also wrote in the, in the pages of the Washington Post, um, which obviously disturbed his editors sufficiently to get rid of him. Something that I find extraordinary is how incredibly precious journalists are about about you know the prospect of losing jobs and how incredibly hypocritical it is when journalists are sort of you know oh this is people this is people's livelihoods um, no offense to Eric who I uh, you know I think is a is a really good guy on this issue but um, uh, in general um, but you know we hear this sort of hand wringing and this sort of preciousness about people's livelihoods when a journalist is talking about journalists but we're perfectly happy, you know, the journalists are perfectly happy to be 
hideously reckless and irresponsible, and they don't call each other out when, they, when, when other journalists do it. Look at what happened to Brad Wardell at Stardog. Look at what, what's happened to so many people at the hands of these irresponsible bastards in the games journalism industry, and nobody calls anybody else out in this industry. Yet the minute that the spotlight is turned on them, oh, suddenly we have to be very careful and precious about people's livelihoods because, oh, perhaps they, they won't be able to make rent. I wish games journalists had been thinking about that for the last decade. Dave Feigl of uh, Washington Post actually resigned after journalist, but, yeah, I mean... No, did he did he did he resign because he was pressured to? Uh, that, yeah, again, that's something you know, I'm not hard to say. say. He he was certainly. I'm sure he. I'm sure he did face pressure and, but but he wasn't fired. I mean, that's just a, that may be a detail, but it's it's an important well, one. Yeah, I mean, what normally happens in these situations when you have a high-profile star columnist or or named journalist is that they are, as in many other industries, um, given the opportunity to resign. Nobody knows for sure. I, and I'm not saying that people shouldn't lose their jobs if they do something really egregious. I'm not saying that a journalist is somehow protected more than anyone else. I'm saying that we don't know what happened. I mean, we just don't know what happened behind the scenes. No, so we, we are speculating. It's frustrating have... to hear, you know, journalists who, and I'm not talking about you here, but it's frustrating to hear games journalists who didn't give a crap about people's livelihoods um, and reputations. Um, and success, and certainly gave no regard to the fair coverage of the video games landscape, as far as I can tell. Um, suddenly becoming, you know, extraordinarily ethical overnight, you know, and we've got these things about, oh, terrible YouTube bloggers are taking money for saying nice things about video games. The most sort of transparent distraction tactic I think I've ever experienced. Yeah. This, this is something that, that I've been caught up in. Well, you hold on. You gotta, guys, let him finish your thoughts here. All right. I'm sorry. And just, and, and secondly, as I said, just this hand wringing about, you know, people losing their jobs and, and whatever, and I just think my. God, if, sorry to repeat myself, but you know, if, if the video games journalism industry had given 5% of this sort of ethical care to keeping their own house in order over the last decade, none of this would have happened. I, I agree completely with what you were about to say, Milo. And just to touch on that, like you could take that aspect and put that to any other job. In my job, if I were to do something to upset another person, say I said something and they said that was racist, I wouldn't just lose my job, I'd lose my license as a nurse. I would get reprimanded for my, my psychology stuff. I, I would be I'd be done. Uh, it would be completely done. But at the same time, it, you know, why would I do those kind of things in the beginning? And why would I not? Why would I allow that? It, it's, it's in the hands of the, in this case, for the journalist and the editor, uh, or in this case, uh, talk, talk, uh, Stephen Zatillo, who approves these articles before they're pushed, to, uh, to subject these people and ask them the questions why this is okay to write and why this isn't okay to write. I'm sure that you and Milo here have dealt with that before where you might have had to change something that you wrote that you felt was okay, but it was too maybe biased or opinionated to put out. That's uh, certainly true. And the other thing to remember is, you know, with they say with power comes responsibility, but a truer thing to say is with power comes power. And what happened, you know, although we have a responsibility to... to to tell the truth about people, the reality is we have gigantic public platforms, and if we say something that people don't agree with, we have the opportunity to respond. We have a vastly more powerful position um, than anybody we write about. Uh, and so when you know other journalists do things that are hideously unethical, and I think that the coverage of Brad uh, of, of um, Brad Wardell from Stardock. So Stardock, rather, I believe that was hideously unethical, and a number of people were hideously unethical. I don't think that's overstating the case. Um, I believe that the rest of the profession has a responsibility to call them out, particularly people who seem to be a bit more fair-minded and independent um, about the issue. And I do think that there were two failures here. The first one was the failure to, um, to adequately check the facts in that case in the first place. And the second failure was no, not a single other journalist in the entire industry called those guys out. And I've got to tell you, I've reported on tech for eight years. And, you know, technology as in startup and uh, sort of startups, venture capital, Silicon Valley, mm -hmm. is riddled with many of the same problems that video game journalism is, but I have never seen any, anything like that serious a failure mm -hmm. and not been able to find a single critical post or, or um, article criticizing the journalism that was so obviously faulty and so obviously flawed. Um, mm -hmm. It is unique in my experience of nearly a decade as a journalist. It is unique in anything I've reported on anywhere in any industry 
the video, the video games journalists will not call each other out for, for mistakes, and that has got to change. Well, even look at, um, was it Leanna Kay? Uh, with well, the, uh, on. I think that's a lot of honest plate. I think we want to air, let Eric respond real fast. Okay. Um, well, I mean, I think there is... I, I, video, video game, the video game journalism scene is, is pretty insular. Um, when, I, when I first started writing about video games... Uh, I, I I remember writing a you know taking a uh, ri calling out other writers on things and um, and, and hearing absolutely no response uh, just just this deafening silence uh, which was very strange because I'd been writing about politics before and in politics there's constant debate and there's the constant sense that people are always sort of uh, whatever you write is going to be out there people are going to comment on it it's going to be publicized you know if you're lucky. People are going to be talking about it, uh, and getting into and getting into video games. Uh, typically, there's not much of a conversation going on. You 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 call somebody out, and there's you're, you're met with silence, and it, it it is it is it is peculiar. I don't really understand it. Um, so I think there is there there is a problem. I mean, I think there's this is this is again is since I've been writing about video games for the last few years. Um, there's this. There's a very strange hostility towards the readership, and there's very little conversation between writers uh, in the public space. So you, you you just don't see that sort of criticism going on. If I could just say uh, one more thing. before you, do, um, I, I got to get out of here. I just want to say thank yeah. you for inviting me on here. And uh, if I can ask oh, one question yeah. off topic, real quick, Eric, you said you're reaching out to the opposition and people. Have you reached out to people like Leah Alexander or anybody like that? Who may come on to maybe or Patricia Hernandez as we were talking or Steve Tatillo who may want to come on and discuss their side of the uh, uh, pros or anything like that? I, I won't say specifically who I've reached out to. Right. Because you I have, have, you have I have reached out to a number of people though. Yeah. Have you got any responses or? Um, you know, we'll see. I it, it's it's a work in progress. No problem. Fair enough. All right, guys. Thank you for inviting me. I uh, take care of Milo, uh, Milo Loping, yeah. uh, Short Fat Otaku, and Eric. Uh, love See you later, man. Yeah, th uh, thanks again for showing up, uh, King of Pole. I hope you have a good night, and I'll talk to you tomorrow on the uh, Ralph Retort stream. Yeah, man, I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Um, just just add two quick things here, and then uh, this is fascinating, listening to Milo and kind of Eric talk on two different perspectives. But um, kind of back to another issue, I guess, when you're talking about reporting on people in your industry. If you look at the Ralph Retort, uh, he had really, I believe it was just two days ago, talking about uh, Liana Kay. And she'd given in a speech at the IGGA in Canada, I believe, in 2012 or 2013. I, I don't remember off the top of my head. But she had she had admitted in front of a, a room full, an auditorium full of people, that she adjusted her review scores based on the bonuses that people would receive. She said, I won't give people a 7.5. I will give them an 8 instead because I want them to get money. Now, that to me seems like a fucking major, major ethical issue. Um, and, and then I guess uh, also one other thing, and, and then I'll let you guys get back to it. Uh, kind of talking about um, what Milo had said about people being given the opportunity to resign or to step away rather than being fired. Do you think, uh, this is to either of you, do you think that's what we saw happen with Jen Frank at The Guardian, where she had said, oh, my editors were aware of the financial ties we had ahead of time, but uh, you know, after this information had come out, she had stepped away from that for about two or three weeks. Do you think that was a kind of behind-the-scenes slap on the wrist to say, hey, you can't be associated with this... Uh, this news site, if you're going to behave in that kind of behavior, or if you're going to if you're going to behave in that kind of way, um, my experience of the Guardian would mm -hmm. suggest that um, they probably weren't enormously happy being deluged with allegations of, uh, that they didn't check out their writers' connections properly, and they probably weren't enormously happy with her. But I think that the Guardian is one of those newspapers where ideology is a strong contender for. Uh, priority uh, together with fact. So there are instances where the Guardian turns a blind eye. And I've seen that happen relatively frequently if it believes that the article is um, acting in service of a higher goal. So if, if they think that the, you know, the article is doing good work, they, they, will, they are quite happy quite often to overlook minor transgressions. And I think they would see this as a minor transgression. I think from Look, looking at it from outside, they would say, 
well, it's a small industry. Everyone knows everyone. If you can't write about people you know about, you can't write about anything. Um, she probably should have made it clearer. No big deal. It's important also to remember that you know, Jen. Fra it's the Guardian, yes, and the Guardian's a very well respected international newspaper. But Jen Frank was merely one of thousands of contributors to the Guardian. You know, they have six or seven hundred journalists, um, which is a lot, uh, or something like that. At least they did before the last round of uh, round of layoffs in London. And you know, at least that number again. Um, that just sort of write for them casually from home. This is many, many thousands of journalists who, you know, write under the Guardian masthead. I don't think it was a particularly big deal. I don't think they had a crisis meeting about it. I think if she decided to leave games journalism, that was entirely of her own volition because I don't think her editors would have cared enough one way or the other. Well, to to be fair though, to and to kind of expand on the Jen Frank thing. I mean, it wasn't just that they had a pre-existing relationship. Um, crap, is my mic coming through all right uh, right now? Oh, okay. I was getting a little bit of fuzz. Sorry about that. Um, she was contributing financially uh, and receiving money financially from both Zoe Quinn and Maya Kramer, who have a connection themselves. Um, that would seem to me to point to a larger issue than just we're associated with one another or we had drinks in a bar together. You're actually giving money to the person you're writing about in a favorable manner and receiving money from a person that she's directly connected with who's involved in that particular story. Well, darling, uh, you and I are of, are of the same mind on this subject. I think that we both agree that it is completely unacceptable, and we're both relatively horrified by it. Uh, I wonder whether the Guardian would have even given it enough attention uh -huh. to find out and be horrified by the. Um, right, I, I agree with that. Yeah, I, I mean, I do, I just don't think they, you know, no disrespect to the gaming industry or any of the, you know, anybody interested in this, but frankly, it's a national newspaper, and it's a, and for, for the Guardian, it is a story of no significance whatsoever. Um, it's also a story that they have made a deliberate editorial decision to avoid, uh -huh. by the way, which I can tell you from speaking to staff there. I know this because they don't want to get involved in the crazy. This is a perfect Guardian story. This is an ideal opportunity for the Guardian to go in hard and uh, really punish Gamergate and, and bring a lot of people with them, frankly, from outside the gaming industry and convince every, you know everybody reading that Gamergate is a misogynistic, sexist, you know, um, unpleasant movement. The Guardian's been practically silent on this issue compared to what it could have done. And if it wanted, if it had been interested in this story at all, you would have seen blanket coverage from the Guardian because that's what they do when they're interested in a story, for example. So would it, would it be fair to say that perhaps, uh, I guess, and this is complete speculation on my part, but perhaps Jenna K, or uh, I'm sorry, Jen Frank, um, kind of screwed the pooch on that. I, I mean, maybe this was a great opportunity to get clicks and to get attention and to run news stories, yeah. even for people yeah. disinterested, but yeah. she kind of... Understand, my understanding is that that's exactly what happened. There was such a fuss over this article because she failed to disclose her relationships that The Guardian decided, you know what, we're happy, happy just staying out of this. Okay, fantastic. Well, I mean, and then, I, this is oh, just sorry. personal curiosity. Do I'm, I mean, I'm not in uh, my field isn't journalism, but when you work for a major outlet like you know, you Eric or uh, you Milo, do, do don't you have upon your employment? Don't you have a contract that you sign that has a certain code of conduct that you have to adhere to? I mean, I'm just because usually most uh, positions yeah, well, I think have that kind simple. of contract. Yeah. Yeah, the, the rules and the training and the um, expectations on you are widely different depending on whether you are a staff writer on the, on the staff of the newspaper working from their offices or a, a contributor as Jen Frank is, you know, just emails in pieces and gets paid for them. You don't have any of this. Uh, you, you, there are the same expectations of ethical conduct on your journalism, but, you, you know, frankly, the paper cares less. To be to be honest, so um, the o the oversight with somebody like Jen Frank would be different than the oversight with somebody like, say, Patricia Hernandez, where it, she, they're directly in house compared to a uh, a contracted writer. That's not some, yeah, that's not something anybody would tell you officially, but that is certainly how it works. Okay, fantastic. And then I guess my other question to you both, uh, whoever wants to take it, it back to Liana Kay. Um, I'm I mean, going to let Eric take this one. <laughs> oh, okay. You, you have somebody, well, I mean, even if you looked at it in any, under, or any other industry, if it was somebody writing for, uh, I don't know, an automotive magazine, and they said that, I'm not ever going to say a Ford truck is bad because the people that design that Ford truck won't get their bonuses. So I'm going to say every Ford truck is good. And that's essentially what she's saying at the podium at this IDGA conference. I'm not going to say a game is a 7.5. I'm going to give it an 8 because an 8 will get them a bonus. An 8 is a higher score. Um, Would yeah, that be well, on I, I, I don't... I Not having listened, again, like I can only comment on your summary of it. And uh, that's fine. Yep. But, but yes, obviously, that is unethical. Um, I think 
review scores in general are a huge problem with video games, and I wish we could just do away with them entirely. Um, but yeah, I mean, giving giving someone an eight if you thought it was a seven point five, which sounds so arbitrary and absurd to me in the first place, uh, I, that of course is unethical. You you know whether it's whether it's a friend or just you want to have people make more money. Uh, the consumer <laughs> is your is is your responsibility when you're reviewing a video game. The consumer is far more important than the developer. The consumer is far more important than your friends in the industry. Uh, far more important than whether somebody makes money. People should make money because their game is good. People should make money because people buy their game, and people should buy their game based on good feedback, good reviews, etc., rather than somebody inflating reviews based on any reason, whether that's just to help out people's uh, finances or because you have pressure from advertisers or whatever it is. Uh, yeah, I and mean, that's that's of course that's completely unethical. And that's a that's a very fair answer. I, again, I, I mean, if you're not familiar with it, obviously you can't comment on it without being able to hear it in context. Uh, right. You know, again, I'm not going to try to steer you wrong. I, you know, I, I've been able to listen to the the clip. Uh, it's from like about a 50 minute speech, I'd say, and it's about you know five minutes uh, around the 40 minute mark. And hopefully, somebody will link it and be able to give it to you on Twitter. Yeah. Um, but it just, I, I think, I guess, I can only give you the consumer perspective on this, but. It, this has been going on for a couple of months now. Um, I've heard somebody describe it, and I think this is very accurate, as a coal mine fire. You know, it's the blaze that won't ever go out. It just keeps feeding on itself, and it's it's getting fed either by more information being uncovered. You know, you had the Grayson thing. You had the Patricia thing. You had Caller and Kuchera. You had all these other players involved. Uh, then you had people like um, Ferrasi at um, that one. Uh, God, I can't even remember now. It was a movie review site, so it's not that even really related to gaming. Thank you, Badass Digest, saying that uh, you know gamers were essentially ISIS. Then you had somebody at Dell say that you know right. gamers were the online terrorists. And, and you know lot. that's that's hugely insulting. I think when you when you compare GamerGate or gamers to ISIS, I think that's even more insulting to people who have, whose lives have been actually affected by ISIS than anything. I, it's, I it seems like such that, a actually. absurd thing to say. I, I, uh, I, I Sorry to interrupt you, but okay. I'm, I'll let you carry on. But just you know, on this sort of the Devin Faraci issue, people get very um, precious about some of his comments. Um, but they let me get away with being just as mean in the opposite direction. So I would all, I would just sound one note of caution, which is, look, a comparison to ISIS is clearly ridiculous. No sane person thinks that there is any comparison whatsoever. It's done to shitstir and it's done to needle. And I have to hold my hands up to that sort of thing as well. But you applaud me when I do it. Um, uh, I mean, uh, no, I don't approve of you when you do you. it. I mean, people, people do. Um, <laughs> people yeah. do. People, people like that's. I think you're making a good point. Well, well, yeah, but to be fair, Milo, have you ever called anybody in your writing career uh, comparable to ISIS? No, of course not. But have you, have well, you ever compared anybody comparable to a Nazi? No, but no, but listen, well. No, yeah, but Milo stirs the shit, dude. Milo, Milo well, is out there. But the, I mean, there is a discernible. What I'm trying to say is, I don't, I don't. Well, let let him let him finish his sentence. All I was trying to say is, I don't find it hugely convincing or a particularly strong line of argument for people to get very precious and upset about a, a, a remark that was clearly made to get a reaction. All you're doing is giving him exactly what he wants and showing yourselves to be, and yourself by yourselves, I mean people on Twitter getting angry about it, showing yourselves to be the thin-skinned uh, crazies that, that he wants to paint you as. I say, st I, fine, I've never called, I've never said anything as bad as him. Um, but I do make unpleasant jokes. I, I say unpleasant things. I, I, you know, and I, I do it because it is funny and because, it, it, because I, through that humor, I think I'm bringing a little truth and shedding a little light as well. Um, but I just all I would caution you, as in the three thousand whatever people listening to this, is don't you know just 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 be mindful of what you're getting selectively upset about because I don't think it's a particularly important or persuasive line of argument to say well you know how dare you compare us to ISIS? There's plenty of shit in both directions. I personally would prefer to stick to the facts. Well, and and I would too. But I, and again, I think this is where. I, I would think uh, a good portion, and again, I can't speak for everyone, but a good portion of people in Gamergate are getting upset. Is Devin Ferrasi isn't some free agent? He's not some asshole on you know Twitter like I am. He's an editor in chief of a uh, of a publication, an editor in chief that happened to release public publicly private information about people who were giving him news tips, news tips that were sent to him 
on a form that had, you know, fucking pictures from the movie All the King's Men, which is about Watergate. So you have somebody who's taking tips, you know, private tips about news stories and publicly, you know, publishing pr uh, publicly their private information, their full names and their emails. And then he goes on to compare them to ISIS. It, it seems like, I guess, from the consumer standpoint, that you have all these people at different game journalism sites, and even, you know, in Frosty's case, it's somebody at a different publication related to movies, who, who just don't give a shit. They'll do whatever they want. I think he has done horrible things. I don't like or appreciate or enjoy seeing, you know, pe people's private messages, um, pop, you know, put out and publish. Put out, put out and published, I do think that he has crossed the line in a number of other respects. I think you're on much, much stronger ground um, mm -hmm. when you illustrate unethical things he has done rather mm -hmm. than unpleasant language he has used. Um, so you would say to focus on... Well, I'm going to apologize to American listeners in advance for this. <laughs> Journalists in England use the C-bomb all the time. I think we can all agree he's a cunt. But, God, that's um, fine. but I, think, I think we can do that and at the same time stick to the facts. And but no, more worried about no, what he's done than what he's than how he says it. So so, but this this brings up kind of a larger question about this entire GamerGate movement and the reaction. Uh, it's focusing on journalistic ethics, but it's it's been sparked largely by things people have said about gamers. Uh, Lee Alexander's article, for instance, uh, and the the bevy of articles that followed it were all, you know, these have angered people just as much as any, well, maybe not just as much, but these are what sparked a lot of the reaction that has fueled Gamergate. And, and I think I can... Unpleasant things that people have said. Right, and I think I can see Milo's point. I mean, he's drawing a distinction between something somebody says privately, I guess, on Twitter, you know, just stirring the shit, so to speak, but between that and something somebody says through the power of the press. When you look at Leigh Alexander or, you know, the other people that release these articles over that 24-hour period... It wasn't just that they were doing it on Twitter or as a private citizen or as an individual, free agency, whatever. They were using the publications they worked for to do it. And I think that's what most gamers find reprehensible. And I, I agree with Milo on that. Listen, I, I mean, I, fuck, I make videos about Tumblrisms on Twitter or on YouTube mocking people that are hypersensitive. So I, I completely understand the aspect of, you know, have a thick skin. But, um, yeah, so I guess, Eric, in response to what you're saying is, I'd see a distinction between something somebody's saying on Twitter as a free agent, and that's even why I didn't really get um, pissed off at, who was the guy from Dell that was making the ISIS comment? If, if anybody remembers, I, I, I don't know. how to... George something, wasn't it? Uh, George Reese, I'm sorry, yeah. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, George Reese, his, you know, his Twitter, in all fairness, said, this is my own Twitter. You know, no, but that's bullshit. Is... Honestly, that's bullshit. What you say on Twitter is is representative of where you work. It's a public thing. It's not private. Yeah. Yeah. Your, your private emails are private. Your private direct messages are private. What you say in public on Twitter is not private. Well, no. and, and, and to be fair, to, to finish my point real quick, um, I mean, yes, on one hand, I agree with you. But on the other hand, the reason I draw the distinction between George Reese of Dell, and I wasn't saying fire his ass or complain to Dell about that, but I was getting angry at the CNET employee, was George Reese didn't have I work at Dell in his Twitter handle. It was just I am George Reese, this is the shit I say. The CNET employee that was talking a massive amount of shit and yelling at people was doing it under a Twitter account that was directly uh, connected to his employer. And then I'm going to shut up and let you guys talk. I'm sorry. I, like I said, I'm, I'm drunk as shit right now. So go ahead. Everything, everything I say on Twitter reflects on everything I do in my professional life. I, I mean, it's it's public. It, it, I, I don't draw a huge distinction there, honestly. Eric, can I ask you a question? Um, yeah. You're quite right to say that a lot of the upset has been sparked by language. And that most of the reason, or at least a large part of the reason why people were originally very upset was the language used about the language used about gamers. But don't you think that's because um, not only was there this explosion, this sort of ten articles in a day thing, but also that people got the sense, because this, this had been happening for so long, that behind the ribaldry and the jokes and the um, banter, that there were there were real truths there. Did, is is it the case in your opinion that um, people got upset about this language because they were convinced that this language reflected how um, journalists actually felt about them, and that finally that the journalist had sort of broken cover, if you like, if you like, and 
spoken a bit of truth for once, and that's what sort of made them, made everybody fly off the handle. Well, I, I mean, I think that's true. I think it's sort of the same thing. I, I, I think that, again, you can go back to several different controversies where a similar thing happened. This was just sort of the nail in the coffin, if you will. Like, uh, you know, with Mass Effect, it was the gamers are entitled, the entitled gamer, this image of somebody who thinks, uh, you know, the world belongs to them and, and they can uh, you know, say whatever they want and and now you have it just gamers it's not even entitled gamers it's just gamers themselves are horrible people and uh i think i think that you know with an article like uh alexander's article in gamma sutra there was there was some nuance lost because of the rhetoric but i mean i th i think that there is this perception that 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 once upon a time maybe you know people who wrote about games were supposed to be defending gamers they were gamers they were standing up for gamers. They were standing up against the mainstream media's uh, portrayal of gamers as everything that uh, that she described gamers as in her article, and now game writers themselves are the ones condemning gamers and stereotyping them. They don't look very much like gamers, do they? I mean... Uh... Well, I mean, I think a lot of them are. I mean, I think there are. I mean, I think what we lose in this conversation is that there are so... there are hundreds of people writing about about games, and there are there are a much smaller group of people writing about games who are condemning gamers. But what I but mean... They're very, they're very prominent. Well, the people who are condemning gamers are in positions of quite considerable influence at the yes. biggest and best-funded publications. So I think it's meaningful to say that... I think it's true to say, even if they are a net minority, they are an enormously, enormously and disproportionately powerful one. But yes. my, my point was that um, they don't look very much like their readers, do they? They are uniformly... Well, one might even say overeducated middle-class white um, West Coasters, um, or and some East Coasters. I mean, all, almost exclusively. You look at the, you look at where these people are educated. You look at where they come from. You go through the, the um, staff pages of these websites. They look very little like their readers. And one observation I would make from various publications that I've been involved with is, is that the the relationship with readers is in large part dependent on how on having content created and having opinions shared by people who have something in common with the people that they're writing for. And from what I can see as sort of an outsider, having only really been observing this for you know not very much more than a month, um, is there any, there's an enormous cultural, social, class, financial disconnect between the people in, in powerful positions in the biggest and best funded games publications and ordinary gamers they just don't know how to communicate with one another because they have nothing in common um i don't know i mean i think that 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 it's 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 possible that in games journalism uh a, a lot of the more prominent voices are of a of a single demographic the the young uh, uh educated liberal uh, demographic, and I think that that represents a very large chunk of gamers. But there are, but gamers are very diverse. Uh, so do they do they represent their readership? I think they do to a certain extent, and they don't to a certain extent. I think that it's interesting that in in video game journalism, well, I, I don't know. I mean, video video game journalism is just a microcosm of a lot of other aspects of journalism. I mean, in the larger tech world, would you say that these tech writers represent their demographic better. I don't think so. I think the larger tech journalism world is also largely comprised of youngish, uh, liberalish writers. I mean, I think, I think that point there because it's true that most tech bloggers, let's say the guys at TechCrunch or at um, Pando Daily or whatever, look a lot like um, the writers at Kotaku and Polygon, but so do their readers. Um, Silicon Valley and you know tech startup people in general are also young, coastal, highly educated, white, disproportionately male. Um, you know, so I think you know sort of TechCrunch readers look a lot more like TechCrunch journalists, um, who look also like video games journalists. It's no ordinary video gamers who don't have representation from people like them. Okay. Yeah, I I, I think that's that's fair on both of you. Um, I, and again, I'm curious. You know, we've heard a lot, I guess, from Gamergate 
uh, supporters, uh, the you know the main consumer group of where they'd like to see this go. It'd be interesting to hear the perspectives of both you, uh, Kane and uh, Milo. Kind of, I guess, looking at the um, the movement or this group of consumers from the outside as a journalist writing about it. What would you like to see as the outcome? Or I guess two two points. How do you see the movement, and what would you like to see as their outcome of this movement? Who are you asking? I'm sorry. Uh, e either of you, both of you. Let Let's start. Let's start with Eric because he's been out for a while. Okay. Um, how do I see the movement, and what do I see as the outcome of the movement? Oh uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Well, okay. I, I see Gamergate as a as a very organic grassroots movement that has sprung up uh, with a lot of uh, different goals in mind. I think I think that that, that at, at its core, they that it's it's not just about games journalism ethics. It's about a better relationship and a better game community as well. I think ideally. The, the result will be a better a better better games press but also one that that has a better relationship with the readers because right now it is one of the most hostile and divisive relationships I can imagine um, I don't think that there is a singular goal I don't think that there is a singular motive I don't think that there's a uh, unified front really I think Gamergate is just still becoming what it is and I think it's going to keep becoming what it is for a while. And um, ideally, I think we we have I, I think we have a better re relationship between readers and press. And I think that ideally we have a a more a uh, we have a a worse relationship between game press and the industry because I think what it all comes back to really is that we have in in the enthusiast press. Uh, uh, surrounding video games, we have a very chummy relationship between the press and uh, the industry that they cover. I mean, we have these big events, we have all these preview events, we have a lot of people at publications taking paid travel, uh, paid hotels, paid plane tickets to go preview a video game. Um, whether whether you have like behind the doors, like people smoking cigars, coming up with like, here's what your review score is going to be. I don't know if that's going on, but we definitely have these these big parties that are thrown by you know Activision or EA, and you know, the the drinks are all free and the food is all free, and they flew you out there. And I think that that is extremely un unhealthy in terms of people providing a an honest opinion about the product, which is the video game. Um, because you have you just have this you have this extremely unhealthy relationship between the press and the, the industry that they cover, and ideally, that needs to come to an end. Are you going to start reporting on this, Eric? What? Now? Uh, that's what we all want to see. I mean, I think that's what your readers want to see. They, you've sort of gone twenty five percent of the way there with some yeah. of the stuff in the last couple. Well, of I, I have literally been to one gaming industry event. I've been to GDC once. I've never been to E3. I've never been to any of these other things. That is my that is my only window into what actually goes on, but I mean what actually goes on is, you know, big parties and big events and, you know, free sushi and free drinks and it, it's 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 a, pro it's a problem. Why don't you go to the parties? Don't you like parties? I love parties. <laughs> who, who I don't like. Parties? I, I love. I love free booze. I love free food. I love all oh, that stuff. But I, I feel like that. if I go, if I go to a party <laughs> where there's free booze and free food being provided by the people I'm supposed to be covering, you know, and I, I've been, I've been, like I said, I've been to GDC once. I went there. I was there for a week. And everywhere you go, you know, the the people in the industry, because it's their in their self interest. Their economic self-interest. They are whining and dining and schmoozing and boozing with with all the journalists. And this goes on constantly throughout the year. And you know, maybe maybe people are immune to it, maybe not. But the problem is, is that it, it creates a very chummy relationship between the the industry and the press. And ideally, that needs that need. I mean, people say, well, that that's how you build connections. That's how you that's how you get inside sources. That's how you can report on all this stuff. But honestly, like. The, the video game press basically covers video games before they're out constantly. I mean, we, we have previews and previews and previews and hype and hype and hype, and, and, and it's almost like the video game press exists to hype 
video games before they're released. And then once they're released, there's a review, and then there is silence. And so we have a video game press that exists to basically be an extension of a marketing arm for these large corporations. And that is a huge fucking problem. Well, I'd love to read more. Like, ideally, that has to stop somehow. And, and I agree with Milo. I, I mean, that's Eric. That's why we fucking like you. I'm. I, maybe you're not uh, aware of this, but people genuinely, really, really like you, man. I mean, they follow you on Forbes because they feel like you're somebody they can trust. And, and I think I agree with Milo on this. I want to hear you write more about this kind of shit. And I think that's one of the, you know, the main complaints of consumers is it feels like nobody is writing about this. Nobody is talking about this on any publication. Right. Well, I mean, it's true, Eric. We like you. I mean, I have a dedicated Eric Kane art folder back from <laughs> <laughs> a couple of years ago. Well, I, I think. I mean, I and I think. I think that's that's. And I, I. I think that maybe that's. Hopefully, and okay. This is what I'm trying to say with all of this. Is that is the outcome from Gamergate that I hope we see. And and I think that you're right. I think that's something that needs to be talked about more. And that. Uh, the, the the problem is is that I've sort of decided not to be a part of that. And you know, like I went to GDC. I flew out there on my own dime. I went out there and I went to the parties and I did all the things that everybody else does. And I just thought, this is, you know, how, f you know, it's really fun. It's really fun to go to parties where you can drink for free. And it's really fun to go and everywhere you go, people want to, you know, buy you a drink or buy you dinner or do all this. But it's really bad. I mean, it's a, it's a really bad thing to participate in. So, uh, you know, I, I have basically just not done it anymore. I, I won't do it anymore. Well, look, this is great news for the rest of us because the good news is if you are um, unimpressed or, or uncomfortable with the uh, whirly gig and circus of freebies, then you have very little to lose by writing about it. Um, That's true. Because you've decided you don't want to be a part of it and, and fewer bridges to burn than others. Um, just in, you know, in your defense, I'm obviously giving you a hard time trying to bring you over to the dark side because I'd quite like that. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I would quite like to, to, to uh, see you um, <laughs> jump over to this side of the fence. What I do appreciate is that you walk quite a fine line um, and are very diplomatic and quite perspicacious and judicious and whatnot in, in your public statements. And you do... I think everybody needs to understand. Um, speak in a way that doesn't burn too many bridges on the other side of the fence. So you are still able to have an open channel of communication with people that I, for example, can't. Um, and lots of other people in Gamergate can't. So we do appreciate that that is happening. And I, I see and recognize what's going on there. And you know you do a very good job of that. And I think people understand that that is going on and understand why you do it. Um, so obviously, you know, if you should take my entreaties to, um, you know, to, to join the dark side with a pinch of salt. <laughs> well, All right. Uh, I would like to point out, if if you guys don't don't mind. No, go talk. Um, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit too Canadian to, to do that, you know. Um, but I would like to point out, Eric, what you just said. Uh, all the stuff you just said. I I think Kotaku actually is going to start doing that now. Um, yeah, I saw that. They, they I saw posted what, that thing where they, they wanted to talk about all these um, games after they're out, and you know all the, the culture around it and all that kind of stuff. So I mean, maybe maybe there's still a little bit of hope over there. Like who knows? No, there's hope. Here's here's how I see it. There there is okay. Everything is okay. We live in a capitalist society. That's great. There's a market. Everyone is trying to make money. Everyone is selling a product. That's the same case with all of these publications. Being the first to the story is really important. Being being the one that has the big preview of the big whatever game that's coming out, that's important, right? To, to getting clicks, to getting advertising money, to getting readers. All of that is really important. And so everybody buys in. Everybody buys in to, to this system that we have. Everybody wants to have good relationships with the publishers because the publishers control the access, etc., etc. It's just like in politics. Uh, you know, it's, it's just like in a lot of different industries. But the only way to have, you know, actually good journalism or act Actually, for criticism, is to not buy into that. You have to stop buying into that. Well, and and Eric, I, I guess buy into it. not buy into it though. Like, what does that mean to not buy into it? Right. I mean, one of my questions, I guess, from the the point of the consumer is, I mean, we hear you say this stuff in like stream, and that's great. But as a readership, it would be nice to read about this. I mean, I I know that maybe people have commented before on this sort of thing, but we want to be informed. 
you know, the readership wants to be informed. If these are issues that are going on, if these are thoughts that you're having, why yeah, don't you I, write more about I this? Have, I have written about this. I mean, yeah. I, I have said that what I, I have written about this on numerous occasions, that what I believe, that, that, that rather than, like, actually um, having the backroom deals going on all the time, and maybe they do, I know that there's, I, I know from conversations I've had off the record with people that, that there is enormous pressure on some of these publications to publish positive reviews. I know that goes on, and we know that goes on, because we've seen things, we've seen people fired over this. Uh, but I think that the real problem, the much bigger problem, is, is, this, is this culture that's been created uh, that, is, that, is, that is far too, uh, the, the, the press and the industry are far too chummy, and the consumer is the, is the victim of that. And is that the reason? I've written about that. I've written about that before. I've written about that in the Doritos Gate thing. I've written about that recently. I mean, that is that is my thesis. That that is the problem. Is that the reason that Shadows of Mordor, I, I guess, got to you so much? Is it uh, the idea that you're seeing in YouTubers the same kind of behavior that you see yes. in, uh, I guess, games journalism? That kind yes. of pressure being put on you. You need to obey us. Right. And I think that YouTube is the future. Of game criticism, I think that video is a because video gives you a very visceral, very immediate sense of what a game is like. But if if YouTubers and you don't have to call them journalists, it doesn't matter. They're influential. They have power. You want to talk about what Milo was saying earlier about power? You know, uh, with great power comes power. Well, YouTubers are starting <laughs> to have that, and they're starting. To, they're going and, and within five years, they're going to have a great deal more. And and if we just accept that it's okay. That, that, that a company, that, that Warner Brothers or uh, Played Social can come to YouTubers and say, hey, if, if you want a review code, you're going to say nice things about us. You know, no. Total Biscuit was right. He was right when he said that this is not an acceptable practice. You know, fine, fine, some YouTubers are just entertainers, they're going to do promotionals, whatever, but no company should demand that if you're going to get a review code. That's crazy. Well, and I, and I agree with you on that, but I mean, don't you think there is a line, when you're looking at the anger, I guess, of Gamer Gators or the people that are supporting this movement, however you want to describe them, when you're looking at their anger and their, their kind of outlash at the industry, do you think there is a distinction, though, between YouTubers and journalists? I mean, don't you have an ethical responsibility that you adhere to that's above a hobbyist making Does videos it, okay. on a free website? You're talking about cause and effect, all right? Do, does, okay. So here's how I see it. All right, okay. a YouTuber does not have necessarily the same ethical standards as a journalist. But the YouTubers have, over the last few years, gained the trust and respect of the people who watch their videos and listen to them in a way that journalists maybe haven't. And with that trust and, and with, those, with those people relying on them for honesty and trust, you know, that in and of itself, regardless of journalism and journalistic ethics, that... That is a responsibility. Like they, they have, they have come into that. They, they earned it. And they well, can't they, lose yeah, it. Yeah, but I, I, I mean, Eric, Eric I, I would say it's the difference though between. And don't get me wrong. I agree with you. I think it's complete bullshit. The Shadows of Mordor thing. <clears throat> I think it's complete shit that um, YouTubers would go along with that because they're fucking with their fan bases. I get right. you. I, I think it's complete fucking crap, and I think it should be called out. But I, I do see a distinction though between. YouTubers and game journalists. I, I see it as the same distinction between getting plastic surgery from a doctor who went through medical school and has a degree and had to take the Hippocratic Oath and going to somebody in a back alley and getting it done. No. I mean, one, no, 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 that's not true. One, that, that's no, that, terrible. that is true, though. I mean, one, one, one analogy. No, no, do one do, had do people an Let him let him let him let him Wait, wait, one had an ethical responsibility. One had a career that has a set of standards, and one didn't. I mean, it's night and day. One took the oath, one did not take the oath. It, uh, it doesn't. You don't... Okay, there's a huge difference between a back alley, whatever, and a YouTuber. People are going to the YouTubers because they trust them. Well, yeah, but people are going to the plastic surgeon because they trust them. They're going the to the back alley person because they... But they, they know. Jump in as the resident expert on back alleys. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I don't think there's as clear cut a distinction as we would like to have between um, bloggers and YouTubers and journalists. Obviously, they're performing some of the same functions. But two things two things to um, say to, to Eric. One is uh, as I, as I think I mentioned on Twitter. One of them is that it's very difficult to swallow any games journalist, even you even probably the most popular one, um, sort of lashing out at other people who it is perceived are, you know, 
on the up while you are on the down, uh, who are popular, vibrant, her uh, audience is growing, while journalists are increasingly unpopular and, um, and whose audiences are often shrieking, uh, shrinking. It's very difficult to take it from a journalist um, while your industry is in the middle of an ethics crisis when we hear you lashing out at people that we already know that you sort of... I, and by and you, first of all, you, not lashing out at um, anybody. No, 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 but you plural. I'm lashing out a prac at a practice. Sure, but, but, but what people will be asking when they read that is, where were you when Brad Wardell was having his life ruined? Where were you when um, you know all of these other things were going on at Kotaku, at Polygon, at, at Gama Sutra? Where were you when all of these awful um, things were happening and you knew about it because it was your colleagues in the games press? That's what they're going to be asking, and that's why some people have found it a little bit difficult to swallow um, but know. I was there. I mean, I was there in Mass Effect. I was there in Doritos Gate. So they well, can no, say. Well, no, but I, I mean, he's whatever. referring to you as the you plural, like I'd say the royal we. Sure. Royal and, and you know what? Honestly, I can see why I got, th you know, criticism over this because yeah, there is there is a perception that that some of these people are trying to deflect criticism, and it's fair. I mean, that's a fair criticism. I understand that. What I want to what I want to say is that I I, I feel like. Um, I feel like the YouTubers are like Total Biscuit is doing a, a, a wonderful thing with with his criticism and his uh, his videos. I think that's great, and I think YouTube is just going to keep growing. We're going to get more and more serious critics doing video, and if we want that to be quality, if we want people to have trust there, like they don't in traditional games media right now, then we'd better pay attention to what's going on. And if we don't, it's the same. Problems, the same issues that we're facing now in games journalism is gonna it's just gonna carry right over. But don't you think they're doing quite a good job of policing themselves? Because Total Biscuit covered this two weeks ago and everyone yeah, but... had that conversation then. And don't you think that um, you know, by and large this stuff, because of the greater degree of transparency and the conversation and scrutiny that already exists um, with these big YouTubers? Don't you think? I don't, that yeah, also, well, I mean, I think the market is dealing with this in a way that it can't address journalism because journalists are so distant and so opaque um, in a way that YouTubers generally are not. Um, it it as depends. As far as I can see, this is this is it, sort of it that they they are for a burgeoning young, you might say, not yet professionalized, not yet institutionalized industry, policing themselves a hell of a lot better than journalists ever have. Well, some of them are. We know because they've been very upfront about it. Uh, Boogie two nine eight eight Francis, whatever. He he, but he had a video, and I thought his video was really good. I disagree with him doing the 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 paid the paid deal for uh, for Shadow of Mordor. I disagree with that. But he also pointed out something really important there, and that that in the U.S. we have legal obligation to disclose, but that's not the case everywhere. And so we can say, oh, you know, it was great that Total Biscuit and Boogie. Came out and were very upfront. That's great. That's that's a couple guys. But there's a lot of there's there's a lot of YouTubers and there's going to be a lot more. Well, I mean, Eric, uh, that's that's my point. It's not that you know. Sure, in this instance, no, think about great, well, well, Let him finish. Let him finish. If there I was, could jump was, in after as well. Mm -hmm. There was great. There was some very good disclosure from a couple of very prominent YouTubers. But that does not simply erase the problem with these kind of deals. And if this kind of deal was going on in in print, it would also be a very big deal, you know. And I just I think you know I don't think that people there's, there's this response I've gotten from Gamergate has been we can only focus on one thing at a time. Well, I just think it's the same thing. The problem is people who are helping consumers decide how to purchase something, in this case video games, being too close with the people who are selling that product and that whether you're a youtuber or a critic online or whatever if you are helping the industry sell your product before you're thinking about the consumer then it's a fucking problem and, That's and, the problem. I, and I agree with that and I'll let your fat otaku go in a second here but uh, two points really quick I think Milo is right. I mean, Total Biscuit did disclose this, but even more than that, if you look at somebody like, um, I believe it's Jesse Cox on YouTube, at the start of their videos, when they're doing a preview or a review of a game, they're talking about where they got it. They're fully disclosing um, the source that they got the material from, how they got it, the connections that were involved. It seems to be a community that really does self-regulate. Uh, but, y you know, you're talking about... Uh, YouTubers stepping up to the plate and doing something that they don't have a degree or an ethical obligation to do. And again, I agree with you at heart. It is shit that they're doing it, and they should be called out on it. But 
look at Grayson, look at Patricia Hernandez, look at any of these people that write for actual journalism websites. None of them stepped up to the plate. They only admitted wrongdoing once it was called out. So when you're talking about the enthusiast press, when you're talking about, I don't know what you want to call it, the sixth estate, or what, however you want to coin it, they're doing a fucking much better job than online media has. Kotaku, Polygon, Gamasutra, all of these have failed to ever disclose any information. And I think when you look at this recent thing with Shadows of Mordor or Middle Earth, you're, what you're seeing is YouTubers stepping up to the plate in a way that Kotaku and Polygon and the others never would have stepped up to the plate. They only there, responded when they got called out. There is an there is a legal obligation to disclose financial ties that. So that why isn't that in journalism? And journalists and 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 okay. But but most journalism does. I mean, most of it does. Most if you if you go to a website that does that does a review of a game, there's disclosure that they got a review. Wait, wait, but Eric, if, if there's legal disclosure, why wasn't Patricia Hernandez speaking about this up front? And if she wasn't, and there is that's, a legal obligation, right. I, but but see, the thing is, is that you're pointing out something that's not right. I'm not saying it's right either. But that but again, it's like the two wrongs make a right thing. I mean, no, 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 Eric. What I'm saying is, I'm no, not wait, 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 with that. No, no, but Eric, what I'm saying is, you, to the earlier question, when I said, should Patricia Hernandez be fired, you said, I don't know. I don't I have don't the information. Know. But if you're saying there's a legal or legal obligation to disclose a relationship before doing a review, if it is a legal obligation to do so, and they are refusing to do so, and they only do it after they're called out, why the fuck would they not be fired? I'm not in HR. I don't know. <laughs> No, that's not an HR question. That's a it simple is. ethics question. That's a legal question. Why would they not be fired for be failing? Breaking the law does legally... not mean you get fired. I mean, Are that's you just fucking reality. kidding me? It doesn't mean well, that. Okay, I think it I think doesn't. what he's, he's hold on, trying. Hold on, hold on. You're, you're a bit drunk here. I uh, give it give it a second. <laughs> I think what he's trying to ask is like if 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 they're saying that there's this. Oh man, I, you know what? I don't even know what you're trying to ask. I a. You got to <laughs> okay, well, well, clear well, stuff me... together for a second. Let me let me just roll with with this for a second. Um, I I do actually uh I I think I agree with you, uh, Eric. Um, basically, I, I mean, from from what I can understand, it basically sounds like yeah, even if there's no actual um say code of ethics for YouTubers, there's still you know basic morality. There's still not being an asshole, and sometimes people just just. They, wait, they wait, am, am I, no, no, wait, short fat taco, am I in fucking crazy land? If huh? a fucking doctor or if an insurance agent or if any other industry you can imagine c commits an illegal act while working at their fucking company, you're telling me they're not going to be fired? Give me one example where somebody breaks the fucking law and doesn't oh, no. get shit well, 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 I mean, come on, hold on, hold on. Do, 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 do we have an actual incident, like an actual concrete Proof that somebody has in fact broken the law right now. No, no, I do because Eric. Uh, okay, we have been talking about uh, an ethical and legal responsibility to disclose relationships before doing a review. Patricia Not relationships. Oh, okay. Well, Patricia Hernandez had a financial relationship with two individuals she wrote stories on and promoted their product. If that's not illegal, and if she's not obligated to respond, uh, you know, to report that ethically or legally, why can we bitch about YouTubers doing it? It's, it's not about bitching about one or the other. So you're missing the big picture. No, no, I'm I'm completely focused and on this. The big is, this is the problem that Gamergate is going to get into. Is it's going to see it's going to seem like they're taking sides. The YouTubers are all good and noble, and the journalists are all bad. No, nobody's saying that. But what I'm saying is, uh, journalists are held to a higher ethical standard. If they have a legal obligation in the United States of America to disclose relationships, financial relationships, and they're not doing so, why is Patricia Hernandez still employed at Kotaku? Oh, I get it. Because it's Kotaku. So, no, okay, that's not so, a good answer. So, I think, good I think, answer. I think I understand. So you're saying since due 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 to their standing as journalist, an actual uh, position as journalist versus someone who's just a YouTuber. Not, right. I mean, not just a YouTuber, but you know what I mean. Uh, someone who has a uh, moral obligation, a legal obligation in one depart department compared to someone doing the same action who doesn't have that same moral obligation. You know why is it okay to call out that person who well, doesn't have that moral person. obligation versus the person who does have it? Right. Uh, before right. I say that, you know, say that PewDiePie or Boogie Fire. Bye. or Nine A. Oh, oh. I, I don't know where that echoes. Where that echoes. Here's the thing. Here's the I gotta shame. just throw, I gotta this, just in throw this in there. Oh, I hate this echo. Oh, I hate this echo. It's coming from Milo. It's coming from Milo. Oh, it is. Hey, Milo, did your headphones pull out? 
Okay, there you go. Oh, no, we're good now. Um, I'm sorry, just a quick sum up. Yeah, I, I mean, if you're looking at the situation, if you're saying that legally under in the United States that YouTubers have to disclose this information, and journalists have an ethical responsibility and a standard in their industry to do so, and they're not doing it, why is Patricia Hernandez not fired right now on the spot by Gawker? Why is Nick Denton not stepped into Kotaku and said, you are fucking out of this company because you have done something so illegal that you should be gone? I really think you're focusing on that way too much, honestly. I think that they're within a company. You look, look. If you get, if you go out tonight, but Eric, you just admitted you get, it's illegal. If you break the law, you're not going to necessarily get fired from your job. That's not how breaking the law works. You could go get a DUI tonight, right? But but no no, Eric, DUI she, and your no, 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 employer Eric, will not necessarily fire you. It. She admitted it. There's no, if I got a right. DUI and the boss didn't know about well, it, she fucking on. told her boss. I, I'm I telling think, you that that's be... not how it works, man. I'm, you can I think say whatever you want. Your opinion is whatever, but it's not how it works. So you're telling me a Gawker can employ people who have broken the law in regards it's to not, disclosure? It's not even necessarily break. I mean, it, when, it, when it comes to these kind of laws, these are regulations. I mean, these are these. It, it's not like murder. It's not cut and dry. Yeah, I, I, there I, are policies at publications. Sense. There may be strike rules. Who who knows? Like you're you're taking a very hard stance, and I understand that because taking a very hard stance is is, is Easy and popular. It's but no, 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 Eric. Is that not the same thing you're doing with YouTubers? You're saying they have a, a, no, an obligation. I'm not doing that with YouTubers. With FTC, these no. this information legally. Yes, and they could get in trouble if they don't. Okay, they so get, they might get a slap on the wrist. No, no, they're going to get in trouble for doing that. But Patricia Hernandez. Well, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Look, 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 look. You're, they're not going to go to jail for it. They're not going to necessarily lose their YouTube channel for it. it all right. The thing is, is that there's so much gray that you miss when you decide to take a really hard stance on something. You may think that she needs to be fired, but there may be a lot more things going on that you don't know about. Right? She yeah, may have gotten a slap on the wrist. That's actually a really of... important point because um, one of the things you have to bear in mind is that, is that uh, a, a really important part of a journalist's job, if they're doing their job properly, is probably to skirt very close to breaking the law in all sorts of ways. Um, right. You know, the fourth estate is there to hold power to account. Sometimes that power is the law. Sometimes it's politicians. Sometimes it's the police. Now, you could argue with some justification that very few members of the games journalism industry um, are doing anything of such societal significance that they warrant uh, um, yeah, a blind eye being turned. Um, Eric is right that, that many of these things are guidelines and regulations rather than sort of statutory instruments. Um, he's right there, but the, the more important thing is that you know, journalists are there to break the law um, in some circumstances. They're there to do what the ordinary, or ordinary members of the public can't. Uh, journalists do it because they have lawyers and platforms and power um, to hold other powers to account. Now, when that goes wrong and journalists fail in their responsibilities, and their primary responsibilities are to expose wrongdoing, by the way, not to be, as Eric put it perfectly correctly, the, uh, an, ex an extension of the marketing arm of, of very large, very rich companies. Um, a journalist's primary responsibility is to expose wrongdoing. When they fail in that task, when there is, as we have had in Gamergate, a sort of industry-wide ethical failure, then precisely the kind of consumer action that we've seen with Gamergate is, is a proportionate, uh, reasonable, and appropriate response to that. But to, you, but I do have to say, you know, when we're really doing our jobs properly, it very often does put us in a in legally tricky positions, which is why newspapers spend so much money on lawyers, and why all journalists are worried about, um, you know, going to prison if they're ever working on an interesting story. It's a similar, you know, if you ever write about anything remotely significant, first of all, you're going to get a lot of people upset, and second of all, you're going to get yourself into some into some degree of legal trouble somewhere, and you know, factor in the possibility that editors are complicit in an ideological mission as we have seen happen with video games journalists and you start to understand um, why it's not quite as clear cut if I may be bold enough to disagree with uh, Jim on this one no, I, rare and, occasion. And, and that's fine but I, I guess okay I've got two things and again I'm drunk so bear with me. <laughs> uh, to, to Milo and Eric have you ever broken the law in, in regards to your job that's a straight-up question for Breitbart. <laughs> no, 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 for Breitbart or Forbes. Have you either of you broken the law? Uh, well, I can answer that very easily because I, I haven't. I haven't broken the law for Breitbart. 
<laughs> okay, no. uh, Eric Kane, have you ever broken the law in regards to reporting in Forbes? No. Okay. But I, I, you'll, you'll, I answered that question very carefully, which is that I haven't broken the law at Breitbart. Uh, uh, fair, fair, fair enough. Uh, and again, I guess what I'm, what I'm finding infuriating here is the idea of the, the pot calling the kettle black is saying that YouTubers, because of FTC regulations and legal obligations, need to disclose information. Uh, you know, they should be attacked for this or for not doing so. No, nope, that's when it comes, not what's being said, man. That's uh, not uh, what's being said. Wait, wait. Uh, well, I'm just let me finish. But in regards to people like Hernandez or others who have, you know, supra obligations, you know, outside of what a hobbyist would have or what outside of somebody who doesn't have those ethical obligations or the degrees or the standards that are set forward for them, um, I, I guess, how are you drawing the distinction? I mean, you're saying we should be upset that YouTubers are doing this, and then you're kind of skirting the issue with Patricia Hernandez. You won't say, well, she should be fired, she shouldn't be fired. Nope. Again, you're, you're confusing things. That's all there is to it. I am not drawing a distinction. I am saying that people who are supposed to be advocating for consumers have a responsibility to the consumer, plain and simple. That's do it. They have, do they have and it's, not my, it's not my place to say who should be fired or not. No, I'm asking it's you personally. Uh, no, no, I'm asking you personally, Eric. Uh, if somebody breaks a law, should they be fired? It depends on the law, doesn't it? And it depends on the context. Well, if I go and I, if if <laughs> I, if I, you know, honestly, like what, what law? What law? If if someone in a st in a state that that where marijuana is illegal smokes marijuana, should they be fired from their job? Do you do you think that should happen? I I don't I don't think that should be happen. I think the law is complicated, and I think it's very much based on context. And I don't know the internal management process of these places, and oh. so I won't comment on something that I'm not capable of commenting. Oh, okay, and that, yeah, that's I, fair enough. Uh, well, let me ask you this, Eric, in context of four. Well, Jim, I, I, we're getting a little off base here. I mean, no, 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 no. Low ping. I get it, but I, it's my stream. I want to ask a question. All right, <laughs> all right, Eric. Eric, Eric <laughs> not yeah, a democracy. That's right. This is a fucking dictatorship. Welcome to it, <laughs> Eric. If somebody was working at Forbes and they broke the broke the law, and I guess in regards to the disclosure. If it was financial disclosure, if it was something else, you, I mean, you're a journalist, you should be familiar with these laws, whatever they happen to be. He broke the laws in regards to reporting, and there should be laws, I'm guessing, in regards to reporting. If they broke those laws, should they be fired? Um, all right, so, so what if somebody broke a really important story that was really crucial to consumers or to citizens uh, about maybe the government doing something horrible, and they had to break the law to do that? Should they be fired? Uh, that's what I'm asking you. I don't think so. I think it depends on context. And I think oh. it depends on the institution and I think it depends on the rules. I mean, you you don't know the you don't know what the what the the, the management rules at Kotaku or at Gawker Media are. You don't know if they have like a, a three strike rule. You don't you don't know these things. You're commenting on them from a position of not knowing. And that's well, and that, that's the point, though, Eric. I don't know because Stephen right. Dottillo and Christopher Grant. Nobody will fucking come forward and say these and are maybe, where our rules maybe are. there are rules in place. Maybe to 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 a lot of places don't disclose those things because there is a contract involved between the employee and the employer. And I think it's actually very important. important. It's very important in many cases that they don't disclose those things, right. and readers do have to, in many cases, take on trust that publications are operating ethically. Now, when, as I said earlier, when that starts to go wrong, particularly when it, it, it appears that there is a systemic problem across an industry, as has happened here, and vote with their Twitter accounts, and, you know, that's tremendous. But if you are, for, I mean, you know, Woodward and Bernstein must have broken, a, you know, Two dozen fucking laws. Um, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't have advocated arresting them for any of them. Uh, so uh, yeah, all I would say is I think we're kind of wandering down a bit of a, uh, a dead oh, well, end. Okay, end. Milo. To be but, fair, but did Woodward and Bernstein profit, or did their friends profit financially from their? Well, they said, I mean, they, of course they did. They wrote books about it. You know, they made a fortune. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. But what what I'm saying is they were writing a story on Nixon. They saw government corruption. And they wrote a story. But did their friends, uh, you know? Uh, profit from it, but the same protections have nobody, to be in place. Nobody's nobody's going to compare a blogger with hopelessly compromised relationships who's accepting freebies from studios and who basic who's basically employed to push ideological agendas from their friends and push marketing messages from their paymasters, whether in or out of the publication that they write for. Nobody's going to compare that person with 
you know, some of the greatest journalists of, of the century uh, reporting on government issues. The point that we were seeking to, to make is that you can't simply say, particularly, especially with journalism, there are jobs where if you break the law, any kind of law, it's in your work contract that you'll be instantly dismissed, right? Um, many of those jobs are state jobs, so if you, if you get... Uh, some jobs, even if you just get arrested. Um, but there are jobs where if you get convicted of anything at all, state or federal or anything, anywhere, under any circumstances, um, you're found guilty of any crime, you're instantly dismissed from your job. Um, my experience of newspapers would tell, tells me that if you were arrested and convicted of pretty much any crime, you would be dismissed from your job as a reporter. If you were... Um, for certain sorts of crimes or certain sorts of infractions um, committed in the course of your reporting about which an editor knew, by and large, you'd probably have the publication behind you. Uh, I, I, you know what, I'm going to be honest here. I'm probably rambling and I'm really, really drunk. So maybe <laughs> I'm missing the point and I'll watch the stream in the morning and be like, holy shit, I'm a fucking asshole. Well, why don't we move on to another subject? That's a brilliant idea. Thank you, Milo. <laughs> I will send you. I will send you a new pearl necklace in the fucking mail for that. Oh, oh my! <laughs> did you sorry, just just to be completely clear? Did you just did you just um, ad, uh, announce to three and a half thousand people you were going to give me a pearl necklace? Yes, I did. Just, I just want to take that one down. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. Okay. Okay. Great. Well, I, I've had. Uh, a question kind of brewing for about an hour here, and it's completely on a completely different topic, so if you don't mind. Um, it sounds like exactly what we're, we're hoping. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, Eric, I wanted to ask you, um, regarding the, uh, what was it called, Game General Pros, I think? Yes, yeah. the, 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 the Google grouping. Um, what would you like to see happen to that group internally? Because I know that Total Biscuit talked about, he revealed on, I think it was on your stream actually, that he has, or rather YouTubers have their own similar group, but the rules of it are, you know, we don't, we don't uh, promote anybody, we just bitch about stuff and play video games. So like, what would you want to see happen in that group in terms of reform? Well, I would like to see that the complete historical archives published and the group shut down. Um, but of course, you know, if that happens, it'll just go somewhere else. Uh, <laughs> look, you, I mean, you can't. There probably is already a um, another list in the in process of being set up. I'm sure Ben Kuchera and Kyle Orland are. Uh, merrily registering a new and more surreptitious and impenetrable uh, abbreviation um, for, for, for a new list. I'm quite sure that's happening now. They know that the, their existing list has been compromised. The best thing you can hope for with these things is that if things go really wrong, somebody in the group will notice and send the contents to a journalist. That's exactly what happened here. That's journalism performing exactly as intended. Uh, you know, it perhaps took a little bit too long, and some of the things that were happening were, were should have should have been um, surfaced sooner. But as far as I can see from this whole thing, you know, journalism has been working as intended. The good thing is, journalists now have been put on notice that what they say in private as well, wherein it has a bearing on their professional reputations and conduct, uh, may well find its way into the public. And I don't think any of them will forget it anytime soon. Yeah, the the game journal pros list included quite a lot of people and uh, I think that if anything truly malicious goes on it's going to be a much smaller uh, group of people and it's not going to be an official list uh, that's that's my personal opinion well, I think uh, that going forward I, I think if, if people want to coordinate things they're going to be more careful about it I mean I think you're right journalism is working as intended but the, the unintended consequence may be that you know if 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 things are done under the table or in the back room that's going to be a much a much more carefully decided uh, group of people involved so uh, you know that's that may be depressing of like that's... instead of getting rid of the corruption it may have unintentionally just driven it even deeper underground uh, I don't know I mean I just I just think that if people are going to really you know Try to influence the way that you know maybe forums are being censored or, or these other things. They're going to they're going to do it in a very different way going forward. So, I, I guess what I'd ask then in regards to the Game Journals Pro list, uh, if you found um, issues with that to be, 
unethical or if you found something about it to be compromising, what do you think of people like um, in the latest leaks we heard from Navarro say that, well, I'm, I'm, I think it was Navarro, and again, you'll have to grant me some leeway here. I'm fucking super bombed. Um, I, I think it was Navarro that said, I am a member of other secret groups. So I, I guess, do you think that's a problem? Do you think that you know all these people talking to each other behind the scenes is an issue that's playing into what we're seeing people get angry about in Gamergate? Or do you think that's an ethical issue? Or I guess, how do you think of that, Eric? I think it's an inevitability. I mean, I think that in every industry and in, and in certainly in other types of media, like the political media, I mean, we talked about journalists earlier, but I mean, we, we know that these, in, in politics in particular, you know, the, the, that people of a different political stripe are going to be working with other people. I mean, I, I don't, I don't, it's, it's one of those things, you, you look at the world and you say, I wish it was better, but at, on a certain level, this stuff just goes on, and it's always going to, and it always has. Uh, do you think it's, um, well, let me rephrase it then. Uh, do you think it's acceptable, uh, the Games Journal's pro list? It, it, let's say things had turned out differently and you were invited into it. Would you have accepted the invite, and would you have taken part in um, what Keith, or, or I'm sorry, what Orland from Ars Technica had set up? Would you have joined that group? I've never been in, in in a group like it, so probably not. But I mean, I, I know that I email people, and everybody does. I mean, I guess where do you draw the line in in terms of what's acceptable? I mean, people on a on an email list is not in and of itself a, a bad thing. I mean, peop, everybody here emails people. Everybody here has has their contacts that they deal with, you know, in in a, in that fashion. I I think that there was things published that, that Milo published that were obviously going too far but I mean honestly the, the simple act of emailing with other people in your profession is not in and of itself uh, unethical per se so well, I, don't, I don't know what you're supposed to do about that. What happens in these situations isn't so much um, that there is although there may be worrying collusion on specific topics. What happens when these lists exist and are, are very large, there was 150 people on this list, most of whom would simply have been reading and not necessarily posting. Um, and the list was going for a very long time, too. What happens is uh, is groupthink and echo chamber dynamics start to um, form. And after years of a list like that, um, people begin to second-guess their own coverage and their own opinions. And it's normal for journalists to want to be admired by their colleagues, many of whom, they'll, they'll, I mean, many of the people on that list will have been looking to other journalists on that list for promotions uh, or, for, or for job opportunities. So there are all sorts of, if you look at the way the incentives are set up, in a close-knit but influential and relatively large long-running group like that, the incentives all point towards unanimity of opinion and homogeneity of um, outcome. Now, there was lots of disagreement on that list, and lots of people didn't agree with certain things that were happening, and when particularly egregious suggestions came up, like, shall we buy Zoe Quinn a feel-better gift, thank God some journalists on the list said, what the fuck are you thinking? But the general trend in those sorts of um, little closed private communities is toward groupthink and toward an echo chamber, and it's that sort of context of... Of, uh, if you imagine sort of, you know, everybody sort of gradually coming together, you know, like so they say the universe is going to end in a big crunch, you know. Um, you've got this sort of gigantic galaxy of journalists, and they all very slowly start to come toward one another, and they get faster and faster and faster towards the end of the universe. And, you know, that's when we witness the end of the universe, um, if you like, a couple of weeks ago. That's the, that's the risk. That's what was wrong with it. That's why it was a story, and that's what I think that the emails that I've re released so far, and there are more to come, uh, show happening. And that's why that's why I think it was a problem. Yeah. Um, so I I agree with that. I, I think that the, the problem that we're we're looking at is that in and of itself, emailing people and being on a list is not necessarily there's nothing necessarily wrong with it. Uh, but it can have bad outcomes, and maybe it's a bad idea to participate. It, it, I think it gets very complicated in terms of like, you know, whether or not it is inevitably a bad thing. It just it can be. But um, anyways, I I have I have to get going though. 
Uh, oh well, uh, I appreciate you coming out, Eric. Uh, again, yeah, and let's uh, do it again. I, 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 no, I'm no, I, more of these. and I'm completely shit faced right now, so I've probably been in a massive asshole. But I, I do appreciate you coming on the stream. It was very nice of you, and I'm glad we were able to kind of get your perspective on this. So I appreciate that. Yeah, it's been fun. I, I'm I going to continue to bully you to, uh, to be <laughs> rougher and tougher and meaner. I mean, you know, it gets me off the hook, right? Because at the moment, I feel very lonely. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. It's always a nice, always a pleasure talking to you. All right. See you guys later. We'll we'll do this again. Take All right. Care. Have a nice night, Eric. Thanks for coming out. Goodbye, Mr. Kane. Goodbye. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, Milo, if you've got a few more minutes, um, I'm sure the chat wants to say something. They've been screaming at me to shut up because I'm a drunk idiot. So well, I, I will ask them questions in regards to what they would like to ask you. It takes a minute for them to catch up, so just got to right. give us a second here. Right. Well, it's, it's 4.48 here, so I'll give you 15 minutes, and then I'm going to retire to bed because I'll have to be up in an hour and a half. Um, but I will. let's, let's do, let's oh, do wow. 15 minutes. Oh well, shit. I, I appreciate that. Uh, I, no, again, thank you. Thank you for giving us the time. I, I know the chat probably has a lot of questions they want to ask, so I want to give them a chance to ask what they sure. want to ask. Sure, we must give the people opportunity. Uh, so let's see here. Uh, people are saying, "I shut the fuck up. You're too drunk," which is <laughs> extremely true. <laughs> I'm a loudmouth asshole when I get drunk, but then again, this was a fucking dumb stream, and I wasn't really expecting so, it. So you're a loudmouth asshole when you get drunk. How could oh, yeah, yeah, only when I get drunk. <laughs> That's right. you <laughs> but, the, but then I also offer to get people pearl necklaces. So, you see, it's kind of give and take. You don't really know which way it's going to go. Well, I'm, I, will, I will follow up with you on Twitter as to whether, when, I, <laughs> when I can cash that check. Oh, um, uh, yeah, it'll be a good one. Uh, so, well, uh, if you have any questions, uh, and I'm sorry, I'll let you go looping in one just second here. Uh, but if you have any questions, ask them now. We got 15 minutes, and Milo will answer them. Uh, go ahead, looping. Hmm? Well, that was me. That was me. Actually. Oh, I'm sorry. Short fat of taco. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, Milo, let me just ask you something really quick. Um, I remember I tried to email you. God, it was about a month ago, and mm -hmm. I, 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 yeah, and I, it probably just got lost in your in your inbox. But it was it was basically my stuff for. Um, for the for the IGF and Indicate and, and Phil Fish basically uh, buying his awards, um, and I kind of emailed you and I was like, hey, listen, is this is this like legally okay for me to put out? Because it it came with it came from um, leaked documents, uh, like documents that were illegally leaked from a uh, Polytron Corporation, and I was like, is it okay for me to like do a video on this or talk about this? And I guess I just wanted to hear like an official's opinion on talking about. Documents that were illegally leaked, but you had nothing to do with. Yes, well, there are some, there are some answers to those questions. I am not a lawyer, but I'm able to give you some advice. Um, if you could just hit me up with a forward of that, so it's on the top of my inbox, I'll, I will um, respond to you before I go to sleep. But we can we can talk that out. Is that okay? Sure, I'll just, I'll just send it off right now, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I'll tell you what I think I know. Um, it's an, it's important to remember that I know a little bit about British law and nothing about American law, but I can tell you well, what I'm I think. Canadian, actually, so... Oh, well, even worse. Um, <laughs> <I'll>... <laughs> no, I meant that in, in the nicest, most supportive way. Um, uh, I will tell you what I think is likely to be the case, and I will suggest to you what you should do with it. Okay. All right, no problem. Okay. Um, people want to know. Oh, and now they're asking me for my penis size. <laughs> you get that question too, isn't that fun? No, I have been getting that question as well. Well, look, as I've as I've said repeatedly, but nobody has really picked up. There is a sex tape out there somewhere. Um, so you know, <laughs> it's really it's really up to you guys. You understand, Milo, that now people are going to scour every single porn site that exists to try to find this uh, elusive sex tape. <laughs> to, to get a view, you have a lot of people who want you as your uh, as your internet husband or husband. Well, they pronounce I was, it. Well, I was a lot hotter and a lot younger when this video was recorded. So, if if somebody does find it, it will be a particular treat. Well, and, and you should be impressed too, because there's a thread right now on 8chan uh, talking about this. Uh, and the response, the response is uh, to how you've been throughout this entire debate, aside from me being a massive asshole, <laughs> is that you've been a uh, consummate gentleman. So they are very impressed with you. Well, I've never been called that before. Well, now, now you <laughs> I've have. Called, I've been called a lot else. <laughs> uh, I, I guess uh, one question I think that have, has kind of popped up, uh, Milo, in regards to the reaction that you've gotten from gamers as this has kind of gone on. 
How, how do you view that? Um, it seems like you've gotten a lot of positive support. People really are glad that you've kind of at least talked about the issue. You know what I mean? That you've reported on the issue. Um, what is the response you've gotten from gamers themselves? It's been it's been very positive. It's been very nice. I'm somebody who enjoys going into new areas that I didn't know anything about before, finding out as much as I can about them, doing some reporting, kickstarting discussions. You know, um, and I've done that in a couple of different industries, I suppose. And they're all sort of related to tech, whether it's startups or whether it's corporates or gaming or whatever. Um, I, I quite enjoy meeting a huge bunch of new people, find, you know, assimilating a lot of information at once, and then doing some reporting on that area. So um, this one, I can say, without blowing any smoke up your collective houses, <laughs> um, this has been the most fun by far. Um, I've had the nicest people that I've, that I've met and that I've come into contact with doing this by far. Um, and I've enjoyed the subject matter as well. It's a good, old-fashioned, nice bit of journalism, being able to like break open a secret mailing list, um, you know, see these guys like squirm, and there's nothing more wonderful than seeing other, <laughs> other journalists like, squirming, like they make the people they write about squirm every day, and seeing them, you know, being able to dish it out, but totally unable to take it, um, is just one of the most delightful <laughs> things in the world. I know that probably makes me a, terribly a terrible person, but um, <laughs> it's just, it's enormously enjoyable watching watching hypocrites get a taste of their own medicine. Um, and I won't, you know, I won't lie, that's part of the motivation for me. I do, I do enjoy it. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's been fun. The subject matter's fun. It's a great story. It's, you know, it's like catnip to people who like kind of uh, mischievous journalism like I do. Um, but it's also, I think, in service of a good goal and a higher purpose. And, you know, I have to be very clear and very honest. Like, the gaming community and gamers at large have been a revelation. It's been a revelation to me. And I feel very ashamed of some of the things I said about them, um, you know, in, in ignorance a few, a few months ago. Because when we heard that sad news about Christina Summers' husband, mm -hmm. And I just sort of thought, well, fuck it, let's send her some flowers. And I just, and and um, you know, because it's a nice thing to do, and she's she's seems like a lovely woman. The just the explosion of support. I mean, it's got two thousand signatures now. You know, and, and it's what is it? In a couple of days, isn't it? When, when did this happen? Tuesday. Yeah, um, and that's that's amazing, really. When you think about it. Two thousand people. I mean, I didn't really do anything. I just phoned a florist and threw a website together. But the all of these people took time out of their day to go and. Um, send these messages. And some of these messages are really very beautiful and very sort of well thought out. I just think, I can't imagine that happening, uh, you know, in, in any of the other worlds in which I've worked. It's just the most extraordinarily wonderful thing to watch. And it makes me, it really motivates me to fight on your behalf. And there will become a point where I don't think of myself as a reporter anymore, and I just think of myself as part of Gamergate. It hasn't happened yet, because I think it's important for me to stay, to retain ob objectivity for as long as possible, so I can still write about this stuff. Maintain the wall. Come. Yeah. Well, and that's, there will, there that's will come a point when I can't really write about this anymore, because I feel like I'm more of a part of the movement than a reporter, um, frankly. And that's the highest compliment and the most sincere compliment I can pay any, any of you. Um, another question that seems to be asked a lot, <clears throat> excuse me, on uh, both the stream and uh, the HN thread and on Twitter. Uh, what has your experience been, because most people know that you're not really a gamer, you've kind of dipped your toe into the pool, so to speak. What has your experience been so far with that? Uh, what do you think? Is it some kind of hobby that you'd be interested in? Is it just some kind of exciting new thing to kind of test out just to see what it's like? What, what are your thoughts? Sure. Well, it certainly started as just a way for me to know what the fuck I was talking about, right? Um, so I, I started, I, I, I did that first live stream, which was effectively the first video game I'd ever really played, apart from maybe 15 minutes of Doom 10 years ago, whatever, um, on, you know, um, as, a, as a child. But um, I have found there are things that I really like, and I suppose by any meaningful definition, I'm probably on my way to becoming a gamer, because um, things that I, I mean, everyone's enjoyed me being totally shit at Portal 2, I think. Um, but, but I, too, have enjoyed being shit at Portal 2, because, you know, my, my if you like, my intellectual landscape, my world, my universe is words, right? And I, I, I like words, and I'm good at words. I'm less good at numbers, physics, 
Uh, you know, I mean, working out that momentum thing would have been impossible for me on my own. You know, uh, sort of jump through the portal and you know to get extra speed and all that kind of stuff. And people were giving me tips, and eventually I figured it out. And, and when I figured it out, I, I, it, playing that was so enjoyable for me and stretched me because my, my brain just doesn't ever have to compute that kind of stuff, right? Um, and that I found sort of challenging and interesting and, and, and enjoyable. Um, I'm I'm determined to make it past a few levels of FTL because it's uh, it, it just it destroys me about three minutes in every time. I beat that game like my first time playing it, and nobody believes me. And now I try to no, go back and beat believe, it, and I can't do I it. I don't believe you because it's really. <laughs> No, no. You see, you see, it's true no, though. I'm not lying. I really I did it. No one believes no, me. No, I don't. I don't fucking believe you because, <laughs> because, because you know, I get these. I get into this fog, and then my spaceship fills up with fog, and then it says there's intruders, and there's like twelve of the fuckers, and I've only got three little dudes. And how the hell are you supposed to defend against that? So no, I don't believe you. Um, <laughs> Have you tried not being bad at the video game? Oh. oh, that that's 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 harsh. I, I agree with Milo though. I played uh, Faster Than Light. I've gotten my fucking shit kicked in on that. Um, uh, I guess one more question that's kind of coming through the chat is, sure. you, you know, you've done these streams uh, to kind of show off gameplay, and you've gotten a lot of popularity. I mean, a, a lot of people really like you now. What do you think of the incentives um, when you're kind of looking at YouTubers? Kind of going back to what we we're talking about earlier, yeah. uh, these people that do Twitch streams and stuff and. Um, uh, I guess advertise on it. Do you see a future for enthusiast press? Uh, do you see a future for gamers that are able to monetize and really make it into a career? Or do you think there's a distinction between people who have, uh, I guess, a journalistic degree and write for a site uh, as opposed to a yeah. YouTuber and a Twitch streamer? Yeah. Um, so I see, with no disrespect intended to any of the YouTubers, I and see, that's fine. Um, I see a similarity between them and me, which is I'm like an ENFP. If you know if you know what that means, uh, well, oh, yeah. the Myers Briggs thing. I'm very ENFP, which means that I kind of do I do, although it may not look like it, just following my Twitter, I do really want to be liked um, for the right reasons, you know, for good. <laughs> uh, we I, all do. Uh, yeah. I behave in every every possible way to avoid that ever being possible, ever happening. But um, <laughs> but secretly at heart, I do. Um, and I think that there are some problems when, um, with very personality and opinion-driven, you know, sort of personality cults, if you like. I think there are some problems there. I think there are some perverse incentives set up there because basically it's all it's very easy to become very popular by being nice uh, and by being lovely and friendly and happy about everything. You can. Um, you can garner an enormous audience. And you see this with the way that Hollywood stars and pop stars behave um, around what they do, with sort of anodyne, friendly, upbeat, fairly bland personalities. Um, there's a worry that there won't be a level of honest criticism from YouTube personalities who are as concerned with their own profile and popularity as they are with what they're talking about. So I think that's one of the reasons that keeping hold of at least some journalists is a good idea. And of course, I mean, my, my personal view on this conflict of interest thing is that the market will police itself pretty well. And I think that's already happening. And I think um, it only takes... The, the thing about whistleblowers is it only takes one person to blow the whistle. The advantage you have with YouTubers is that they all have, you know, they all have big platforms. It just takes one random guy to make a YouTube video about pretty much anything, and it can go massive if it's a big enough story. Right? This is the environment in which we now live, which wasn't the case 10 years ago, when if you wanted to break a story, you had to go to a journalist, you had to go to a newspaper, you had to go to a TV station. That simply isn't the case anymore. And the, 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 I think there is slightly better transparency, and there is a better relationship with viewers, and I don't think viewers will put up with uh, deals like the, the Mordor game deal. Um, and I think that sort of stuff will, will fix itself over time. I do think that the failures of journalists are greater and are more severe and are um, should be punished more 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 um, harshly because they are professionals who are in the business of holding power to account and they're abusing their own. Oh, okay, and then I guess, um, and I know you're short on time, so I don't want to keep you too no, long. No, that's okay. That's okay. Uh, one one final question for you, if you have the time. Um, 
uh, people are asking again in stream on Twitter and on uh, the GG board on HN. Um, what what is your appraisal, I guess, of how Gamergate or the people that support that movement have done so far? Uh, if you were to categorize it, if you were to give it kind of a would you like, would you like uh, a summary, would you like yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I okay. Uh, <laughs> oh no, I'm gonna <laughs> undo a month of good work. <laughs> <laughs> I would give you uh, an A minus B plus. Um, okay. I think. Um, there's been a lot of very good, very constructive checking of bad language and whatever, and I and 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 unpleasant. And I, even I get it, you know. I was tweeting this awful Gamer X organization today. I mean, why won't they answer me? Am I the wrong sort of homosexual? Am I not gay enough for you? Because I can, <laughs> I can suck more dick if you like. Um, you know, <laughs> can somebody please respond to me from Gamer X because you know. <laughs> Or, or, or are you only for for gays who uh, who agree with you? Um, yeah, Milo, I can tell you, saying please respond usually doesn't work. <laughs> well, I, <laughs> mm, um, no, but I'm ENFP, you see, so I'm needy. Uh, and um, you know, I <laughs> um, <laughs> people were saying to me that was too aggressive, and I thought, oh my god, fuck's sake! So, you know, you really need, you want to see aggressive? Let's, you know, I'll show you aggressive, sweetheart. Um, but no, I, look. <laughs> I've sort of lost track of the question. Sorry. What was your question? No, no, no. me. Oh, no that, that's fine. Let me rephrase. Well, no, I think it. you can do it. No, I know. I've got. I'm sorry. I remember. Um, okay. Go look, ahead. I think by and large, well, I think um, Intel was great. I don't have obviously visibility, as I don't think anybody does, on what's happening behind the scenes. I've noticed that people like um, this Rogue Star and Sargon and whatever are respectively doing a lot of organization and motivation for letter writing and a lot of sort of citizen journalism. And I think all of that's been terrific. I think you're showing the, the journalists up, frankly. Um, I think that the language on, whole, on the whole is temperate and accurate. I think that you're showing remarkable restraint in the face of horrible insults from um, the journalists that ought to be fighting your corner. So I can't really complain, with very, uh, complain about very much. Um, if, if I'm completely honest, and I'm mm -hmm. going to leave this as, a, as something for you to think about, um, I didn't understand the response to Damien Schubert's suggestion for a industry body to sit alongside. I understand where a lot of you guys come from, and I know that the idea of leaders is completely antithetical to the anonymous psychology and all the rest of it, but when I spoke to Monday Matt about this on the radio thing I do, um, I, it became very clear to me that it was just, it was obviously a good idea. Um, and that he was not somebody that any of you would want involved in it. But you've got to get yourself, you know, I think that Gamergate has a really powerful, um, important message. And you're going to have other important, powerful messages in the future. And you need to have, you need a way to get that on conference stages and to legitimize um, and to institutionalize a little bit, a little bit, um, some sort of mechanism. That is why you only get an A minus because I think there's got to be some recognition that if this movement is going to have longevity and stability and real commercial clout and power, um, I think it's got to evolve from a sort of loose coalition of people doing, you know, people tweeting and live streaming into something that's that somebody from the outside world can visit. They understand what it is, what it wants, some of the people that are involved in it, and can phone it up and book a speaker. Well, that's 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 the thing. Like it's 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 this loose confederation, but I mean it's it's based upon the how do I put this? Like okay, when people ask people who who are in Gamergate why they're there, you know, they get different responses, and they're gonna say what's your goal, and they're gonna get different responses. I did this little uh, questionnaire uh, a couple of weeks ago that was basically it was two questions. It's who are you, and why are you here. And then five questions saying, "What do you want?" So I got close to like almost like 600 emails at the end of it, and mm. it's basically everybody from all walks of life. Who are you? What do you want? Why are you here? And I, I noticed that the goals, quote unquote, that they had for Gamergate were totally different, but they were somehow linked to the "Why are you here?" You had 
some people who were here as you know you know the corruption in the industry aspect. You had some people here that were uh, as at the uh, you know the gamers are dead articles and you know lambasting the entire demographic. You have some people who were here at, at you know as part of the social justice narrative that they're seeing pushed. You have people here seeing due to a, a victimization of a certain group, and mm -hmm. it it's gotten to the point where the goal of GamerGate is personal and independent. You know. Of, of the person itself, to the person itself, not to the movement, whereas the movement itself is rather a means to that goal. What I would say is that you lack in the gaming industry um, a consumer body. I think it is inevitably going to surface, and if you don't make it now, if you don't take the opportunity to create it now, somebody else will later, and it will look a lot less like what you'd want. Um, and I think in every industry, every big established industry, you have consumer bodies. They all run along very different lines. They're all structured very differently. But what they do is um, regulate, is uh, advocate for consumers' interests. Now, that doesn't mean that they um, only fight on one subject. They fight on many fronts at once, and those, those uh, priorities change over time. And the people who run that organization may be re-elected you know, as, as regularly as, as often as, as, as people like. Um, but what they have in common and what they're, what they're useful for and what I think that this movement could do with, if I'm honest, is they have the ability to strike fear into the hearts of the people that they judge. For example, which Damien Schubert suggested, which I thought was a terrific idea, they can rate journalistic outlets. They could give Kotaku an F or a D or whatever, that speaks so powerfully, you cannot understand how powerfully that speaks to advertisers. Yeah, it's, it's actually, it's not a bad idea, it's really, really great. The, the, the thing, thing about it is, it's just, it's just a matter of timing. Yeah. Something now like is that. The time to do it. Now is the time, yeah. you are never going to have more attention, or frankly, more sympathy than you have right now. And nor are you going to have more people prepared to donate, you know, Maybe a fiver each. You get two thousand people to donate a fiver each. You've got enough to for a little war chest to you know get a website sorted, get someone to brand it, you know all that kind of basic stuff. Um, you're never going to have a better opportunity than now. And the point that that I'll leave, I'll, I'll just make two points, then I've got to go. The first okay. one is if you if you are in a position where you can rank and judge outlets, advertisers listen, and they don't just listen. They don't just make big decisions, which you you know see with Intel, it, it, those Intel things happen once in a blue moon, right? It was a really big fucking deal and a huge victory. But you shouldn't expect one of those every week. What will happen, it will be more subtle than that, um, what will happen is that uh, outlets that are rated very poorly will get lower, um, lower rates from their existing advertisers, right? So, um, so rate, uh, sites that are perceived to have more authority and speak to more gamers and are trusted by more gamers will get paid more for the same ads. So you won't necessarily see, um, you know, Intel dropping out from one website. But what you what you might not necessarily know initially is that those relationships will begin to change if this organization is seen as a respectable authority and can speak for enough ordinary video gamers. Right? It doesn't have to speak for everybody, but if it speaks for the majority and expresses in relatively uncontroversial terms, most of the stuff that most people care about, it will have credibility. And if it has credibility, it has power. And if it has power, you can use it to punish the people who behave badly. Well, That's and, uh, what you're lacking. Oh, and I, I think, uh, just to kind of close this out, and then I know you have to go, um, it's something I've struggled with. Listen, I, I don't necessarily think that it's a bad idea. I think that people were resistant to it because of who suggested it. Uh, okay. And the kind of the, the, the timing involved in it. Yeah, um, I understand that. Uh, and again, uh, I really appreciate you coming in here. Like I said, we had a couple of questions we wanted to ask, and um, you were able to answer them just wonderfully. Uh, again, I apologize if I was a drunk asshole. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I wasn't expecting to pull you into this, um, or nor was I expecting to, yeah, to pull Eric Kane into this. Um, is there? Do you want to plug anything? Uh, what your Twitter is, so people well, can follow you in case they're not. Two, I will, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Um, but I will say two things. One is you've been um, an absolute delight, and thank you for having me. Um, and the second thing is just to say, you know, you guys have have done something almost unprecedented here. I haven't. I can't think of another sustained, coherent 
consumer revolt like this in the tech industry, in any bit of the tech industry, um, for years. I think it's powerful. I think it's marvelous. But you have to decide as a movement, would be my view. And you've, really, and you've got to do it before Christmas, I would say, um, what this is going to turn into, where it's going to go, and what it's going to look like. My personal opinion is that it stays fundamentally a headless, by which I mean leaderless, not um, directionless, uh, uh, coalition of engaged, persistent, polite, well-educated consumers who advocate for the interests of gamers. Um, but it is complemented by an organization comprised of people that, like, I would say, Eric Kane types who have sympathies on both sides and are able to be... Eric Kane is a journalist, so he wouldn't be an appropriate member, but people like that who you have identified and who you respect and who you think um, are able to accurately uh, convey your opinions. Um, people who can speak to anyone and uh, would be welcome on any conference stage and also could advocate the gamers' interests with Nick Denton, you know, the owner of Gorka, or with the, the president of EA. Somebody who you trust to sit down in a room and say, right, this is what the people we represent are really worried about. And that's lacking at the moment. That's, that's a problem. Um, it sounds like you're advocating for a union almost, a gamers' yeah, union. Well, it's, it's, it's a consumer body. I mean, it's like Witch Magazine or, you know, any of these other things. It is, um, you know, it is, a, it is a consumer watchdog run by consumers um, that uh, acts as a acts almost as a sort of journalistic what you'll find actually is with these consumer watchdogs that they generate their own editorial journalists will be quite keen on um, publishing surveys that this body comes up with comes up with because what you'll do is you'll do a, an annual ranking of publications right and you'll rank publications from like A to E and that becomes the, that becomes a really powerful annual news event because every publication wants to know where they are on that list. Um, and those sorts of things generate their own editorial. Other people will start to write about them. Journalists will want to make you happy. And it doesn't mean that they'll write opinions that... that uh, it doesn't mean that you'll alter their fundamental opinions in some cases, but it means that they will be a hell, a hell of a lot politer and more thoughtful and more considerate to other points of view, and that they will hopefully start to do their jobs better. And you will be able to express to them your pleasure or displeasure with them after a year. Um, you will be able to... Um, write and speak and talk about um, what consumers aren't particularly happy with. And it's not just journalists. You will be able to do all of those things also about developers, about big game studios. You can, you know, you can give, you can have uh, sort of unofficial annual awards for like the best games and all the rest of it. Take some of the power back from journalists and, and decide yourselves who, what, you know, game of the year, studio of the year, and similarly, you know, fuck up of the year, disappointment of the year. <laughs> no, you know, and no, no developer, no, you know, particularly the big ones, want to be, you know, the game industry consumer bodies fuck up of the year. You know, and they will do everything possible to avoid that. At the moment, they don't have to because they've got power over the journalists. But if you have a credible organization that is able to um, call out big screw ups like Mass Effect Three, um, and say this was unconscionably hopeless and we're not going to let you forget about it you're speaking to the, you know you, you they have no power over you like they do over the journalists they have no ability to control what you're going to say about them this is the great glory of what your movement has at the moment but it needs to be codified in a way that that represents a genuine reputational risk to these companies so that they take you seriously and that's what's missing and that's my my last word well, and I, I think that's that's quite right. I mean, I, I remember um, the consumerist would write EA uh, each year, and they they eventually responded. It was a few years before it you know actually took effect, but now they're actually worried about it. Uh, so again, Milo, thanks a lot for coming out. Uh, can you do me a favor because I feel like I'm always fucking up your last name. Is it Yiannopoulos? Yiannopoulos? <laughs> How am I saying this? Oh, I get it wrong myself. I, I'm on the phone. <laughs> to the, I'm on the phone to the gas company or the water company. So can you spell your surname? And, <laughs> 
had this moment of panic, and I have to write it down. I've got a credit card out and read it out. Um, okay, it's it is Yiannopoulos. It's super easy. Um, Yiannopoulos. Yiannopoulos. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, th thank you again, uh, Milo Yiannopoulos, for <laughs> coming so out to the stream I, again. I'm I'm sorry if I was a little crude or a little drunk You've with you, been but delightful. Um, You've been delightful. It, it has been fantastic. And again, I will send you that fucking pearl necklace. I'll get your address from you later, <laughs> uh, privately. I'm yeah, a man. Uh, of, I am a man of my it, word, and you will get it. Isn't it the sort of thing that has to be given in person? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what. I'll fly out to London or wherever you're located in uh, the UK, and I will fucking give it to you in person. Oh, we'll set up a time. Happy to split the airfare on that one, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Milo, can you can you put your uh, your email in the chat, like the private chat, real quick, so I can actually send that off to you? Because I, I couldn't find your email. Oh, yeah, of course I will. Yeah, I will. Um, I'll do that, and I will. Um, uh, let me do it now before I forget. Um, okay. Thanks so much for having me. Um, appreciate it, guys. And, no, uh, no, it, it was a pleasure, uh, like always. Uh, thanks for coming out. I think the chat was really happy, and uh, HN was really happy, and Twitter was really happy that uh, you came out and were able to answer some of the questions and uh, be a little more calm than I was. Uh, so that was, <laughs> stop, it was very nice. Stop beating yourself up. You can get angry later. When you're... <laughs> I will. I will Never get very mind. angry later. Right. After you watch it tomorrow and see everything. <laughs> oh, God, that's when the regret uh, regret. Uh, creeps in, yes. All right. <laughs> okay. Thanks so much, guys. Good night. All right. Have good a good night, night Mr. Yiannopoulos. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> have a good one. Bye. Uh, and again, to uh, Short Fat Otaku and Lopeng, if I'm I'm going to end the stream here pretty quick, so I'm going to just answer a few questions. But if you guys want to plug a Twitter account, a YouTube account, anything, uh, now would be the time to do it before the <laughs> before the users dwindle down to one. Uh, so if you want to <laughs> go, uh, go ahead. Shit, he didn't give the email before he left. No, I just oh, message him uh, privately <laughs> on Twitter. I'm sure he will. He's again, it's what fucking. He's got ten minutes to sleep before he has to get up, so he's probably fucking dead tired because <laughs> oh, he rambled on like back. a jackass. Came back. <laughs> um, hey, you know, go, go ahead, Lopeng. I'll, I'll go after. Well, I uh, as far as plugging though, I do want to give a call out to uh, Miss Lisa No in our hashtag uh, uh, at Black is in Yo. She's been really stand up in trying to get people to uh, uh, pretty much address less than savory characters who may be using our hashtag, uh, mm -hmm. asking people to bring them to her attention, and then going to speak with these people in private, and then thanking people for reporting them. And I have to say that's a really, really stand up thing. So my plug is at Black is in Yo. That's Miss Lisa No on Twitter. Well, thank you very much, Lo Ping, for uh, coming out. I'm sorry if we kind of talked over you. I, I kind of wanted to have both you and Short Fat Otaku talk more, but things sort of shifted direction once we got Eric Kane and Milo in here. Uh, well, Ian Oxford, hopefully time. I'm saying that. Yeah, I'll, I'll do another uh, Lazy Thursday stream uh, next week, and I'll have both of, you, uh, or both of you on with nobody else, <laughs> and you can fucking talk your heads off. <laughs> uh, so Short Fat Otaku, if you want to plug something here before you jump out. Yeah, I'm I'm not as as selfless as Lo Ping. You can you can go see uh, my own YouTube channel. It's Short Fat Otaku, and the Twitter is Short Fat Otaku, and everything Short Fat Otaku. And I mean, like, if you want to see who's behind everything, that's uh, on Twitter, uh, the camera girl, which is the underscore camera underscore girl. She she does all the work on this stuff. I just I just talk. I, I'm I'm no idiot savant like she is. So. No, and and that's fine. I, I'm I, again I'm. Glad that both of you came out. Uh, sorry if I was a little crass. Again, I'm I'm fucking super drunk. <laughs> but, Dude, I've um, been a drunk handler for like ten years. You're fine. You're like hey, low hey, on the <laughs> drunk tier scale. Hey, hey, and you did a great job, Loping, at least moderating till I became a shit. So uh, again, <laughs> thank you both for coming out. Uh, again, guys, uh, they listed where you can follow Matt or other people that they want you to follow. So check them both out. Uh, if you guys want to jump out, I'll answer a few uh, questions on the stream, and then I'm going to close it up. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and definitely a pleasure, man. Yeah, it was it was great. Oh, I, I will say one thing quickly before I go. Um, yeah, go ahead. The uh, the next indie. Oh, yeah. I it's it's indefensible, not indefeasible. Indefensible comes off a play of words of uh, indefensible. Oh uh, no! And again, if you've ever heard me <laughs> yeah. uh, say uh, hyperbole, uh, it's hyperbole. <laughs> You'll know that I'm a fucking retard. So that's completely yeah. understandable that I'm going to butcher that. <laughs> But that next video is supposed to come out tomorrow. Um, it's going to be delayed now because I spent all night here. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, then they can, they can all blame my ass for being <laughs> rumbling drunk. But uh, So in a day or two, we should expect it in the next 48 to 72 hours then on Short Fat Otaku's YouTube channel? Yep, yep same channel. 
All right, awesome. Thank you again for coming out, and uh, I'll talk to you next Thursday if you got some time. Yep, yeah, I'll talk to you later, man. Thanks. All right, have a good night. All right, let me jump back into chat here. See if people are st still screaming at me not to be uh, this drunk, and then we'll uh, answer a few questions. Maybe fuck about for a little bit and see what's going on. Oh, one second here. God damn, am I shit faced. All right, chat, since there are still. How many people are in here? I don't know, like two. Since there are still two people in. 27 people in. Um, go ahead. Ask whatever questions are burning on your mind. I am a free man. I can answer whatever the fuck you want to talk about. Jim, when is the next video coming out? It is coming out Saturday night, uh, Sunday morning. So one of those two times. Between that that 12-hour uh, period. But it will be coming out this weekend. I guarantee you that. It will be real time, not gym time. Do you speak Mandarin? Not very well. I know a little bit of Mandarin, but not a lot of it. IA equals best drunk? Probably not. I, I more than likely will wake up in the morning and be like, God damn, what an oppressive asshole I was. Hopefully I didn't mistreat Eric Kane too much. I know I got a little heated there uh, and probably missed the point. But again, that's more of the... Uh, the result of paint thinner than it is my fault. What's your opinion on IGN? Don't really have an opinion on IGN. I don't read it, so I don't know what it's like. Everybody knows it's a 10 out of 10 meh kind of website, so who knows. I are you really docs? If you're talking about the docs that are up on Encyclopedia Dramatica and other sites, I can't tell you. Maybe I am, maybe I'm not. It would be foolish of me to tell you. Is Friday your day off? <laughs> I can't. I can't really answer that. Um, I can't. I can't answer that without giving out personal information. I'm sorry. Wow! Look at those numbers drop. Milo is a very popular asshole. So is Eric Kane and Short Fat Otaku and Lo Peng. And I'm just a sad motherfucker with 20 viewers. Check your Google. I don't know how to do that. I'm, I, I, I don't know how I'm coming off. I'm probably slurring my words and speaking stupidly, but I am really fucking drunk right now. Just more than you could imagine. So I don't know if I'm holding up decently or not, but uh, there you go. Call me a cunt, Jim. You're a cunt. You're welcome. How do you feel? Uh, oh, it's going way too fast. Jim, say the word shit. Uh, shit. There you go. Nine out of ten, it's okay. Thank you very much. Unless you're making fun of IGN because there's a delay in the stream. I don't know. I don't really care. I named this, by the way, because of people, a couple of... <laughs> a couple of people are saying, don't make a Gamergate stream if you're going to be drunk. This isn't a Gamergate stream. As you notice, it's called Lazy Thursday Stream. And none of my tweets were related to Gamergate. It just so happened that Eric Kane wanted to come in and Milo wanted to come in. Well, I'll admit, in the case of Milo, I asked him if he'd like to come in because I couldn't remember the name of the Games Journal Pro thing, and so he was nice enough to grace us with his presence. But uh, kudos, again, to both Eric Kane and Milo's. Uh, Milo. And let me get their pitches out here, or plugs, whatever you want to call them, before I get too drunk to actually fucking say this properly. Uh, you can follow Eric Kane on Twitter at Eric Kane. That's one word. E R I C or no wait, E R I K K A I N. That's Eric Kane. Let me get Milo here. Yiannopoulos. Now that I can say his last name without sounding like a fucking complete moron. Oh my god, everything's turning to just, <laughs> just fucking disaster. <laughs> I can't even click on this shit. Uh, Milo is way, way too uh, too humble. So let me give you his Twitter account. You can follow him at, at Nero. That's N-E-R-O. That's at Nero for Milo. Uh, both of them, uh, Eric Kane and Milo, were very uh, nice to come onto the stream. 
again, I feel a little bad about how I treated Eric. Probably shouldn't have talked over him and been a complete asshole, but uh, both very nice guys. Like I said, I like Eric Kane. I like his writing. I think a lot of people feel that way. Uh, so it just, I guess, felt from the consumer's perspective that um, he was disinterested, but came out on the stream and answered the questions. He was very upfront about how he felt and dealt with the pressure very well. And Eric Kane's a good guy, in my opinion. And so is Milo. So again, you can follow them both on Twitter. Hopefully you do. Let's see if there's any questions in the stream or the Twitter. Uh, apparently on GG, if IA wasn't constantly saying he's drunk, I doubt anyone would notice. That's how you know I'm drunk. Uh, ID number NCE134. I'm, I'm a fairly, um, what do they call it? Y you know, like in Mad Men, when those guys get drunk during lunch? That kind of thing. Uh, generally, I'm okay. If I get really, really shit-faced, you'll notice it, but um, ah, fuck, I don't know. After I took those eight shots, which somebody in the chat calculated, I probably took another four shots, so I'm like at 12 shots. I don't know what that means in relation to vodka, but you can calculate it and figure it out. Uh, somebody's asking, would you fuck Milo? I'm a straight guy, so that would be a no. But by all means, feel free to follow him and lust after him. I know Milo is uh, into... <laughs> I, I don't know how to say it. I'm too drunk. Let's just skip that. Get drunker. Probably not. Oh, it's getting very hard to read the chat. Obnoxious drunk? I don't know. Chat will have to decide. Twitter will have to decide. Uh, GG will have to decide if I'm a obnoxious drunk. Just jumping onto Steam here to see if I can get a hold of Jesse Ventura. See if he'll want to come on. See if we can close it out with a little Jesse. All right, I probably shouldn't stay silent too long. So. Oh, dreamy. That's from Jade Three D Fox. I think I'm saying that right. I don't know who you're talking about, Jade. Uh, Milo in his pearl necklace is pretty dreamy. If it was going to sway me for the other team, it probably would be that. But as I've said before, I have a thing for Asian chicks. So unless Milo suddenly changed ethnicities, it's probably not going to happen. Uh, somebody's responding on Skype because I tried to message Andrew. That's the Mr. Jesse Ventura guy. That's Blackface Kermit, by the way, on Twitter. Uh, I think Andrew is dead. Hung himself in depression. Well, that is sad. Thank you, though, Hack, for telling me about that. I'm sorry, everybody, but Jesse is dead. He swinging in a closet somewhere. People are saying to sub to JonTron. I see no reason not to. JonTron's a pretty cool guy. Feel free to sub to him. He's already got like a bajillion subs, so I don't really know if that's going to have any effect, but knock yourself out. Wow, this is going quickly. How is your skeleton? I would hope he's fine. Fap, fap, fap. Knock yourself out. Nobody can see you, so jack off to your heart's content. He's got the yellow fever. I've admitted that time and time again if you read any of my answers on Ask FM, you'd know that I love the Asian women. Can't help it. <clears throat> and I'm coughing like a jackass now. Uh, my straightforwardness is oppressing. I'm sorry. I'm a shitlord uh, cess... Or, <laughs> I was going to say sessler. Uh, cis het pig, I think, is what they go with. I'm not 100% sure. I'm just watching the viewers dwindle down. I'm waiting for it to hit 20. Jantran, I don't think that's the right name. Jim, say my name, and it went by. Holy shit, way too quick. I don't even know, dude. It was something. You got some name. Do you have big feet? I've already said in the, uh, somebody asked earlier what your shoe size is. Ten and a half. Figure it out from there.
you could say he's the newest hanging closet monster. That is a very, that is a very witty hack. That is, that's a good, that's a good joke. <laughs> Literally a race trader. You're also very harsh on me, but Paul knows this. I, I did all those fucking Tumblrism videos, and I did the Hugbox stuff way before the Gamergate stuff. So Paul is very well aware that I love the Asian ladies. Uh, Asian chicks are fucking awesome. I have no regrets. Shit, Lord Sessler is right. I agree with you. Jim, do the alphabet backwards. Z, Y, W, and that's about as far as I get. And I had to think about that, too. So that should give you some idea of where I am uh, alcohol-wise. Jim, do you read The Good Night Moon? I don't think I'm familiar with it, so I could say no, I don't. Who hanged himself? That was in regards to somebody else's username, a uh, hanging closet monster who goes by Hack. Fuck you, Hack. I'm telling him that. Which is funny. I mean, it's ironic in a way. His name is Hack, but he can't hack shit. <laughs> now I wait for his Skype response to that. <laughs> It'd take a few minutes for that to catch up, but okay. Man, you are really fucking drunk right now. You don't know the half of it. Who is the best red letter media person, I'm going to guess you asked that? Because that went by really fucking quick. Mike. Mike is the best red letter media person. Why does IA hate X? I don't know what X is. You're being a dick to me because I can't. I see all this XYZ shit. Stop. That's not, that's not fair, man. No regrets. Yeah, that's right. No regrets. Do you think a rate my professor like site for journalists would be effective? Here's my honest thought on this. Uh, Milo brought this up. Here's what I honestly think. And I, I know Monday and Matt brought it up. Zen of whatever his fucking name is brought it up on Twitter. I don't like the idea of a council because I think it's a gatekeeper mechanism to keep people from doing effective things. But on the same hand, you know, on the other hand, I guess, Milo's correct. You do need some kind of officiating body. The problem is the logistics of it. Who do you set up as being the uh, head person? How do you make sure that they're not corrupt? How do you make sure that they're going to be fair and not decry people looking into different things? If you set up some kind of a Gamergate council that provides ratings or services, that kind of thing, how, how are you going to make sure that they're not going to say, hey, you know what, King of Pool and Sargon of Akkad, you can't look at Digra. And if you do look at Digra, we're going to call you assholes. Or uh, Thunderfoot, if you talk about Anita, we're going to decry you, that kind of thing. It's really risky. Uh, somebody had asked earlier on Ask FM, hey, do you think a, a kind of um, archive or deposit site would be good for information related to Gamergate? And yes, I do think it would be good. But again, the logistics of it, how do you set it up? How do you get that officiating body to work? I know some people who worked with Occupy Wall Street had commented on the Gamergate thing, and they've seen what happens when social justice warriors shit stuff up, so maybe they'd be the people to ask because they'd know the pitfalls to avoid. Not my place to say I'm not your fucking leader. I'm just some random asshole on YouTube that makes shitty videos. So it's up to you guys to figure out how you're going to work it. Can I get a pearl necklace? No. I have a feeling this pearl necklace is probably going to cost me like a grand or two, which isn't a big deal. But, yeah. And I, I, I'm one of those fuckers that when I say something, I actually keep my word. So more than likely, Nero is, or Milo, is going to get a fucking pearl necklace and be like, holy shit, he actually sent me one. No, uh, again, people asking, can I get a pearl necklace? I'm not going to send you a pearl necklace. I'm sorry. What is your opinion on King of Pole? King of Pole's a nice guy. His streams are entertaining. I, I get it. I like to crack jokes about the guy and give him shit for running ads. Don't get me wrong, though. I'm not, I don't think he's a shill. I think he's just somebody who likes to do streams. He's a Pollock, and he happened to key in on the Gamergate thing, and he's talking about it. More power to him.
Tyrone is the leader of GG, sure enough. Holy shit, IA is loaded. Welcome to the fucking stream. Uh, I don't know if you're looking at the numbers, but it's dropped down to 22 people now. So yeah, I'm a little drunk. Oogly boogly. I could barely say that. You're welcome. What is your fetish? I'm not that drunk. I'm not going to tell you. Here's the reason I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you what I'm into sexually because one, why the fuck would I tell you that? And two, why the fuck would I tell you that? It's not going to happen. King of Pole hates children. Don't we all, though? Aren't children just horrible? What games are you currently playing? I just picked up um, Super Smash Brothers for the 3DS. And by the way, uh, all the fucking assholes asking me who I'm maining, because I don't fucking know. Robin. I'm maining Robin. Fuck you, Robin is good. I don't give a shit if all those assholes online are using Little Mac. Fuck them. I'm using Robin. <clears throat> they can deal with that shit. Oh, what the fuck was that? Uh, Lo Peng, if you jump back into the call. Yes, I did. I was wondering how long it would take you to notice. I, I heard a little bit of background <laughs> noise. Uh, by all means, feel free to talk if you got something you want to chat about. No, I just just felt, felt like I had some plans just fell through, so I felt like keeping you the drunk company it reminded me of college. Oh, that's fine if you can tolerate it. <laughs> More than able to tolerate it. That uh, can you... probably help help you eye those questions in the box because you seem to be missing a lot of choice stuff. Oh uh, yeah, if you if if you don't mind, if you got some time, if you want to give me a hand here, can you read some of the shit out in the YouTube I, chat? Because I, I am having read. a lot of trouble doing it. I can read perfectly fine here. Uh, some people want to know who you main in Smash. Uh, as a, I said just a couple of minutes ago, I'm focusing right now on Robin. Uh, I don't know if they're good or not, but I'm having a lot of fun using them. <laughs> Someone wants to know if you want to build a boat for them. I will uh, build you a boat after I finance that fucking pearl necklace for Milo. It's going gonna, it's gonna to cost materials for me to build you a boat, so I'm going to have to come up with a budget plan on that. Your opinion on Marodes? On Marodes? Um, Marodes. Uh, yeah, th this is why I identify as a constitutionalist rather than a libertarian. Um, I get it. I understand what people are mocking when they bring up Marodes in regards to taxation and the use of public roads that have been financed by private citizens. Um, it's a funny joke. I don't really give a shit either way. I just like repeating it because it pisses off libertarians. <laughs> uh, they want to know who is your waifu and how old are they? I have no waifu, and I wouldn't know the age of something I don't have. Hmm. Let's see here. Uh, are you going to rape King of Pole? <laughs> Jesus Christ, no. Uh, again, I like Asian women. Unless King of Pole becomes a very convincing Asian woman, that's yeah. What if never you put a happen. put a wig on him and then hold on to his temples and stretch it out a little bit? Have you seen King of Pole? Because he puts uh, his picture all over the fucking place. Yeah, he's pretty. Just ignore the hair. You know who he kind of reminds me of, and um, I thought this the first time I saw one of his pictures. Have you ever seen Clerks? He looks like Dante. <laughs> He, he does. He has that same kind of facial hair, and he has a kind of same yeah, kind of like... Yeah, but Dante hair. is like cherubic. King of Pole is a little more angular. Well, no, no, I'm not saying in regards to weight. Don't get me wrong. No. I'm just saying in regards to the overall impression, he reminds me a lot of Dante. Like, I could picture myself... Who was the guy that was his buddy in uh, the uh, uh, gas station? The guy who worked at the video uh, store. Oh, Randall. Uh, yeah, I could picture him as... Um, I already forgot his name. Fuck, Dante, and I could be Randall. That's how I think of that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, where are your cigarettes, and what brand do you smoke? I smoke Camel Filter cigarettes, the best and smoothest cigarettes that are out there. As a VP of Camel, I recommend that you smoke them. <laughs> uh, people are doubting the uh, idea that you know what pearl necklace is in regards to the double entendre. Are you talking about the clitoris? No, uh, in, what? In regards, no, no, we're no. talking about pearls, right? Uh, I get what you're. I, I understand what I understand what the chat is talking about with their double entendre, but no, I'm going to send Milo an actual pearl necklace. Well, yeah, they know they know you're going to do that, but they were just making sure you knew the other meaning. I don't know. I don't know how they got the impression you didn't know it, even though we made the lewd woo when he said Ooh. it too. Uh, no, again, I'm pretty drunk, so maybe I'm wrong. Who knows? 
I'm just a poor farmer from Minnesota, apparently, who looks like the scout from TF2, so I don't, don't know. Yeah, they were generally concerned, like, one of your cows ate you when you disappeared from the stream, so that was fun. No, like, like I had said earlier, uh, I had business out of state. I had to go uh, travel quite a distance to go take care of some business-related things, and I was gone for about a day or two. Would you one versus one someone in the chat? Uh, depends what game. Uh, I'm shit at all video games, but I'll 1v1 you. doesn't matter. Are you fit? Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> By fit standards, though, I'm a manlet. Because if you're not at least 7 foot 9 inches tall, you're a fucking manlet. And I think, I think it's been upgraded to like 8, eight, eight foot twelve, uh, eight foot 11 now. Oh, it's a, a board dominated by giants. That's good to yeah. know. Just, just, just humongous people at this point. So are they going to rename Fit Nephilim then? Because like, <laughs> that, that kind of height is fucking obscene. So I don't know what they're going to call it. Do you fear your skeletons? Uh, no, I keep them uh, internally uh, suppressed under my muscle and skin, so I should be good. Well, I mean, you don't know. Muscle and skin is softer than bones, dude. If it wanted to, it could leap out of you at any moment. Oh, that's very true, but uh, skeletons, uh, a lot of people don't know this, are raging pussies, so they basically, a little bit of resistance is enough to keep them in check. <laughs> well, all right. So I you am. hear that? You shouldn't, be sp you, you shouldn't be spooked to skeletons that much, because <laughs> right. they're, they're cowards. They're, they're fucking they're more good. They're more afraid of you than you are of them. Very good. Yep, that's, that's true. Uh, let's see. What time do you do the stream? I keep missing them. Um, generally I'm a lazy fuck, so I just put up a stream when nobody else is doing it. Uh, again, I, like, I know King of Pole was doing one. I didn't know that until after I'd said I'd do it in an hour and a half. If I'd known that, I wouldn't have done it. Um, but I already gave my word. Uh, I try to avoid other people's streams because I don't want to split viewership. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. Whisker Grenade and, uh, Kotaku in Action and King of Pole and all these other people do really good streams. And so I don't oh, want to Whisker Grenade was livid, dude. Well, not livid, but drunk livid, not true livid, but like, cause your you uh like polls in your stream like popped up right right in the th last quarter of theirs. Oh shit! I di I didn't even know that. See, I thought yeah. <laughs> I, I thought pushing it out uh, an hour and a half would be good enough, cause I I knew he was doing one, and I knew that he had done it for about I'd say like a half an hour to an hour. So I figured, oh shit, he'll do it for about maybe two two and a half hours and then be done. Mm -hmm. um, that's why I gave the time period that I did. If I had known that it would interfere with his, I wouldn't have done it. I would have pushed it out till later. It wasn't intentional, uh, Whiskey grenade, or Grenade, if you happen to hear this. It was not intentional. If I had known, I had to push it out farther. Well, I think they're in bong land right now, so they're probably asleep. That would make sense. Uh, who is your favorite Power Ranger? Uh, well, I love Asian Chick, so Yellow Ranger would be my favorite Power Ranger. Well, the Yellow Ranger was a dude in the Japanese version. Yeah, but wasn't the uh, she was a chick in the American version? Well, yeah, but she is also dead. Yeah, yeah. Well, dude, <laughs> hey, I mean, come on, let's not be too picky here. You did, <laughs> you, you did say Power Ranger or Power Rangers, not Sentai Rangers or Sentai, whatever the fuck it is. Yeah, it's a little disturbing though when you see them like pop a squat and do a little pose. You can they don't change like they don't localize the Sentai, so the the Yellow Ranger you can see definite bulge. That's hey, unsettling. hey now. Uh, stop being such a uh, horrible suppressor, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, maybe the Yellow Ranger with their giant cock bulge uh, identifies as a female. Uh, I, you know what? Them. You're right. You're absolutely right. There is nothing wrong with a nice feminine dick. <laughs> That's right. It's a trans clitoris. Use the proper terminology. <laughs> All right. Let's see here. Uh... Do you suck feet? <laughs> I'm sorry, do you, you suck cut feet. Do you suck feet? They want to know if you suck feet. <laughs> Are you talking about feet? Like feet? like feet, like that you walk on. The things at the end of your legs. Do you suck them? No, that's generally... so funny that, to me. That's generally not something I engage in. Uh, I, I don't walk around to people, a random stranger on the street, and say, hey, can I suck your feet? <laughs> that's, uh, I don't know where the fuck that came from. I don't know. Everybody knows, can I pee in your butt is a much better line. There you go. That's right. the way they should have gone. Uh, Short Fat Otaku wants to know, for next week, should he get a f list for, of shit from Camera Lady to talk about because he doesn't know shit? Uh, yeah. Uh, again, I, I feel a little bad for you and Short Fat Otaku. I, uh, I, like, all honesty, I didn't expect Aaron K or Eric Kane and Milo, even though I mu invited Milo after Eric came in. Um, I hadn't expected that to kind of go that no, way. No, that was a fucking blast. Are you kidding me? 
Uh, so, yeah, I mean, uh, Short Fat Otaku, if you're listening, if you want to get a list of stuff together, by all means, go for it, man. Come on and talk about whatever you like. We'll give you both uh, as much time as you want. Let's see. Uh, do you love Ebola Chan? Who doesn't? Ebola Chan is great. Uh, let's see. Uh, how do you feel about the CP shit going down on 8chan right now? That's news to me. Uh, I, I think... Uh, if I had to guess, I think what they're referring to is what's going on on the random board, the B board, uh, and that would be the statement by Hot Wheels that um, they're going to adhere to certain laws so they don't get a bunch of shit. Listen, I, I get it. Everybody wants to go to an anonymous board and post whatever the fuck they want, and usually it comes down to an issue of people saying, well, I should have the, the freedom to post a bunch of CP if I want. A a and again, this is what I think the argument is about. Um, dude, he can't keep the site open if you're posting a bunch of kitty porn. So, obviously, it makes sense that he's going to say no to that. Let's see. Do you like sports? Yeah. Yeah, I follow a couple of different sports, but I'm not a huge uh, I'm not a huge sports fan. Uh, I do like SP, though. I, oh, yeah. SP's fucking great. Oh, yeah. I, They're I like that shit. a think tank for trolling and shit posting. Like, they don't even get mad at it anymore. Like, when they see a really, like, violent one, they just kind of look at it and go, huh, oh, that's good. I should use that for next time. Well, yeah, that's why they got the SP name, shit posting. <laughs> so is it SPI or SPA? Because I had a really awful person try to tell me it's SPA. It's SPI. See, see, they're crazy. All right, uh, do you like J-pop? Yes, uh, but I prefer K-pop. Oh. Girls' Generation? No. No? No. What? Uh, there, there's a guy on YouTube called DJ Masa who remixes a bunch of K-pop shit and J-pop shit, and it's really fucking good. Oh. Wait, what's yep. he called again? Uh, DJ Masa, M-A-S-A. -A. Uh, you can find him. He's got a bunch of mixes where he takes, like, Western and Eastern music and then mixes them together. So he's got, like, one from uh, Smells Like Teen Spirit, and then uh, I can't remember what the boy band name is from uh, Korea, but it's fucking crazy. Uh, and then he's got other stuff like Lollipop uh, from Lady Gaga and another K-pop band. It's, it's really good stuff, though. He's pretty talented. Hmm. Uh, do you follow hockey, and if so, who is your team? Oh, I haven't followed hockey since about 1990. And uh, it used to be the North Stars, but then they moved to Dallas, I believe, and I haven't followed mm. them since. Oh, they're all ours now, son. Uh -huh. I'll get That's fucked. Good. You stole our hockey team? Oh, well, it, uh, well, it's our hockey team now, so, you know, fuck right back at you. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, what is your favorite vodka? Uh... Karkov. Listen, I, I'm one of those people who I'm going to get drunk, I'm just going to drink to get drunk. That's what I am. Yeah, right amen. Now. Yeah, that, that's what I am right now. I'm not a beer drinker. I don't drink wine. Uh, if I'm going to sit there and suck on this horrible shit, it's going to be for a purpose, which is to get shit-faced. And so Karkov, as bad as it is and as horrible as it tastes, is the paint thinner of choice for me. See, you've got to be efficient with your alcoholism. You need that's, to drink the smallest amount as the fastest amount possible to get as drunk as you can. That's exactly right. That's the way you mm -hmm. want to go. Uh, let's see here. Ooh. That's the same question being reposted. Do you suck dicks? I think that's redundant. Oh, well, know uh, that. I'll answer it for the hell of it. Uh, no, I do not suck dicks. Your favorite book? Oof. Uh, shit. That's, that's fucking hard. I guess uh, the autobiography of Benjamin Franklin, just because I found his honesty refreshing. Wow, that's a wrong answer. <laughs> well, fuck you too. Everybody knows the correct answers are either Hatchet or Brian's Winter. Oh well, shit. Fuck my shit. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Uh, are you into Lolly? Uh, no, I actually prefer chicks with uh, tits. So Lolly's kind of counter to that. Or a third dimension. That's nice. Well, there you go. Yeah. Uh, do you even out? I don't even know what the fuck that means. The uh, outdoors board. Out. Oh, oh, oh. Nobody posts an out. Everybody just links to it so they can tell people to leave. I in a woods, but I don't out. Uh, and that's more K than fucking out. Uh, isn't out like a recent creation? Out is, yeah, it was part of the... It, it, well, not really recent. It came out, It came out. Haha. <laughs> along with uh, Psy and uh, all the other uh, lit back when they came out. Okay, that makes sense. So it was a couple of years ago. Uh, who is the best Katawa shoju? Oh, what's a chick with the burn? Uh, burns? Hanako? Fuck yeah. My goodness. 
Oh, t- t- take your fucking crippled arms and legs shit somewhere else. Well, I'm sorry. What? I just can't help the fact that you have such awful taste in everything. <laughs> Holy shit, I'm getting called out. Hanako, are you sure it's Hanako? Because that sounds like Hanako. Hanako's the one with the Han- Hanako's the one with the bacon on her face. Okay, because it, it, like it's uh, like again, it sounds like Hanaka, which I'm sure is going to give me a lot of shit from Pole. But mm-hmm. yes, I like the burn chick. Uh, mm-hmm. She's fucking awesome. Yeah. Again, the correct answer is Lily. Lily's the, the blind correct answer. girl. Yes, the blind girl. <sighs> I don't know. Like, how is she ever going to have good sex with you? She can't see it coming. <laughs> You know, like, hey, okay. hey, give me a blowjob, and she's fucking tapping you with her nose and shit. Like, what the <laughs> fuck? Oh. Oh, that was beautiful. That's truthful. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, she, can't, she can't see you coming. That's right. She can. All right. What's your opinion? Oh, man, it jumps, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Welcome to my uh, world. What's your opinion on... I, shit, where did it go? I just scrolled there. I'm sorry, post it again. Uh, who would win at a drinking contest, you or Lee Alexander? Uh, Lee Alexander or Lay Alexander? Are they talking Lay about the Alexander. Oh, okay. Um, I would. Absolutely, hands down. Uh, mm-hmm. I could uh, go through this whole bottle if I wanted to, but I don't want to wake up puking in the morning. Well, puking is part of the experience, Jim. You have to understand. Well, it's, yeah, you, yeah. You, you sign up for the, it's a package deal. Well, I, I told the chat earlier, or I, I said, and I, I guess I should say a previous streamer, maybe ask if I'm on Twitter, that uh, I'm part Irish. That's a small part of me, but not, not a complete part of me. So I think that gives me immunity to drinking alcohol. See, that's horribly untrue. I've got a friend that I drink with, and he's Irish-German, and he's twice my size. He's got, like, two heads on me. <laughs> and he, he came back from, like... Uh, Missouri, and he had like these jugs of moonshine, like actual moonshine. There was even X's on the jugs, and we passed it back and forth, and puking and hollering, and I'm just sitting there laughing at him and cleaning up his mess. And Irish German guy, twice my size, can't hold his liquor. That's horrifying. Well, shit. Yeah, it's unsettling. It's like it's like finding out there's no Santa Claus. I, I could imagine how uh, how damaging that was for you. I've just like lost all faith in two nationalities altogether. It just does an, an entire co- two, ha, ha, it does half a continent a disservice. <laughs> all right. Uh, why is Shadow of Mordor the greatest game ever made? Uh, because the marketing team told me so. Actually, I'm hearing like from people who aren't marketing people that it's pretty fun. As <laughs> as forbidden a word as that is. Well, yeah, that that's what I've heard too. Like like I'd said. Um, God, I say that a lot too. Fuck. As I had said previously, um, yeah, I'll, I'll more than likely pick it up when it's on sale, but not not at full retail price. But it does look like a fun game, in all mm-hmm. honesty. Uh, IA, what's your IRL farmer accent? They want to know where I'm from. I'm guessing that's I, what that means. I guess they want to hear your accent. If you, maybe they think this is your continental accent that you're throwing out there. This is how I sound. This isn't put on, so what you hear is what you get. Mm. Uh, Jim, will you smash with me? I think I'm pretty sure he's talking about Smash Brothers. Or, or getting shit face drunk. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll smash with you. I'll put up my um, what the fuck do they call it on the 3DS friend code or whatever the fuck it is? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll post that on Twitter or on Ask FM later on when I'm a little more sober. Who is the best to who? I'm sorry, what? Tuhu. Tauho? Uh, I guess. I, I say Tuhu because that's how everybody types it out, 2-H-U. Oh, okay, you were the guy who's just giving me shit, right, about uh, my choice in fucking... Uh, well, I'm sorry, language. Moon isn't my first language. <laughs> oh, fucking, fucking shots fired on that one. Holy shit. Mm. Well, who's your uh, favorite Tauho, then? I, I, I fuck. I don't even know how to answer that. There's like forty fucking million of them. How the fuck are you supposed to answer that question? Just say the one with the bunny ears. That there's got to be one with bunny ears. Th- there's like forty of them with bunny ears and cat ears and fucking tails and what's a little chick? Uh, Cyrano. There we go. The one that fucking shoots icicles or whatever the fuck she does. Oh, the one with the six thing. Yeah, that they're something. always doing. Uh, I don't know. There you go, Cyrano. Whatever. Fuck. I don't know. All right. Do you like the JoJo's? Of course. Who's your favorite JoJo? 
No idea. Too drunk to even <laughs> fucking process that right now. Let's see. Uh, oh, oh, okay. Okay. Jade okay. Fox want, wants to know, uh, would you fuck Lee Alexander for $1 million? Uh, fuck no, but I'd fuck Jay Fox for free. <laughs> Here you go. It's a compliment, I suppose. <laughs> hey, there we go. All right. Uh, favorite Pokemon? Dude, I have no idea. Uh, I played, what was it, Yellow, Red, and Blue when it came out back in the day on Game Boy, but I haven't fucking played anything since then. Uh, the most recent one I picked up was Pokemon X for the 3DS, and I have no idea if it's any good or not. Hmm. Uh, okay, then. Charmander, Bulbasaur, or Squirtle? Which one's your main uh, starter? Oh, uh, fuck. Um, Squirtle. Coward. Oh, shit. All right. Uh, who would you? What? Who or what would you pick for a headmate? <laughs> Nothing. I'm not fucking crazy. Well, if you were crazy, what would you choose? I probably have no choice because I'd be insane. Well, just see how that works. Use your imagination. If I had to have a fucking headmate, somebody that if, never if, shut if, up and was talking knowing, in my ear, knowing yourself and knowing how possibly you would be thinking if you were insane. Who would you think? Well, who would you think insane? Ia would choose as a headmate. Uh, Pippo, from who? Overblood. It's a PS. It's a PS One game. Huh. Pippo. I'm in. Sh- Pippo. I'm in search that one. Uh, favorite common writer. I have no idea. I don't watch that shit. Let's see. Uh, if a skeleton wanted to give you a hug, would you accept? Of course, who doesn't like hugs? Do you like Neutral Milk Hotel? I'm sorry, you want to repeat that one? Do you like Neutral Milk Hotel? Uh, I have no idea. I don't think I'm familiar with it. If I said no, they'd probably hate me. If I said yes, they'd probably hate me. So I'd have to actually check it out before I can give you an answer. Why does God hate all of us? Because you're fucking fallible. You're flawed. What do you think of the evil within? Uh, I haven't had a chance to check it out. Is the demo up on Steam yet? I think, or uh, on the consoles? I think on consoles. I don't know on Steam. Uh, yeah, I haven't had a, check, or a chance to check it out. All I've got is a PS3, a 360, and a Wii, and then a 3DS and my PC. I haven't bought any of the new consoles yet. I'm waiting for Splatoon to come out before I buy a Wii U. There you go. Well, no, fucking get a Wii U now. Fucking Nintendo Land is the best thing to happen to humanity in a while. Oh, shit. Like, I'm serious. I thought it was just going to be, like, a lame knockoff of Wii Sports, but then, like, five hours later, I was like, Jesus Christ, this is fun. And it's, like, it, it, it's, it's got a good Skinner Box thing going on for it. I'll say that much about it. Oh, shit. Oh, uh, they want to know what your triggers are. I have none. I'm not a fucking hypersensitive pussy. Hmm. Uh, are you switching to 8chan or staying at 4chan? I haven't gone to 4chan in about, uh, I'd say a week, week and a half. I have pretty much transitioned over to 8chan. Let's see. Favorite horror movie? Um. Oh, what the fuck was it called? Uh, Event Horizon. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. Oh, pretty... well, thanks for the fucking encouragement. Well, it's so, I didn't say it was awful, okay? You're moving up in the world. Oh, I've got a little higher to aim. I see. Okay. Yeah. It. I don't know. It well, kinda, after you talk shit about Hanoko or whatever the fuck her name is, the Burns Hanako? Hanako, 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 whatever the fuck her name is. I don't need to know her name. <laughs> it's not important. <laughs> you just roll over and kick her crippled ass out of bed. That's what I just. I, I call her Bacon Face. So it's our little fucking nickname. Yeah. Yeah, they've got that. Um. Oh crap! What's his name? The guy who makes songs and he has a panda as his thing. Not me. The other guy. Oh, there's another one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, crap, what's his name? He did a song about Hanako. Oh, and Eminem? No, not Eminem. And Motley he did Crew. It. it was... Uh, crap, how'd it go? It Metallica? Was, they said, wow. write a song about Hanako, and they said, don't use the word crispy. So he goes, all right. And he goes, she tastes like bacon. Yeah, there's no mistaking. It's like, wow. Was this Ken Ashcorp? Was Ken Ashcorp, that's him. Wait, that was really him? 
Oh, just that throwing that out there. Oh, okay. Yeah. His shit's really good. Mm-hmm. Especially when it comes to waifus. What are you going to be for Halloween? Uh, I'm way too old to go fucking about on Halloween. Usually what I do is uh, I sit on the roof of my house with a crate of eggs, and I, I'll tell you what I do. Um, kids are fucking horrible. They'll steal all the candy. If you put a bowl of candy out that says take one, they'll take all of them. So I sit on my roof with all the lights out, and it's got the bowl of candy out. It's usually in like a pumpkin, plastic pumpkin thing. Um, and when they steal all the candy, and they inevitably do, it's usually junior high kids that do this, I fucking egg the shit out of them as they're leaving. So I'm not anything on Halloween. I'm just a vindictive asshole is really what I am. Hmm. You should, tr- you should like, dress up and pr- play pretend sometime. It's pretty fun. Well, I'm sure it is. Yeah. It really is. I'm going to be uh, Joshua Graham this year. Oh, well, shit, there you go. So, because, what is it, Proto Men are coming to the concert this uh, Saturday, and they're having, like, a costume contest. So I'm going to be dressing up for that, and I'm like, shit, it's already Halloween. I'll just do it twice. Okay. Let's see. Uh, favorite porn movie? <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> Nobody knows the name of porn movies on the uh, fucking internet. You're My usually... favorite porn movie is called For His Eyes Only. I'm surprised you even know that. Usually when a... I'm looking at porn, it's just fucking clips of shit. It, it was a VHS I had, and it was basically the porn version of Rear Window. This guy was... It starts off with this guy in an SUV railing some lady, and then... She he gets she gets mad at him for something. She leaves and slams the door on his dick, and so he has a cast on his wang, and he has to sit in a wheelchair and watch people across the alley do stuff to each other. It's really deep. You, you know that reminds me of a horror movie. Um, yeah, Rear, maybe, Rear Window. No, no, no. Maybe Chat knows this. It's a movie where there's a mother, a father, and a daughter, and they get into a car accident, and the mother exits the car, and she starts feeling the back of her head. And she's like, oh my god, I've never felt like this before. And she keeps rubbing the back of her head, and you don't know what's going on. And she starts having an orgasm. And she's like fucking just rubbing the shit out of the back of her head. And you find out that she's her her skull is crushed in. Like the bone is gone. And she's fucking her brain with her fingers, basically. That, for some reason, reminds me of that. It was a really creepy movie, by the way. Maybe Chad knows what it is. I don't know. I can't remember off the top of my head. Is it a foreign movie by any chance? Nope. Everybody's in English. It's recent, too. It's like 90s uh, upwards, but I can't remember 100% what it is. Wow. That's... Ugh. All right. Uh, Hulk Hogan or Randy Savage? Randy Savage. Fuck Hulk Hogan. What? That's right. Wow. Macho man. Yeah. Yeah, someone's into the Slim Jims. That's uh, Fucking love me some Slim Jims. It probably has to do with my name, but what are you going to do? Uh, Leslie in Tiriano wants to know if she can peg you. Uh, no, I'm not Swedish, sorry. Mm. Uh, IA, can you call Lo Ping a faggot? Uh, Lo Ping, you're a faggot. Right back at you. What Thank do you, you think about Le Merchant? I, I, I guess he's talking about... Is that code word for Jews? I uh, guess I think, that's a... I think maybe that's he's a talking about the doodle. The doodle? Yeah. Let's I assume would t- they're talking about the doodle. Well, I would tell you what my thoughts are on the merchant, but then I wouldn't get my check from Israel. Sorry. <laughs> I'm guessing, too, Jade Fox ran away from the chat the second I said I'd bang her. So, <laughs> that's just a right Either edge. that or she's going to town on herself right now at the thought. Hey, I now, who doesn't want a guy in a wig? That's it. That's all right. Yeah, there's lots of people that like to play pretend out there. Mm-hmm. Who do you main in Depression Quest? Uh, nobody. God, I wouldn't fucking touch that game if you paid me. It looks boring as hell. Uh, and, and that's not even a joke. I mean, it just looks like a really terrible game. Let's see. Uh, what did you think of the new South Park episode? I thought it was good, but um, I thought they could have gone more extreme with it. And I think it was a reaction to the magazine that printed an article about them saying that they shouldn't have made fun of Lord. Aw. Let's see. Uh, they want to know if you can tell them a joke. Not a very good one. No, go shoot. Knock, knock. Who's there? Banana. Banana who? Banana. Banana who? Banana. Banana who? Aren't you glad I didn't say banana? Uh, See, I learned that one from a really shitty troll. Hmm. I got one. What's old and smells like mummy? (laughs) What's old and smells like mummy? I'm way too Uh drunk. I don't know. What? A mummy fart. Oh, boom. We are fucking comedians. 
Welcome to the stream. Look at those numbers drop. This is a good <laughs> idea, Loping. Let's tell more horrible fucking jokes. All right. Uh, no, that was sarcasm. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. okay. Sting or Undertaker? Sting. Hmm. I have no opinion on that. I, I don't do wrestling. That's understandable. Yeah. Uh, PC or Mac? PC. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you think caterpillars know that they're going to be, be, become butterflies, or do they just make chrysalis and be like, what the fuck am I doing? They're probably like, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> uh, will Sweden become an Islamic state? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, they called. They found the movie. It's called Dead End. Oh, is that the one where the chick fucks her brain? I guess. Yeah, that's a really fucked up movie. Mm. Do you have a wig for your dick? Uh, no, my dick is just fine without a wig. Let's see. Uh, Gone Home, good game or best game? Horrible game. If you want to play a good indie game, play Gone... Uh, holy shit, to the moon. There we go. Mm. Favorite metal genre? <sighs> Whatever the fuck uh, baby metal is. I think they call that new metal. I don't know. And you mm. metal? I think the thing I liked was called like mathcore or something like that. I have no <laughs> idea what that means though. What do they talk about? Addition, subtraction? No, no. It's it's about it's about the actual pattern and repetition of the music itself, and 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 meter and something. It's it's something like really high into the uh, composition itself. I st I can't understand metal for shit. What they're singing? It everything they sing sounds like they're talking about hamburgers and hot dogs. For the life of me, I can't figure out what people sing during metal songs. <laughs> I I I I've never heard of that actually, to be honest. Mathcore? Yeah. Yeah, because I, I, cause I, there was this one song I was listening to over and over and over on my phone, and my friend was like, oh, shit, you're into math core? I'm like, is that what it's called? He says, and he tells me what the band is. I'm like, I don't care. I like the song. Oh, shit. Let's see. Uh, what's your opinion on Steam Curators? Um, I think it's a good idea, but I think it could be refined more. Um, I've actually been working on something in relation to Gamergate and dealing with the journalistic sites for a more long-term solution, and it I think is a better idea than what Steam Curators is, but um, that relates to why I was out of town for about two days and I had to go to the West Coast. Oh, I'm sorry, the East Coast. Um, and I, I can't really go into details right now because it, it, there's a lot of shit to do with investors, so I can't really talk about details. Hmm. Uh, why can't Metroid crawl? Because uh, that would be sexist. Don't question the logic. Uh, not questioning anything here. <laughs> Frankly, it scares me. It should. It's terrifying. Do you support Third Reich Mike? Who doesn't like Mike Staccata? Or Staccato. What the fuck his name is? I don't know. Uh, yeah, I, I, obviously I support him. Who does not like Red Letter Media? He's the fat one, right? Uh, he's the bigger guy, Jay is the smaller guy, and then uh, the very big guy that occasionally pops in is the one who would play Plinkett in the uh, Half in the Bag episodes. Oh yeah, no, not Plinkett. I'm into the fat one. I like Mike. Yeah, I think, uh, I, uh, don't get me wrong, both of them are really good. It's a very funny show, but yeah, I, I prefer Mike. Uh, who is your favorite pop culture critic? Nobody. I don't give a shit about pop culture. Let's see. Uh, Jim, what do you think of TTGL? I don't even know what that is. Do you know what that acronym stands for? That's the, uh, my drill will be the drill to pierce the heavens, that show. Oh, oh, um, uh, uh, Legrand, Gurren Legrand or something? Yeah, Gurren Lagan or whatever. Oh, uh, yeah. Tenchi, Tenchi Tachai Gurren Lagan. Uh, listen, if I'm going to watch anime, it's either going to be um, Legend of the Galactic Heroes or, um, oh my god, hold on one second, or in High School Host Club. <laughs> there you go. It's one of those two. My goodness, you don't even like the Naruto's? Uh, no, no, unless I'm like really <laughs> bored and I, I've got five minutes to spare. Oh, uh, let's see. Jim, are you a big guy? For you. Do you like to eat crayons? No, I don't. Uh, usually I shit green when I do that. Ugh. Are you hyped for that new Guilty Gear? Yes, I am. Uh, are you talking about uh, X-Ard, or however the I fuck they that, pronounce it? I think that's what it's called. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I'm hoping it comes to Steam. I, I get the feeling that they've been putting up their older games on Steam, like Asuka and Guilty Gear X2, because they're preparing the way to see how much of a buyer's interest is on Steam. So I would, I would hope they put it up. If they do, I'm going to definitely buy it. Why do you keep mispronouncing words? Because I'm fucking retarded. Welcome to the club. Listen, mm-hmm. I, I say hyperbole is uh, hyperbole, and I say nebula instead of nebula. Maybe it's intentional. I don't know. Maybe maybe social justice warriors and those kinds of people get really angry when you don't identify them correctly. And so if you mispronounce their names and you fuck up words, it just really irks them. Or I'm just a fucking idiot. You choose. It's mm-hmm. up to you. Choose your own adventure, guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, solid Snake or Big Boss? Big Boss. Hmm. Well, that's okay. <laughs> Thanks for the approval. If you're a fan of people who kill their m- masters, all right. No, yeah, there you go. Let's see here. Uh, why does Angry Joe suck? Uh, Pissed Jose. Um, mm-hmm. Seven Dollar Sanchez. <laughs> That's right. There's a, about a billion names for him at this point. I, I don't know. Pablo. There we go. I, I don't know if he necessarily sucks. I think he... Um, you know what? I'm indifferent to Angry Joe. I don't really know much about him, to be honest, so I couldn't tell you. I like the jokes. It's funny to mock him, but I, I, I at the end of the day, I really don't know what he's like, so I don't know. Uh, I couldn't give you an opinion, to be honest. Mm-hmm. It'd be false if I did. Hey, this one's mine. It's not from the chat, but have you considered switching to rum? Uh, no. Um, listen, I'll give you the honest reason that I, I drink clear liquor, which vodka is. It's pure. It, it's clear. There's no color to it. Well, so is rum. Yeah, yeah, but here's the thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I was at a sleepover once. I was 13 years old. Oh, boy, a sleepover story. Yeah, it's a sleepover story. Uh, there's a couple stories related to this, really. But um, we were all drinking. I think it was whiskey. Uh, and one of the kids, uh, I'm not going to name the names because I don't want to go too personal, but one of them had left, and he went to go into his house. You know, I was sleeping at uh, one kid's house, and he happened to live next door, so we went to his house to go do something before he came back to drink with us. And essentially, instead of pouring him a shot of whiskey, we pissed in the cup. And when he came, <laughs> when he came back, we told him that was a whiskey shot. So... We took the whole whiskey shot and drank it, and it was a fucking... He threw up everywhere. It was just like a never-ending torrent of puke, because he figured out pretty much oh. halfway through the swig what was in that fucking drink glass. Ever since then, I've, I've drank clear liquor, because I don't want to get... Uh, I don't want to drink somebody's piss, is really what I'm saying. You don't want the switcheroo to happen. That's right, yeah. Uh, wow. A funny story, too, related to that. After that happened, this kid has the worst fucking luck. After that happened, we stole a bunch of wine. His father had a really expensive wine collection. We didn't know this at the time, but like we're talking obscene amounts of money, like 50 grand worth of wine. And we took a bottle that was like three or four grand worth and drank it. This kid passes out on the couch. The kid's house that we're hanging out at happens to have uh, pet cats. Turns out this kid's allergic to cats. He doesn't know that. He passes out on the cat, or he passes out on the couch with all this cat hair on it. Wakes up in the next morning with a horrible hangover, and his whole face is swollen shut. He can't open his eyes. Same kid, by the way, that drank the uh, piss out of the whiskey glass. Oh my goodness! <laughs> that, that's nothing, dude. Uh, we went to a party once, and uh, it was this kid nobody liked. So we put kitty litter in his washing machine. I don't know if you've ever noticed what happens when you put kitty litter in somebody's washing machine, but it oh. fucking destroys a washing machine. Wow. Uh, at the end of the night, uh, and a lot of wild shit happened. Somebody pissed in his bread box, and somebody lit his garage on fire. It was a fucking wild night. You hang around just wonderful people. I hang around assholes, or I did when I was a kid. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, oh, does low ping hurt your heart when he judges your opinions? Yes, it does. It's very triggering for me. I lied when I said earlier that I'm not tri- Triggered by anything. Low ping judging me triggers me very much. Asshole. Let's mm-hmm. see. Uh, do you have a flashlight? No, I don't. I just use my hand. I'm old fashioned. Why waste the money on a flashlight? Nature provided. Lotion or you go in dry? I don't know anybody that. <laughs> I don't know if anybody actually goes in dry. That sounds fucking horrific. I'm going to be what? honest. Going and dry, you're dealing with friction in that case, and that just seems unpleasant. What do you do? What do you do? Whoa, whoa, whoa! What do you think you do down there, dude? You're not trying to. You're not doing this. It's like 
you're 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 loosely grasping some skin and moving it up and down. You're not shearing it. Well, yeah, it just sounded like you rub sandpaper together. What the fuck yeah, is that? That's just me rubbing my hands together. Yeah, I'm not trying to get a nice, even, fucking smooth finish here. I don't want to fucking, you know, rub off 14 dermal layers. Well, that's that how you horrible. keep. That's how you keep the hair from growing up the side of the shaft. How, how am I supposed to go into the fucking ER with that? Hey, <laughs> hey, Doc, uh, I got into a really weird fucking Indian wrestling match with somebody. Like, how the fuck does that work? <laughs> To see, it was supposed to be an Indian leg wrestling match, and I fell on. I, I fell on this. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't his leg. Uh, he, well, it wasn't my leg actually. He grabbed my cock, and it turned out fucking horrible for me, as you can see, because I'm bleeding from my penis. Doesn't sound like the best uh, of any situation. All right, now they want to know if you're circumcised. Why? I, see, this is what I it fascinates me. You don't know who I am. I'm just a fucking voice on the internet. Yes, I'm circumcised. That's the only information I'm ever going to give you in relation to my dick, or my sexual preferences, or my fetishes. Enjoy that. That's about all you're going to get. <laughs> oh, you're going to get it in a second here. All the European people are going to laugh at you. Oh boy, all the Brit bongs. Okay, knock me out. <laughs> all right. Do you like street sharks? Uh, I watched. I uh, well, I, I shouldn't say I watched it, but I've seen the show. I know what it is. I'm indifferent to it. I don't really have an opinion. Well, I for one think it's Jawsome. <laughs> oh fuck. Okay. What do you think of Maddox? Uh, I like his opinions. I've watched some of his videos. I saw the recent one, or I should say, one of the more recent ones he did on the comic books, talking mm -hmm. about uh, Spider Man and the Spider Woman thing. And oh, the butt. Yeah, yeah. You couldn't have him in this certain pose because it shows off the ass. Uh, I like him, so that's my opinion on Maddox. My my favorite part was when he superimposed the butts. Yeah, because it's a dead ringer, right? It makes yeah, it's, it's, it was supposed to be an homage to that cover, wasn't it? Yeah, that's exactly what it was. Why would they get upset about that when... I mean, even as he points out... Holy shit, sorry. Even as he points out in the video, I mean, Spider-Man had uh, positions and you know poses that were even worse than that, where he's bound mm -hmm. up and his fucking bulges shooting out at the fucking uh, viewer. So yeah, he was dead on the money on that. I liked that video. Let's see. Uh, well, this is obvious. Do you like Asian porn? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. uh, persona. Which one's your favorite persona? <sighs> Fuck. I, I, I'm too drunk to answer that one. I'm sorry. If it's going to come down to details on video games, which specific... Uh, release in a, a series that I like or a character that I like, there's no way you're going to get a good answer out of me when I'm hammered. Alright. Uh, the Rock or Stone Cold? Stone Cold. By God. Alright. <laughs> uh, Jenny Death When? I'm not sure about that. No idea. Yeah, let's give him that one. Oh, I, I see in the chat, because I'm watching this go by, somebody keeps repeatedly saying, plug burgers and fries on Ryzen. I'm plugging burgers and fries on Ryzen. There you go. Hmm. Sorry. Go ahead, Lopin. Uh, what's your opinion on illegal Mexican immigrants? Uh, fuck. See, that's a tricky question. They're trying to get me to say something stupid while I'm drunk. Yeah, they are. That's exactly what they're trying to do. Um, I'll tell you originally. I'll give you an honest answer. Um, if you remember, I, I can't remember when this was. I think this was during Bush's presidency. Mm -hmm. um, there were a lot of uh, protests and marches in regards to Mexican immigrants, and I didn't like it because uh, they were f like waving the Mexican flag around. I thought it was you know a slap in the face to America. Um, but you, you know the funny thing is, as time went on, what I noticed was it, it was a lot of people with their fucking kids on their shoulders. You know what I mean? And I felt like it felt bad to basically say that America's like this exclusive fucking treehouse that you're trying to get into. I think there should be regulations in place for letting uh, any immigrant from anywhere come into the country. Uh, but, you know, there there are a lot of reasons why Mexican immigration is not bad. But I'm mm -hmm. too drunk to go into it, and it, I'm not going to make an ass of myself right now going into it. It's different than Sweden, though, Paul. It is different than Sweden. There's a reason it's different than Sweden, and I will talk about it someday. Well, you know what I think? I think you just go ahead and make them all citizens. You could do an empire of North America. I don't see why not. And take well, no, over, not, uh, not, not annex Mexico. I mean, just make them all citizens, the ones that come over. Oh, oh you're talking about just, that? Just, wow. immediate, just immediate citizenship right then and there. Then they get you know, assigned a social security number, they get started to tax, and then nobody could really undercut anybody else. Oh, well, all right. Well, 
Lo Ping is advocating taking anybody in. All right. Sweet, yep. yes. Uh, whatchamacallit, the, uh, the thing they did with Cuba except with Mexico. The dry foot, wet foot thing. You understand, like, the policy they had in place with Cuba was, hey, if you can get over here without fucking dying, we'll take you in. Well, yeah, it's the same thing for the crossing the border, isn't it? It's not exactly a walk in the park. I mean, I know there is an actual national park there, but still. <laughs> Fair enough, fair enough. Mm. Let's see. Uh, Lex, Lu Lex Luger or the Giant? Oh, fuck. Uh, the Giant. Lex Luger was prick. Are you talking about the narcissist? I mean, I know I people guess. refer to him as... Uh, yeah, you wouldn't know wrestling, but they yeah. refer to him as Lex Luger, but he was a narcissist first. Bobby Heenan really made that character work. Mm -hmm. God, I sound uh, gay even saying that. All right, go ahead. How big a faggot is Moot? He is a gigantic faggot. Um, the, the, like, he wants to be the little girl. Um, I think he probably enjoyed getting pegged from uh, Snacks, would be my guess. But uh, if you're referring to him as a, as a faggot in regards to his policies on 4chan, um, yeah, I think he sold you all out. That's my honest opinion. Let's see here. Uh, are you saving up to buy an Oroculus when it comes out? I don't. I don't even know what the fuck that is. Do you? I think they mean. I think they mean Oculus, and they're eroticizing it. Oh, oh, for my waifu simulator. Yeah. Um. Uh, maybe. Like uh, some of the Facebook integration makes me a little worried. Uh, I didn't, uh, you know, run out to fucking buy an Xbox One because I don't want to connect always on camera in my house. It's financed by the Prism program from NSA. Uh, I wouldn't do that with Facebook either because it's financed from the fucking Prism program from the NSA. <laughs> so I don't want a camera that's looking at me all fucking day long that's financed by a government agency that wants to spy on me. Well, that's fair enough. Uh, say homage again. Homage. By the, I'm, pr I'm mispronouncing that, by the way. I've got... Oh, homage? No, you're yeah. not. It's homage. Yeah. No, it's it's homage. It's actually... It's not supposed to be pseudo-French. Well, fuck it. Welcome to America. It's homage. <laughs> Yeah, welcome to America. We'll we pronounce it the French way. What, what, what are the French going to do? Wave well, it's not even a French word. They, they don't care. We're just making up names and accrediting to them. Well, wait. Why did you say uh, pseudo-French, then? Because that, that's what it is. Because we're pronouncing it like it's a French word. Well, yeah, yeah. but what I'm saying is, what are they going to do about it? Wave a flag at us? <laughs> well, fucking call it whatever we want. Eat our freedom fries and flip them off. Welcome yeah, to America, baby. I think they're going to be rude to us. Oh, my God. That's not like that's their natural fucking default. I could just die. What do you think? Are going to set up a Magino line on the fucking Atlantic? Like, uh, I don't give a <laughs> shit. Uh, fucking homage. Deal with it. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, did you watch Red Letter Media's uh, video game Twitch stream or their video game show previously recorded? Uh, I haven't had a chance to watch any of their streams, but I, I religiously watch Red Letter Media. Uh, Planket Reviews, Half in the Bag, and I've watched their uh, pre rec or whatever that show is called, where they have the two guys reviewing video games. Red Letter Media is fantastic. There's nothing wrong with Red Letter Media. Uh, they make fucking funny videos, and they do jokes nobody else would do. There's one skit in particular you will never see on any other fucking website or on any other YouTube channel, and that is the Olsen Twins joke. And if you watch Red Letter Media, you know exactly what I'm fucking talking about. Let's see. If you were an other kin, what kind of kin would you be? Nothing. If I was another kin, I'd put a bull in my head. So you'd be a bullet kin? I'd be a dead kin. <laughs> Let's see. How do you feel about the mod from SP? <laughs> he loves Hot Pockets, and he wants to delete things so he can get back to his backlog of Chinese girl cartoons. Would you eat a skeleton? Uh, no, because the other skeleton inside me would get jealous. Why is the sky sexist? Oh, there's probably a good joke in there, but I'm too drunk to figure it out. I'm sorry, guys. Drop the ball on that one. Let's see. Uh, man, a lot of wrestling ones. Kurt Hennig or Jake the Snake? Jake the Snake. Are you fucking kidding me? Mm, see, even I know that one. Mm -hmm. I don't follow that shit for shit. Uh, opinion on Dr. Randomer Cam? I have no idea. Do you? Yeah. No, no, sorry. Uh, let's see. Are feminists winning over the gamers? 
No, I, I'm, I'm going to guess you're talking about SJWs. You're talking about I guess. Of Warriors. Uh, mm. No, they're not. Listen, they're they're the people that want to shit up the industry. They're the ones that want to take the hobby and make it some kind of you know academic bullshit. Nobody's interested in that. Listen, I just want to fucking play video games and have fun. Take your mm -hmm. bullshit somewhere else and be introspective and analyze. I don't know. Go fuck with movies or music. Just stay the fuck out of video games. Well, no, they can't do that because they get laughed out of movies and books. Oh, of course they do because the companies are so big they don't need to take it. And I, I think that's one of the problems with gaming. Activision, EA, Nintendo, Microsoft, Sony are billion-dollar companies. They don't need to take the shit. They could just put their foot down and say, fuck off. Uh, do you listen to C Ute? Oh, cute. C hyphen Ute. Never heard of him. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, how much of a brony are you? None. Uh, that relates to a video I did on um, God Mode. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, I did this video where I talked about God Mode, and at the very end, you can see the Steam username that I was using, which was Brony Clan Flutterfudge or some shit like that. Uh, uh, when I play with video games with people, I'll go into a video game and use horrible fucking usernames to piss people off. I'm indifferent to bronies. I, I said that when I did the fucking Hugbox episode 4. Uh, but I, I don't give a shit one way or the other, to be honest with you. I just use the name to piss people off. Oh, here's a good one. Are you ready for this one? Knock yourself ready. out. Say something genuinely nice about Anita Sarkeesian. She has nice hair. Okay. She does have some n n mad hair game. Does she, she very... Yep, yeah, she does. Just very, like, you could tell she cares. That's very high-maintenance hair. Ooh, hair, ooh wait, hair, wait. Hair. Uh, there's one question in the uh, chat. Reinhard or Yang? That is a fucking tough question to ask. Um, God damn. They're both great characters. That's really, really hard to answer. I'd say Yang. Uh, just because of what happened to him about three-fourths of the way through. If you watch the series, you know what I'm talking about. But mm -hmm. Reinhardt is fucking great, too. Sorry. Anyway, go ahead. Do you have a thing? Or is, that a wrestling thing? thing? is that a wrestling thing, too? I oh, know. That's from an anime called Legend of the Galactic Heroes. Oh. Uh, it's about 120 episodes long. Wait, is couple... that the one with the... with the? They always post screen caps. Is that the uh, I came here to laugh at you thing? Uh, no. If, if you go on poll... And I, I think it's been posted on A a couple times too. Uh, mm -hmm. It's essentially a anime about uh, spacefaring humans and an empire and a republic at war with each other. But they like to mock typical anime conventions. So they'll the the main draw of the series is when somebody dies, they're dead. There's no coming back. So they don't pull like a DBZ, you know, where like, oh, I'm coming back from the spirit realm. They actually make fun of that. So they kill people off. They don't give a shit. They'll kill a main character off every fucking episode. They don't give two fucks. Hmm. Uh, Socrates or Aristotle? Uh, pff, neither. Uh, Aurelius. Hmm. Why? Because I think the Meditations was the probably one of the most humble uh, philosophy uh, compilations you'll ever read. He dedicated the entire first chapter to thanking everybody in his entire life that ever helped him. It's like 30 pages of him saying thank you to teachers, to soldiers, to people who raised him. And it just comes off as more genuine. Um, I also like the Golden Sayings by Epictetus, or Epictetus. I don't know how the fuck you pronounce his name. Uh, those were pretty good. There were a couple good quotes in that. But uh, Aurelius really had some pretty good insight. And people give him shit, like, oh my god, Aurelius, he's nailing fucking Christians to two-by-fours. But he was a good guy. Let's see here. Why is Captain Planet the best anime? Because he's comprised of a multicultural cast. Sweet, mm -hmm. yes. Jim, would you eat a chick's asshole? I'm not going to toss anybody's salad. No, I'm not going to do that. Well, it's okay, as long as you don't go butt to mouth. <laughs> I don't want mouth to ass in the first place, so mm. there's no butt to mouth to worry about. Well, okay, fine, jeez. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God, I we can't all line. have terrible taste. I, I don't, listen, I don't want to <laughs> lick shit out of somebody's asshole. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, okay. If, if, I, if I wanted to eat shit, I'd work at Gama Sutra. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, favorite music or five favorite artists? I can't give you five favorite artists because I can't think of them. Um, look up on YouTube. It's all one word. Take some crime. Uh, it's this guy who got famous off of dancing. 
Uh, he has really good musical taste. He puts up a bunch of different shit. Uh, he usually has like three or four personas he dances under. Because uh, I'm big into dancing. I'm a faggot like that. I like to go to the club. Mm-hmm. But um, he has really, really good musical taste. So if you want to listen to some pretty fucking good tunes, uh, take some crime on YouTube. He's got some great shit. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with the dancing. I was in Powder Puffs in high school. I was a cheerleading squad. Hey, there you go. I, I like dancing. See? I like going to the club. It's fun. Walk up in the club like, hey, I got it. Okay. There's a... <laughs> Say three-fourths again. Three-fourths. I'm probably fucking up the S and the TH sound, you I'm going to guess. Yep. You are. Because I- I'm good and drunk right now. Mm-hmm. Then the Minnesota accent. Minnesota. 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 Oh, you betcha. All right. Oh, you betcha. I've got a friend from Connecticut, and we make fun of him and say he's from Boston, and it gets him so mad. I don't understand why. Because well, it's usually it, it, to me, it sounds people. like the same accent. Well, yeah. I mean, you can peg people on geographic regions by the words they use. Uh, again, like I'll say pop when I want to get a soda, and generally that mm-hmm. means that you're from somewhere in the Midwest. Pop is a really good indicator. If somebody says they want a Coke, but they're referring to a Pepsi or Mountain Dew, that's pretty much a guarantee they're from Texas. So I like there there are certain words and cues and the way they pronounce stuff that gives you an idea of their geographical location. But I'm pretty upfront. Mm-hmm. I'm from Minnesota, so there you go. Let's see. Uh, would you go gay for Milo? Uh, if I was gonna go gay, yeah, why not? That pearl mm-hmm. necklace is fantastic. <laughs> yeah, you could do worse. Hey, Milo's a good-looking guy. He's got a great, great head of hair. Who doesn't? Very like great head of hair. He's he got does. a mad hair game too. He does. Uh, I know that uh, Gamergate uh, on HN or Infinite Chan, whatever you want to call it, loves his fucking uh, head of hair. <gasps> oh, would you let a girl touch your butthole? Sure, why not? If she's Asian. All right. Would you let her go butt to mouth on your butthole? Fuck no. Well, well, at least you're consistent. <laughs> That's right. I see the numbers dwindling as we go on, as we talk more about assholes and shit. Keep going. Let's see here. Uh, who is your favorite Sailor Scout? Oh, fuck. Um, who is the red one? Mars? I don't know. Sailor Mars would be my favorite Sailor Scout. There you go. All right. Favorite song? Oh fuck! Um, <laughs> uh, Dixie Chicken by Garth Brooks. Oh, wrong answer. <laughs> it's a completely uh, dishonest answer, but whatever. Fuck chat. It's uh, it's Stacy's mom. Stacy's mom. It's got That's it going on. Yep. The correct answer. Mm-hmm. Have you played Fatal Frame Two? Yes, I have. I love the Fatal Frame games. Are you gonna get the uh, eight? Super Duper Galactic Remix Edition, whenever it comes out. Are you talking about the one on the Wii U that has them dressed as sluts and basically yeah. diking well, out? They all have them dressed as sluts. Yeah, those, I don't, those uh, are alternate costumes they showed. I don't get it. Don't get me wrong. I don't like the whole SJW thing where they get all fucking pissy about video games. But well, it's Tecmo. They do that to every game. Yeah, but uh, it just doesn't make sense in the fucking Fatal Frame universe. Well, no, why of are they doing it? Doesn't. That? Yeah, but why are they doing that? It just it fucks the game up for me. Hmm. Well, you can get your atmospheric fill the first playthrough. Oh, there you go. Mm-hmm. Oh, we uh, lost more viewers. Apparently, they don't <laughs> like me criticizing Fatal Frame. Fuck you. I'll criticize mm-hmm. Fatal Frame all I want. Let's see here. Uh, do you pray to Jeff Magnum daily? No, I don't. All right. Who is Jeff Magnum? I have no idea. All right. That's why I know I don't pray to him. There you go. Uh, favorite Pink Floyd album? Uh, it's before my time, man. I have no Pink Floyd album that's my favorite. Mm-hmm. Let's see here. Opinion on Homestuck. Never read it, don't care. Well, let me tell you about Homestuck. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I do like the trolling video where that chick freaks out and... Um, who the fuck did that? It was... Uh, I'm sure chat's going to scream at me now, but... Whoever did that Homestuck video where it was like, let me tell you about Homestuck for about a minute and a half, two minutes, when she starts screaming about triggers, that was funny shit. I'm oh, guessing yeah. that's my god related. Saying, she was saying she had schizophrenia and they were triggering it, and it's like they're playing Trouble in Terrorist Town. That's like the worst game to play when you have schizophrenia. Yeah, uh, 
that game or that that video uh, was great. It was also by the people I think that released the one where it was doing whale sounds for the Twitch streamer. Where it, like in a minute or a minute and a half in, it started going bazinga, bazinga, oh, bazinga. Oh, the guy who got his uh, channel reported, right? Yeah, the one who goes, "Would you cry or crush a can for J. Owen?" He was he was the one that did the uh, little kid trapped inside the debris and um, crap. What's it called in uh, Gary's mod, Gmod? You know what I'm talking about? Delete no, that this. Was, no, no, no. Yeah, that delete this video was way older. That's my god. Um, but the one I'm talking about is more recent. It's uh, I'm pretty sure it's the guy who did the Would You Crush Your Stiggs. Can for Joe. Stiggs. Stiggs. There we go. Yeah. 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 Those are fucking great. I love I love trolling videos. Listen, I hate. Uh, god, I said listen again. I hate um, getting trolled in games because I I just want to play them. But uh, at the same time, I find it funny. So it's a weird fucking give and take kind of thing. I am the law is the best one. Uh, oh, you're, oh, you're talking about ventrilo harassment. I fucking love. No, 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 no. That's not ventrilo. It was in. It was. It was one of their. Uh, it was like inside of. Um, shit. I think it was another a different. Uh, oh, you're, you're you're talking about St- uh, Stallone because I know they did Stallone. No, no, no. They didn't do Stallone. They just had this guy repeating "I am the law" every time he killed somebody, and no, everybody no, the, was flipping yeah, their but, shit at him. Oh, yeah, but the 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 phrase "I am the law" is from um the. The Stallone movie where he was a cop that went into the future. Yeah, yeah. Judge Red. Judge Red. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they had a soundboard. Uh, I'm pretty sure in Ventrilo Harassment where they did "I Am the Law." They did a Schwarzenegger thing, "Who's Your Daddy." Oh. Uh, they did one called Katie where it was some chick who freaked out and they recorded her uh, thing and then went back and did it. Uh, another nerds one for a while. Ventrilo Harassment was really fucking great. It's too bad that's not around anymore. Yeah. No, but this was a separate thing. This was actually like in game. It wasn't vent. Oh shit. Okay. Yeah, it was like the I forgot that game mode where it's like prisoners it, versus the oh, the, the oh okay uh, yeah Gary's mod where they're in the prison yeah and they just every time he would shoot kill a prisoner he would just say I am the law like just him talking over the microphone and then everybody oh. was just like would you stop saying that and he just ki- keeps killing people I am the law and he kills someone else I am the law and this little kid like starts freaking out and he's like you, you hear his brain break at the very end of it. Like the kid starts like repeating, parrying him. He goes, "I am the law. I am the law. I am the law, la law." And you just like hear this gradual breakdown, and then, like he leaves the kid alone for like ten seconds, and he comes back and kills him again. I am the law, and the kid goes like lets out a Xena warrior princess cry. <laughs> yeah, that sounds yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, yeah, I, I think I know the video you're talking about. Yeah, that's that's the greatest thing. Anyway, who's your favorite skull girl and why? I have no favorite skull girl. Like I said, I. God, fuck, I did it again. Um, I I played Skullgirls before because I have friends that play it, but um, it's not, like, m- one of my top-tier fighting games. I like King of Fighters, and I like Gear- or Guilty Gears most. See, I can't, I'm not really big on fighting games, like, because I'm bad at them, so I guess that's why, but... Oh, well, yeah, I mean, like, Guilty Gears is classic one-on-one fighting, and then um, King of Fighters is you pick a team of three, and then you go at it, and there's no... Separation between rounds or matches. It's just whoever knocks out the three players wins. Yeah, the only one I re- consistently wreck acid is like this. Uh, they're gonna laugh at me, but it's it's this Naruto game for the GameCube. It was it was a 3D fighting game of it, and God help me, it had the smoothest mechanics in it. Like, it was just like amazing character balance, unique action throughout the whole thing, and it was just so fucking great. Like we spent two years of our lives playing that game in the rec room in our university. I think this was <laughs> right before uh, Brawl came out. But yeah, yeah. It, sounds, it sounds about right. It was great. Great fun. Oh, anyway, anyway uh, thoughts on the movie Maleficent? Are you talking about the Disney movie based on uh, Snow White? Uh, Sleeping Beauty, but yeah. Oh, so, so yeah. I haven't seen it, so I have no opinion. Apparently it was rapey because they pulled off her wings or something. How is pulling off somebody's wings rapey? I don't know, but it triggered somebody. Of course. They're always triggered by some dumb fucking shit. Would you spoon with Spoony? No, I wouldn't. Fuck Spoony. He's an SJW because his girlfriend is. Mm. Uh, I guess they're asking for your thoughts on Zone of the Enders. Great series. I mm. played the. Uh, well, I, paid, I played both of them. They're good games. Not the remixes or the HD editions or whatever the fuck they are, but the originals. Yo, you're not a fan of Juhuti and 10 ETP? Listen, uh, like, was it, uh, you could get the original Zone of the Enders with the demo of Metal Gear Solid, so that's yes. why I picked it up. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I fucking love the game. 
and I never got a chance to play Zone of the Enders 2 because it had that anime style and kind of a different gameplay approach, I guess, um, until way, way later on when I bought it used. But both of them were really good. Hmm. Uh, Chopin, Beethoven, or Mozart, or Bach? Bach. Hmm. Well, it's not the plebiest answer you could choose, but still. <laughs> oh, thanks. Do you like grand strategy games? Uh, you know, uh, whoever asked that is going to have to define it more. Uh, oh, well, yeah, that's true. Uh, what do you well, like? What would you can what what would you what's a game that you play that you consider grand strategy? That's a point. I don't even know. So they're gonna have to just like if whoever asked that, ask it again with a more right. specific uh, question. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> can you suck your own dick? Uh, well, I I wouldn't do it, but yes, I could. Let's see. Uh, would you date an attractive midget? <laughs> no. Why? I uh, dude, that's just um. What? I don't know how to respond to that. No, I wouldn't. Uh, uh, it's just too childlike. I wouldn't. It's not. It's not going to do anything for me. Hmm. Do you want to build a snowman? I guess. Why not? Final Fantasy twelve or thirteen? Twelve. Would you marry a woman who holds different religious views than you? I wouldn't marry in the first place. What? I have no plans on getting married. Why the fuck would I get married? Well, get, having not having plans to getting married and eventually getting married are two separate things. I, I, I should say I have plans on not getting married. There you go. Do you like H.P. Lovecraft? Yes. Do you have his full uh, bound uh, edition collection? No, I don't. You don't? I do. I have it like right here. Hold on. Let me go rub it. Just to make uh, sure it's yes, still here. because it's it's a fucking pseudo leather bound with gold print on it. Eldritch, Eldritch Tales. Oh well, fantastic. A miscellany, a miscellany of the macabre, and they've got like they've got his original prints here, but at the very end of it, they've got like the actual scans of his notes, journals, diary entries. It's like great. It's amazing. Cool. Well, now I see shit uh, coming from chat, or they're talking shit, I should say. And I'm really drunk at this point. Uh, I'm going to give it another... What time is it? Uh, it's 44. I'm going to give it another 15 minutes. So, yeah. chat, if you've got anything else you want to ask... And again, thanks, Lopeng, for coming in to read these, because fuck if I could read this shit going by this fast. Yeah, no problem. Uh, Jim, if I bought you a whiskey, would you drink it? Uh, no, I would not. But if you bought me a vodka, I would. Hmm. Uh, cyberpunk or steampunk? Steampunk. Do you faku? <laughs> Are you talking about the French animation? No, I don't. No, 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 that's wakfu. So what the fuck is faku, then? I think faku is, like, a, a analogous to, like, the sad panda repository. Are you talking about X-Hentai? I guess. Uh, no, I don't go to X-Hentai. Hmm. Uh, panda person, who are you? Oh, okay. If you were a midget, were you? Would you be Asian? <laughs> How the fuck do you even respond to that question? I don't know. Respond to it. No. All right. Uh, what is your favorite choose-your-own-adventure novel? I have none. Really? You have, you've read them, though, right? Yeah, no, I've read them. But I, I, if you're asking me honestly, I can't think off the top of my head any. Let's see. Is Smash Bros. a real fighting game? <laughs> oh, fuck. There's no way to answer that without pissing off a lot of people. Uh, fuck all of you would be my answer to that. Mm. Was Senator Armstrong right? Yes, he was. Mm -hmm. Will you play Kingdom Come Deliverance? Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Age of Empires, question mark? Listen, I, I bought a lot of games like that, um, and I always mean to play them, and then I never end up getting more than an hour into them because the tutorials fuck me up. Do you have, like, short attention span or something? What is it, uh, Universe, or Universalis Europa? For oh, Europa or Universalis? Oh, that's, that's like, oh, that's like, uh... Yeah, I played an hour and a half, yeah, I played... An, yep, I played an hour and a half of that shit. Um, in tutorial mode, and 
I, I don't even know what the fuck I'm doing. I, I still have no fucking idea. I think you're supposed to start with Crusader Kings if you're going to do the learning curve thing because Europa Universalis is supposed to be like the high end of the learning cliff. Oh, no. I learned that the fucking hard way. Yeah. yeah, no, yeah. I, I, I'm on you. Yeah, I got you with that one. But Age of Empires is like totally different. Like, not not spreadsheets. I well, think Age, I, of, Age of Empires is a real-time strategy, not grand strategy. Okay, well, then I, I wouldn't know. I haven't, I haven't really had a chance to jump into it. Really, it's the greatest thing. It, like, defined everybody's childhood, except for the people who didn't play it. Then No, it didn't define theirs at all. Well, there you go. It, uh, Age of Empires 2 helped me get through world history. Like, I didn't study my book at all. I just played the game. Well, see, I studied the book, and I didn't play the game. We're, like, opposite ends of the spectrum on that one. Mm, autism spectrum, apparently. <laughs> Why didn't you let Adam Sessler on? Fuck Adam Sessler. Why do I need a PR guy from Theory Head Inc. on my fucking stream? Mm-hmm. Uh, five guys are in and out. In and out. Mm-hmm. Who do you play in... Sm oh, wait. We already said that, didn't we? Mm-hmm. Who do you play in Smash Brothers? Okay. Robin. Uh, okay. Do you play WoW? Uh, no, I actually answered that one way earlier. This has been going on for a long time, so it's understandable. But I played uh, WoW and a couple other uh, MMORPGs essentially just to parkour off shit. I wanted to see what I could or climb and what I could glitch, and that was the only appeal that it had to me. Let's see. Uh... Do you like chubby chicks? I uh, know I like uh, fit girls. All right. Or or well, or average girls, but not. I'm not really like. If you're talking like fucking obese women, no, no. So you're not into the curves. It curves, as in one or two of them, not but not like twenty of them. Curves. All right. Loping is retarded. Don't listen to him on grand strategy games. Well, there you go. You're retarded. That's. I guess I am. I have no idea what I'm talking about. Uh, let's see. Is Stanley Parable a real game, or is it faggy like Gone Home? <sighs> um, I, I guess the criticisms that you level against Gone Home could apply to Stanley Parable, mm -hmm. but I, I would think at the end of it, uh, Stanley Parable does it better than Gone Home does. That would be my opinion on that. I think they pretty much do the same thing, dude. It's just a matter of whether you like it or not. That's pretty much what I said, yeah. Oh, oh, okay. I'm sorry, I wasn't paying attention to you. All right. Well, fuck you too. <laughs> <laughs> MMORPGs, greatest games or worst games? It depends if you like them or not. Why, again, what the fuck does my opinion matter on this? If you like them, you're going to like them. If you don't, you won't. Yeah, I've actually got Star Trek Online like in a different tab right now, so that's part of why I'm not really listening to you. That's fair enough. Mm hmm uh, Panda Dude, you Asian. Ever try psychedelics? Uh, no, I haven't. I won't touch psychedelics or uh, uh, amphetamines or any of that. Uh, the, the hardest shit I've ever done is weed. Mm -hmm. uh, you are bitten by a radioactive uh, WOC Radfem and change immediately. What is your first action in your new body? Uh, to destroy the cis uh, hat patriarchy. Oh, that's a goal. What's your first action, though? Uh, to shoot a cis white head person. There you go. There you are. Uh, let's see. Uh, Genesis or Nintendo? Nintendo. Mm -hmm. And let's find a juicy one here. What movie are you looking forward to in the next couple of months? Uh, none. I don't really watch movies. Uh, if I'm interested in a movie, I stream it online. What's the funniest fetish to you? Uh, fuck. Oh, what is the one, um, th dude, uh, for the longest time on V, there were a bunch of people that would post uh, Final Fantasy thirteen threads, armpit fetish. They were obsessed with fucking lightning in her armpits. I have no idea why. Uh, I guess that's how fetishes work, but that would be the funniest one to me. Fucking uh, Vor is hilarious to me. I don't know why. No, oh, there you go. It's, like, hor horribly gross, but then you see people, like, do recordings of them IRL, and then they, like, CG them being eaten by something, and it's just... It's the weirdest, horrifying, hilarious thing you'd ever find on YouTube. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, religious or non-religious? I've already said I'm not a patheist, so that would be fence-straddling, uh, indifferent fuck. Mm -hmm. uh, have you ever tried drugs that make you hallucinate? So I guess, have you ever had a bad trip on weed? 
No, you don't hallucinate on weed, so no, that would mm. be... Uh, nope. All right. Uh, IA or Loping, do you play Atwar? A-T-W-A-R? Uh, I, I don't think I'm familiar with it. Have uh, yeah. you played it? I, I don't know what it is, so apparently I don't. Well, there you go. All right. Babylon 5 or Star Trek? That's a pretty good question. Um, mm -hmm. It depends what Star Trek are we talking about. Uh, if you're talking about the original Star Trek, I'd give it to Babylon 5. If you're talking about the next generation, I'd give it to the next generation. How about DS9? Uh, DS9 was okay, but I'd give it to Babylon 5 in that case. Oh. Or Babylon, whatever the fuck it is. It's the same thing, actually. Yeah, yeah. Babylon 5 and D Deep Space Nine, you know that, right? Uh, yeah, but I think uh, Babylon 5 had a better story arc. No, I mean, it's literally the same thing. Like, the same writers that did DS9 when it did no, Babylon I, 5. Yeah, yeah, but what I'm saying is the characters were better. It was a little more flushed out. Oh, I gotcha. Yeah. I gotcha. Let's see. Uh, have you tried eggs? They're talking about, like, from chickens? Yes. I, I guess, yeah. Have you tried eggs that are not from chickens? No. Why not? Because that just seems weird or weird to me. Listen, uh, when I was God, I said listen again. When I was a kid, um, li my my dad was a dick, and mm -hmm. he liked to fuck with me at every opportunity. Uh, when I was a little kid, I watched Nightmare on Elm Street, um, and he thought it would be funny to basically walk by my room with uh, kitchen knives, a glue, you know, like uh, taped to his fingers. What does this I, have to do with eggs? I'm getting to it. And All right. He'd, he'd scratch on the door. Um, and now I forgot what the point was. Fuck you. <laughs> See, if you hadn't asked me what does this have to do with eggs, I never would have fucking lost my train of thought. But now you fucked me. I can't get to it. Um, oh, no, no, I, I remember. Um, the reason I don't... Like, you, why would I not eat eggs from something else than a chicken? Mm -hmm. um, uh, here's why. Like I said, he liked to fuck with me. Once we went to a restaurant and I wanted to have, um, like, uh, what are they, buffalo wings? Mm -hmm. And he said, oh, I'll order them for you. And then I ate a bunch of these things, and I thought they were like you know, chicken wings, buffalo wings. They were frog's legs. <laughs> uh, that's why I can't do it. Like, if I don't know what it's from, it's going to fuck me up because that asshole is always fucking with me. So, like, I'm very into what I eat. Uh, well, if I don't know where it's from, I'm not touching it. It's true what they say then about the frog's leg because obviously you couldn't tell that it tasted oh, no, like chicken. Oh, no, no. Uh, there, yeah, there was no fucking difference. It mm -hmm. wasn't until he told me what it was that I fucking threw up. Would you swim in pudding or Jello? I'd die in either of them. Yeah, but would you try? Would you rather die in pudding or would you rather die in Jello? Pudding. All right. Uh, favorite meme and why is it doggy? Uh, none and fuck doggy. Mm. I don't know. I I I still kind of dig the PS3 has no games. Wait, isn't it isn't it pronounced douge? I don't know. I think it's doggy because it's a dog. No, oh, well, I, fair enough. D o g e, doggy. Okay. Yeah, like I said, if they can get the, uh, like it's stupid and horribly overplayed, like every other little mimetic garbage out there. But when somebody manages to pull it off real good, I just it makes me giggle. Okay. Well, I, like I said, fair enough. Uh, what's <laughs> what's your uh, what's your pussy eating technique? Um, I, I don't even know how to go into that. Uh, dedicated, thorough. <laughs> don't stop until you get a result. I uh, go after the clit, I guess. Uh, I, look, I don't. I'm too drunk to go into fucking pussy eating techniques. But the alphabet. Are, no, that's amateur shit. But yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> there, are, there are techniques. If you get good at it, you're good at it, and good you're only going to get at it. Or you're only going to get good at it if you practice. Mm -hmm. Just like a girl, if you, if you want a good blowjob, if she hasn't given good blowjobs, if she hasn't given enough blowjobs, she's not going to know how to do it. Uh, would you fuck Captain Planet? No, I would not. Why not? Because he's a guy. Is Captain Planet even a person? Listen, I'm pretty sure Captain Planet's swinging some fucking sausage. So He's an amalgamation of elements, dude. You just said he. Fine. Fucking checkmate. All right, <laughs> next question. What do you think of Nianers? 
Uh, you're talking about the chick that does the anime voices on uh, the internet? I suppose so. Uh, well, Nanners thinks I'm a fucking cunt, so I probably don't have a high opinion of Nanners. Oh. Uh, after the Dina video that I did, she put up a fucking Tumblr post whining about how horrible I was and what a shit uh, heel and shit lord I was. Uh, I think she's talented, but, you know, what are you going to do? I, I There was a girl I know, and I, I, again, I can't go into the names, but she could do really good, like, Nanners voices, like that anime shit. Mm-hmm. And I was like, why don't you start up a business where you do phone sex on Skype? And you're doing really fucking cliched anime voices. Let all these fucking uh, horny assholes call you up on Skype, pay a buck a minute or whatever, and you fucking talk like some anime character. Oh, Nietzsche, so, uh, no. If you exactly. touch me there, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Exactly. You'd make a fuck. You'd make a fuck ton of money. So I don't know why Nanners is doing uh, YouTube videos when she could make a lot more money doing something else. Let's see. This one is for Lo Ping. Would you be gay for IA? Oh, uh, nah. No, well, fuck you, sorry. fuck you, fuck you too. Well, I, I'm, I, I'm into a certain... No, just no. You, you like men with uh, pearls. No, I like men with more meat on their bones, oh, I guess. Oh, well, uh, there you go. So, more love. <laughs> All right. <That's, laughs> that, is, that is fair enough, I understand. That's, what, that's kind of the reason why I have um, uh, Edmund McMillan as my Skype avatar. He's my waifu or husband or whatever. Oh, well, there you go. Uh huh. Let's see. Uh, global warming, pure bullshit. Um, I think global warming is influenced by human behavior, but I don't think it's as extreme as some of the predictions are. I think there's uh, certain scientific evidence that probably there are cycles that go on. If you look at global cooling, that was a big thing. We're going to have another ice age. Now it's we're going to have a fucking uh, greenhouse effect. And I think the whole carbon tax thing is a fucking money racket. Mm-hmm. Um. But no, I, I don't disagree with the science. I think there's a lot of science that says, yeah, it's absolutely fucking true. But I just think that some of it might be um, a little bit over-exaggerated. And I think uh, some of the reactions to how to deal with it are complete money hatting bullshit. Let's see. Uh, are you drunk enough to sing them a song? Uh, no, I'm not. Mm-hmm. I'm a horrible singer, and it's never going to happen. Let's see. See, Milo did a song after he drank a lot of wine, but Milo actually has a good voice at singing. I don't. Let's see. Uh, do you like Borat and Bruno, and which one is better? Borat. Mm-hmm. Uh, would you a Fitz Thistlewitz? I, I don't even know what that is, so I'm sorry, no. I think he's a YouTuber that does video game reviews and funny accents. I'm, I'm not familiar with him. Um, a lot of the shit I watch on YouTube is nothing related to probably what you think it is, so no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, <laughs> Loping is only into men with non-shitty opinions. Yeah, that's it. Fucking shots fired, all right. Mm-hmm. Loping is internet aristocrat-based god. Are you a black rapper, dude? Uh, no, I'm not. I'm sorry. No, he's not based god. Let's see. Red Alert or Civilization? Red Alert. Mm-hmm. Uh, who is the best band, and why is it, uh, this shit again? Why is it Neutro Milk Hotel? <laughs> That sounds like somebody from Mew. Uh, yeah, it is. <laughs> fuck off, Mew. <laughs> so I'm, not, it, gonna give you, I'm it, not gonna give you an answer. Is it a potato or a tambourine? This is important. I need to know what's on uh, the cover of that album. It's a tambourine. It, uh, really? Because it looks like a potato. You need to look with your musical eyes. <laughs> Let's see. Was Genghis Khan a misogynist? No, he was a conqueror. He used to light cats on fire and shoot them over the walls of fucking citadels. Did he really light cats on fire? Yes, he did. That was a very good technique. You'd light the cat on fire and huck it over a wall with a catapult or a trebuchet, and then it would land and run around and light other shit on fire. Wow, so actually, pussy has crumbled nations. How about that? Yeah, but you had to be really quick about it. Otherwise, (laughs) you were shooting a charred cat over the fucking wall, and it didn't do anything. Let's see here. Uh, What do you think of PewDiePie or NerdCube censoring comments? Uh, I don't know, Nerd Cubed, uh, as far as PewDiePie goes, where you're talking about him shutting down comments. I try to be as open as I can to respond to people. I have an Ask FM, I use Twitter, and then YouTube comments are open. And then I have a Skype account, too. And it is fucking impossible to respond, even at the level I'm at. And PewDiePie's, what, like 3.4 million or some fucking obscene number? 
There's mm. no way. There's no way he's ever going to respond to everybody. I think it's a bit of bullshit when he says he just wants to shut down comments so he's not dealing with negativity or whatever the fuck it is. But um, even if he left him open, he's never going to respond. It's just impossible. Let's see here. I'll, let's kind of. I don't know if you want to wrap it up here or something like that. Oh uh, yeah, let's take uh, three more questions. We'll three questions. All right. So, what are make, your thoughts on? I'll, I'll make them good. I'll make them good. All right. So, good question number one. What are your thoughts on Manwich? Uh, I don't. What? Manwich. Uh, I don't. I don't know what that is. I, you don't know I, what a Manwich is? Are you talking about the food? Yes. I, I don't know if that was like some fucking YouTuber's name. No, Manwich. Or because everybody on YouTube has these fucked up names like 420 No Scope, 360 fucking Shep, and PewDiePie. Or Internet Aristocrat. What an asshole that guy is. Yeah. Uh, Manwich is delicious. Uh, thoughts on Ramsey Paul? Ramsey Paul is great. Mm. I've seen a lot of his videos linked on poll. I thought they were good. Maybe he's got like some horrible fucking dark past I'm unaware of, but whatever. His videos are good as far as I'm concerned. It's what, from right. what I've seen, they're good. And let's find the last good one here. Oh, favorite H game. <laughs> uh, there's no. I'm not answering that. Because, uh, w- like, one, if I answer that, I'm going to name the wrong one and I'm going to get shit. Two, if I answer that, it's admitting I play H games, which they're, I'm guessing, referring to hentai games. Mm-hmm. Uh, and three, uh, no. I'm just not going to answer that. Fine. You know, this- Rance is always a safe answer. Well, there you go. Why don't you ask a different question so they get all some right. kind of an answer that's not bullshit? All right, all right, all right, all right. Uh, James Osrin wants to know if he can have a hug. Sure, you can, James. I'll give you a hug. And there you go. All right. Well, thanks, uh, Low Pink, for coming out. I appreciate you reading the questions. Uh, again, because I'm way too drunk to even fucking try to handle this. Yeah, you're uh, probably seeing triple right now. Uh, about that, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Do you want to give him a, a Twitter account, YouTube account? Uh, I know well, last time you gave him somebody else's name. You want to give him somebody else's name again? For the uh, fucking- Sure, yeah. I could spread some more love out here. Okay, uh, go for uh, it. Let me get you guys... Uh, to get to get to know uh, someone else a little better here, let me pull her up here. She's been, uh, I'm assuming, she. Apologies if I misgender her, but uh, the Ivy Clover, uh, and their ha- their handle is at the Ivy Clover One, uh, has been. I, I don't know. I guess set it upon themselves to become my little protege and go out and convert the masses themselves. So. And so that's at I V Y C L. V-E-R. The Ivy Clover. So T H E I V Y C L O V E R, and then the number one. Okay, and fantastic. there you go. Uh, well, thanks again, Lo Ping, for helping out. Um, mm-hmm. Hopefully, you can make it to the next stream on uh, Thursday. If you can, that'd be great. I'll have you on chat, and uh, I won't be a drunk asshole that time, so it'll be good. Yeah, no problem. All right. Uh, again, thanks for coming out and answer or I'm sorry, answering questions. Fuck, reading questions. I uh, appreciate <laughs> it. Uh, no problem. All right, I'll see you around, dude. All right, have a good night, man. You too. All right, take it easy. All right, chat. Well, uh, it was fun. I, again, thanks to Eric Kane, Milo Yiannopoulos, uh, Lo Ping, and King of Pole for coming out to answer some questions. I know this one went for a long time, but um, whatever. Who gives a shit? It's a Thursday. Is it Thursday? It is. Well, it's a Friday morning now at this point. I don't know how long this fucking chat's been going on. 1,940 people are the. Well, that just dropped enormously. But uh, 1,900 people, whatever, uh, stayed around to watch, so thank you all for coming out. Uh, there'll be a Ralph Retort stream tomorrow. King of Pole had mentioned it. Uh, I believe it's at 3 o'clock or 3.30 Eastern, so check that out if you can. And I'll probably do another stream uh, next week on Thursday. Aside from that, I'll have a video up uh, Saturday uh, night or Sunday morning at the latest. Either way, uh, thanks again, guys, for coming out. Have a good uh, evening, and I will talk to you later. I just, I wait a minute. It doesn't fucking matter. Either I, I forget to unmute my mic or it, it gets fucked. Just give me a second here to. Got my Oreos here. Good, good choice, I guess. I got the gold ones, not the black ones. Thank God they make. That's because you're a racist, all right? You need to fucking check that privilege. 
I am. I'm like Ethan Suplee in American History X, where he goes over to Ed Furlong's house and uh, basically he sees a jar, uh, uh, like a bowl of uh, M and M's. There's a whole bunch of white M and M's, but there's one black one in there. and He just takes the black one out. Oh, shameful. Mm. Oh wait, is this is this working or not? Hold on, I think we're live. I'm just double checking. I just I wait a minute. It doesn't. Oh, okay. there we go. Yep, we're good. Uh, hi, welcome to the uh, Karkoff is King la <laughs> Lazy Monday stream. Um, why not? I've got Andrew with me. You can hear eating fucking Oreos in the background. Mm, white Oreos, mind you. Yeah, yeah. It's because of your horrible supremacist tendencies. Is that where you? Is that where you got the uh, the YouTube handle, the uh, Twitter handle? I don't know. That was from uh, like a, a webtoon that some friends and I did where there was like a family guy ass cutaway where uh, one of the characters was watching... The Muppets on their TV, and Kermit goes, you know, God, so it's not easy being green, so I decided to pick a different color, and then um, you just hear, hey there, fellas, and it cuts back, and it's <laughs> in blackface with two guys. That's great. And what was funny is the one black guy who talks back to him, it was voiced by uh, Emmer, he said, oh, you are so fucking dead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, shit, is that clip on YouTube, or... Uh, yeah, just look up Cacti Chip, C-A-C-T-I-C-H-I-P. What's that? No, Chipper, you know. Cacti Chip, let me uh, pull that up. Should be. Yeah, close this other fucking window. I'm just watching that MSNBC uh, segment. I remember I was I was I was on King of Pole stream when that broke and we all watched it and I actually I actually recorded it off TV I got my uh, capture device and because the MSNBC stream on the internet was just like half a minute behind and so I so captured recorded did it. The, did this just come out of nowhere then or did somebody post about it ahead of time? Did you just suddenly appear on MSNBC talking about this? A uh, movie Bob tweeted about it. He heard oh of about course it. of course he would. And of course, everyone in the stream said Movie Bob said MSNBC is going to, and supposedly maybe Fox News might do a thing on it. And I saw Adam Baldwin tweeted to uh, Greg Gutfeld from Red Eye, and he's like, you know, just take a look at this hit piece right here. Well, Red Eye would be interesting to watch cover it. I suppose mm -hmm. it, it's going to have to happen now. I, I, if MSNBC ran a story, everybody else is. I mean, after all, they're the ones that lean forward. I mean, they're not to the left or the right, so. Mm, of course they are. Mm hmm. Obama's friends. <laughs> it's it's right, you know. So, you guys, did you watch this live on television then, or did you get it off your TV and then stream it for everybody? Um, a little of both. I was watching it and streaming. I was capturing it off of my TV, but uh, yeah, uh, King of Pole, uh, he was streaming it for everybody. I gotcha. And while we were like for the next hour and a half or two hours just discussing the entire thing with other people in the room, he just put it on loop and like you know every other comment was like kill the fucking video, don't want to look at fucking um, greasy, uh, greasy haired hipster guy and uh, Brianna Brianna Wu. Fucking hell, Milo must have been pissed. Mm. I'm guessing he found out he got canceled on because of this at this exact time. Oh yeah, definitely he. He, I, he was none too thrilled because she fucking because it seemed like that would that I actually would have wanted to hear that because that would have been uh, some good dialogue going on you know like a a, 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 a staunch anti gamer gay person talking to Milo who's been very and like people are trying to slander Milo and say like oh well he's like a take a look at these tweets and stuff but at Brianna fucking cave he's like MSNBC I can I can get this out to the masses and finally we're going national and everyone will know. Did they have her Patreon going by on the news ticker underneath her? It was like the the Kickstarter and PayPal buttons there for the TV viewing audience. It did not, but I remember, I don't know if it was in the clip on the ticker during the Gamergate segment, but I remember watching it from start to finish. It happened around 40 minutes in. They were like doing Ferguson and Ebola, and I remember on the news ticker saying like autistic person killed or some, or, <laughs> autistic, or, 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 or autistic person killed someone, Asperger's, something like that. So there's been a murder at that guy with the glasses is what you're telling me. Oh, they're just my. Oh, um, I. This is actually something I wanted to bring up. Like I told you about Linkara, and um, because he's, because what he's doing is he's, uh, he's gonna do a movie, a lot in a top the fourth wall movie, and he was talking about this on his Tumblr, and he does regular updates on his Tumblr, like you know, different paragraphs for different things, uh, and he basically said he's going to launch his Indiegogo at the end of November, and uh, ride it into December, and hope it'll close out at the end of December slash January, so he could avoid getting taxed on it. Because um, cause he said, uh, oh, shit, fucking Oreos. Oh, that, yeah, that was good. That was a good impression. Uh, that, that was your only car. I was just vomiting up. 
He's so full of shit he doesn't have room in his stomach anymore. Yeah. But yeah, essentially, so you could say he's a, he's a tax dodger. He's like uh, evading taxes. I mean, when then I, you'd think that's like a, a, a classic Republican would support uh, would support the, the government and all that. So, and apparently that, that happens, I guess, with Kickstarter. And uh, I, see, I think, I, think, um, I think his conservatism got fucked out of him by Iron Liz. Mm. It's the way, it, quite literally, out of him. Uh, it doesn't surprise me. How much is he asking for on the fucking project? He hasn't launched it yet, but... Uh, I don't know. I, I I couldn't even ballpark it if I if I wanted to guesstimate it. Uh, but I'm I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna say somewhere around nine thousand or ten thousand dollars. If I had to guess, I can't imagine just it going beyond that. It for, it, it, it won't for, break ten thousand. But for an uh, an internet film, I mean, he's not. He's, is he trying to actually make a real movie with just ten thousand dollars or? Uh, Again, I don't know, but if I had to guess, it's just going to be the same old shit. He's going to shoot it in his apartment, and he's probably going to try and get people, his friends, to do it for free. His fellow reviewers to like fly down and do it for free. He he'll, like he'll he'll blow all the he'll blow all the budget on Power Rangers costumes and uh, um, you know uh, the fucking what is it the morphers and all this other shit and build stupid like you know recreations of because uh, in one of his like recent storylines, he and this I don't know this character that I guess is modeled after some gay anime, uh, they, they, they built a replica of the uh, Starship Enterprise, uh, the, the bridge from, uh, from a, the original Star Trek for some fucking reason, because they have to fight Lord, uh, Lord Oink, I think it was. And the, the, oh, well, of course, yeah. yeah. The Mighty Morphin Voltage Avengers, I think it's called. Fucking Christ. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I got sidetracked off Brianna Wu because of that. So it was just her then on the MSNBC inter- or interview, I guess, or it wasn't her. It was this other fucking guy who uh, who got all of, who who miss uh, who twisted up all the facts. He first uh, he said it's like well a lot of people are saying that uh, she received uh, coverage in ex- uh, of her game in exchange for sexual favors. That actually never happened. There was no review of said game or exchange. I'm like oh I wanted to I want to punch this nigga out. Yeah, right? it was, it was positive said. press. Yeah, but I mean Nathan Grayson did that whole off by day shit. Totillo is trying to push is fucking ridiculous. I'm surprised. It would have been nice if they got like Maddie Lasem on there. Like, hey, how did it feel to get fucked over and fired from Pepsi because of this? Mm. Yeah, but he's probably... I think he's the kind of guy who has no, like, uh, trouble finding work. I'm sure, like, Zoe and friends would say, like, oh, well, he'll never work again. Well, I've looked at his... I think we've all, like, checked up on his filmography or his work, and he just... He has no, like, he... I think he was, like, shooting stuff for A&E because they have, like, a zillion different reality shows and other stuff going on, so his career is secure. He doesn't need to live off of uh, Patreon. Oh, fuck. All right. Well, I was, uh, you know, I, I invited you on to ask uh, Jesse some questions because Chad seems to fucking enjoy the shit out of that. All right, ask away. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, fantastic. Are you aware of the uh, new uh, news about Ebola? Uh, I am. Uh, the, I I haven't been to the States lately. I do divide my time between my shack here in Mexico and my home back in Minnesota. And uh, it's just, why isn't the government regulating this? Why hasn't the government provided oversight? They just sent the guy home. It's like, here, have a few Flintstone vitamins. That'll, you know, put some yummy in your tummy, and you'll feel much better. Well, the orange and grape flavors are said to fight off uh, horrible viruses that make you bleed from your eyes. So I, I guess that makes sense. Apparently so. Apparently so, and apparently he had a kid and a wife, and now their names have been published, and now people are going to go harass them, and they could catch the Ebola. And is, did they clean up the puke that he puked on the sidewalk on his way inside the uh, in the uh, ambulance? What no, if, they, uh, let the, uh, they let the Ebola licking dogs get that. It's a special police unit that Obama has been training for the last year. Really bizarre. I mean, who, who would have thought that would have come in handful? Oh, that is just disgraceful, if you ask me. Having dogs do it, we don't even know if it's dog transmittable. Dog transmittable, that's right. Uh, what about the more recent news, though, of a nurse actually contracting the disease from the patient in the hospital? Uh, people are saying it's a conspiracy because her name is Nina Pham, but it's spelled P-H-A-M, like pharmacy. Like she's a, a secret agent, a double agent. 
Well, I think it's just a thing. Maybe she shake, shook the person's hand. I mean, uh, uh, what? How could a nurse uh, do so much or be so ignorant? They got to imagine what kind of hospital were they dealing with, and they they weren't properly equipped. We knew these people were coming back from overseas. Who knows what they were doing? Whether it be exotic hunters, uh, killing, eating, or possibly engaging in carnal relations with the uh, the hunt that they bring back or eat over there. It's just you you never know with all these people. People. That, yeah, that's very true. Uh, they're saying the investigators are saying they don't they don't know how she was infected because she had a hazmat suit on. Do you do you think this means that I don't know is Ebola is it become conscious uh, conscious does it does it know what's going on is it self aware? Oh come on, Jim! I've seen it all. I've never heard of no disease becoming sentient or self aware. That's just popplecock. <laughs> it's popplecock. Same thing you'd say about David Ike's uh, reptilian theory. Is that right? Oh, absolutely. That man's a coward. When asked when push, to, push comes to shove, he just walks away like a little bitch. Just a pussy. Oh, well, shit. Uh, chat's asking, uh, I don't know, Jesse, if he might be nearby. Can you bring Alex on? Can I bring Alex on? Uh, sure. Uh, hold on. I'll grab him for you. Hello? What's going on? Oh, hello. Hello. Uh, we were just talking about water filters and wanted to speak to an expert. Yeah, the water filters, that's uh, that's pretty great. How come none of, uh, I can't help but notice none of you have bought them? I've been shilling them all over, and I can't help but notice that uh, I've only sold three in the past uh, eight weeks. It's uh, like, uh, why would you buy, why won't any of you buy the filters? It's clear that, uh, like, any of you guys, all of you gamers, all you people listening in uh, in this uh, this uh, stream talk show chat, uh, you can, <laughs> like, you, you guys could use a change from your soda, your sugared water. And your uh, your Mountain Dews and your uh, your Blaze, your uh, bl Mountain Blazes and all and all that stuff. Get up off your ass and buy a water filter. It's very healthy for you, very nutritious. It'll it'll help them live longer. It is absolutely. I, they the reason the, the the bullshit excuse they give is they uh, fluoridate the water uh, because of tooth decay. Oh, because of tooth decay. Okay. <laughs> Exactly. They uh, they just decrease tooth decay, but it's actually more than that. They modify the fluoride all the time, and so not only does your tooth not teeth not decay, but they also um they program it programs your body so that it's uh just to be hooked on it, even though you don't know it. it it's a chemical dependency that you need liquid. It, it makes creates chemical dependency in your body that you need to create li uh, liquid in your body. And well, so, somebody's saying that um, water filters are out. Are, are you behind the times right now? Because they're saying uh, iodine pills are what's in. Oh, powdered alcohol. Don't believe everything you see on uh, on the their home shopping networks or anything like that. I don't subscribe to that. That's just snake oil sa salesman. Uh, tactics at his best. You know, uh, like the old days when the people actually came out and they went to these uh, these convention shows, they would show you the real deal. They would give you these free samples, and that's what I like to do, albeit I do it from my compound. But I assure you, I have uh, experimented <laughs> with these water filters, and the quality of the water is pristine. It tastes like it, like the best type of water. It's like drinking God's nectar. Oh, well, goddamn. Um, <laughs> I, I hear you're going to be on another person's show uh, coming up here. What what show is that you're going to be a guest on? Uh, well, tomorrow I'm going to be on Governor uh, Jesse Ventura's uh, program. Uh, that is uh, tomorrow, October 14th. Um, check my Twitter, uh, Real Alex Jones on Twitter. <laughs> Infowars.com, PrisonPlanet.net. Uh, for further details, just stay tuned. Go there now. Uh, like, favorite, retweet, subscribe. Uh, stay tuned, and we will have official show times. And Jesse's Twitter, uh, Governor Jay Ventura, Jesse Ventura on uh, Twitter. You can uh, look for updates there, follow and subscribe. And if you have any questions to me, submit them, uh, submit them his way, and we'll talk about it on the show tomorrow. Well, well, thank you very much, uh, Alex. Uh, some people in the chat are asking Andrew. I, I don't know uh, if you're ready for this. Uh, they want you to do an impersonation of me and have a Jim on Jim encounter. Oh, okay. That sounds all right. I, I, don't, <laughs> I, I, I don't see why not. <laughs> I I feel like I've heard a part of this in another voice. Uh, you want to you talk a little bit more so I can even pinpoint that? Oh, yeah, sure. Well, Jim, I want to ask you, why haven't we fucked Jade Fox yet? I mean, Jesus Christ, that chick's throwing herself at you, and you're just ignoring it like a big fag homo. I mean, <laughs> what's the deal? Are you a uh, are you are you not a uh, sexual tyrannosaurus or are you just another slack jawed faggot like Jesse says all these people are? Uh, I must be I must be a slack jawed faggot uh, for not for not hitting that uh, as you said, uh, Mister uh, Aristocrat. What do you like to be called exactly? 
uh, I don't know, uh, aristocrat, autistocrat, whatever the fuck you want to call me. I really don't care. You can call me a uh, uh, fuckface or potsy. <laughs> potsy, okay. Potsy, um, would you like to answer a few of the questions from the chat? Uh, I think they're they're interested in hearing what the internet uh, aristocrat thinks. All right, hold on. Let me uh, let me log on to the actual stream. Why the fuck should I? God, these comments go by fast. All of you guys are fucking autists. You should really, <laughs> Jim. Why haven't you put this on fucking slow mode? God damn. All right. I, I am retarded, apparently. I'm very stupid. Kajit uh, Shakabutmatic says, he's a faggot. Why, yes, I actually am. I'm not fucking Jade Fox, and I want nothing to do with her. So, <laughs> confirmed. Is this, is, this, is this your angle for the, uh, for the voice? <laughs> I'm guessing. Is that one event? Is that, what we're, is that where this was born from? Uh, yeah. Or maybe I'm just, uh, maybe in the chat said, maybe I'm just your headmate coming out, and you don't know what the fuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you are my headmate. This is this is what it sounds like when I'm talking to myself in my mind. All right. Not really seeing any real questions here. They're saying I love dicks, and do I love what's the size of my dick? Uh, two inches. All right. Okay. <laughs> there. Boom. There's your fucking answer. That's how big my dick is. Are you happy? Are you fucking happy? I hope you are. You fucking faggots. Well, I'm glad that you finally came out with that information. It's uh. it's great. Well, I'm glad you did too, and I hope you come out in another capacity. <laughs> well, I'm very sharp-witted. I'm very quick. Yeah, so I hear. Oh, it's a zinger too. Oh, if Chip were here, he'd be celebrating that one. What the fuck? <laughs> Thank you, Chipper. How big is your dick? I just answered how big my dick was. Holy shit, you're asking it all at once. I told you, two fucking inches. Erect, okay? That's why I'm not fucking Jade Fox, okay? You know. What I mean? <laughs> so there's there's a whole backstory now to this. It's it's not just that singular event. There's like a backstory to it. Hmm. Alright, let's see. Uh, Internet Autistocrat said something, but it flew by, so I'm not answering that fucking faggot's questions. Slow the fuck down. Uh, where's the new video? I don't know where the new fucking video is, and I don't give a shit. You fucking wait your turn. Oh, wow, getting getting pissy with the chat. Uh, continue. I'm sure they're 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 dying to know all sorts of things. They're all asking me. I don't think you fuckers know how gym time works or real time works. You know, okay? So, uh, you know, gym time is all of it whenever the fuck I want to. Okay? So uh, shut your fucking mouth and uh, just drink your nice little fluoridated water. Like the nice little plebs that you are. <laughs> I didn't I didn't know I had adopted the term pleb uh, and used it so much. It's good. Uh, I know. Good. After all, after all, Jim, we are based. We're so red-pilled. So fucking red-pilled. <laughs> are we now? Is that, uh, is that what the kids are calling it these days? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Everyone likes to... All the kids are saying based, red-pilled, and, and all that stuff. It's It's just great. <laughs> well, it looks like chat still has quite a few questions for you, uh, Jim. Uh, go, go for it. Uh, all right. Well, let me scroll up. Let me scroll up. How old is your dick? Uh, it's 37 years old. Okay, two inches hard and 37 years old. I'm starting to see the, uh, starting to see uh, stretch marks on it. Well, yeah. Now they finally have the answer. They've been dying to know those. The answer to those two questions. And my foreskin is pretty loose. It kind of waggles and it kind of tickles sometimes when I'm driving. <laughs> Does it? No. <laughs> okay. Well, that's great. Any other questions you want to take, uh, Jim? Who is Cute Booty Dancer 2014? Uh, how the fuck should I know? Uh, I don't know. God, all these, all these fucking pleb questions. Jesus Christ. All these, uh, all these fucking pleb questions. That's uh, that's pretty good. Bring, why the fuck? Okay, Del Pleaver, or whatever the fuck your name is. Why the fuck would I bring Jade on? I've already confirmed you that I'm fucking gay with a two-inch erect cock and a loose foreskin. <laughs> Why the fuck would I bring her on with all my sexual insecurities? I'm not gonna fucking do that. Okay, I screwed the pooch. Uh, did you want me to? Did you did you want me to fucking say that? Because I just fucking fucking did. <laughs> well, well, don't stop now. Keep <laughs> keep keep going, Mr. Aristocrat. Uh, there's still a few questions lingering there. If you wanna if you wanna take one or two more. <laughs> Uh, what is my fetish? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. I used to touch my cousin, or I saw like she used to pee on me for fun as a kid. So that's where I got my. That's where I kind of like uh, pee fetishes. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> we're learning more about you by the minute. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff coming out about me, in more ways than one. Okay. Hey now. Uh, one last question. You want to take one la uh, one more from the chat? All right. Uh, let's see. Uh... Let's make it a good one. Let's scroll down. How wide is my asshole? Oh, I don't know. I, 
I've been training how to stretch my asshole for years in the event that I get raped. So in, in case I get an ass full of cock, I can just stretch it, and it won't feel so bad. And I could kind of shut down that shit, you know? Just stuff that you, you train for in, in life. Well, that, that's, uh, that is, that's great. I'm glad. I bet the uh, plebs, was it? Uh, fucking love it. Oh, definitely. Definitely. <laughs> okay, Andrew. Um, any any other uh, voices you want to do? Uh, I keep telling him you could do Alex Jones, uh, uh, Jesse Ventura, Chipper, and Uncle Paul. But like, what's what's your range? Because you've got a service now up, right? For this, uh, I do. I do have a a Fiverr. Uh, it's www.fiverr.com. That's Fiverr with two R slash blackface Kermit and. Uh, it's just really cheap. I just threw it together pretty quickly rather than just wait. There's no, like, voice demo on it or, like, I'll throw up one later, but, uh, let's see. Jesse, Alex, um, God, who the fuck else? Uh, I've, I've got a Morgan Freeman and a Liam Neeson I sort of kind of work on. Um, What's the, uh, try, try the, the Morgan Freeman one out. Ah, uh, I wish I could tell you that Internet Aristocat fought the good fight and had sex with Jade Fox, and I wish I could tell you that. But YouTube and Skype ain't no fairy tale world. He just sat there with his loose force kid. And now, are, are you pulling this from like Shawshank Redemption? What's where are you where are you pulling this voice? Oh, that 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 is uh, that is from Shawshank Redemption, where uh, where Andy Dufresne uh, couldn't get it up for the sisters with his uh, two inch pecker and his loose force. <laughs> Oh wow! Yeah, I hear he has things in common with me. Apparently, uh, what, what was the other one besides Morgan? You said. Oh, I said. Um, I also do Liam Neeson. I'm doing another movie where my wife gets killed, and I have to go after my daughter because terrorists are trying to kill my family. <laughs> Isn't that every single movie that <laughs> Liam Neeson does, though? No, it not. No, it isn't. I play. I've played Rob Roy, Qui Gon Jinn. A uh, variety of other roles that escape my mind now. But let me tell you, I have to fight my family. And I fight Forrest Whitaker in this new one as well. It's be- <laughs> Forrest Whitaker? He's still alive and acting. He is. He plays a special forces police chief. And he knows I'm the real deal. And he's trying to come after me. But I know I'm always one step ahead. Okay, okay. Uh, the chat's asking, do you have any other voices besides those? And somebody said you sounded like Reagan. I'm going to guess with the uh, Liam Neeson one. Uh, let's see. Uh, movie Bob? I kind of sort of have a movie Bob. I could paint a narrative of my own. Internet Aristocrat has a penchant for conspiracies. Well, let me run one by you, Mr. Jim Internet Aristocrat. <laughs> I, okay. By your... By your own admission, one of your videos, uh, the Dina disaster, the Dina debacle of Mighty Number no. Nine, of some of a poor innocent Lebanese pro-Jewish game developer working for Comsec on Mighty Number no. Nine as the social media community manager, you, by your own admission, have said that your video happened to be stickied on the 4chan V thread for a while, and that is where you accumulated most of your fame. And now, while granted, most people often whore themselves out on Reddit or 4chan. And- <laughs> And you often claim you often claim that you don't promote your stuff on there, but how do we really definitively know? And that is where you accumulated all your fame via 4chan. While either other lesser personalities like investigative journalism bowed out because 4chan would frequently post his videos and he became disillusioned with the fact that people would quote him from time to time and he cites himself as a moderate. While I don't particularly enjoy him as he slammed me on constant occasions, I do respect him for his opinion for actually seeing the light. And so, Mr. Oh, okay, how, how do you do a movie, Bob, without gasping for fucking air, because it sounds like he just goes on and on and on. I really don't know. Oh no, wait, there's a giant guy in a fat costume that I have to fight, who's as rotund as me. Oh, rotund, that's a very, that's a very, it's a great word. It's a good word substitution. You're teaching the audience with your videos. <laughs> Do an impression of Movie Bob eating potato chips. I don't have potato chips, and I finished off my Oreos before the, before the oh, stream started. So you're cock-teasing them now. Mm. Uh, can, somebody asked earlier, can you do an Obama? Have you ever tried an Obama? Oh, uh, I could t- I could kind of do an uh, Barack Obama, my my fellow citizens. I won't deny it's been a rough couple of years, and all you Republican motherfuckers have stood in my fucking way. So I'm just gonna wait this one out. I don't give a shit who comes next. I'm just trying to make it to the next day, till the day I get out of this fucking office and get whoever the fuck in here, whether it's some. Dumb Republican cunt or Hillary Clinton cunt. I don't give a fuck anymore. Enjoy Ebola, niggas. I'm out. <laughs> Is that that sounds like the commander in chief? Uh, can you do? Uh, people are asking. Do you, can you do a king of pole? Can you do a plinket? 
Uh, what like what have you tried? I guess outside of the Freeman Neeson one and the other four. Uh, King of Paul. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, King of Paul. All right. Well, I I, I don't know. I'm just upset about this whole. Uh, I'm in friend zone for like. Uh, <laughs> Holy shit! Uh, I just, uh, well, I, I can hear you typing in the background. Uh, uh, are you typing right now? Oh, uh, type. Yeah, I'm, I'm just typing. Don't mind that. Um, it, 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 the whole thing, you know. It, it, I, I haven't slept, and you just, I've been just, I'm sleepwalking at this point. I, I've been awake for four days. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, just that thing. Yeah. You know, uh, uh do you, any thoughts on Obama, King of Pole? Well, uh, 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 Obama's all right, I guess. It's just he's, there's a lot of stuff he hasn't done. <laughs> he really hasn't. Uh, Really, yeah, really hasn't kind of just yeah, it's just doing all the uh, the stuff. It's, it's, uh, I think he was uh, he wasn't ready for the job. He was swift. He was rushed into it. <laughs> was he? Okay, I didn't know if you were going to tell me that answer or type it out because I, I can hear all that click clacking going on in the background. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. That's just that's a different thing. Right? Uh, I'm just typing clacking to clack. Oh, I spelled I spelled my liquor again. Oh boy. Uh, oh, oh shit. Are you going to have to get uh, some more ad revenue to buy a new keyboard? Uh, uh, ads, ads. Got to go fast. Got to run ads. Got to run ads. Got to go faster, faster, faster. Uh, okay, there we go. Okay, take your break. Uh, we're gonna play uh, nine ads. <laughs> okay, okay, it's, it's perfect. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, again, I think with the movie Bob and the King of Poland impersonation, uh, <laughs> it's a lot of fucking talking to do. It's it's a it's it's a talent, I guess. No, oh, well, thank you for uh, popping on. I appreciate it. Uh, you want to plug anything before you pop out of here, like a, a YouTube or a Twitter? Anything for anybody? Uh, yeah, I'm I'm Blackface Kermit on YouTube, Twitter, AskFM, Tumblr, and uh, Fiverr. Uh, just uh, subscribe if you like. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna be putting some more prank calls up real uh, real soon, and um, yeah, well, that's about it. All right, all right, awesome. Uh, thanks again for popping in, Andrew. All right, peace, Nigs. Stay vigilant. <laughs> you heard you heard him chat. You need to stay vigilant. All right. So cool. Uh he gave you his YouTube, Twitter and Fiverr account if you're interested. Like I said, he does really good voices. Do Ebola, he's already gone. I know there's a delay in the stream, so you probably don't know that yet. Uh people want more impersonations. Uh, again, uh I'll have uh blackface Kermit Andrew on. Uh, again sometime, and I'm sure he'll pop up in King of Pole stream too, so ask him when you uh, see him, and he'll, he'll do something good for you. Now I've got to wait for the chat to actually catch up. I'm going to go look at Twitter. I guess we only got a second. Oh, let's see. Uh, Jesus Christ, that Obama impersonation, I don't know, or impression, I don't know if you're, if that's a good Jesus Christ or a bad one. Oh, let's see. Uh, yeah, people enjoying uh, Andrew's uh, ability to do voices. That's pretty good stuff. All right, I think the chat probably is fucking caught up by this point. That King of Pole was perfect. I love him so much. Uh, yep, he does a good King of Pole. He does a good me and a good lot of other people. Uh, Jim doing impersonation. Nope. I have no ability to do that kind of shit. Bring in more guests. I'll bring some more people in as we go on here. That's not, uh, that's not a problem. Where's your friend code, you farming bastard? I will put it up right now. I'll put it up on, I guess, Twitter. You can find the fucking 3DS. Where the fuck did I put it? And, oh, no, there it is. All right. Get this fucking thing and put it up, and then you can just respond with your code. I think that's how it works. And then I enter it on my end, and I can fucking play multiplayer. God, that's fucking convoluted. All right. Uh, pull up Twitter so I can enter this. Okay. All right. I'm gonna post it now. Then. God, it's like some fucking absurdly long number. They can't just have it integrated. Uh, oh, 
Okay. All right, so it's up on Twitter then if you want it. All right. I should have posted. Um... Okay, good, it's up. King of Hole in er, impression. Uh, yep, people seem to <laughs> seem to enjoy that quite a bit. Jim needs to bust MSNBC. I haven't even watched the uh, the full video. Andrew linked me to part of it earlier, but I didn't. Let me see if I can pull it up. But I, I don't know if I play it, if you'll be able to hear the fucking audio or not. Oh, whatever, let's see what it says. So what is this, the Reed Report? All right. Oh, let me skip ahead here. Oh, fuck it. I'll queue it up and I'll watch it in a minute. Uh, Jim, what's your current thoughts on the Ebola outbreak in Africa? Should we quarantine Africa to help slow the spread of the infection to other countries? What do you think? Uh, I don't know why they didn't restrict air tra or air travel, especially after it spread to two other countries from the first three because of the guy on the plane. Uh, he took a flight east and brought it with him. And now we've got it popping up in Texas and a nurse getting infected through a hazmat suit. They should have restricted air uh, travel. But they didn't. And there's some government-instituted uh, curfew or something, isn't there, in one of the countries? I, I haven't been following it really close, so I'm not 100% sure. Have you played Bayonetta 2, the demo? Uh, nope, I don't own a Wii U, so I haven't had a chance to play it. MSNBC says there is a literal war. So what, they took the culture war um, bullshit with it? Oh, that shit is awful. Oh, well, fuck, it should be queued up now. Let me go take a look. I, I know, you're not going to be able to hear me actually play the video, so because I'm retarded at live streaming. So they're just showing the tweet you got. All right. A debate about sexism in the gaming industry. Really? They don't even mention the gaming ethics shit, uh, or journalism ethics stuff. Okay, Eric Johnson is the guy's name. Wait, didn't he write an article shitting on Gamergate? Wasn't there one from Recode, or am I thinking somebody else? Oh my god, this guy. All right, let's hear what he says. I, I, this is just surreal watching this. Uh, BBC Biz co or uh, BBC Biz covered GG briefly. Uh, I haven't seen that article either. There's there's so much stuff that comes out. It's almost impossible to keep up with all of it, especially now that you've got mainstream outlets uh, starting to cover it. Turn it up louder. Uh, I, I can try. Let me see if I can actually. Maybe I can switch this. Um. Oh, but I could I could fuck this up if I try this though. Yeah, it's not gonna work. Oh wait, well maybe. Yeah, I don't know. I'm retarded. Oh my god, this guy is so boring to fucking listen to. The death threats are the result of a meme. All those damn memes and their, their uh, violence-inspiring natures. Holy shit, Brianna. Did you just wake up when you... Did you wake up and go into the fucking studio? What the fuck's going on with your hair? Oh, Milo must have been fucking pissed. So she ditches his interview and goes and does this.
Wait, wait, wait. What did she call HM? <laughs> HN is an extremist group. Wait, did did Brianna Wu just say that uh, HN is <laughs> is a hardcore kid on the internet? <laughs> what the fuck? I, I didn't realize that 8chan is the are, are the dangerous users that 4chan can't handle. They all go to they go they go to a fucking 8chan. Oh, this is ridiculous. So they turned it all about them. Oh, let's come talk about Gamergate, but make it all about Brianna Wu. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah, they're all terrified of what? So she, she turned it into a war on women. What a fucking bunch of bullshit. HN is too extreme for 4chan. It's the funniest dumb fucking thing I've ever heard. What is that That fucking video clip of uh, Jorge wants to be hardcore but his mom won't let him? Yeah, yeah. HN is fucking Jorge in that, that fucking video. And I guess 4chan would be the mom. This is just absurd. Oh, they actually bring him back in, the guy from Recode. Oh, now they're talking about the numbers of how many men and women design games. I don't understand what I'm listening to. They said it was going to be about Gamergate, and I haven't heard anybody talk about journalism ethics once. I'm like five minutes and 30 seconds into this. What in the fuck? Yeah, I mean, they, they've only got, I'd say, three minutes left to talk about anything related to gaming journalism ethics. Oh, what a hit piece. What an absolute hit piece. Yeah, debate rages over sexism in gaming. Oh, here we go. Let's see what he says. Yeah, why are they angry? Oh my god, he's going to some sociology bullshit. It's like Tumblr went to do a news interview and nobody turned the mic off. What in the fuck? Academics like Anita Sarkeesian. Academics like Anita Sarkeesian. Really. God, he kind of looks like he's going to pass out. He looks really anxious. If you go to like the, um, like seven minutes, 15 seconds in, he's like hyperventilating. He looks like he's going to just pass out. Pro oh, I see. Problem with the gamer uh, culture and the, the professional industry. Oh, what is this? She's calling out Giant Bomb? Oh, this is this is a, 
I wonder what Giant Bomb's reaction to that was. Did Patrick uh, Klepek flog himself to cure himself of that privilege for getting called out? He probably was absolutely devastated. What? Yeah, they, they haven't talked about journalism ethics once. This is nearly nine minutes long. Nine minutes long, they didn't even bring it up once. Not even a, not even a little bit. Whoa. Uh, she actually said the listen and believe thing. We need men to listen uh, to our... Ex oh, come on. I can't... Brandon actually used listen and believe at the very end of this interview. Holy shit. Oh, let's see what, what, what Chad thinks. Uh, check Twitter. All right, check Twitter. Um, oh, yeah, there are a couple of people posting codes. I'll enter those in the uh, 3DS uh, friend codes or whatever they are. Uh, let's see. She made it about harassment instead of the real issue. Of course, that's all that was. That was nine minutes of being center stage. I, I, I'm just floored by the fact not no <clears throat> nobody, not the host or either of the guests, uh, brought up any of the instances of uh, misbehavior on the part of these websites. Not even once. They just brush it off by misphrasing it uh, intentionally at the beginning. Oh, well, it was about somebody giving... A, you know, positive reviews. It was positive press. It was putting her name out there right when her website went live to take donations. The moment those articles went up. And yet, they, they don't even address it. They just brush it off and then right into, I'm, I, you know, I, my horrible experience. Brianna was horrible experience. What a load of shit. What a fucking load of shit. Uh, did you see that Boogie got banned from NeoGAF? Really? He got banned? So wait, what was the reason for finally kicking him? I mean, they were treating him like a fucking whipping boy. Every time he said something, they'd all jump on him. So what was it that finally pushed them over the edge? He didn't hug back hard enough in their hug box? Like, what was his? what was Boogie's crime? Why did he need to be thrown off the website? Because he's the most middle of the road guy I've ever I've ever seen. I can't imagine he would say anything anywhere near offensive enough to get banned. There's just no way. Does somebody have an image? Can somebody, I I don't know, send the image of the ban message if it's out there? Um, maybe somebody's posted it by now. Let me take a look. Uh, Boogie may be going on MSNBC to give his side. And then it links to something. All right, let's see. Boogie banned from NeoGAF. Uh, threats against him put into effect. It's a link to... Uh, where do I get the link? Or the name for this fucking thing? Kotaku in action. Looks like it's... Uh... Remember all those threats made to me if I decided to continue to defend gamers? They've all now become true. Good times. And this is from, I, I'm assuming, Boogie's... Twitter account. Also, I may have been banned from NeoGAF, or I have been banned from NeoGAF. My ban reason, or my ban will be removed never. <clears throat> oh, oh, there is actually a link to what it said. Your time at NeoGAF has been spent consistently apologizing for and disingenuously ignoring the actions of a movement of harassment and hate while diverting as much attention as possible away from the issues at hand and toward yourself. You are not the victim here for being thought less of in your tactic and your tacit support of disgusting and illegal behavior. Individuals standing up for victims continue to receive thousands of hate messages and death threats, and a third member of the video game industry is forced out of her home and into hiding. People you claim are your friends are leaving social media behind in the wake of mass harassment by the movement you are championing. These are your people. This is your movement. 
Also, you've expressed a strong desire to leave NeoGAF but continue to participate. You'll never, or wait, you'll now have some more free time to reflect on your decisions of the past several re or weeks. And then it's signed NeoGAF administration. What a bunch of assholes. Yeah, you had an opinion. We it, His band message, when you boil it down, is you had an opinion we didn't like, your band. What a bunch of fucking pussies. God, NeoGAF, do you have any redeemable qualities? Is there anything about you that isn't just utter shit? You're that sensitive. You can't handle Boogie having a difference of fucking opinion, so you ban him. And then you act like, you even say in the fucking ban message, for the past several weeks. So no, it's just all of a sudden now you decide you're going to throw a hissy fit. Oh, get fucked. Get fucked. I'm surprised he's not angry about that. That's, that's no reason at all. It's all bullshit. Other oh, more tweets. Let's see. All this for having the audacity to simultaneously condemn people who would harass women while still defending gamers. Good stuff. There's a final one here. Apparently, the only way not to have these things visit upon you is to roll over completely, which I will never, ever do. Um, yeah, man, that's fucking rough. I, I, his most recent video was, I, I don't know, the moderate's position? Like, it's just... I've never seen him post anything ever, really, that you could consider offensive. It, it, the, the gist of that ban message is we don't like your opinion. He, he doesn't, I mean, he doesn't post offensive shit anywhere. I've never seen Boogie post offensive shit on YouTube or Twitter or th there's just, it's complete shit. Yeah, that's, that's just fucking ridiculous. They can't handle a fucking difference of opinion. Unbelievable. I mean, how sheltered are they at that forum? How do you even discuss video games? You, I mean, fuck. If the, the discussion gets too heated, do people get banned because they like the wrong Final Fantasy? I mean, for fuck's sake. Grow some fucking thick skin, NeoGAF. It's, it's ridiculous. You make Tumblr look strong. Uh, more friend codes. I'll, I'll enter those all, or all in when I get a chance here. And then you can all beat the living shit out of me in, um, in Smash, because I'm fucking horrible at it. Uh, yep, somebody's asking, you're going to add everyone. Yes, I will. Uh, I don't, well, is there a limit to how many you can add? I, I don't know. I'm new to the 3DS, so I have no idea. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Neocaf apply directly to your autism. Uh, okay. <laughs> Uh, can we? What is this? Can we ban the term? Oh, it went by too quick. Yeah, uh, apparently people in the chat aren't fond of NeoGAF. What about Gaia Online? I, does that even exist still? Are they banning it on there? I I, I don't know. I, I'm just amazed that Gaia Online would still exist, I guess. Oh, dissenting opinions are neo-gaffers uh, triggers, uh, apparently. And the ban amount is never, so he'll never get, uh, like, oh, God, come on, man. Uh, Robin v. Robin me? Uh, most definitely. And then you can fucking destroy me. Obligatory question, how big is your cock? Well, that's good to know chat still likes that question. I should be calling you, wait, I should be calling you plebs. That's what, um, that's what I learned from Andrew. That should become my new go-to. Is Milo going to get his pearl necklace? Again, I was tricked by a very charming British man who uh, took advantage of the fact that as an, uh, you know, an innocent um, Midwesterner, I wouldn't know what that term was. Uh, funny junk is a bastion of free speech. Well, yeah, in relation to Gamergate, it is. Uh, Neogafisms, a new series. No, actually, what I want to do is, um, if you, I don't know if you've seen the comment section on a lot of these articles that are getting posted about Gamergate. Uh, some of the stuff people who are allowed to comment on those sites, like Jezebel and others, uh, say is fucking insane. I'd like to do a video series on that, like a Tumblrisms version of really shitty press coverage. Just mocking the articles 
and the dumb comments. Because Polygon has put out some really fucking baffling shit in the last in the last uh, week, I'd say. You'd had that Shadow of Mordor uh, fucking review. What was it? Uh, it teaches you the wrong way to kiss and kill or some crazy shit that they asked somebody to write for them. Can we discuss M. Bison's dick size? I'm not. Uh, I'm not the authority on Street Fighter, but you know, you know who you could ask. Uh, go ask. Uh, go ask Gutex or Mike Ross. Go. Go to like uh, Cross Counter TV. Go. Go ask them. They would be the experts on that. Oh, what is that? Oh, Gawkerisms. Ah, is that bad? Opinions on Jim Sterling. I, I know that he had, I guess, he, I guess he, he got trolled by a new account and then went off on a tirade, but I haven't, I haven't been paying super close attention, so I don't know if he did more after that or kind of where that's sitting. Will Milo be okay? Yeah, Milo, Milo's a res, or resilient guy. He'll bounce back. Are you talking about um, somebody canceling on him like they did? Which is shitty. It would have been at least semi-decent to give him a heads up way in advance instead of the last minute kind of shit that was getting pulled. Yeah, he'll be fine. He'll go recharge his batteries and pop back on. Be the uh, charming caddy Brit that he is. Uh, BBC does a Gamergate interview. I haven't seen it. Or if uh, are you saying they're going to do it? Uh, Jim, do you watch The Amaz or Amazing Atheist? Uh, nope. At least I'm trying to think. Has he put out any videos that I... I mean, nothing that's like popping into the top of my head. Do you play Soul Calibur? Yep, I played Soul Calibur. Uh, I'm terrible at it. Like, I am all fighting games. Uh, somebody's saying, IA, Jim Sterling wants to leave the escapist. Why? I thought he his whole tirade was against Gamergate, wasn't it? Why would he want to leave the escapist? Uh, let's see, I'm just reading through some of the questions. Uh, have you, what is that? Have I talked to Milo? Uh, no, not, not recently. If he, is he not tweeting? Did he go off the grid or something? Uh, ageism on Tumblrs, or on Tumblrisms. I looked into the ageism thing. There's not a lot of it. I wanted to do an episode on that a long time ago, but there were like it was basically one or two Tumblr blogs that at like at the core of it was fuck you mom and dad. It was just really pissed off teenagers that had bedtimes and chores and they really hated it. And so that that's what the whole ageism shit. It, it looked like the majority of it on Tumblr was. Oh, somebody saying check Ask FM. All right. Oh, there are a couple on here. Oh, uh, let's see. What is this? Have you seen Literally Woo's excuses for not going on Milo's show? And they're linking to a Tumblr, spacecatgal.tumblr.com, and some post called Changing the New Normal. So this is her Tumblr account? All right, let's, uh, let's see what this says. I believe that if you want to solve a problem, sometimes you have to talk to people you disagree with. When I read Stephen Totillo's Kotaku piece about me, one passage really struck out. Friday's in his, er, incident being er, brings a different aspect of the Gamergate controversy to the fore. Uh, the targeting of women, the sense of discussion about gaming, gaming media ethics, and gamers will be forever contaminated by an ugliness disproportionate to the issues at hand. This is potentially new status quo that we at Kotaku reject. All right, what, it's, this is a lot of shit to read. Uh, Trent's telling me this is a bad idea. What is this? I then reached out to uh, Milo Yiannopoulos. Almost immediately, I had friends telling me this is a bad idea. Uh, let's see. When I got the first draft of Milo's questions, my heart sank. He seemed to want to ask, or he seemed to want me to answer some highly inflammatory questions about Gamergate. This was completely opposite of the intention I thought we had of uh, quieting things down. I read through them, still agreed to the or to answer almost all of them, 
and still plan to do the interview. I told Milo I would get the questions this evening. He could record any time tonight. All right, let's see what else she has. All right. Uh, right now, I am in the middle of figuring out where I'm going to live with law enforcement, or while law enforcement tries to determine who sent me death threats. I plan to get a safe location tonight, get internet access, look at the questions, and contact Milo to figure out a time to record. He is not the only member of the press waiting on input from me. Institutions like the BBC and CBS are also waiting to have emails returned. While I was in the midst of traveling, Milo started tweeting that I'd abandoned his show and then made series of extremely inflammatory tweets about me. The funny thing is, if he had waited 30 minutes, I would have internet access and a place to set up my audio. And then it just, what does this close it out? Uh, I was sincere, or I, yeah, I was sincere when I said I want, or want to calm Gamergate down. I'm willing to reach out to people who are genuinely concerned about journalistic ethics and try to find some common ground. Milo Yiannopoulos, please accept my apologies that this didn't work out and sincerely wish you the best in your future endeavors. All right, and she links to some shit here, too, and let's see what it is. Oh, okay. She links and says, um, highly inflammatory. And I'm, re I'm not seeing highly inflammatory. I don't know what the fuck she's talking about. Let's see the other one. How is this inflammatory? He's just saying, sorry, the, the, the fucking interview didn't work out because she ditched the fucking interview and then had no problem making it on MSNBC. Yeah. I guess one gets more coverage. That's what she was looking for. Yeah, it, this is complete bullshit. This is, this is yeah, this is crap. I don't blame him for being pissed and wanting to take a day or two to fucking blow off some steam. <laughs> and so she okay so she blows that's why you know that's partially i bet another reason why she blew off milo i bet he had questions relating to gamergate and she didn't want to answer him she wanted to talk about herself so that's why she went on msnbc because they they made the whole shift or the whole focus of that nine minute piece was uh, brianna Wu and sexism in gaming that jack shit to do with gamergate or journalistic ethics what just yeah it's a load of crap All right, let's see what the chat has to say. Or actually, you know what? I'll check Ask FM and see if there were any other questions on that. Uh, BBC, check the BBC interview 19 minutes in. Uh, business matters. All right, 19 minutes in. Thank you. You're poor. Ah, oh, this is going to take. Uh... All right. This is this is fucking surreal too. Okay, yeah, I, I can't take listening to another piece like this. I, I like how when they talk about journalism ethics, he did mention it at the very beginning, at least a little bit, but they never give specific examples. They never talk about Patricia Hernandez, Nathan Grayson, Philip Collar, Ben Kuchera, Kirk Hamilton, any of the issues surrounding them with financial support through Patreon or any of that stuff that never specifically gets mentioned because then they'd have to actually fucking address it. Much easier to do a piece about, I guess, sexism. Raise the volume, bitch. You wouldn't be able to hear it. It's not... I have a shitty set uh, setup, so... Yeah, I just... I, I can't... I can't listen to a podcast version of what MSNBC did. All right. Uh, listen to the whole thing. It gets better. All right. All right. Well, how long is the clip? Because 
they're not going to be able to, nobody can hear this, so I don't want to just have dead air for fucking five minutes. Wait a minute. Okay, how does this get better? Do you not think that this is something that is uh, clear about the nature of this, of what's going on, that this is misogynistic, this is uh, against women? I absolutely, I think it, it so powerfully colors the whole thing that it, it, it kind of overtakes like the other arguments, right? Uh, any concerns about actual journalism ethics or anything else, like you're saying, it's it so specifically has targeted the three women and it's been so awful. I mean, people have had to leave their homes and that's... Because they feel so threatened. Wait, somebody said he cries? He cries in this? Okay, the, fuck you. This is horrible. I, I'm not going to... Keep listening. Fuck off. Yeah, yeah, keep listening. It's 1840. Yeah, I'm, I'm listening to that portion. I started at 18 minutes, and I'm up to 2230 at this point. Driven from their homes. It's complete bullshit. Ah, oh, fucking hell. Can I get a link to what you're listening to? Yeah, let me let me grab a link and see if I can post it. At least so you have an idea. I'll put it in the video. Oh, I don't know. If yeah, actually, I can just... I'll tweet it out. So you can go fucking listen to it. It starts at 18 minutes in. Keep fucking listening. All right, fine. Fine, I'll listen to the fucking thing. But it, it, it's not getting anywhere near better at this point. traditionally male-dominated medium. Uh, it, it was traditionally, but so much has changed in the last 15 years that it's, even the last 10 years, that it's really, it's it's hard to call it that anymore, you know? Ben Gilbert, Ben Gash, I should say, had a lot of uh, Twitter traffic on this issue, even before that we were playing that interview out, so a lot of people, I think, within, cast themselves perhaps within sympathy to Gamergate and saying it's not just about that kind of thing, it is about trying to uh, understand which direction games are going in and some very real issues out there, quite apart from obviously the, the trolling that, that clearly has been going on. But but Shigadalmi, I mean, this is a very, obviously, it's a massive industry and creates a lot of passion and interest on, on all sides and people feel very strongly about it, but it does seem to have, in some areas, descended to a very vicious and, and nasty level, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Uh, you know, on both sides, uh, the industry is inhabited by fairly young people who are not... Uh, okay, I can't. You're fucking with me. I give up. I don't know what the fuck I'm listening to. I, no, I'm done. I'll listen to the rest of it later. Fuck this shit. Oh, finally the good part. Oh, now it's the good part, you're saying. Okay, yeah, sure. ...the sexist stereotypes of women in uh, video games or personal cruising 
which of course was a poke in the eye of all the gamers who uh, who like to play these games. So that was kind of like the backdrop in which she, she you know, her her activity was pursued uh, was uh, viewed. Uh, you know, I think the bigger concern over here is why did this story about her infidelity kind of take the whole gamer world with storm? And the reason is that the journalistic ethics in the coverage of games are really, really something to be worried about. Uh, historically, Nintendo, which was the original pioneer in the gaming industry, had its own magazine that used to rate its own games. And so the word between the journalists who cover the games and report on them and the people developing the game is very, it's a sort of an incestual little, incestual it, it, It's very world. interesting you say that because that, that certainly is the core of a lot of what a lot of people are tweeting to me now, uh, are talking about. They're saying there are issues. I suppose there's a division between what is clearly... Uh, misogynistic, ghastly uh, nastiness uh, that's, that is being directed at some people, but some real issues. <laughs> so, yeah, so when the story about Quinn and her liaisons with this uh, journalist... Well, let's say it's alleged. It's alleged. I was going to say, they, right, they are right, denied. Right. I, was, I was just about to say that. Alleged, there was a bare allegation of it was enough to inflame this world. Remember, as you said, this is a $100 billion industry. And when you see one side as gaining an unfair advantage, uh, you know, using tactics that are known to be employed in this industry, the whole thing kind of flew, you know, blew a lid. It, so. it, it is interesting, isn't it? I mean, Simon, I, it, just the scale of this, I mean, I think a lot of people perhaps... Oh, uh, okay. Uh, all right. That's uh, that's all I can tolerate. <laughs> all right. That was uh. Yeah, that was adorable. Thank you for that. Uh, no more fucking eight minute long uh, videos or podcasts because it's just dead air. I can't. I I don't know how loud that's coming through. Let me see if I can actually check. Okay. All right. I, I guess it came through decently. <laughs> what the fuck? All right. I, I, I'm gonna go take a look at Ask FM. Are you a lumberjack? If not, why don't you become a lumberjack? That is a that is a hard life. Can you read this at the end of one of your streams? Uh, let's see what it is. What the fuck is this? Digimon 3, Predator versus Digimon. Yeah, I'll read that. I'll, I'll keep it queued up and I'll read it. Uh, yeah, I, I guess the audio did come through. People are saying they heard it. Power through it, faggot. I have no idea how much longer it is. How long did I go through that? I mean, that was, yeah, that was like fucking eight minutes, nine minutes. It started at 18 minutes in, and I, I got up to 26.20. Uh, what was I listening to? It was a BBC interview. I put the link up on Twitter if you're interested. Am I an aristocrat in real life? No, I'm not. I'm not an aristocrat. Stop answering these stupid questions. Ask something good, and I'll, I'll answer it. Uh, what, wait, what, uh, Digimon v. Predator, it's a story somebody linked. Last night at the end of the stream, I read, um, some classic Peter Chimera, and then, uh, what was, I don't know what the other one was, it was, <laughs> I, I sort of remember, it was a, a horrible Toy Story, uh, fanfic. Who suggested that in the first place? Just somebody on Ask FM. Just 15 more minutes. Yeah, I'm not listening to another 15 minutes of that. You can go listen to that on your own. Do I watch anime? Yep, I've already already covered that. Am I part of the Illuminati? No, I'm not. Why is Leigh Alexander so mean? That is a question for the ages. She's a very mean person. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, let's see. <laughs> the 
caring about gaming, autism, get back to Tumblrisms, you drunkard. I do like making Tumblrisms. I want to do that otherkin one. After Gamergate wins, what will happen with other companies that treat their customers like shit? Uh, I don't know. Maybe the consumers will react like people in gaming did. Slap the shit around a little bit. I would, I, I, that would be a nice outcome. Somebody's linking to an Amazon book. Billionaire dinosaur forced me, forced me to be gay. Is that that's an actual real book? It's an actual real book. It's only three dollars. That's a bargain. Uh, let's see. It's three minutes at the end, and the end is uh, base. Skip it, but you need to watch it. All right, I'll I'll try to go back and listen to the interview later on, but not on not on fucking stream when the audio shit and barely comes through. Have you read Woody's Got Wood? Yep, that was the one yesterday. Uh, hi, could you blow your fucking nose, you sniffling faggot? No, I could not. Minnesota is cold. It's always winter here. It's eternal fucking winter. Are you drinking Kharkov tonight, or is your stream name a lie? I am drinking Kharkov. I've got a fucking glass of it right here. I just, uh, I uh, let me sniffle there for the asshole that's getting pissed by it. I just haven't been drinking as much of it as I probably should have. Have we lost? No, we haven't. Will you notice me, Senpai? Sure. Uh, do you think Gamergate will ever expand into all journalism? I'm sure they'd probably hate it if it did. Which is better, Deus Ex or System Shock 2? Uh, System Shock 2 is... Do you suck dick? Uh, no, I do not. Uh, drink? Yeah, I'll drink more. That's fine. That's right. I'm in Minnesota. Get Jade on and read fan fiction, please. I don't even know if she's in the chat tonight. Uh, you drunk fuck? On my way to it. Uh, IA's new series, Hentaiisms, sounds interesting. Check FS or er, check Ask FM. Sure, why not? Jim, would you go on a romantic date with Milo? Uh, then he'd probably pressure me into giving him a pearl necklace, and it would get all awkward. Finish it to the end, or I'm sorry, finish it, you faggot. The ending is based. Yeah, I'll listen to the rest of the interview. I'm just not doing it on stream. That when the sound quality is shit. Have you ever watched Errant Signal, and uh, what are your thoughts on it? Ah, uh, let me double check to make sure this is the thing I'm thinking it is. Uh, no, I don't believe I have. Unless uh, you're talking about something else. Is the Mall of America as shitty as I remember? It's always been shitty. So if you have a memory going back to its very first day, you're probably accurate. And besides, I'm pretty sure the majority of shops that were on the top floor have all vanished. So a lot of the bars and restaurants are just gone. The arcade is gone. I don't know about the movie theater, but it's pretty much dead. That's how I'd describe it. Uh, get drunk, senpai, then abuse me. This is a question. Also, how big is your dick? Ah, fantastic. Am I a picky eater? No, I'm not. I'm very easy to get along with. How bad will you lose to me in Smash? Probably horribly. We'll play later on. When are you going to hook up with Jade? You guys, I've noticed a lot of that fan fiction shit, or what What? It, what did Tumblr call it? Shipping? Like the um, <clears throat> uh, Jade and Jim, or King of Pole, and uh, what the fuck was the girl's name? Or Jim and Milo, I guess, because of the, of course, the fucking pearl necklace thing. Uh, <laughs> Mall of America is like 4chan. It's uh, just as shitty. Do I have any drunk shenanigans stories? Yeah, I, I told one, I think it was last night, about the kid's, uh, the kid's house party where his place pretty much got lit on fire. They pissed in the refrigerator and bread box and then put kitty litter in his washing machine. 
I also went to a, I, I got another one. I don't know if you guys are familiar with um, the term gin blossom. It's when somebody drinks gin and this is my understanding. So I could be completely wrong, but whatever. It's when somebody drinks gin and uh, their nose gets in the, uh, the liquor, I guess, because they, they're drinking like an idiot from a cup and it gets all uh, red and inflamed and swells up. So I went to this um, concert. It's like this two-day concert with a, a group of friends and we all bought a bunch of liquor before we went down. So when I'm like a teenager and um, I asked because I was an idiot and I didn't know uh, better at the time. I asked for peppermint schnapps. And so all I drank for two days, I didn't eat or drink water or anything else, was just peppermint schnapps. Like all that sugary shit all over my lips. Um, I ended up basically, it like tripled the size of my lips. It was all like red and inflamed. It looked like a giant fucking gin blossom because that's all I drank for two days at a fucking concert. And came back and had a dental appointment and went in and they thought I had some fucking horrible infection. They were freaked out to do any dental work. And that's how I learned never to fucking drink peppermint schnapps. Because that was a fucking mistake. Uh, tell more f drunk and high stories. They're not, they're mon it's like mundane shit, like I just told you, like that. There's no huge ending to it. Uh, Jim, did you enjoy Duck Souls? I guess Dark Souls? Yeah. It's a good game. The first one was better than the last one. Or than Dark Souls 2. Unless you, Duck Souls is some fucking indie game that's up and I, I don't know. Jim, are you an alcoholic? Uh, no, I'm not. Notice my comments? Sure. Check out Ask FM, see if anybody's got anything. Finally found your Ask FM. So in my civics class today, we were studying the First Amendment. I asked my teacher what if it wasn't the government, but someone else, like a forum or something that's restricting freedom of speech, slander, etc. She said the government would have to investigate. GG at this point, question mark. What? So you're asking, can a private website restrict speech by banning shit? Well, yeah, I mean, it's a business. It can kick anybody off at once if it's gotten its terms of service. I, I don't think anybody was making the First Amendment argument against the websites for banning topics. They were just calling them out to, for doing it because they had uh, obviously ulter or ulterior motives besides what the terms of service on the site were. Like when you saw the bannings taking place in Total Biscuits thread, where it was like, what, 25, 30,000 people got kicked out of that? or shadow banned or had their comments deleted. It, it, people weren't upset because this is a violation of the First Amendment. They were pissed off because on Reddit, I would suppose, that didn't make any sense in context of the fucking rules. That's my take on that, unless I'm misreading what you're typing, which I might be because the liquor is starting to kick in. Has any news station contacted you yet? Um... I don't know how to answer that. I've talked to people, but that's, I guess, in private, and that's been over the last couple of weeks. So I can't really tell you who they were. But if you're talking like the MSNB or MSNBC thing, no. If this is like a recent thing, no. Uh, Jim, when are you going to play Fez? I've already played it. It was, I, I guess, okay. It's not my type of game. Not loving schnapps. Are you even German, bro? This is German country Jimbo. I guess I'm just, uh, I'm a horrible non-Germanic uh, asshole with shitty taste in liquor. S -s 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 Stutter more, Jim Bob? Am I turning into um, Adam Sessler? Am I getting there? Jim, do you like hip-hop? Uh, it's fine. Does King of Pole play Cuck Souls? I believe he's the number one ranked player in the world in Cuck Souls right now. I'm going to go back to the chat now. Uh, people put anything on Reddit, but not, or no, not Gamergate. Yeah, it's pretty much a banned topic outside of like, I guess one or two places that people are going. Uh, Jim, half chan, full chan, or neither? Like I've said, I, I like infinite chan. Now that's mostly what I browse. Somebody's asking dicks or feet. You're asking what I'd be more attracted to, dicks or feet? I'd, I'd go with feet. Not, not a, I'm not attracted to dicks. Jim Sessler. I'll get there. Once I start snorting meth and uh, scare people at E3, you can start calling me Jim Sessler.
Jim friendzone pull more. Uh, no, that would be mean. How are you, Jim? I'm doing just fine. People are saying check Twitter. Why not? I'll go over there and see if there's any questions. Uh, what does it say? So we have, or, so can we finally have someone speaking for HN specifically and another person speaking for GG generally? I, what are they talking about here? Oh, I think you should go with Infinite Chan tomorrow if this Huff Post thing happens, either you or Internet Aristocrat. I don't know what you're referring to. I'm guessing you just tag me in because you're talking to somebody else. Uh, let's see. Jim, what is the problem with Greg uh, Tito, Tito, however you say his last name? I, I don't know. I, I get it's it's hard to peg that guy down. I don't think he... Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm certain he doesn't really support Gamergate or what its aim is. Uh, I, I think he... I, I don't know what his deal is, man. I, I don't know. I'm not in the frame of mind to give you my thoughts on that. You get some seriously stupid questions. Welcome to chat. Uh, Jim, why are you now open about which state you live in when before you refused to answer the question? Also, love your vids. Well, I've, I've said I'm from Minnesota. I mean, fuck, going back in the really old videos that are up on the channel right now, I've never actually hidden that. What is, Jim, are you an agent for gaming balance? I, I meant to check out that fucking video um, that talks about whatever the fuck this is, and I, I haven't done that yet. So I have no idea what the hell that is. I wish to ask a good question. Does this look infected? But you didn't you didn't uh, you didn't link a picture. Am I an aristocrat? No, I'm not. Oh, let's see. Yeah, people again just saying to listen to the rest of that interview on the BBC uh, podcast or radio show, whatever the hell it was. What is your Ask FM account name? It's linked on YouTube, it should be. It's just Internet Aristocrat. It's nothing fucking fancy. It's the same shit that's pretty much everywhere else. Uh, Jim, do you have any fetishes? If so, what are they? I'm not going to tell you that. Besides, that's been asked before. Uh, let's see. Oh, I was asking more like slander. It's obvious that these companies are spewing pure BS about all of us. So it isn't technically, or wait, so isn't that technically slander or libel according to the First Amendment? And do you think the government investigates that? Because I don't think Twitter's t uh, terms of service supports libel names Mike, by the way. Um, <laughs> there's There are a few things wrong with the question, man. There, well, there are a lot of things wrong with You're talking about like slander and libel. Uh, I mean, one's written, one's spoken. So I mean, I'm guessing you're specifically talking about one, but no, it's you. It, to prove that in court would be insane, and it's just I don't I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Your question is fucking with my head, Mike. Do you think Gamergate is coming to an end anytime soon, or will this be long and a cold, or will this be a long and cold winter? It will be a long and cold winter, would be my guess on that. Jim, if I pull that wig off, will you die? Uh, no, but it'll hurt. Thoughts on Common Core? I hate it. What would you do if you met a social justice warrior in real life? Laugh. Because it would be one hell of an entertaining show to watch. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Actually, you know what? I want to check out this Ebola article that I was looking at earlier. Because I, I am genuinely curious how the fuck a nurse got infected. Uh, so what does it say? I was treating Thomas Eric Duncan, the first Ebola patient to die in the U.S. Okay, this just tells where she graduated. I apologize if people thought I was criticizing the hospital, Frieden said at the news conference Monday, and I feel awful that a healthcare worker became, or became infected while helping an Ebola patient. Frieden said uh, investigators have yet to determine how FAM was infected. He stood by the protocols, including the use of masks, gloves, and other equipment, saying they have a proven safe for healthcare workers for decade, or decades. Yeah, that's freaky. So this was a, obviously this was a guy in Texas then. 
Um, is there any more on this though? Yeah, it just goes into speculation after that. So they don't they don't fucking know. She gave Duncan a blowjob. That would be one hell of a way to get fucking Ebola, wouldn't it? Just <laughs> I can I can imagine the boss being real happy with that. Uh, what was this? The nurse was wearing full protective uh, gear as she treated him. Yeah, that's what's so spooky about it. I, I'm just trying to imagine how she got it. What, what? I guess the vector was, what fuck up happened? How did she get it? Uh, somebody's saying, Hot Wheels wants on. Uh, let's see if I can find him here. Um, let's see. Can I come on to talk about it? I heard Zoe Quinn is going to be on the stream too. Um, yeah, let me, I'll follow you back and then I will give you an invite. If you're listening to this right now, an invite into the stream and you can come talk about it. Just give me one second here. Um, okay. Um... That's not going to do it, is it? Okay. There we go. I sent uh, Hot Wheels an invite on Twitter through direct message. So if I sent that to the right person, we're good. Unless I just sent it to some random person, in which case that'll be funny. Because they'll pop on here and probably call me an idiot. And since there's a delay in the stream, it probably is going to take a minute. Oh, let's see. Okay. Yep, so give him a few minutes, uh, see if he can get on, see what he has to say. Uh, check Ask FM. Sure, why not? Uh, people ask me to ask Hot Wheels certain questions. I will, if he gets on. Ask him uh, whatever you have. Jim, please get Boogie or Hot Wheels on your stream. I sent an invite to Hot Wheels. I don't think Boogie even knows who the fuck I am. Uh, have you heard about the Gamergate supporter who died, RIP? Uh, no, I have not. Have you ever changed your opinion on something that you've mentioned in any videos you've done in the past? Oh, and cheers on cheap vodka. Uh, I don't know. I'd have to go watch all the shit I've done in the past to figure that out. And also, Kharkov is great. I wonder, I hope the link worked. We'll see. Uh, somebody's saying low ping. I don't know if low ping's in the stream either tonight. Yeah, if low ping wants to come in, I'll send him an invite as well. Uh, low ping, are you in the chat? If you are, I'll message you on uh, on Twitter and send you an invite in. Uh, Movie Bob, talk about him. Well, I don't know what else there is to say. I mean, Movie Bob, everybody knows what his position is. There's nothing new to talk about. Uh, let's see. Did this go through or not? <laughs> I don't know if he got it or not. Well, we'll see. Do 
Do you like Smirnoff vodka? Uh, it's okay, but paint thinner's the way to go. It's fucking horrible. Oh, and I wasn't even paying attention to chat. Was Lo Ping on or no? Uh, yeah, I'm sorry guys about the delay. I, I'm guessing Hot Wheels can't make it in, or maybe there's an issue with his Google account, or I sent him... Oh. Hey, can you hear me? Oh, never mind. Speak of the devil. Hey, man. <laughs> I was getting worried. I thought maybe I'd sent the wrong invite, or there was an issue. Are you there? Oh, shit. I don't know if my audio just cut out, or if you... Just died out on me. All right, sorry. The Android client is really crappy. I'm oh no, no, that's fine, man. It just it it forced quit. So. Oh okay. <laughs> but I got it back. So what have you been up to lately? Uh, not a whole lot. Well, I mean, it com in comparison, I I I slept until three p.m. today because I was up working on something for the Japanese guys, and I oh, wake yeah. up people sending me messages on my Skype. He's like, <laughs> get up right now. They're talking charges and stuff. You're going to go to jail and all this. And I just sent him back, and he's like, you're on MSNBC right now, and you need to get <laughs> up right now and talk to me on stream. And I was like, oh, all right. And um, I said, give me 15 minutes. And he was like, no, I can't wait. So I get into my wheelchair as fast as I can, which isn't very fast, and five minutes later, I'm talking to him, and I'm watching the hilarious video that they put on MSNBC. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you're the leader now of, I, I guess, the the new internet hate machine. I mean, they said I, that 8chan... I guess, I'm the, I guess I'm the leader of Gamergate now. Yeah, yeah, they said 8chan <laughs> was the place that all the hardcore people went who couldn't, yeah. uh, who were too extreme for 4chan and everywhere else. <laughs> and then after this happened, okay, I don't know if you saw the tweets yet, um... Oh uh, no! Who the from... producer, yeah, the producer of Huffington Post Live, sent me a message that they want me to be on their stream, and they're also having Zoe Quinn on. I can send you a tweet if you want to see it. Oh shit! So wait, are you guys going to debate each other? I I don't really know uh, what what it's going to be. It's supposed to be a GamerGate themed stream, I suppose. Oh, I can um, already guarantee you the first question they're going to ask is, "Why do you hate women, and why are you targeting poor Zoe?" <laughs> With your evil hate machine of an internet uh, right. website, yeah, yeah. Um, I'll send you the Twitter link. Hold on. Oh uh, yeah, because this would be this would be interesting to check out. Yeah, that's the only reason I sent you a message because of this. Um, no, no, that's fine, man. It's always nice to have you on. People in chat like it. Yeah, every time I send you a tweet, I look back at the chat, and people are like, "Let Hot Wheels on! Let Hot Wheels on!" <laughs> you're very you're very popular. Yeah, I'm not sure why, but all right. Well, they they don't want to uh, piss you off because of the the power you wield over those oh. internet terrorists. Uh, apparently, on the GG board. Okay, let's see if I can. All right, I joined the hangout on my desktop, but I don't really see where I can. Maybe I can just put it into the chat on YouTube. Will that work? Or you can just tweet it out or tweet it at me if you have a, a link. Yeah, okay, I'll put it in your direct messages. All right, so. The person tweeting that is the um, one of the producers at Huffington Post Live. Oh, and that's you great. Can see, that's crazy, you can man. see that Zoe said, oh, yes, I'm down, so... So you, uh, yeah, that's gonna be. <laughs> yeah, that's wonder... gonna be really interesting tomorrow. <laughs> and what what time is that again? It's one forty p.m. Eastern time. Okay, and that's gonna be on their website then. Yeah, it's Huffington Post Live is like a twenty four, like it's like a news show except on the internet. Okay, cool. Yeah. So are you nervous? I'm guessing going uh, into this? a little bit. The thing is, the funny, the really funny thing is, is that I don't really follow Gamergate. Gamer Gators keep coming back to me. 
<laughs> because I set up the website a year ago. People just decided to make a Gamergate board on it, and you know I don't care. I support what you guys are doing. I know that the industry is very corrupt, but I'm so busy with other stuff, like keeping you know, the whole site running that I can't follow every little thing that happens. So, right, you've got, um, a, you know, administration yeah. duties. So I don't really know what I'm going to say to her tomorrow. Um, you should wear a Bane mask and just tell them that you're behind it all, that it's just been <laughs> one massive campaign all to make <laughs> HN uh, the most popular website on the Internet. Yeah, I was hoping they would let either you or... Um, uh, what's his face on? You know what's his face. Yeah. Um. Hold on. I even have to look at my Skype. That's right. Oliver Campbell. Okay. Yeah. No. I'd I'd spaghetti all over the fucking place. I don't know if you ever heard me on that Morrissey interview, but I I was just <laughs> god awful technical issues, and then it's the first time I've ever done an interview like that, so I was completely uh, stuttering. I I was basically Adam Sessler. I, I channeled his personality for that fucking interview. And then something funny that happened today was uh, MSNBC decided that they were going to um, have Boogie talk about um, Gamergate, I suppose, on MSNBC, but the guy who runs HN, they don't really care about me. They just ignore all of my tweets. <laughs> Jesus, man. Yeah. Uh, it, it, ju it just feels weird that this is getting picked up, I, I guess, now by outside news It agencies. is really weird. Um, if I had to compare it to something, I would say it was like the hackers on steroids internet hate machine thing that happened oh. with 4chan. God, do you think they're going to show exploding van footage when they bring you I out for the so. huffing? I hope so. Uh, and I, I can really go about this a couple ways. I'm probably not going to take it very seriously because I don't really care what the media has to say, especially, you know, really liberal sites like Huffington Post. The fact that they're giving me, you know, this kind of free advertisement is pretty cool. Uh, yeah, that's basically, yeah, that was what I said to King of Pole when he was trying to get me all, you know, nervous about it. And I said to him, you know, look, I, I'm i not doing anything illegal. I don't, you know, they're just giving me free advertising on MSNBC. <laughs> right, yeah, I mean, yeah. and besides, you're hosting a website. It's not, you're not running the, you know what I mean? You're, you're, you're doing admin duties. Exactly. It's um, Communications Decency Act. It's Section 230 or 320, you know. An administrator is not responsible for what the users write. It would be right. like blaming the CEO of Twitter for, you know, people for ISIS tweeting. It just doesn't make sense. Well, I mean, were you surprised when the MSNBC thing went up and she basically just laid it all on 8chan? I mean, did that come as a shock, I'm guessing? Um, when I watched it again, I realized that it was just Brianna Wu. Uh, I I'm not even sure if he's female. I want to say he, because I've watched it a couple times and... I don't know. Are you talking about the person time. with the, the horrible fucking hair? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's Brianna Wu. I, first of all, they don't look Asian. They don't look female either, so, um, yeah. You, you're calling them out on that one. Yeah. So, anyway, it's not like that even matters, but I realized that it was not a journalist saying that. It was just her saying that. So... Mm -hmm. I doubt that they even did any fact-checking or even even bothered to Google HN. They just ran with it. Right, because, it, it, yeah, it was just her. Yeah. Um, but still, I mean, that, that pretty much came out of nowhere. I wasn't even expecting her to say that. Uh, yeah, Brianna neither was I. And our traffic, like, spiked as soon as it happened. Oh, everybody came to see what the horrible website was like? Yes. Like, we got all these Google results, people searching HN. So is that when somebody started up uh, the bloody diarrhea board and just spammed it full of messages, <laughs> so that's the first fucking thing everybody from MSNBC saw when they showed up? I actually, I removed that. Now the top boards are based on unique posters instead of most posts per hour. Oh, okay. <laughs> that makes sense. It's good. Uh, yeah. Uh, good idea. Uh, well, let me ask you a few questions from the chat here, because um, I'm sure people have stuff they want to ask you, if you don't mind, unless you've got stuff to do. I don't know. If you're cool with oh, that. Oh, no, I don't mind at all. Um, yeah, I just came on to talk about it. Uh, I'm probably I'm probably not going to take the interview tomorrow too seriously. It's going to be mostly just, you know, um, any questions they ask me, I'll try to answer. But <laughs> Yeah, you, you'll be fine. Yeah. You'll be fine. Yeah. Like I said, more than likely they'll end up trying to spin it. Um, I don't know if they'll follow up where Wu left off and they'll try to act like HN is hosting some hat or hate right. campaign, but they, that might be what they do. 
I was thinking it would be really funny to call Zoe Quinn an ableist, but I don't know how silly I want to get with her. Look, go, go, uh, go, go, you know, balls to the wall, man. Just, yeah. Uh, tell her to check her fucking privilege on national television. <laughs> you know, I could. <laughs> I would love to see she'd get so angry. I can already yeah. picture how pissed off she would get because she can't say anything. Right. <laughs> so how how is the uh, the traffic to the site doing now? I mean, are you guys still seeing an increase, or what's it like? Uh, it, it's gone up. Like it was starting to level off, and like it was like a plateau, and now we have another big spike because of this MSNBC thing. And now tomorrow with that Huffington Post thing, I'm sure it's going to be another big spike in traffic. Yeah, I got. I suppose, yeah. huh? Uh, you've risen too, uh, like an obscene amount of uh, site ranking or placements on Alexia, haven't you? Like you guys are way up there now. Yeah, um, we're number three thousand in the U.S. That's really high. Yeah, that sounds fucking really high. <laughs> Jesus. Especially when you consider that the people who have the Alexa toolbar installed are all like, you know, old people or people that don't really understand computers that they would install the Alexa toolbar. So they're so, still confused by like the flashing clock on a VCR right. kind of people. They're the kind of people that like they see an ad that says "update flash player" and they click it. Yeah, just anything. Yeah. They'll click anything <laughs> that flashes. In right. Front of them. Exactly. So uh, what is? Uh, well, actually, let me just check because it's probably a fucking dumb question from chat anyway. I'm guessing that somebody who doesn't actually go to the fucking site. They're going to ask what's the most trafficked or what what board has the most traffic. But I oh, think that's you v, can just, isn't it? You, yeah, you can just go to the boards index and check that. Um, yeah. That's it varies. It's usually V, though. Yeah, right now it's V. Yeah, V overtook Random. And V was created recently, wasn't it? Yeah, Random was fucking a year ago. But Well, uh, it's funny. Um, I've been the admin of the site, obviously, the whole time. We've yeah. had a multiple V boards. This is the third V. Because of the expiration system, if a board goes unused, it gets deleted. Now, back when the site first started, it had very few users. So somebody would make a V. They would shill it you know, on 4chan a little bit. They would get banned. Then they would get bored and then the V-board would become inactive, and then it would be auto-pruned. So this is the third V, actually. Oh, seriously? Shit. Yeah. Um, this is obviously the most successful V by far. <laughs> yeah, it looks like politi or Politically Incorrect is pretty high up there. Uh, Gamergate yeah. is pretty high up there, too. I think Paul is probably um, one of the best boards on the site right now. Uh, the owner of it is really cool. I've talked to him a little bit. Hey, I like the poll board myself. Yeah. <laughs> So I, I guess this is a, a pretty big success now, right? It, now that you've started to see kind of traffic go up after, uh, you know, it kind of building gradually, I guess, over a year? Yeah, yeah. Um, it was a very gradual increase over the year. Like, we had a lot of different little communities, like there was, but they were just all really weird people. Like, there was, um, <laughs> you know, the Legion board where they just role play, and mm -hmm. then there's the Wife Lewis board where they just post pictures and of celebrities, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, do you see? Do you foresee a day, I guess, down the road where the user base gets so big that, based on some current event or something, you're going to get a board that gets just uh, an obscene amount of posts in a really short amount of time? Like when that day comes, when you're getting like a hundred thousand on a board or something really crazy, um, are you going to have to upgrade servers again and shit? Or? <laughs> yeah, um, Two Channel already foresees all of that happening, especially because we just opened the Japanese site at ACH.net. Uh, we're working on integrating it into the Two Channel main website, so that when Japanese users are browsing Two Channel, they'll be able to click on Threads and then go to Eight Channel. Oh, for real? Yeah. So we're working on that now. Um, Any other, um, I guess, site updates that you guys have been getting ready to roll out, or you just put into place? Uh, I, I've mostly been working on this Japanese stuff before before this next big spike came, because I thought, okay, you know, the international site is, like, leveling off so I can, you know, focus on two-channel, but then this big spike came with MSNBC, so now I'm focusing, you know, on the English site again. Um, oh, so big update. Uh, well, wait, uh, somebody's asking in chat, uh, does 8chan have a Tor address in case the site gets seized? In case what gets seized? And I, I, Hold on, let me scroll up. That was kind of a fucking dumb question. Um... Where the fuck is it now? In case something gets seized, I, I don't know what the end of that was. Uh, in case the domain gets seized, we don't have like a Tor address right now. I very much doubt that our domain registrar would seize it, though. Oh, yeah, that's what it is. Uh, does HN have a Tor address or something else in case the domain gets seized? 
Yeah, not yet. Um, I should probably make one though. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I just I don't really foresee it happening because Encyclopedia Dramatica, you know, their domain hasn't gotten seized, so. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's a fair point. But then again, right. you're probably going to have the feds on you after this uh, uh, HuffPo interview when they find out what a mastermind you are. <laughs> Tar targeting all those poor innocent people. Uh, well, Chad, if, if you have any questions, now's the time to ask them. I'm I'm sure they've got shit they want to ask you about the site specifically, but I'm not 100% sure exactly what. So give them a chance to fucking catch up. But uh, this next, I guess, big update coming after the, the Japanese stuff you're doing right now, what is that going to entail, or do you have an idea? Uh, yeah, yeah but it's, it's mostly for board owners. Everything I do is mostly for the people who own the boards, and then it just you know trickles down to the users. Uh, the thing that I'm working on right now is allowing the board owners to make positions under them without having to give them their password. Currently, if you want more than one person to be able to moderate a board or like to be able to delete posts and ban users, you need to give out the password. Now, anybody with the password can change the password. So that means if you give it to somebody that you can't really trust, they can lock you out of the board. So a lot of people, suck. yeah, a lot of people have complained about this. Um, when the site was small, the system worked really well because it was just groups of friends coming on who all trusted each other. But now I really need to separate the board owners from like janitors, I suppose. I might call them custodians. I haven't made my mind up yet. Okay. Uh, other people are asking. Um, one is asking, "How are you so based?" Any any I response have, to that? I have no idea. Um, I'm not sure that I really am based. Lots of people say that I am, but. <laughs> okay. Um, somebody else was asking how you came up with the name for the site, uh, Infinite Chan. Uh, I don't know. It's just a chain where you can make an infinite amount of boards, so it just made sense. Perfect. Uh, people are asking. Why is Cute Boy the best board? Uh, what's your opinion on that, Admin? Um, the Cute Boys board, I've even thought of um, making it so that it wouldn't be on the top bar. But that's not really fair because it does get a lot of posts. So, yeah. So all those Huff Po, uh, yeah, all those Huff -Po listeners are going to be treated to that when they show up after the interview. Yeah, and um, I'm sure that a lot of them are gay. Like, you can hear it, like, that when they talk, they all have lisps. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I'm sure that they'll enjoy the board, you know. They'll be going to HN, and they'll be like, oh, cute boys, and so. They're never going to leave. <laughs> yeah. Like, that'll, that'll, turn, that'll turn them around to my way of thinking. Fantastic. Uh, somebody else is asking, uh, how is the HN app coming along? Uh, HN app, there's no official one. There's, um... An unofficial one that's based on uh, Clover, I want to say, maybe. Um, you can find it on the FAQ page. Okay, on the FAQ. I ask a, let me ask a few more questions here. It's a, a mixture, a large mixture of uh, why are you so based, which they seem to like <laughs> to go back to. That and talk, talking about cute boys apparently is a big one as well. Clover janitors, hot pocket eaters. Somebody just said that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh fucking shit! Oh, do you have any? Uh, do you have any job openings, Hot Wheels? Job openings? Um, is H N really. or has Infinite Chan reached that point where you're gonna have to start hiring staff to come help? Nope. Currently, all the global volunteers do it for free. Um, oh well, who know? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> what, what a shock. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I choose them based on who owns the biggest boards, and I threaten them. Like if they ban people from the whole site for no good reason. I'll just take away their board. So that's like the check and balance. Oh, somebody was asking about a paranormal board. Uh, does wait? Does Infinite Chan? It has an X board, doesn't it? Yeah, there's a couple. Uh, there's slash fringe. There's slash X. And as always, if you don't like them, you can make another one. Okay. So yeah, hey, that's the yeah. appeal of the site is just make whatever board you want. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that hot pocket tears isn't too bad, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm hot pocket eaters. <laughs> All right. Well, um, thanks for. I'm not on. sure that would. I'm not sure that would translate too well to the Japanese site, though. I'd send well, it to my translator, and he'd be like, "What's a hot pocket?" <laughs> They'd have no <laughs> fucking idea. Yeah. Oh shit, man. Um. So, uh, thanks for coming on. What was the uh, the interview time? Because I'm sure people are gonna want to fucking turn it tune in for this shit. Yeah. Um. It's gonna be me, Zoe Quinn, probably a few other people. I don't know who. It's gonna be 1:40. Um. 1.40 p.m. on Huffington Post Live.
right? Oh, I'm sorry. I said, did you want to put out your uh, Twitter account so people can follow you? Oh, sure. Um, it's at Infinite Chan. Uh, at I N F I N I T C H A N. All right, awesome. Well, thank you for uh, popping on and answering some questions and getting yeah, us all no prepared problem, for the shitstorm tomorrow. <laughs> I'm sure the Huffington Post live skit is going to be all over YouTube, and there's going to be um, memes generated from it. I can already tell that's going to be hilarious. Well, it's going to be fucking great. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks for letting me on. Yeah, not a problem, man. Take it easy. Have a good night. All right. You too. Bye-bye. Yep. Bye. All right, chat. So it should take you a minute to catch up here. Uh, Eastern or, or uh, yeah, EST. I think it's 140 Eastern. I'm fairly certain that's what he said. But again, you can follow him on Twitter, and he'll probably have the time posted up there. It's at Infinite Chan, so I-N-F-I-N-I-T-E-C-H-A-N is his uh, Twitter handle. And I'm sure I'll have the information up there for you to follow. Yeah, and it's going to be on the Huffington Post website. I'm, a, I'm assuming that's where it's going to be. But then again, you're probably still catching up. Where the fuck is this on the timeline? Oh, holy shit, that is a long lag. Refresh and see if that's really that far behind. Um, uh, Eastern or Pacific? Holy shit, it really is that far behind. All right. Uh, let's see if there's any questions on Ask FM while I wait for everything to catch up. Oh, these were a lot of questions for uh, the admin for Hot Wheels. I didn't, uh, sorry, Ask FM. I didn't check that earlier. Just a lot of how big is his dick and how based is he. Well, next time he's on, I'll make sure to ask him all of those. I, I'll save them for the next time he comes on. You can ask him. Okay, yeah, uh, the HuffPo Live thing is at 1.40 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. It's Huffington Post Live. I guess people are just correcting me on Twitter. Yeah, I, I can imagine this is going to turn into. I, I can just I can kind of see what they're probably going to try to do to him. I don't I don't think Hot Wheels is going to fall for it. They'll probably laugh at him. It'll be it'll be an entertaining watch. Make another Tumblrisms episode. Sure, people are saying boogie boogie. Again, I I, I doubt Boogie's even watching this right now. Uh, let's see. What video do you play? Uh, recently, I just what the fuck was the last one I played? South Park and the Stick of Truth would be the last uh, the last video I played. That and Smash. Uh, did I just miss Hot Wheels asking questions? Yep, uh, chat was asking him questions. But you can watch him again on HuffPo Live tomorrow, one forty p.m. Eastern. So be sure to check that out. What was this? Uh, Brianna Wu said on MSNBC that 8chan was created for Gamergate. And it would have taken them five seconds of fact-checking to find out that was not true. As Hot Wheels said when he was on the stream. The site's been there for quite some time. Yes, I see people saying he follows you on Twitter. Uh, he may follow me on Twitter, but that doesn't mean he is watching the stream. He's probably got shit he is doing. Uh, let's see. Are you liking Smash? Yes, I am. I, again, I'm bad at fighting games, but Smash is a lot of fucking fun. Um, in fact, I'm going to play a lot more of that tonight. Or after the stream, at least. Especially with all the friend codes coming through, because I'm going to get my shit kicked in by a bunch of fucking random people I don't know. But hey, there's no there's no better way to learn. You can't You can't play a fighting game and not go and begin it and be humble. If you've got like an ego, uh, fighting games will fucking destroy you because everybody's going to kick your shit in because nobody's uh, a good at them to start with. And that's half the reason I like them is the shit talking. Which is why I like those DSP videos online, the one where the guy got into a match with him in Street Fighter. <laughs> it was mocking him the whole time. I think he was playing E-Honda against, um, I think DSP was playing Ryu, if I remember right, but <laughs> it was fucking great. <laughs> Uh, 
Oh, let's see. Jim, you forgot to plug Camel Joe. Uh, cool is angry bra. Uh, Camel, Camel Joe. Yeah, Camel cigarettes are the best brand of cigarettes. If you want the, the highest class of cancer, I highly recommend them. People are giving me shit now for calling Smash a fighting game. Uh, let's check Ask FM. It goes a little slower. It's easier to keep up with. Do you ever ignore questions because they suck dick? Sure, why not? Do a Joe Pepsi, uh, or <laughs> Joe Pepsi, Joe Pesci impersonation. I can't do impersonations. Is it true that more doctors smoke Camel cigarettes than any other cigarette? It is the the most highly preferred <laughs> cigarette among the medical uh, industry in America. Yes, Camels are their favorites. So, or thoughts on the new uh, South Park episode? It was okay. Like I said, I thought they were going somewhere else. It was just a mock spin magazine. Is it true you have an earlobe with a pearl earring? Uh, no, it is not. Have you ever stopped liking something because of its fan base? Would you agree that those uh, that turn on something they once loved probably didn't even like it that much to begin with? I'm sure it's hard for Sonic fans to keep the faith when they went through that whole recolor shit where it seemed like every kid on DeviantArt was putting up some personalized hedgehog. It was probably fucking hard for them to handle that. And then you had a lot of shitty Sonic games too. Are you a fan of Tomb Raider? Uh, if so, favorite one? I, I played it back in the day on PlayStation and shit. I couldn't tell you a favorite one. Like One doesn't stick out in my head, but they were okay games. Uh, let's see. Go back to the chat here. Uh, people saying lies. I, I probably missed something. Oh, I, people are talking about Lord. So I, I guess you're on the South Park part of the stream. Sing to us. I'm not drunk enough. Some night I'll do drunken karaoke like I, I do with people on Skype. And then I'll sing and sound horrible. Do you check your privileges daily? It's hard not to. Because I'm a horrible person just by being a white guy. I'm like Satan incarnate, apparently. Tumblr thinks I'm terrible. That's no good. Fan of Assassin's Creed. I played... Um, they all blend together. It's like the same game. I mean, if you like if you like one of them, more than likely you'll like all of them. It, it's okay. I mean, it's not a bad series. What is my favorite game on the Atari Jaguar? I don't have one. I didn't own an Atari Jaguar. Uh, <laughs> a lot of privilege checking questions. Oh, wait, I forgot. I should call you all um, plebs and faggots uh, because, yeah, that's apparently what I do. I've got to remember Andrew's uh, impression of me so I can stay, I can stay on character. Uh, read us a bedtime story at the end of the stream. I have... Well, where is it? If you guys want to pick up fan fictions, I'll read them. But they can't be insanely long, and they have to be decent. I don't know if this one's good or not. Somebody sent this earlier on Ask FM. It's fairly short. So uh, let me have a swig, and I'll read this. And then if you guys have any suggestions, put them on Ask FM or Twitter, because the chat goes by way too quick for me to pick it out if you actually post something. All right, what is this? Aliens Predator plus Digimon Crossover. Oh, it's by Peter Camara. Uh, it is based on a request. Uh, this is Digimon 3, Predator versus Digimon. I'm sure this is going to be great. Let me just get, uh, get settled in here. All right. Digimon, Predator, er, Digimon 3, Predator versus Digimon. Chapter 1, Deadly Dropdown. Predator was going down in a tailspin. I'm uh, going to crush, and he crushed into a highway. What is it noise? Asked the limo driver. He was driving Digimon to his house on the inland. It is must be an alien, but it is friendly? Digimon checked out his in front of him, and it went all clear. Forgot about me. I go on ahead, said Digimon. Did a jump out onto road, but there was a fire. Help me, kid. Was wrapped under a car. 
she said, and Digimon were running to safety at her. It is no good, <laughs> Jesus Christ. It is not a good time for a children to die. Why s the Digimon? He just barely lifted the car and it was not enough. I would need much more strock to lift it all. So he had to find a way. Meanwhile, to alien craft was as or was all exploded, and they fell all. <laughs> Jesus Christ! It's hard to fucking read this. And they all fell down from Termondal Blopst wave, but little kid once and safe from the car which fell off the bridgeled. My work is in there, Suru, sir. But we have to be lucky that your daughter was not curled. Yes, that is true. The next day, G Gigimon woke up, wand, went to get ready to, for work, but there was a knockwat, the door from a probably postman. I will get the mailie, open the door, and there was another predator. My brother is dead. Who at you? My name is Clockcrack, and my brothon died because my ship crashed, and the predator went invisible, and then shot a laser at Digimon 3. Gigimon had to avoid the shots, so he did t splits. If he had power to see the predator, but he had to figure it out. Look, you were behind the stairs, he said, but it was a trick, and when Predator realized he was not fooled, Digimon did a butterfly kick and knocked him off the invisibility with gruesome attack. You kicked me in the invisible. This is just a start, and Digimon punched so hard that Predator went unconscious. Diminon felt licky that his bomb did not bomb that place. <laughs> Gee, wow. I have to find out why the ship crashed. So Dimimon and Predator went to the FBI, but they said they can't go in there. Who are you to demand to come in? I am Digimon. You are not a Digimon. You are not one. Of the, yes I am, I am new Digimon, but there is no time. And then it goes into an author's note. This is horrendous. That was horrendous. Um, yeah. I don't know what the fuck that was. I like the butterfly kick into the invisibility. Uh, that was pretty great. Let me, I'm going to see if anybody's got any other fanfic recommendations. Uh, yeah, I'll read, I'll read story time. What is this? Uh, the first chapter is just glorious. Sonic High School. Okay. This is the first chapter, the, the one page here. All right, so this is Sonic High School by Dark Doom Firemaster on fanfiction.net. Sonic High School, Chapter 1. Sonic woke up and looked at the clock. Seven o'clock, it said, and Sonic screamed. I'm late for school. I have to go to get school. <laughs> I have to get to school now, said Sonic, jumping out of bed. Sonic put his clothes on really fast and ran out of his room because he is fast. No time for breakfast, said Sonic, as he ran past Sonic's mom. You will regret this, said Sonic's mom, leering at him from the kitchen stove wearing aprons and oven mitts on her hands. Sonic did not care. He was late. Sonic ran outside and ran to the bus stop where people were getting on the bus. Tails, Knuckles, wait for me, said Sonic as he ran towards the bus. Hey, Knuckles, it's Sonic, said Tails to Knuckles as the, at the bus stop. He is late, said Knuckles to Tails before getting on the bus. Sonic ran so fast at the bus, and he got on the bus after Tails. Just in time, or just in time said Sonic, huffing and puffing like he was doing the Cupid Shuffle for the first time. Sonic sat down next to Tails, and Knuckles sat behind him, uh, taking up both seats. I am so bad, said Knuckles, laughing because he sat where two people could sit. Knuckles did this every day, and no one bothered him. But they all knew it was against the rules of the uh, both man and God. <laughs> all right. The bus started and drove at school and parked, and they got out. We're at school now, said Tails. It is time to go to class, Sonic was also at school, so he went to the first class of the day, English class. Sonic did not like English very much, but he did not like any class very much that was not about running and going fast, which is what Sonic does best. Sonic got to his class and sat down in his seat. It is journal day, said Sonic's English teacher, Miss Lesson. Miss Lesson was tall and white and had gray hair, and she was not pretty. Take out your journals and put them in a pile, and I will read one of your entries to the class. Sonic took out his blue journal and ran to the front quickly and put his journal on her desk and ran back to his desk, all with his head down and not talking or looking at anyone. Sonic was so fast that he did it first. Everyone else did it afterwards and slower. Ah, this is painful to read, and I'm waiting for it to get good.
Uh, I'm just, I'm skipping ahead here so I don't read another page and a half of nothing. Yeah, people are suggesting other things. I'm sorry. I'm going to I'm going to yield here. Oh, let's see if anybody else has got a fan fiction suggestion. <laughs> uh, let's see what this one is. Yeah, these are all far too long. That, that's why I like Peter uh, Chimera, because his stories are like a paragraph. Oh, what is this? Oh, somebody else talking about something else? Let's see if anybody has a, a good link on Ask FM. <laughs> this is a very long one, too. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, I'll give this one a shot. We'll see where it goes. I'll grab a cigarette here. Uh, okay, uh, this one is called Unexpected Fun. <laughs> oh, God, I can already tell where this is going to go. Uh, Sonic's house, 1 a.m. Shadow gazed at the sexy blue hedgehog on the couch across from him. Shadow is really tired by now, and his liking of the hedgehog was steadily decreasing. The Sonic kept him up. Shadow then tried telling him nicely again, hoping he would respond by doing what he asked. Shadow stretched his body a bit and frowned as it began to get hotter in the room. It was the middle of summer, and with everything on, Shadow thought Sonic was pretty stupid not to turn the air conditioner on, too, but he didn't admit that. He then pulled off his gray t-shirt and tossed it on the floor, glad to have a small reprieve from the heat. Sonic, you need to go to sleep, the ebony hedgehog muttered in a slightly drunken slur, still looking at Azure from the other couch. Sonic, who was too energized to fall asleep, nearly grunted in annoyance and rolled over facing away from the dark furred hedgehog. Most of the lamplights were on, and the music was playing, which was beginning to bother the hell out of Shadow, who wanted to sleep now. He then glanced at Sonic's ass, which was hidden from him by the pair of blue jeans Sonic was wearing. He started getting even hotter, thinking about Sonic. Why? Sonic asked him. Because it's one in the fucking morning, that's why, Shadow replied, annoyed still. He was trying not to stare at him, but that was extremely hard due to the fact that he was a bit drunk and his hormones steadily getting stronger. The two had recently come from one of Rogue's parties earlier, and it had gotten pretty insane. That party had it all, though, and Rogue made sure she went all out that time. There were DJs, a pool party out back, beer, and Sonic was pretty damn sure he saw a few guys smoking crack out front. But neither Shadow or him could prove that. Um, Shadow was wiped out from drinking too much of the beer, but Sonic, he wasn't even close. So, Sonic asked, sitting up, it's my house, I'll do whatever I want. I'm living here for the time being... Oh, what is this? I'm living here for the time being, too, you know, Shadow growled. Shadow had recently lost his house due to a few unlucky times he forgot to pay his bills, and the rest is kind of obvious, so Sonic offered Shadow to bunk with him for a while until he could, until he could get a new place, which Shadow immediately accepted, almost happy to finally live in with a guy he liked. Oh, this is really long. Um... I have a feeling I know where it's going, but I'm going to ask chat if they want me to continue this. And it'll take you a minute to catch up, chat. And look at that fucking, look at that view count decrease. Who doesn't want to, who doesn't want to read a story about Sonic and Shadow fucking, which is, I think, where this is going to go. But it's up to you, um, it's up to you, chat. Do you want me to read this or not? I'll wait for you to catch up. All right, I, I was having a drink there and waiting for chat to catch up, which it apparently has now, and it looks like they want me to read the rest of it as a view count goes down. So let's burn this fucking, let's burn it all to the ground. Let's continue reading uh, Sonic, uh, no, that wasn't it. Unexpected fun. All right, you want me to read it. It's, oh, fuck, in total, I'd say it is probably five, six pages. That was probably a page. 
But um, let me find my place here. Just give me one second. Okay. All right. So the last one was almost happy to finally live in with the guy he liked. Yeah, yeah, Sonic mumbled, ignoring Shadow. Sonic, if you don't freaking turn off the lights, you'll regret it, damn it. I mean it, Shadow growled. Try me, Sonic retorted, his signature smirk on his face. Don't test me, Shadow told him. Kiss my ass, Sonic retorted yet again. That's it, Shadow yelled. He then sat up and hopped off his couch and stepped towards the azure, blue, <laughs> towards the azure hedgehog, anger in his eyes. Sonic looked at him and quickly jumped off the couch, took two steps back, not expecting the ebony hedgehog to have retaliated. Whoa, come on now, you can't take a joke, Sonic asked. Shadow frowned slightly. I don't take jokes from you, faker, he muttered. The ebony hedgehog then tackled Sonic, who yelped out in a surprised tone, not expecting Shadow to do that. Sonic tried to get up, but Shadow had, Shadow had his arms and legs pinned to the floor. Sonic then felt something rub against his thighs, and he was shocked a bit. Look, can't we talk about the... Sonic started, but then Shadow cut him off. Talking is over. You had your chance. Uh, he then got an idea. It was the perfect way to get back at Sonic and fulfill his desires for him at the same time. Maybe I should teach you a lesson, Shadow told him. The smell of alcohol on his breath. <laughs> Sonic's eyes widened. This couldn't end well, and he knew it. Like what, Sonic asked, determined not to look flattered. Or, I'm sorry, determined not to look faltered. A small chuckle reached Shadow's lips, proving to Sonic that the ebony hedgehog was drunk. Sonic didn't like where this was going. Shadow, I'll turn off the lights, okay? Happy? Sonic asked. Shadow looked at him as his ruby-filled ruby eyes met with Sonic's emerald ones. He then bent his head to where it was right next to Sonic's. Let me just scroll down here. I can't imagine the appeal of this. Oh, look at those numbers plummet. All right. Oh, where is it here? Okay. Uh, what makes you think that's what I want anymore? Shadow whispered. That made Sonic slightly uncomfortable as he felt Shadow's legs rub up against his thigh slowly, giving Sonic the impression of where Shadow was going with this. The ebony hedgehog then slightly licked... Wait, I'm sorry. Slightly licked up Sonic's neck, making him shudder slightly in a mixture of delight and fear. This isn't right. I've got to get out of here, Sonic thought. But his whole body wouldn't respond. <laughs> he never knew Shadow was gay. That scared him even more, because Sonic thought he was straightening things on Mobius, and here was Shadow on top of him. Shadow then lifted both of his arms, put, uh, but quickly placed his left arm horizontally on Sonic's chest, freeing his arms, but still preventing him from getting up. Shadow then trailed his right hand down Sonic's body, rubbing slowly as he moved further down. The Azure Hedgehog restrained himself from giving in, but he couldn't help but let out a tiny moan, <laughs> putting an evil grin on Shadow's lips. Now Sonic knew what Shadow wanted. Shadow wanted him. And he wasn't going to take no for an answer. Holy fuck. <laughs> what the hell is the matter with fanfiction.net? It's these fucking details. Why are they putting these fucking details in this? Holy shit. And I think the chat has been utterly abandoned. I don't blame you. Reading about Shadow and Sonic fucking each other is just... It's horrific. Really, it is on a, a lot of levels. <laughs> Fucking hell. Somebody really put effort into that. I don't know if that was a joke. I don't know if that was... I have to go back and see... Did they write more chapters to this? It just seems so detailed. This was published in 2011. Yeah, 2,500 words. Favorited 97 times. Apparently it was... I, I don't know if that's popular or not on this site. I have no idea. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna... Uh, yeah, I, I don't know what to uh, to say to follow that up. That was... Uh, that was quality writing. That was, that was quality fucking writing. Okay. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm going to go to Ask FM and uh, clean my palate from that. Oh, fuck. 
are you going to clean up the mess your fanfic readings made? Everything's fucking sticky. Oh, I'm, I'm glad. What was this user's name? Oh, I fucking closed it out. I don't know what their name was. I'm sure it was something great, though. I'm sure it was. I'm sure it was just a fucking great one. People are saying my immortal. My immortal. Yeah, that's not like a one little thing. That's like a saga of shit writing. Uh, yeah, I'm glad you're all enjoying that so much. If somebody wants to link me to My Immortal, I go ahead on Twitter, Ask FM. <laughs> Why the fuck am I listening to this man <laughs> read gay sonic fan fiction at midnight? That's a great, that's a great fucking question. Uh, somebody's feeling uncomfortable. Uh, that's, I think, the typical fucking response. <laughs> wow. Holy shit. Oh, let's see if my immortal gets linked. <laughs> I don't know. I think everybody will leave the stream if I try to read this one. Somebody linked to one called My Le <laughs> No. It's just no way. Oh, and it's really long too. Yeah, there's no way. The hottest TF2 fan fiction. <laughs> oh, this is 2011 as well. Romance humor. All right, so they weren't at least trying to be... I'm guessing they weren't trying to be serious with that one. Holy shit. Doom the comic. You got to link me to this shit if you want me to read it. Yeah, like I said, I don't, I don't care what you guys want me to read. Um, I will read it for you. But I'm going to take a quick break and grab another drink here. And I'll type in chat exactly when I'm saying this. So when you see me type this, you'll see how far fucking delayed the stream is. Uh... All right, and uh, did it go up? Yep, it went up, and it disappeared off the screen. All right, I'll be back in two minutes. Just, I don't know, play music in your head or something. All right, so I've got my drink. Somebody linked me to My Immortal. So we'll start that up here in a minute. Let me just get this loaded up. It looks like it's the entire fucking thing, too. Oh, of course. Why wouldn't it? It has its own website. It should be preserved for the ages. But holy shit, this is... Uh, well, where can I stop it? I'll read a couple of chapters. They're not very long. And then uh, if people want me to read more, I will. Okay. Uh, My Immortal, Chapter 1. A.N. Special Fangs. Get it, cuz I'm goofic. To my girlfriend, you not in that way, Raven. Bloody Tears 666 for helping me with the story and spelling. You rock. Justin, you're the love of my depressing life. You rock too. MCR rocks. Hi, my name is Ebony Darkness. Dementia Raven Way. And I have a long ebony black hair. That's how I got my name with purple streaks and red tips that reach the mid-back, and icy blue eyes, like limpid tears. And a lot of people tell me I look like Amy Lee. 
attention. If you don't know who she is, get the hell out of here. I'm not related to Gerald Way, but I wish I was because he's a major fucking hottie. I'm a vampire, but my teeth are straight and white. I have pale white skin. I'm also a witch. And I go to a magic school called Hogwarts in England where I'm in the seventh year. I'm 17. I'm a goth, in case you couldn't tell. And I wear mostly black. I love Hot Topic, and I buy all my clothes from there. For example, today I was wearing a black corset with matching lace around it, and a black leather miniskirt, pink fishnets, and black combat boots. I was wearing black lipstick, white foundation, black eyeliner, and red, a red eyeshadow. I was walking outside Hogwarts. It was snowing and raining, so there was no sun, which I was very happy about. A lot of per or, I'm sorry, a lot of preps stared at me. I put up my mingle, or middle finger at them. Hey, Ebony, shouted a voice. I looked up. It was Draco Malfoy. What's up, Draco, I asked. Nothing, he said slyly. But then I heard my friend call me, and I had to go. And then it ends with XXXXX. Attention, is it good? Please tell me, fangs. And we move on to chapter two in the Saga of My Immortal. Attention, fangs to bloody tears, XX, or 666, for helping me with the chapters. By the way, preps, stop flaming my story, okay? The next day I woke up in my bedroom. It was snowing and raining again. I opened the door of my coffin and drank some blood from a bottle I had. My coffin was black ebony, and inside it was hot pink velvet with black lace on the ends. I got out my coffee and took my giant MCR t-shirt, and I, <laughs> which I used for pajamas. Instead, I put on black leather dress, a pentagram necklace, combat boots, and black fishnets on. I put on four pairs of earrings in my pierced ears and put my hair in a kind of messy bun. My friend Willow, attention, Raven, this is you, woke up, then grinned at me. She flipped her long, waist-length raven black hair with pink streaks and opened her forest green eyes. She put on her Marilyn Manson t-shirt with a black mini, fishnets, and pointy high-heeled boots. We put on our makeup, black lipstick, white foundation, black eyeliner. Oh my fucking god, I saw you talking to Dralfo Draco Malfoy yesterday, she asked excitedly. Yeah, so, I said blushingly. Do you like Draco? She asked as we went out to the Slytherin common room and into the Great Hall. No, I so fucking don't, I shouted. Yeah, right, she exclaimed. Just then, Draco walked up to me. Hi, he said. Hi, I replied back flirtily. Guess what, he said. What, I asked. Well, good Charlotte are having a concert in Hogsmeade, he told me. Oh my fucking God, I screamed. I love GC. They are my favorite band besides MCR. Well, do you want to go with me, he asked. I gasped. All right, we'll do, do one more chapter, and then I'll ask the chat if they want me to continue this. Chapter 3. Attention. Stop flaming to story, preps, okay? Otherwise, fangs to degothic peoples for de good reviews. Fangs, Asian Revan. Oh yeah, by the way, I don't own this or the lyrics for Good Charlotte. On the night of the concert, I put on my black lace boots with high heels. Underneath them were ripped red fishnets. Then I put on black leather mini dress with all the corset stuff on the back and front. I put on matching fishnet on my arms. I straightened my hair and made it look all spiky. I felt a little depressed then, so I slit one of my wrists. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, wow. I read a depressing book while I waited for it to stop bleeding and I listened to some good Charlotte. I painted my nails black and put on tons of black eyeliner. Then I put on some black lipstick. I didn't put on foundation because I was pale anyway. I drank some human blood, so I was ready to go to the concert. I went outside. Draco was waiting there in front of his flying car. He was wearing a simple plain t-shirt. They would, uh, play, or they wouldn't, wait. He was wearing a simple plain t-shirt. I'm guessing that's the name of a band. Or Simple Plan, holy shit. Uh, they would play at the show, too. Baggy, or baggy black skater pants, black nail polish, and a little eyeliner. Attention, a lot... Oh, this is so hard to read her stupid writing. Attention, a lot of cool boys were doing it, okay? Hi, Draco, I said in a depressed voice. Hey, Ebony, he said back. We walked into his flying black Mercedes-Benz. The license plate said 666 and flew to the place of the concert. On the way, we listened excitedly to Good Charlotte and Marilyn Manson. We both smoked cigarettes and drugs. When we got there, we both hopped out of the car. We went to the mosh pit at the front of the stage and jumped up and down as we listened to Good Charlotte. 
You come in cold, you're covered in blood. They're all so happy you've arrived. The doctor cuts your cord, hands it to your mom. She sets you free into this life. Saying Joel, I don't know the lyrics to that song. Joel is so fucking hot, I said to Draco, pointing to him as he sung, filling the club with his amazing voice. Suddenly, Draco looked sad. What's wrong, I asked as we moshed to the music. Then I caught on. Hey, it's okay. I don't like him better than you, I said. Really, asked Draco sensitively as he put his arms around me all protective. Really, I said. Besides, I don't even know Joel, and he's going out with Hillary fucking Duff. <laughs> I fucking hate that little bitch. <laughs> Oh, oh. Uh, I fucking hate that little bitch, I said disgustingly, thinking of her ugly blonde face. <laughs> the night went on really well, and I had a great time. So did Draco. After the concert, we drank some beer and asked Benji and Joel for their autographs and photos with them. We got good Charlotte concert tees. Draco and I crawled back into the Mercedes Benz, but Draco didn't go back into Hogwarts. Instead, he drove the car into the Forbidden Forest. And that, that brings us up to Chapter 4. And wow, I don't know. <laughs> I forgot. I forgot how how very teenage girl that fucking story is. That Hillary Duff line was pretty great. Oh man, these are these are real time commitment stories, though. You have to understand that these aren't like my immortal. My immortal. How many chapters is this? I'm fairly certain it is... Oh, it has to be more than 44 chapters. That can't be right. Yeah, holy shit. There are actually in total 44 chapters of that. I read three of them. I don't know how much time that took, but I'm guessing it's like an hour, an hour and a half in total. Ugly blonde face, yep. Hilary Duff is apparently very hated by black-haired Ravenwood, or whatever the fuck her name is. Uh, keep going. Uh, other people are saying doom. Other people are saying stop it. I will, because uh, the stream's dragging on now, I'll read, I'll read one more. You guys can pick. Do you want it to be a couple more chapters of My Immortal, or do you want it to be something else? Whatever it is, I will uh, I will read to close this out. God damn, does it take forever for this to catch up? Still lagging behind. Fucking hell. Alright, looks like you finally caught up, so see what the fuck you want. Uh, don't stop reading uh, My Immortal, more of My Immortal. Alright, fine. I will read, uh, I don't know, what was that, chapter 3? I'll, I'll read chapter 4 and 5. And then uh, call that enough of fan fiction. So that gets you like an eighth of the way in. A ninth of the way in. Whatever. Okay. Chapter four. Attention. I said stoop flaming, okay? Ebony's name is Nebony. Not many... <laughs> what? I, I, if you haven't ever seen what this looks like, her little editor notes, it, it's not easy to read. Uh, attention. I said stoop flaming, okay? Ebony's name is Anabi. Nut Mary, Sue okay. Draco is so in love with her that he is acting different. They know each other before, okay? Draco, I shouted. What the fuck do you think you're doing? Draco didn't answer, but he stopped the flying car and he walked out of it. I walked out of it too, curiously. What the fucking hell, I asked angrily. Ebony, he asked. What, I snapped. Draco leaned in extra close, and I looked at into his gothic red eyes. He was wearing color contacts, which revealed so much depressing sorrow and evilness, and then suddenly I didn't feel mad anymore. And then, suddenly, just as I, just as I Draco kissed me passionately, Draco climbed on top of me, and we started to make out keenly against a tree. 
he took me to the top and I took off his clothes. I even took off my bra. Then he put his thingy into my you know what and we did it for the first time. <laughs> oh, 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 I screamed. I was beginning to get an orgasm. We started to kiss everywhere and my pale body became all warm and then what the hell are you doing, you motherfuckers? <laughs> it was Dumbledore. Chapter 5 Attention! Stop flaming. If you flam, it means you're a prep or a poser. The only reason Dumbledore swore is because he had a headache, okay? And on top of that, he was mad at them for having sex. P.S. I'm not updating until I get five good reviews. Dumbledore made... Oh, that's how she read it. Dumbledore made and Draco and I follow him. He kept shouting at us angrily. You ludicrous fools, he shouted. I started to tears of blood down my pal pallid face. Draco comforted me. When we went back to the castle, Dumbledore took us to Professor Snape and Professor, Professor McGonagall, who were both looking very angry. They were having sexual intercourse in the Forbidden Forest, he yelled in a furious voice. Why did you do such a thing, you mediocre dunces? <laughs> How dare you, demanded Professor Snape. And then Draco shri uh, shrieked, because I love her. Everything was quiet. Dumbledore and the professor still looked mad, but Professor Snape said, fine, very well, you may go up to your rooms. Draco and I went upstairs while the teachers glared at us. Are you okay, Ebony? Draco asked me gently. Yeah, I guess I lied. I went into the girls' dorm and brushed my teeth and my hair and changed my into a low-cut, black floor-length dress with red lace all around it and black high heels when I came out. Draco was standing in front of the bathroom, and he started to sing, I Just Want to Live, by Good Charlotte. I was so flattered, even though he wasn't supposed to be there. We hugged and kissed. After that, he said, or after that, we said goodnight, and he reluctantly went back into his room. This is a, uh, it's a masterpiece. It's a fucking masterpiece of writing. It's 44 chapters of that and uh, telling preps to back to fuck off. Oh, wow. Stream went on for way too long. Two and a half hours. Not, that's not bad. If you guys got any questions, go ahead and ask them. I'll answer a few, and then I'm, I'm off for the night. I'm going to go get my ass kicked in uh, Super Smash Brothers by every single person. That uh, fucking changed friends codes with me. Oh, let's check out Ask FM, see if there's anything in there. Ah, uh, let's see. Now people are linking me all sorts of fan fictions. I'll do a stream where I just primarily read them or something. Ah, uh, but not uh, not tonight. I hate that I enjoy reading, or I hate that I enjoy you reading the cringeworthy bullshit. Thanks for my Monday night fun. Thank you, Base Jam. Well, do people fap to this? I would. <laughs> I don't know which story you're talking about. I would hope no. I would hope no would be the answer to that question. Uh, gay shit on stream, unsubscribed. Oh, I'm sorry you don't appreciate a good Sonic and Shadow fucking fan fiction. Wow. <laughs> uh, please stop. I, I'm done at this point with the fan fictions. All right. I'll uh, chat if you got any questions. Uh, I think you're caught up now on the stream. I don't have to delay anymore. Answer a few and then be done for the evening. Read your dick, Jim. I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I I don't know what story it would tell. There, there. It, I guess there isn't much to read I mean, after we heard Andrew's impersonation and the truth came out. Would you fap to fanfic? Uh, no, I would not fap to anything I've read uh, tonight. <laughs> There's not even the remotest of possibilities. Do you have any beef with Sargon? Seems like you never mention him. No, I like Sargon of a God. I watch his videos. I checked Twitter. I sent you two short links to read. Uh, I'll have to be for another stream. Uh, Jim, you never added me to my 3DS. Uh, I put it on Twitter... I just haven't had a chance to go on the 3DS and add anything. But I'll, I'll do that once this is done in the next couple of minutes. Oh, fuck. 
best kind of soda, Pepsi. If you if you drink it or if you're gonna have it, that's what I'd go with. How big is your ding dong? That's a good way of rewording it. How big is your thingy? Then somebody asked on Twitter if this is going to devolve into cock questions again. You've got a one-track mind, uh, chat. All this, this is all sexual harassment. I need to go onto MSNBC and start a Patreon and uh, move out of my house or something. I'm not a piece of meat. You need to respect me for me. Will you read my book if I pay you $500? Well, I'll read your book if it's good. Who do you mean in Smash? I've already said Robin. Very badly, too, by the way, but Robin. Lol, this Turbo Nerd is streaming two nights in a row, and you're watching it, which is just shit for both of us, I guess. Caucasian tits or Asian feet? Um, I'd go with Asian feet on that. Does Draco need to check his privilege? Well, you know, in the coming chapters of My Immortal, you'll find out that uh, Draco gets into all sorts of shenanigans in his good uh, good Charlotte and MCR t-shirt. Oh, fuck. What kind of deodorant do you use? I have no idea. Whatever fucking kind I grab as I'm not paying attention and leaving the store. If I was a piece of meat, would you cut me? What? Oh, if you were a piece of... It's <laughs> okay. a different question. If you were a piece of meat, what cut would you be? That is a dumb question. I have no idea. Why do you not use your Minnesotan accent? This is how I sound. This is how people from Minnesota sound. If I was farther north, maybe I'd have more of a Canadian accent. And say about as a boot or something. Ah... Uh. Do I have an 8chan gold account? No, I'm saving up for that. Where's the second part of the video? I've made three completed videos now, and I don't like any of them. I'll eventually get it right and put it up. If you were to answer the question, how big is your cock, what would you say? <laughs> You're persistent. Uh, did you consent to reading the fanfic IA? Uh, yes, I believe I consented. I'll need to get the consent app just to be, you know, doubly sure. All right, I'm going to check Ask FM uh, real quick and then I think close it out. Are you a wizard? Uh, no, I'm not. How old is MSNBC's dick? I, I don't know. Feet or elbows? I, I guess I'd go with feet. How big are your cojones, man? Do you know how to fedora? Uh, where are your keys? <laughs> what the fuck? Will you and hero? When I hit 50, I'll throw myself in a volcano and live stream it just for you. Uh, who is your favorite porn star and why is it Hitomi Jacob? <laughs> well, now I know what I'm looking up when I'm done with this. All right. Well, I think uh, I think that's going to close it out for the night. Thanks for swinging by. I'll have the other part of the video up sometime, eventually. Hopefully before we all fucking die of old age. And uh, I'll go blow my nose so that one guy who's getting pissed off uh, can relax. But uh, yeah, thanks for coming out. Uh, if you have fanfic suggestions, because I don't mind reading them. I just, it, because of the delay, I can never tell if you guys don't like them or not. So that's why I've got to keep pausing and checking. There's got to be a better way to do that. Uh, I'll figure it out eventually. But if you have suggestions, um, just post them on Ask FM or Twitter or something. But uh, anyway, guys, have a good night, and uh, thanks for coming out. That was good. Oh, there he is. Okay. All right. Uh, welcome, everyone, to the stream. I'm glad you guys were able to show up. We're going to be talking about Atheism Plus today and how it relates or some of the parallels between it and what we're seeing in Gamergate with the people uh, on the oppositional side. Uh, kind of the similar mentality, similar tactics, and uh, a similar situation that happened where you had a group of individuals show up into a community and uh, start, I guess the best way of putting it is shitting it up by bringing in um, outside rhetoric and baggage that didn't really belong or fit with the community they were joining. Um, today I have a couple of guests. I've got Justicar and I've got uh, Thunderfoot. Uh,
sorry, my audio is kicking through on me. That was my fault. Uh, I'm sorry about that. Uh, we have guests today, uh, Jessica and Thunderfoot, uh, both both of who you can see on YouTube. I've got their information in the description if you want to check that out on Twitter or on YouTube. But uh, I wanted to start it out uh, for the people watching because I don't know how familiar. Uh, it's been brought up before when we're kind of talking about co-opting and gaming and SJWs and social justice and this kind of rhetoric. Um, Atheism Plus has been brought up before as an example of where this kind of happened in the atheist community. Um, and so I wanted to, I guess the first question I wanted to ask you guys is, what exactly happened? What, what, was, the, what was the first um, noticeable instance that either one of you had seen where you knew something weird was coming, that the Atheism Plus was going to be different? It's just, it's, these are the nicest people you're ever going to meet that showed up, and I think they're completely reasonable. I don't know what your problem is, sir. Oh, is that right? I'm, I'm completely uh, the wrong idea, do I? <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, actually, let me just uh, throw in, uh, have either of you come across Micaroo's Law? Uh, say that again? Micaroo's Law. Uh, no, I'm not uh, familiar with it. Is that as any progressive movement gains popularity, the probability of a, a feminist organization coming in and co-opting it to make it all about their vagina approaches one. <laughs> is that uh, would you would you say that's a fair statement in regards to what happened uh, with uh, the so, atheism? So by my reckoning, this is the third time that I've seen this. First time um, was uh, with atheism. Uh, with the uh, it, it ended uh, really with atheism plus. Uh, that that once they they proposed atheism plus, that was really the end of it. Um, then it happened with the Occupy movement, and now it's it's basically happening again with gaming. But of course, the gaming population is much bigger than the the atheist population. I mean, if you, if you just want on a ballpark number, maybe ten percent of the people in America are atheists or something, but uh, maybe fifty percent of them are gamers of one sort or another. Uh, and the idea that you can actually sort of uh, characterize such a diverse group of people um, as having, you know, almost any identifier. The, the idea that these are all misogynists in, in gaming is almost a surreal proposal. No, it, it is extraordinarily um, insane, really, when, when you kind of look at it. Um, I, and I know too, I, and I think for a lot of the Gamergate people, there some of them kind of know what happened, uh, but they don't really understand the backstory of it. They they get at the idea that this group of people kind of showed up and demanded certain things and changed the way the community behaved, and uh, were extraordinarily um, vitriolic and just sort of cruel and mean, and uh, I guess ruined how things were. And we're kind of seeing a similar thing in gaming right now that's, that's going on, especially with this media blitz that's taking place. And so I, I thought it would be good to kind of get a perspective of people who saw it take place, you know, saw, saw it happen, saw it happen to a community they were a part of and kind of watch this unfold. Uh, Jessica, what, uh, aside from them being wonderful people, <laughs> what, um, what, I guess what was your first clue that something awkward might be going on? It was a little, a little different than what you might expect. Well, the whole thing started with... Uh, um, a, a, a very vicious invitation to coffee, and I thought that that was um, that was a little uh, actually a little... not not entirely. It did start a little before then. It started with uh, Rebecca Watson deciding that there was all this harassment going on at these atheist events. Oh right, she gave that speech. Which to a heart, yeah. Um, what they call harassment is what you would normally call. Uh, in say a nightclub, socialising. That, that, that was what they were calling harassment. You know, people were coming up to me and asking me, uh, 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 hitting on me in a bar. And it's like, well, yeah, uh, you're in a sort of social, social place where people do that, and you're at a conference. I mean, this is, I would have said. Uh, uh, background noise in that in that sort of venue. But now, according to her, this was actually sexism and misogyny, which leads us to the incident in the elevator, Justica. <laughs> yes. Okay, she had given us a, uh, a speech earlier in the day, 
Well, actually, it really started with the Steph McGraw bit. But anyway, she gave a speech about um, all, all kinds of horrible, horrible people um, approaching her and whatnot. And apparently, in the speech or the lecture, she calls them lectures. <laughs> the anyway, the, the former street magi magi magician is giving lectures. Anywho, <laughs> yeah, she's not an academic, but she gives lectures. So. After she gave the speech about how people should conform their conduct to certain societal norms that she expects, uh, defer to her sensitivities. Um, after about eight or nine, seven hours, something like that, of drinking in a bar with people, some guy apparently propositioned her to go to his room to have coffee, which may or may not be the secret code for sex. Uh, I, I, well, I, I, a lot of people say that it's um, that that it is. It, anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. No, that's fine. And it was the, the fact that he had in, invited her to her uh, his room <clears throat> for coffee was problematic, particularly given that she'd given the speech earlier in the day. And so what I wanted to know was, well, was the guy who propositioned her actually an attendee at that speech? Was he did was he in her hearing when she was speaking? Because it's not reasonable to think just because you've given a speech, the entire world has heard it. And more importantly, I wanted to know if there's any evidence that this uh, this coffee inviter actually existed, because all the pictures I saw uh, of of the bar before she left, she's unable to point out who the bad man is. But then the response to that was, well, she suffers from prosopagnosia, so she can't identify him. Prosopagnosia is a facial blindness; you can't recognize people by their faces. <laughs> And this this medical. Uh, I, I get that as well when I'm blind drunk at four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's one hell of an excuse to pull out for not being able to recognize an individual. Yeah, but apparently she can she can recognize from across the room Richard Dawkins, James Randi, uh, the MythBusters, pe the famous people she can recognize straight away. Oh, easily, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> they, they probably wear signs. <clears throat> and so was this uh, this gentleman had asked her for coffee. And she had found that to be offensive in some way. Oh, threatening! Um, threatening. It, well, first it was just he invited her coffee, but then as the story, you know, that wasn't quite dramatic enough. It had to be escalated. He he cornered her in the elevator, and, and I was like, oh, okay, the, that eight seconds you had in, in the elevator from hell. I'm so sorry that happened to you. How did you <laughs> manage to pick up and survive? But so what she did um, with this potential rapist uh, in, in in the hotel is, of course, she went straight to security to let them know to be on the lookout for the guy, and so any other women wouldn't have to suffer the indignity of being invited to beverages. No, instead what she did, she went to bed and went to sleep and made a YouTube video about it about a, week, uh, a few days later. Because this, that's what I would do if I thought there were a stalker rapist in the building. I would, you know, just go about my merry way. That, that is surprising, uh, the whole mentality of, uh, here's this horrific event that happened. I need to immediately go on social media to discuss it rather than take appropriate steps, I guess. So... Yeah. This is this is the hallmark of these people. The one place, the the one group of people that they won't go tell this story to would be the people who are going to investigate it, namely the police. Really, and so this this happens, right? Because um, I, I, I think most people have kind of heard this. You know, she got asked out to beverages in an <laughs> elevator and found this to be horrific. Now uh, the follow up to that is, didn't uh, was it Richard Dawkins had had spoken on this and ended up getting uh, attacked quite a bit for it, didn't he? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He uh, he he actually, you know, Richard Dawkins is known for many things. Being overly polite is uh, <laughs> not at the top not, of the list. He's, yeah. he's not overtly rude. He's not like, hey, you're fucking ugly, you bastard. But you know, he has he has a, a, a biting wit about him. And he wrote a letter titled uh, "Dear Muslima." It's like, oh, listen here, ladies in the in the Middle East. Yes, yes, I know your genitals were hacked off and. You have to walk around in what uh, um, Bill Maher calls the beekeeper outfit. Mm -hmm. But please think of the indignity that your American sisters have to suffer. I heard of one just the other day, going by the name Skeptic, who was invited to coffee in an elevator. I'm not kidding. It really happened. <laughs> <laughs> that man actually did ask her uh, to coffee, and uh, she said no, and he took no for an answer, and that was the end of the story. So please think of your American sisters. Essentially pointing out that this is a first world problem where... Oh that my is God! Ridiculous! Yeah. My cookie is so large, I can't dip it into my milk. Oh, help! And and so, what was the what was the reaction he got uh, to that to that? Naturally, everyone saw the the eminent wisdom of what he had said and said, you know, he has a point here. A little something about perspective. 
Or, um, I'm sorry, uh, why do you hate women, Richard Dawkins? And this became, a, I guess, a talking point, didn't it, for <laughs> conversations going forward, uh, especially in regards to uh, Dawkins uh, in, in relation to the elevator incident. They dubbed it Elevator Gate, uh, didn't they? Yes, Elevator Gate. Um, yeah, uh, who was the first person? I, I don't know who the first person to write a response to it was. Uh, but Black Hag was first among them, and she actually wrote the article before she was sure that it was actually Richard Dawkins who wrote it, and she had to do an edit to that original post, saying it has now been confirmed some hours later that it was actually Richard Dawkins. Maybe a little background on who the hell Black Hag is. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, founder. She, uh... <laughs> So she uh, had her 15 minutes of fame with something called Boob Quake, uh, which <laughs> is there were these people in the Muslim world who had said it was this earthquake was punishment for all these sinful women going around showing off their bodies. You know, that it's basically boobs caused earthquakes, <laughs> uh, which is obviously bloody stupid. And of so. I, I know um, they're called knockers. They, 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 they did some, some sort of protest where they all went around in bikinis to see if it would... It was something along those lines. And that actually got her on the Colbert Report, if I remember rightly. Really? I think so. Oh, man. Um, yeah, essentially, um, there was a, a get-together in a park or something, and, and it was uh, essentially, show as much of your tits as you, as you can legally get away with, and we'll see if it causes an earthquake. And, the scientific uh, and, method. Yeah. <laughs> which was, you know, that that is... The, the sarcasm of that is what makes it so good. Of course. It's great. Like and then if I remember rightly, at a later date, she then started complaining that people were objectifying her. Yes. yes. And it's like, um, so let me get this straight. You took off all of your clothes and walked around in the park, and now you're worried that people are judging you on that. Yeah, I think one of the best ways of describing this was that if you don't want to be thought of as a person who eats meat, if you want to be thought of as a, as a vegetarian, you should probably stop eating Big Macs in front of people. Oh, that's... <laughs> if you're going to go in public and show your hoo-ha and your he, he this and your she that, don't complain when people like and <laughs> accept the invitation and look at you and start talking about it. It should also be mentioned, actually now while I think about it, that Rebecca Watson... Uh, yeah, one of the early things that actually put yes. her on the radar um, was the nude calendar. Yes. So what so, was the uh, what was the nude calendar exactly for people listening? Uh, it, it was it was meant to be a fundraiser for I think the J Ref, who later became the devil incarnate, as far as the feminists were concerned. <laughs> um, but at the time, they were on the same team. And so they, they took all their clothes off, they made a, a calendar, and they sold the calendar and gave the profits to the James Rundy Educational Foundation. And this is the same woman who years later starts coming up with all this, um, you know, objectification of women, yada, yada, yada. So. And so, um, so we have the elevator incident, um, or, elevator, or elevator gate. Because um, I think one of the things, too, that confuses people, or at least people unfamiliar with it, is yeah, they hear Atheism Plus, but they don't really have, like, a timeline. So they, they hear about events, like you've got Elevator Gate and a few others. When, I guess, when did the name start getting pushed around? Or when did the uh, the, the formation of the concept of what it was going to be, when did that start getting uh, pitched? Was it after Elevator Gate? Was it during it, before it? It, it was after Elevator Gate. Now, it's important to remember that the, the logo for Atheism Plus, um, actually, that was something Richard Dawkins, uh, similar to it, had done some time before that, if I recall correctly. And so they uh, adopted this new label that they came up with, totally on their own, and it was going to be atheism plus a bunch of other propositions. Um, all, not not sexual propositions, of course. because <laughs> That would be too problematic. Yes, that's one of their buzzwords, problematic. Oh, they love it, yeah. Yeah, and I'd like to challenge that assumption. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and it was... Uh, Essentially, after they, they went down this list of all the things they want to pack into atheism without changing the definition of atheism, of course. And it, if I remember rightly, it was a list of five things. Yeah, where atheism, atheists plus we stand up for women's rights, then it was black people's rights or minorities, gay people, transphobic, uh, sorry, sorry, trans people, 
And then last of the pile, number five of five, is <laughs> we, are, we are atheists plus we advocate rational thinking. And it's like, yeah. for fuck's sake, haven't you got that completely <laughs> ass backwards? In fact, you know, it's even more ass backwards than that because you know a lot of people uh, would say that they are atheists because they are rationalists. In other words, what, you know, I am an atheist because that is a conclusion that you come to from being a rationalist. Right? A, lot, a lot of people would argue it that way. And so to say I'm an atheist, uh, therefore I believe in rationality, is just really ass backwards. They, yeah. they, uh, in, it was inverted. They flipped it around on everybody. Yeah, well, for them, atheism is not the conclusion of a line of reasoning. It's actually a starting point for an argument. And I'm like, no, you, you come to decisions about what is a, a true mo what do you think is a true model of the universe based on an analysis of the information that you have. And you reach, in my case, I reach the conclusion there's, no, there's not a sufficient reason to believe that there exists a god. From that, nothing else follows. You can be an atheist and a complete whack job. I mean, look at the Raelians. Um, <laughs> You, you know who they are, right? Yeah, no, yeah, I'm familiar with them. Mm -hmm. yeah, they're a they're a, U, a UFO cult essentially. They're they're atheists, um, complete whack jobs, but they're atheists. And oh, they also had um, kindness to animals in there somewhere. Um, in their their list of what an atheist plus was. Yes. Um, now this is in no sense whatever changing the definition of atheism, which last I checked dealt with uh, what you think is true about proposition the proposition that there exists at least one god. Um, so without changing that definition, atheism now has all these other things, and they call that atheism plus. The founder of that is uh, Black Hag, Jennifer McCry. Rhymes it wrong. <laughs> I don't. What she did? She last also what? known as Miss Boobquake. Miss Boobquake. <laughs> I'm gonna get some big noise here in a minute. Uh, I'm gonna mute my microphone. Okay, that's fine. Well, uh, while you're muted, um, <clears throat> that kind of brings us into, was it uh, Richard Carrier that had given the speech at the uh, AA? Uh, is that what, intellectual artillery is what they referred to it as? That was the... Um, uh, no, he, no, he describes himself as the intellectual artillery, which is... <laughs> Uh, I mean, how vain do you have to be to describe yourself as the intellectual artillery? That they I mean, even even if it himself. were true, which of course it's not, but even if it were true, it's like my God, put your, you know, can't you uh, you know, dim your ego down a bit for a, for a <laughs> well, well, you know, after he got his fifth Nobel Prize, I think he's entitled to refer to himself that way. <laughs> is that is that right? He's earned that right, has he? Yeah, well, yeah, all of his uh, academic work is self-published, isn't it? Uh, is, yeah, uh, in terms of co even calling himself an academic would be, uh, I, I think technically he does have a PhD, does he? I can't remember. Now, he calls himself doctor, but I'm not, I'm not quite sure what the hell he's a doctor of. But for certain, in terms of being a research active or anything like that, it's a complete non-starter. So... And, and yeah, because I think people have seen, or, or at least a, a fair amount of people had seen. Uh, I believe it was his speech at the American Atheist Convention in 2013. So was he was he putting forward the bullet points of what Atheism Plus was? Was he helping to define it? What was his role, kind of, as this uh, went through Thunderfoot? Like, uh, what what do you see as his role as? Uh, in this? So um, That's the, the way that it basically went is first of all, you had Elevator Gate. And this really polarized the community. Um, in the beforehand, it had been essentially one uh, contiguous group, but this became a sort of almost single issue politics thing. You were either pro, uh, you were either pro elevator gate or anti. Um, and then the people who were wait, wait that's not accurate. You're either uh, uh, pro atheism plus or you hate women, you rapist. Oh, no, uh, no, no, it was better than that. You were cannibalistic humanoid underground dwellers. Oh, oh right, right, right. Is, that, is that what they referred to everybody as? Yeah, yeah. and uh, in, in that sense, you know, the parallels are stunning between Gamergate and Elevatorgate. And that first of all came the polarizing issue. And then you had uh, the people like Carrier, who said, you know, the time has come for us to throw off all of these sick misogynists and we will have a new third glorious age of uh, uh, rationality and enlightenment that will stem from atheism plus. 
which really didn't even make it past the end of the week before um, uh, it, it was dead in the water. Which is why, you know, uh, you mentioned this in one of your videos that with Gamergate there maybe thinking of calling themselves players rather than gamers or something. Oh, they wanted a new moniker. Uh, one of the joke images that went around when this rumor first started was they were going to call it Gaming Plus, or Gamer Plus, because everybody was referring back to um, <laughs> Atheism Plus. They, they kind of saw what was going on, and then it became, well, let's refer to them as players instead of gamers. Because <laughs> we have to yeah. differentiate. You know, you can't just be a gamer if you play video games. You have to be morally right and not a misogynist and not... Uh, Racist, sexist, transphobic, you know, anti-social justice. They all any word they could throw at you, really. Yeah, um, and but yeah, atheism plus styled itself as the third wave of atheism with Richard Dawkins, the four horsemen of the uh, the counter apocalypse being the second wave. So they followed up Richard Dawkins, Christopher Hitchens, Sam Harris, and Dan Dennett with Richard Intellectual Artillery Artillery Carrier, Jennifer <laughs> McCright, who quit after about two weeks or three weeks. That was the most hilarious thing of all. No, yeah. is, so she founds Atheism Plus, you know, this, this, this great new wave. She declares on her blog that, you know, this is the death throes of the, the old white patriarchal misogyny atheism. And now we're going to have this new great age of, of equality and the such like. And... It lasted, like you were saying, quite literally a week before she said, "No, no, we've we've lost." Um, and when you abandon your own movement within about a week, uh, that 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 gives you some idea of how much support it had. And this was one of their new their new uh, third wave atheism four horsemen. This was one of their top top people, kind of up there with the intellectual artillery of that Carrier. Was, that was the founder. Yeah, she, she's she's the one so, who conceptualized it. The founder quit after two weeks? Yeah. That's about right. Yeah. That's yeah. insane. And why did people stick with it if they pulled up their stakes and got the hell out of Dodge? Oh. Um, well, this is like asking why people stand in front of a wall, put prayers in it, and like bob their heads back and forth. I don't know why people do crazy things. They just do. But um, I, I was watching an interview with Richard Carrier a while back about atheism plus how he's a big supporter of it, you know, intellectual, blah, 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 blah. And then the guy asked him what the actual forums where the, the, the hub of it is. He goes, oh, I don't know. I've never actually posted there. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, I, I'm, I love this. I've so seen much. that interview as well, and it's, you know, you, you just face palm. What else can you do? Yeah, I mean, could you imagine, like, Richard Dawkins, the, the so-called Pope of Atheism, being like, when they ask him, what's it like? Oh, I don't know. I don't talk to atheists. I don't go to any meetings. <laughs> I don't really have anything to do with it. It's really it's it's it, it, it's a it's a sinecure, really. Yeah, when, when the man who claims to be the intellectual artillery for a movement doesn't know what the hell's going on with it. Yeah, he's never made an account with them. He's never he doesn't go over there and talk. Now, have you ever, have you actually been there, uh, Internet aristocrat? Uh, no, no, I've not. I, I watched uh, kind of all of this unfolding from my perspective, just kind of unfolding uh, from the sidelines, watch it, watching this take place, and just finding it just unreal watching what was happening. It just didn't make sense to me what the point of Atheism Plus was, who these people were, and there always seemed to be a video coming out where specific, you know, it, was, it started to become a certain group of people. Always seemed to be stirring shit. Uh, Watson was a name that came up a lot. Myers was a name that came up uh, a lot, it seemed. Um, and it was just, I, I never had a chance to personally see it, though, no. One of the, you asked me, like, how did I, what was the first thing that let me know that something's not quite right? I, I, I don't know what the very first thing was, but one of them was reading some of the uh, posts over there, and one of them was... Uh, <laughs> I can't do this in a straight face. It was that good, was it? Yeah. Oh, God. Everyone Actually, would, you know, the, the, this is one of the upsides, is these people do provide an awful lot of lulls. Yeah, and it's pretty <laughs> pay for it. But one of them was, you want to talk about the oppression Olympics. One of them was about <laughs> someone <laughs> being reprimanded uh, by a moderator for asking in a thread if he or she could have a hug. <laughs> I, they got they got they got reprimanded for asking for a hug. Yes, because that was hijacking someone else's conversation about needing a hug. <laughs> and this is all done with a straight face. These these aren't people just all joking. done with a, str a straight. Well, I mean, this is the other thing is 
you know what Poe's law is, yeah? I was going to say, this is yep. Poe's law. That's exactly it. I mean, you just can't tell the fucking crazy from the people just pretending to be crazy. <laughs> yeah, so um, the, the person responds to the moderator uh, threat by saying, you know, if this isn't a community where I'm entitled to a hug when I feel like I need one, then I'm not sure this is the place for me. <laughs> And so was this kind of the mentality of um, their communities was kind of a, a literal hug box kind of thing <laughs> where everybody's feelings needed to be put first and foremost before anything else, any any rationality, any facts, anything like that. Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's a safe space. Now, this is a, now I did one video. And by, by which they mean your free speech ends where my feelings begin. <laughs> yes, or where it, one of the curious things is um, it's like women who advocate for various... Uh, work positions, and then you ask them, "Are you interested in this position?" They say, "Well, no." Okay. <clears throat> it's not even that someone's feelings are hurt; it's that some potential person, some hypothetical person in the future, might be born whose feelings might possibly be hurt. Therefore, you shouldn't say that. And That's insane. <laughs> it, it really is your Tumblrisms, which those are excellent, by the way, especially the one about non-Euclidean. Seconded. <laughs> Non-Euclidean emotions really that cracked my shit up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, some of the stuff they come up with is just phenomenal. It's just yeah. so crazy. Uh, by the way, what what kind? I I don't know if I ever if the answer ever came out on this. What kind of wood are you? Oh God, I, I think of myself as oak would be what I'd go with. That's oppressive, I'm sure, to somebody. Yeah, that sounds a little too masculine, sir. It, it does. I need to check my privilege and uh, offer hugs to people uh, that feel safe with it, so it's not too problematic when I tell them. Oh, this. that's another thing. You can't just offer. Um, a, a freestanding hug to someone. You have to make sure that you have the person's online consent to your online hug. Otherwise, it's well. This, this fund this kind of opens up another subject. This fund its way into certain conventions, didn't it? Where they wanted to draw up um, essentially a list of behavior. Not only that. Not only that. They've done it. They have. Oh. So they've implemented it. Yes. Oh, and it's actually there in black and white in the conference policy that yes means yes, no means no and maybe means no. Uh, to which, I mean, what, what else can you say? But uh, did these people ever get through puberty? Because the first thing that you realize when you go sort of dating or whatever is virtually all communication uh, about sex, dating, hooking up, all that sort of thing is done through nonverbal communication. You know, eye contact, touching, you know, often fairly subtle things, you know, touching arms, that sort of thing. Right, like um, someone's yeah. or yeah, something. And, and uh, you know, there, there are all sorts of games that go on when people are uh, courting like this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, <laughs> sometimes no does mean yes, sometimes yes does mean no. And, yeah, and, uh, my safe word is uh is uh, uh um <laughs> is deeper. <laughs> is that is that the one you go with to be? <laughs> See, that's, that's when they know, is it? <laughs> my safe word is oh yes, please more. Oh, that's so confusing. No, but that that conference policy. You need to remember, um, Thunderfoot. At the same time they were coming up with that, they were handing out stuffed animals that said, "I'm vaccinated. Hug me." So isn't that rape if you do it without the stuffed animals' consent? <laughs> well, well, weren't there more policies, though? I mean, they, they had essentially turned something that was a convention for people um, in the atheist community to get together and just have fun, bullshit around, have some speakers, and just a, a group event, like you'd see at a gaming convention. But they changed it into something where we have, like, if I remember right from watching different videos and hearing kind of people speak on this, I didn't know they implemented uh, or still doing it, I guess, but it was, in it, like, it was a list of how you can behave, what can be sold there, what words are acceptable, you know, what you agree to, and it was, like, a very legalese and it seemed to be geared towards the notion that if you were um, an atheist and you were going to a convention, you had to be told these things because you couldn't behave otorwise. This was expected well, you were going to be well, like that. How can well, you I mean, this, this is where it just gets so capitally stupid. Um, the, In the refund it, policy. Oh, yeah, um, they refuse to give you a refund to a... This is actually written in the conference policy that you will get expelled from the conference and won't get a refund if you violate the policies. Even though it's a free conference, <laughs> it's a cost yes. no money, but no refunds, huh? Uh, yeah, and <sighs> why not just give them a double your money back? That's it. Even a good better. Yeah, 
But this is the thing that when you put people in charge where their only tangible skill is that they're a professional victim, this is the sort of level of incompetence you're going to get. Right? Oh, exactly. Um, so at one of these conferences, they actually had a policy about, I didn't think the policy was no shooting, but uh, <laughs> they, they did have a list of things that you should do if there was a conference shooting. Uh, it's like, but in that very same conference policy, there was not something that says that rape is against the conference policy. <laughs> so they forgot to cover that one. <laughs> uh, oh, absolutely. So there was a, there was a sort of no shooting policy, but not a no raping policy. Well, maybe by shooting they meant something other than firearms. It seems so surreal that this needed to be put in black and white. Um, how, how did people respond to this? Was there? Uh, did people? I, I guess as I mean, this went on, did people start to think, "God, this is insane! What these people are doing? This is getting so, nutty." I've got to admit, I've I once we got past Elevator Gate, I sort of um, I went my own way from this this crowd because the way that I saw it is these were a bunch of losers who were never actually going to achieve anything. And <laughs> well, no, before that, you went right into the uh, the, the hive mind. Oh, oh yeah, there the was my little uh, was... punch up with Free Thought Blogs, who then tried to what was it drive me out of the community and me to have me forever be a pariah. Yeah, but isn't uh, your your just for your channel? Isn't your viewership larger than their entire network? I think that's about right. I um the yeah. Uh, he that, that's bad. traffic than all of them put together, and they're going to drive him out. Well, and and these are the people that are, are, are kind of cause or carrying the cause, so to speak. But it seems like they don't have a large following. They're just very loud. Would that be fair to say, a vocal minority that are kind of stopping their feet to demand certain things? Uh, which is again, it's almost verbatim Gamergate. And again, verbatim, they seem to have uh, friends in uh, real journalism. Uh, Rebecca Watson had several of these things where even though within the actual atheist community herself, uh, it, her name was essentially Mud, and she would still get these relatively high-profile articles and things like Slate. <laughs> and, of course, for people like you, uh, me, and everyone else here, we knew what the score was. But to Joe Public, who doesn't know any of the background, all of a sudden, you get this article on Slate saying how terrible, uh, how terribly misogynistic the atheist community is. Uh, that that that's the only information I have, and like that, I think it's very similar to Gamergate. Is that you have all of these, uh, what was initially just gaming press, who was so incredibly detached from reality and biased, it's not true. But mm. then it seems to have actually moved over to the mainstream media who also seem to have just taken the gaming press at their word, which, if you think about it, is just so stupid. You have a segment of the press that's being accused of being corrupt, and you take them at their word. It's surreal, isn't it? it it's, and that's one of the things I think is really interesting is you, you really do have a lot of parallels between kind of what happened with Atheism Plus and what's going on in Gamergate. You have professional victims who create a major drama around themselves um, and then use, you know, deflect any criticism by saying, no, it's the community that's a problem. Uh, you guys are all horrible and misogynistic. And then the journalists come in and they're just kind of parroting what's being said. Um, how did this... How did the atheist community, I, I don't, well, I mean, it's a, I guess it's a large thing to ask somebody to speak for, but how did the atheist community in general, not just like Joe Public, but the people that were kind of tuned in and kind of knew a little bit of what was going on, how did they react to Atheism Plus? Was it a slow kind of like realization, or were they like, holy shit, this is crazy, yeah. let's back uh, off? Atheism Plus was essentially dead on arrival, and the reason it was dead on arrival is basically because of Carrier who really did frame this, he wrote this blog post which was, you know, this is the new glorious age of atheism where we, we shed the cannibalistic humanoid underground dwellers and we will be righteous, pure and honorable and this is a black and white issue, it's us versus them, you can't have, <laughs> uh, he basically made it a, a binary choice and 
oddly enough, it turns out that if you want to make an issue which has a lot of grey in it, either black and white, uh, people will just call bullshit on you. It's like, you know, I, I might not entirely agree with one or the other, but I'm certainly not going to put my ex next to the guy who is saying you're either with us or against us. Yeah, and more than that, it wasn't simply enough that you had to agree with their principles at the outset. You had to agree with the label. You had to label yourself so that way they could identify, you know, oh, you don't identify as atheism plus, therefore yeah. you're not good enough to be in the community. You and you will be shunned. We won't have you invited to... It was really totalitarian stuff. You know, you won't be allowed to come to conferences. Uh, we won't work with you. We'll call you out in public, which is, again, very much Gamergate, that the, 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 the they will basically throw mud at you in public if you disagree with them. Again, very much like Gamergate. And this is why I think, right, if we didn't have YouTube, we would be fairly screwed at this point. Because it does feel like of, that, yeah. of all the venues, uh, YouTube is really almost the last bastion where we have... Um, yeah, we actually have, if you like, a direct voice. If we didn't have that, we um, who else is there? The gaming press is essentially uh, uh, corrupt from the inside out. Uh, a load of these actual forums have actually sort of shut down all conversation about this. Oh, yeah, it, it's been silenced everywhere. I, I think one of the other interesting things. I, I, I don't know how much profiteering went on with Atheism Plus. What, oh. kind of what's going on in, in Gamergate is we, we've got all these people, these professional victims that are using the press and calling community horrible, but they're making a lot of money doing nothing. Mm -hmm. They're getting donations, they're getting uh, tips, they're getting Patreon cash uh, just for saying, I'm uh, horribly oppressed, everybody be a Gamer Plus. Did that happen in Atheism uh, Plus? Were they trying to make money doing this as well? Gamer uh, yes. Uh, so Rebecca Watson certainly, when she did her, uh, you know, Patreon thing. It was, I'm a victim, and I'm still going to do this. I, I think that's right. I think if you actually watch her, you know, support me video, uh, that that that's basically it. And it, Sarkeesian does basically the same thing. That she, all these talks that she's supposedly giving about the, you know, sexist reputation, representation of women in games. It's basically the same talk again and again, and it's exactly the same thing that she did with a TED talk years ago. It she turns up and talks about how hard it is to be an Eta Sarkeesian, um, and if you've ever been uh, an oppressed woman or a woman who has felt bad, then you need to be support. You need to start supporting me. Really? That seems that seems to be very much the pitch that they go for. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah it definitely does. Now, uh, don't forget the fake jewelry nonsense. You know, what was that, exactly? The fake jewelry? Is this the uh, convention thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's who can sell uh, <laughs> jewelry. They're, uh, sur they're called Surly Ramic. She makes ceramic kind of things that have, like, pro-science or pro-atheist stuff on it. And she, uh, she was mightily um, upset that people who disagreed with her were showing up at conferences wearing knockoffs of Surly Ramex mocking her and the, the nonsense will shut her pushing. And so she she uh, I can't remember where she did an interview. Was was it with um oh my god, the the um, lacrosse rape trial, uh, what's that nut John? Oh uh, uh Marcot. Something yes, Amanda, the Marcot. There we go. She did an interview with Amanda Marcotte. And she's like, look, we're not asking for anything unreasonable. We just want sensible policies, which, you know, that's good language. We want sensible policies. And then she describes what she wants. Uh, so, um, which was no offensive speech, which is kind of hard in atheist conferencing. Is <laughs> half of what they do there is try and piss off religious people. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. and, and then, yeah, we want no offensive T-shirts and no fake jewelry. And, and on that same list was... No grabbing people's asses without their permission. Nothing unreasonable. <sighs> okay. I can agree with the last one. Sure, don't go around like rubbing people's genitals and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm with you there. But it's the... For, first of all, I don't know what fake jewelry is, but anyway. Um, so it, basically, it, it, what they meant by fake jewelry is... is I know what she means, but I don't yeah. know what the concept 
the fake jewelry is. I mean, <laughs> what's what's real jewelry? Yeah. How, how does one define that? Yeah. <laughs> it's a decoration. Don't use fake decorations. Oh no, these are sincere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway, one of the things they want to do is to make sure that um, it doesn't really matter what you believe; it's what you say. And so long as you say the right the 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 right words, you're in like the the cult. I'm um, I'm sorry, the group. And on the point of delusional, one of the things that you'll notice about the people who cry the most about how rapefied the whole world is, they tend to be like the ugliest women you'll find. And it, it's like you're, you're trying to upplay your sexual market value. You're not satisfied that you're you know below average. And so what you need to do, like Rebecca Watson does when she goes around saying that one of the things that she gets asked all the time by men is for them to show her, show them her pretty smile. Have you seen her? Uh, yes, I've seen Rebecca Watson. No one has ever asked to see her pretty smile, I assure you. Uh, a, especially if you see what her, her teeth are like. Yeah. yeah, she's got, like, all the teeth are, like, just screaming to be in front. No, me first. No, me. Oh, God, get out of the way. You know, she's got <laughs> fucked up teeth. And, and whenever she does an accent of people who want to come talk to her, it always sounds like a black guy. Yo, baby, yo. I, I, anyway, like... For, Mike Rue put it best, like from a Mandingo uh, kind of affectation. And uh, also on the delusional bit about not being able to be comfortable with who they are, mm -hmm. is they think that they have a sense of humor, but they don't. Uh, Thunderfoot did a video on this, and so did Pony Slay Station. His was short and funny. And it was a video that Rebecca Watson did about uh, a cancer charity, I think it was. And she starts it off by saying essentially... Uh, fuck you to the men in the atheist community who... Uh, uh, how did it go? Um, I'm not quite sure which one you're talking about. She starts off with um, their balls tuck up inside them and form what some people call a man. Oh, that. Good God. I mean... Uh, yeah, I mean, she basically... Oh, to get money for this, yeah, it was, it was it was a video to raise money for charity and she basically starts off by saying all the atheist men are dicks. Uh, and no qualifies nothing. It's oh, just no. Here, this is what it was. Uh, if an atheist on YouTube goes too long without calling a woman a cunt, his balls will tuck up inside him and, and form what some people call a mangina. Oh, and this was Watson doing this. this I've seen this video. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Pony Slay Station has a funny one where we had a little back and forth about it. Uh, Thunderfoot has one, and it, it's she thinks that that's a joke, and she's like, most people got it. When you go look at the like like to dislike ratio, it's like apparently most people didn't like it. Well, and have you noticed, uh, this is one of the, the, I guess, the trends that I noticed in the Gamergate opposition, or the, this, these people that are doing it right now in gaming. They want to, uh, they want to treat people like infants. They want them uh, to basically toe the line and behave, and they talk down to them. Uh, was that kind of a big thing in Atheism Plus? Was everybody treated like they were idiots, and everything had to be explained because you just couldn't behave otherwise? Absolutely. I mean, this is the thing that really pissed me off about all these sort of conference policies, is... I don't want to go to a conference to be treated like a a 12-year-old. I don't want the conferences that I go to to be essentially uh, expensive daycare. <laughs> I want to be treated... I, I, I want at least as many rights as I have um, as when I go out when I go out in the evening. Well, uh, yeah. And these people, too... Um, at least from what I remember seeing, and I think you both would have better perspectives on this, in Gamergate what we've seen is the people that do end up speaking out uh, against them, the, the people that go against the um, narratives that are kind of put, put forward by people like uh, Zoe Quinn or Brianna Wu, um, are attacked. They're attacked quite brutally. Some people um, you know, get threatened to be doxxed or have their, their accounts shut down or they're just attacked and called the worst things in the world. Was there that kind of reaction from the Atheism Plus group? Like if you dare to speak out against us, we are going to smear you in every imaginable way. Um, Absolutely, and let me let me just uh, inject here that I actually joined uh, something called Free Thought Blogs, which is a <laughs> uh, this is essentially the mecca for the social justice warriors in atheism. Now, why did I join them? You're well, saying. I just didn't know at the time. You know, okay, I should I should have read <laughs> more about it, but uh, but it should then be stated that I lasted, I think, a ten week. days there. It, it was something like that. It was pr incredibly short. And that was based on uh, a few things. The first of all is they also had this back channel. 
uh, very much like this this gaming journalism mailing list. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's exactly what it was. It's just a mailing list, and I they they signed up to that mailing list, and it was just the most petty bitching about uh, settling scores and all this sort of shit. Um, and almost instantly, yeah, there, there was as much going out on that back channel as there was going out on the blog. And it's, if these people have got nothing better to do than this, then you know, no organization that spends this much time in petty bitching will ever achieve anything, right? Because they basically that's what they were spending all their time doing. It. Anyway, so it turns out that they didn't realize they'd signed me up to this thing, and one of the things that they're bitching about is me. Because them being the wonderful researchers that they were, um, thought I was the amazing atheist. <laughs> so wait, they they, they put you I on a know, mailing, I didn't know this. They put you on a mailing list talking about yourself, thinking you were somebody else entirely. Exactly. How and, ridiculous! <laughs> God. And I still have it, uh, you know. So I eventually I just get around and read some of this, and I put up a reply basically. Uh, saying they'd they accuse me of absolutely everything: racism, sexism, misogynist, uh, pro-rape, all this sort of shit. And it's like I just went on, you know. Look, everything that I've ever done's online. Just show me where I've said these things, and then comes forward all these apologies, including Richard Carrier, um, who. <laughs> Uh, he apologized and told me that he thought he had got me confused with the Amazing Atheist. And it's like, you... You <laughs> fuck-ups. You world-class fuck-ups. <laughs> anyway, so after that, I, I put up my post about how... Uh, I, I thought they were going down the wrong road with all this sort of misogyny stuff and you know, all these conference policies... And that was that was basically the end of it. They dogpiled me and threw me off about a week later. Now the bizarre thing is that I actually uh, was still able to read their mailing list even after they thought they'd thrown it off me. Uh, after they thought that they'd throw me off the mailing list, and so I also got to see them doing all this conspiring, how they were going to destroy me. How dumb right. are these people? Jeez, uh, <laughs> world world class <laughs> dumb. Yeah, and so I have all these sort of mails where they're they're conspiring about how, guess what? They're all going to release their blogs on the same day to utterly destroy me, and not only that, how they want me uh, made a pariah such that no one in the atheist can, yeah they they want me destroyed, a pariah who will be shunned by every. This is almost verbatim what they were writing. A pariah who will never be sort of talked to or taken seriously by anyone ever again, and that's so um, eerily similar too. I mean, you're talking about a coordinated. We're going to all release blogs talking about this at the same time. When I saw all that stuff about you know, the 20 articles, whatever, announcing the game is dead on the same day, um, I was just getting so much deja vu over that, and the more so seeing as it was completely detached from reality. So there are various sites that allow you to track, uh, you know, whether you get more or less subscribers, that sort of thing. And this entire attempt from Freethought Blogs to try and destroy me, mm -hmm. yeah, it, it, I, I lost about 300 subscribers or something, which was out of at the time I think 150,000. So that was your death knell then. They, that, they really that, got that, you. That, that was my death knell, <laughs> and and now it now it's up to about a third of a million or something. So. It, 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 their aspirations just completely outweigh their operational ability. And again, this seems to be the way it goes with Gamergate, is they have the aspirations that they're just going to declare gaming to be dead, just like Atheism Plus decided that Atheism was dead, and now we need a new wave. And what happened? You know, well, where, where was the actual change? I mean, all I see that's changed is you've now actually generated a bunch of of gamers who are now actually capitally pissed off that there they were just happily being gamers from every stripe you know you had women gays trans every, the, the gaming demographic transcends all of these boundaries right oh, oh, to greater and lesser extents and now all these people are basically being told oh no no the gamers are dead 
Um, they're all misogynists. It's a several billion dollar, uh, an industry that generates several billion, several billion dollars a year from people is dead. Yeah, it, it's completely buried. Yep. Yeah, so, you get uh, some hundred people, uh, and they, they, they will pretend as though they are the representative sample of the fucking universe. On the gay issue, for those people who don't know, um, and this might come as a surprise to some of you ladies out there, I'm gay. <laughs> One of the things that started right at the beginning of Elevator Gate was P.Z. Meyer said to me, and he knew, or should have known because we had talked about it, that I'm gay. And he said, the only reason that you have a problem with what Rebecca uh, Watson says is so that way you won't feel uncomfortable. You'll feel like you're entitled to corner women in various rooms and hit on them. I'm like, you have fucking jumped the shark. For one, yeah, even if I were straight, I, I was like, for one, even if I were straight, look at me. There is no way in hell I would hit on a Rebecca Watson. I'm, <laughs> way, of, I'm way out of her league. And two, I'm a big old fucking Peter Puffer, dude. Like, ugh. There's, there's, the amount of alcohol required for a Rebecca Watson to become attractive is the exact amount that would be required to make sure that I couldn't have sex. Well, uh, no, I mean, we heard Thunderfoot's kind of the reaction he got. Uh, now, you had made videos, too, kind of talking about the stuff going on. Did you end up getting a lot of shit thrown your way, uh, just to car, um, when you started talking yeah. about it? I, well, I, I get uh, the, uh, two extremes. One, you know, the people who are just died in the wool. Every rude word is, in, is an injury to all women for all time, even women uh, who want to exist for thousands of years. And all women who are dead, you know, they're, it travels backwards through time. It hurts them somehow. And then I get people who are like, look, uh, you were very strident. I got called that a bit in the beginning. But, uh, you know, it, when you get past my, uh, re my uh, rebarbative language, mm -hmm. You know, they, they've come to, to see it from my point of view. And if you look at my my uh, demographics, uh, my my um, web presence has done nothing but grow since Elevator Gate, and PZ Myers and that group has done nothing but decline ever since. And I should also, if I remember rightly, Myers had at least two goes to try and bury you. Yeah. And the first time, you know, because you get the sort of thumbs up, thumbs down thing, so you can use this as a sort of barometer yeah. to gauge um, someone's yeah. internet footprint. I, I, have two, I have two data points. The first one, when he linked to me, because I put up a, a, a video, um, I got about 12,000, 12, 15,000 views, something like that, in the first 24, 36 hours. A year later... He, he tried to send people to one of my videos to like massively thumb it down, and it caused a bump of almost six or seven hundred. And I have a third data point, and it's when he inadvertently um, – there used to be a phenomenon known as fringulation. Okay. He used to have a very large web presence. When he would link to something, if it was a small website, it would crash their servers. He can't do that anymore. That, that phenomenon is dead. And he linked to Black Hag. And she inadvertently reported the metrics that it caused 400 people to go to her, her site. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, this is... <laughs> so, someone in life, I mean, how many people are watching this? Oh, right now? A couple yeah. thousand, I'd imagine. Uh, 4,000. Yeah. So, in, anyway, I just... In, in, in the space of a year, he was down about um, you know, one twelfth of what he was the year before. And... I'm not growing rapidly or anything. I'm a grower, not a shower, people. Don't judge. <laughs> but steadily, slowly and surely, it, it's just been an increase for me. And I, I haven't changed my language. And This is how I talk in real life. If anyone meets me in real life, they'll be like, oh, he's just the same as he is on the Internet, only bigger. <laughs> uh, I, I look smaller on, on your monitor. I'm sorry. But anyway, it's just that kind of nonsensical shit that he is so... Uh, vociferous in, in his ideology that he'll look at a gay guy and say, look, faggot, the reason that you agree with him is so you can hit on bitches. And like, look, dude, you're fucking off the chain. And I do want to return to the point, uh, maybe not now, but in a little bit, about the infantilization of people. But before that, I'll answer the question about the feedback that I get. No, that's fine. It is, um, I have gotten what um, would count in the Free Thought blogs land as death threats. And indeed, I, I got a very detailed one about how the guy <clears throat> wanted to, or the, it, it happened to be a guy, wanted to watch me bleed to death as he shoved a knife inside me and whatnot. <clears throat> and after he sent that to me, uh, I'd grown out of the phase where I would correct people's grammar and email back to them what they'd sent me uh, with red lettering and everything, and I'd just send him back a picture <laughs> of my phone. Bring it, bitch. You know? <laughs> well, and that's, that's one thing... 
that's one thing too I wanted to touch on because uh, there there are some names that popped up throughout this in, in Gamergate. There are too uh, people that seem to keep popping back up. One of them is PZ Myers. Can can either one of you kind of give a some background information on who that is and the role they played, so people in chat that might not know this or Gamergaters who are unfamiliar with it have an idea of who he is. Um. Well, Rebecca we Watson's there. greatest fan, I think, would probably be the simplest way to describe it. Is he is he her biggest white knight? That kind of thing. Uh, absolutely. And by uh, the, in fact, just that he's vociferous. He's a prodigious man. <laughs> is he now? He's corpulent. <laughs> well, he he played a role throughout um, a lot of this. I, I seem to remember him starting quite a bit of drama uh, a couple of times over yeah. the last two or three years. Yeah, uh, not so much recent. Well, a little bit. Right now, there's one going on where he's accusing Michael Nugent, who is. Uh, depending on how cynical you are, the world's biggest pussy or the world's biggest uh, assuager of people's feelings. Um, he's accused his uh, Michael Nugent of providing a safe haven for harassers, misogynists, and rapists. And Michael, Mike, Mr. Michael Nugent is an extremely polite man, and he, he like, it, it, it's it's hard. If you wanted to point to a sensitive person and say, this is a model of sensitivity, he'd be that kind of, like, poster child. And he's written, for him, a rather scathing uh, response to P.Z. Myers about this, uh, about how P.Z. Myers, has, well, failed five times to justify a smear. Uh, anyway, I'll, I'll tweet a link to it later. And it, it's... it's it is hard to imagine calling someone like that, Michael Nugent, a person who defends rapists and misogynists and harasser, harassers, let alone trying to protect them. That is nonsensical. And this was the, the allegation that Myers had leveled. Yeah, and this is, this, is, this is happening right now. This is like a week or so old. It, one of the other things, one of the other nonsensical which is, things. Uh, which is, again, I mean, this, this is just Gamergate all over. That You take a look at Brianna Wu's whatever latest interview where she's just going on about how it's all about sexists um, threatening women. Or you look at a Sarkeesian's, one of her latest tweets about how Gamergate is basically a, a sexist temper tantrum of something or other. I mean, it's... Uh, Misogynistic hate group, yeah. They've got a yeah. lot of terms they love to throw out. So what was... Um, I, so you have all this happen... And you've you've got this group of people behaving in this way. Um, what was the pushback? Uh, did people ignore it? Did you guys start to mock them? And oh. how how did you treat atheism plus once you were familiar with what exactly was going on? How what was the approach that the atheist community took to try to just even though it was dead on arrival, but just to try to make them shut up and stop being so stupid? I and uh, in ma in many ways, uh, atheism plus was the catalyst for all of us. Right before then. Uh, they ignore camp a little bit before then, weren't you? Uh, well, yeah. I mean, I just wasn't paying that much attention. And as far as uh, the the way that I was playing it before this was, I was aware of it, but I didn't see that the infighting uh, was going to actually achieve anything. You know, it's the old house divided against itself cannot stand. If you're going to spend your time doing anything, focus on a uh, on something that's useful, and <laughs> so on and so forth. And all of the time, this was just growing and growing and growing, the the, yeah, the professional whiners within the community. And they were, if you like, they were generating their meaning out of creating divisions within the movement. Right, That, that was basically their bread and butter. Very much like Sarkeesian's bread and butter comes from creating divisions within gamers. Um, and at least sorry. these people belong to the atheist community. They're actually atheists. Uh, Sarkeesian is a complete poser. Yeah, that is that is one interesting yeah. uh, difference. It seems that we have a lot of people that are involved right now kind of um, uh, peacocking out in front of uh, mainstream media and drawing attention to themselves, who aren't who aren't um, who aren't gamers, who don't uh, who don't seem to like the medium at all, and I, I do think that would be weird, especially in the relation to atheism plus. If it had been just somebody walking in off the street and being like, you know what, I'm going to do this, and if you guys aren't with it, you're all horrible people. But um, <laughs> well, actually, there, there is 
one thing that they have in common, and that's all that they're essentially talentless um, wastes of skin. Well, that's not entirely true. With Sarkeesian, she's actually a fairly decent salesperson, so to speak. But well, she's you know, a, if you're a like, very good huckster. Yeah, she's very good. Yeah, at, you, oh no, it's very polished. If you watch one interview from the next, it is like it, it's from Rogue. Uh, no, uh, I would disagree with that. You take a look at her XOXO talk. Uh, she's That's basically just reading it off the off the prompter, which is very inconveniently put down by her feet. So she really does look very awkward like that. It, it was pretty oh. awkward. She was. She seemed to be um, extraordinarily nervous, even though she was at the it, what seemed to be the epicenter of uh, one of these kind of cults you had you had uh, the people in that audience seem to really have drank the Kool-Aid at XOXO Fest and yeah. not only that whiter than Congress 90% male <laughs> I mean it, it's the amount of projection here is incredible that you know no it, it, it it's everyone else who is sexist now come and, and atheism plus was exactly the same you know we want inclusivity we want gays and People of color and all this sort of shit, and you you take a look at their their clique conference, which is is Skepticon, and again it's whiter than Congress. No, if you, if you want to talk about crown drawing, look at Sarkeesian's events versus when Black Hag did that talk about how to uh, leverage social media. Oh, that was hilarious! And like, so she ends up basically talking to an empty room. <laughs> Uh, it really was quite literally. She was talking to an empty room on how to effectively use social media to promote a message, right? So I guess this is the fundamental difference: is Sarkeesian's a far better snake oil salesman than and the the people that we had in Atheism Plus. They weren't good at anything, not even selling snake Bullshit. oil. <laughs> yeah. Well, aristocrat. What was that video you put up a while back where you said um, the conference and these are the people who weren't there? Um, I, I would. I'm gonna guess that's the. Are you talking about the more recent one, the Gamergate Part One video? Uh, yeah, it was one of the, it was one of those on Gamergate, and we pan out to the audience, and it's like mostly an empty room. Oh, oh, that was um, that actually was not XOXO Fest with Anita Sarkeesian. Uh, there was a um, gathering, uh, Penny Arcade Expo, so PAX. And Zoe Quinn was gonna give a speech. This is right as okay. this information is coming out, and about ten people showed up, and it was just a massive hall with all these chairs. And there was nobody in it. Just nobody showed up to listen to her talk about making a uh, HTML version of Choose Your Own Adventure and call it a video game, a reading experience that wasn't really a game to set out with. But I, I, think I mean, that, that, go ahead. This is what really pisses me off: is these people uh, seem to be laboring under the delusion that. Gaming should be an educational experience where you are in touch with everyone's emotions and all this sort of thing. And it's like, it's just bullshit. You know, I, I play video games so I can be whatever, God Slayer or, or, hit, or you know, the seven foot tall genetically engineered Spartan <laughs> going, blowing away aliens with, with laser rifles. Uh, you, I, I don't want a game to educate me about depression because I don't. It, uh, that's not why I play games. And it, exactly. it, 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 when I whole... want to get educated on on a subject, I go read academic literature. You, oh. don't, play, you don't play video games called Depression Quest? Are you sure? Yeah, I thought I, that was um, the best resource. You know, if there were a video game about mathematics, I'm a mathematician for those of you who don't know, I wouldn't play it. Uh, for one, it would not be a fun game. <laughs> 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 that's a given. But two... It's not. It's not the media. It's like people on YouTube who put up videos where it's just text. A complete misapprehension of the medium. Oh yeah, yeah I'm familiar with that. Um, well, I think uh, another thing I wanted to touch on, uh, com kind of comparing, I guess, the atheism plus thing and then the Gamergate thing. Never it seems like, and I th Thunderfoot, you had talked about this a little bit. It seems like they're more interested. They're not interested in really coming into a community and either creating solutions or building it up or making it better. They want to come in and essentially attack the community itself. That's yeah, they how they make up. their money. I did a yeah. video on this. They, they show up under the guise of, look, we just want to be part of the group, which, fine, you want to be part of the group, just pull your weight. I don't ask for much. Um, same thing with women in combat arms. Look, if, 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 you can, if you can hump the rock, fine. If not, shut the fuck up. But they show up in the guise of, we just want to be friends, we want to you know, hang out with you people, and then you say, okay, fine, come on in. 
And then about 30 seconds later, they're like, you know, I love everything about this place except for the way it's decorated, the people you let in, uh, the time of day that you're open. It's I love I love what you have going on here. Let's change every fucking detail about it to suit me. Yeah, I mean that that that's the thing. It's the me me me, and also uh, trying to actually change gaming from an industry that makes games that are fun to play to games that don't offend anyone. <laughs> and it, this is just like. From a financial point of view, this is just bloody crazy. It would be like saying, oh, well, um, in the movie industry, we want to make fun movies, but we don't ever want to see anyone killed because that's nasty, and that means that someone's going to lose their life, and uh, that, that that's really not appropriate things for people to be watching. And they, they basically... The, the reason people go to movies, the reason people play games, the people watch uh, music videos is because they're entertaining to watch. And a lot of that stems from, ironically, something that is so obvious that it's very easy to overlook, which is almost the diametric opposite point that Sarkeesian tries to make in her videos. You know, she tries to say that all of these tropes are actually, you know, destroying women and such like. And it, it's quite the opposite. The reason those tropes exist in the first place is because they are de facto successful storytelling uh, cliches, memes, tropes. Uh, the, the, people do want the women in stories to be beautiful. People do want the men in stories to be strong and decisive and all this sort of thing. You know, you, do, you don't ever see someone saying, well, what this story needs is a, a fat, ugly woman. Right, or... that's, that's exactly what it needs in the middle of it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, did you see, I guess, with the Atheism Plus thing, were they so far off track? Because the way that the, the, what's going on with Gamergate right now f feels... Did they? Do you think it would have reached a point where they would have gone after like core tenets of atheism, where they would have been like, "Hey, you know what? Uh, let's let's never attack a religion. Let's never uh, say we disagree because we don't hurt their feelings." There were atheists. That, that's, you, one of their conference policies said you weren't allowed to say anything that might offend people's religion, which is like, uh, yeah. Depending uh, on the <laughs> that something as strident as I'm not persuaded your religion is correct. I'm not a member of it. And, and this is the attitude they took, was we yes. don't want to hurt feelings. Yeah, one of their comments. Yeah, well, well, well by, by, by a lot of religions, um, uh, whatever, dogma, to actually deny God means that you're going to send those people to hell. Therefore, anyone who advocates no religion is advocating the infinite torture of people for eternity. And that's as offensive as it comes. So, Yeah, I mean, like, if... if if you just kill your neighbor, that's a finite act. But if there's an afterlife, and you kill them when they're like in a state of ungrace or whatever, that's an infinite punishment. And you couldn't. They don't want you to bring this up. That that's that's kind of what I find uh, uh, weird. It, it, that's what were they changing it into? What what did they hope atheism plus was going to look like? Were they? It was it going to just be social activism, and they're just using atheism to try to push that? Wait, wait. Uh, you are you are laboring under the fundamental misapprehension that these people are competent. <laughs> yes. Also, also, uh, let's let's not uh let's not do them the credit of saying activism. You know that that that. Oh, oh, how about a uh, con job? Okay. Slack slacktivism. Slacktivism. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Uh, like, oh my God, there's an injustice in the world. Let me turn to Twitter and I'll solve it real fast. Well, have they done anything? Did did Atheism Plus accomplish anything? Did they have any stated goal and actually accomplish something without tripping over their own two feet? I think one of their implicit goals was to provide an endless source of humor, and they've done wonderful jobs there. They, yeah, but unfortunately, it didn't last that long because uh, it was really dead on arrival. Is it? Do they? Let me see if they're still up. Uh, no, I, I think it's still there. It's just there are more moderators than posters. <laughs> it's reached that point, has it? Uh, it? It really is a ghost town. Um, all in all, how long would you say this lasted from the the very beginning where it started picking up momentum until where it just everybody's like, okay, they, they've fallen so flat on their face, there's nothing they're ever going to do. So the natural frequency is I think it was about 18 months from Elevator Gate to Atheism Plus. 
Um, and from then it was very you know, atheism plus basically died on its died on its feet. It uh, it went absolutely nowhere, and I can only hope that Gamergate takes the shortcut and uh, one of these losers pro just please just suggest that we have Gamer Plus. I mean, it, it would just be such a gift. I, 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 I would did that. <laughs> I mean, uh, p part of me wants to egg them into it. You know, it's like, well, why wouldn't you advocate for Gamer Plus? You know, don't you think that we ought to be gamers plus? We, uh, <laughs> uh, we, are, we are against the discrimination against women. Uh, don't you think that's a good thing? Why uh, wouldn't you want that unless you want the sexist and the misogynist in gaming. <laughs> uh, I, I'm at their site right now, and uh, there are three registered users online, one of which is the Bing bot, the other is the Google bot, and then someone named Mocha. Who died at their computer uh, <laughs> three years ago and uh, just hasn't signed out yet. <laughs> Most users ever online was 136 on Monday, October 8th, 2012, which is, I think, the first month it was up. Well, and I, I think an, another thing to raise... I, 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 run the whole moment again. How many? 136. And really? how many do we have watching this? Yeah, uh, 4,354. There we go. That, that cool. gives you an, uh, an idea. <laughs> it's quite, it's quite uh, a bit higher. Um, to give you an idea, I have uh, one math video, a calculus video on an obscure topic that has more uh, views that just about as many views as their entire website. Really? Yeah. How many views for their entire website? Well, I, I, oh God, I don't want to keep going back and giving them crap. <laughs> Bump up oh, oh, come on! I have a sense of generosity. Oh wait a second! Oh, atheists! Oh, here's their here's their manifesto. Atheism Plus is a safe space for people to discuss how religion affects everyone and to apply skepticism and critical thinking to everything, including social issues like. Sexism, racism, GLBT issues, politics, poverty, and crime. For more information, see our 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 uh, our fag, our fag. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Well, these, uh -huh. these these people have kept going though. I mean, that's that's one thing I think uh, people in Gamergate probably are, are going to encounter. Um, e even if this gets stopped and the the corruption gets dealt with, and these people get called on on what they're doing, you still have people like even after athe or atheism plus, you still have PZ Myers, you still have Rebecca Watson running around. But do you think the damage done to them from the the horse and pony show that they put on is pretty much permanent? Oh, right. PZ can't recover from this. Sorry. P PZ, the, no, the, 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 I don't think that they can. Re they would have to really pull a rabbit out of the hat to recover from this. So that I would mostly agree with is that uh, they they capitally backed the wrong horse on this one. Um, which is an irony, seeing as you know they they're at a site called Free Thought Blog. <laughs> um, yeah, where you, uh, yeah, as long as you agree with us, you can uh, have as many free thoughts as you want. Yeah, it seemed to very it seemed to be quite a bit of groupthink. It, it kind of is an, a social justice warrior mentality. Of if you either agree with us or uh, you're horrible, and it has to be a hundred percent. It can't be a degree. You can't vary a little bit from anything. Yeah, but this for me, is, yeah, Rebecca Watson really does seem to be more or less finished in this, and uh, she never really bought anything to the forum anyway, right? The thing that she bought to the forum is she took her clothes off for a calendar once and elevator gate. That that that's almost her entire resume here, right? <laughs> so when you when you're looking at you know what are the achievements. What has she ever done? It's pretty thin. You take a look at people like Sarkeesian, and again, it's 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 really pretty thin. Um, you take a look at her background traffic, and she gets big spikes for her videos. And I've never really understood quite how she manages that, but she does anyway. Um, and then it drops off to really a, a quite a low background that. Her videos are not what you would call long tail. 
Right. The, I think the, I, I think I'd speculate the reason Sarkeesian gets a traffic bump is it has to do with the journalist collusion stuff. They want to push out that narrative. So every time a video of hers comes out, it gets linked 14 times in every article they write about it. Like, here's Anita's new video, here's Anita's new video, here's Anita's new video. Or there's some new threat or some horrible no. thing that's happened, and we need to obviously go watch it to make sure that we don't turn into horrible sexist uh, mass killers. But this is the thing. Um that when she actually goes and gives her talks, they seem to be very much of a muchness about basically how hard it is to be Anita Sarkeesian. And that I see as having a very limited shelf life. That, you know, if... Uh, how many times can you actually deliver the same talk? You know, here's me giving my TED talk, whatever it is, four years... I forget how many years ago it is now. And now here she is four years later giving basically exactly the same talk. Here's some people who said nasty things about me on Twitter. Uh, I mean, how long is it before your brand image essentially becomes the professional victim? Because that's essentially what happened to Rebe with Rebecca Watson. Now, she was completely incompetent when it comes to actually putting a, a civilized face on this, which is why, you know, when she puts up this video basically saying all men... In uh, all YouTube male atheists are, are dicks, or, or they have to call women cunts at least with a certain frequency, otherwise they become manginas. And these things are so universally and grotesquely offensive, especially when you put them at the beginning of a charity video. The um, yeah, that that sort of thing does become your brand image. Sarkeesian is at least smart enough to keep her mouth shut. Um, on on matters like that, but it still is that her core message is that of a professional victim. That's what gets her the majority of her traffic. It it seems to me that you know when you take a look at how much traffic she gets for the you know uh, tropes versus women. They put it, pull in a lot of traffic, but it, I would I would estimate that she gets an order of magnitude more, and certainly when it comes to donations, probably an order of magnitude more when she's the professional victim versus when she is, if you like, doing what she's actually meant to be doing, which is linking uh, why these sexy women in video games is actually making society sexist. Which of course, yeah, I mean, the whole premise of her video series is bullshit, but she gets a shitload more traffic for when she's actually the professional victim. Right. They make themselves the, uh, <clears throat> sorry, they make themselves the uh, the story. That's that's yeah. the con. It's not what I'm talking about. It's me. It's totally me. Everybody look at me. I need money. Give me attention. Look how oppressed I am. Me, 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 me. Absolutely. And you need no better example then, you know, Sarkeesian was basically just, she puts out her latest tropes versus women, basically drops off the radar. Uh, you know, if you actually sort of follow the statistics on her site, that's very much the way that it looks. And then she does this thing where she cancels her talk for reasons that are at best highly dubious. Um, and she gets this massive bump from it. Well, I, I was going to ask... And, and, and to people who are not uh, like you or me or anyone here, to people who have not kept up to speed with this, and all they see is the mainstream media presentation, then what, what, is your, what, what sort of opinion are you going to form about Gamergate if that's all you've seen about it? Yeah, that, that, that's very true. Um, uh, this was something I forgot to bring up, people bringing it up in chat. Um, they wanted to have you guys talk about or, or comment on uh, Matt Dillahunty, uh, if I'm saying his name right. I agree with Matt Dillahunty. Is that, uh, was, wasn't the story that he had tried to prove there wasn't censorship and ended up getting censored? Yeah, 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 okay. Uh, oh, that was hilarious. Yeah, I, I was... <laughs> he, he decided, because he's, uh, he's a bit, he was a big enough name, that uh, he would he would make a, a sobriquet uh, and go in under that and, and show that everything on Atheism Plus is on the up and up, and if you go in there and you say reasonable things, you'll be treated reasonably. So he made the username uh, Curious. And 
this lasted a couple of exchanges before he finally said, "Look, essentially, look, motherfuckers, I'm Matt Dillahunty. And someone responded to that by saying, oh, yeah, sure you are. And so then he gets on <laughs> under his real name uh, to, to prove that it's Matt Dillahunty, and they ban him. <laughs> so that, did, that didn't turn out too well for him with his, uh, yeah. his, his theory that, no, they don't, I, they're not... No, so no, 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 I don't think you got the sequence on that quite right. I think the way that it worked is they banned him, and then they said he was Matt Dillahunty, and then they banned his second account, which he'd made under his real name. No, no, he, he was curious. He said that he was Matt. He said, this is Matt. You, you should know who you're talking to. This is Matt Dillahunty. And they're like, yeah, right. Uh, you know, sure you are. Okay. It was like when uh, geneticist Don Kane left a, uh, a comment on uh, P.C. Meyer's blog on, on Fringula. And he was talking about uh, essentially the, um, the phenotype being the, 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 the visible features of, of, an, uh, of an animal. It's... Uh, mm -hmm. To, to include his behaviors and why it is that more that women uh, are more drawn to going to the churches than men are, and he said it was something about the phenotype, and that they were you know P.C. Myers blog uh, idiot commenters are responding, um, you know oh the phenotype doesn't deal with the behaviors that you see of, a, of an animal essentially things of that nature, and he responded goes oh I'm, I forgot to mention uh, I'm actually a geneticist we just call this the wild type and he goes on a little bit and then they come back to like oh those big big words and you think you're so smart, you can't get away with showing up to a biologist's website and pretending that you know genetics. And another person said, I want Don Cain out of the genetics uh, boat now. And it took <laughs> these hires a couple of days before he finally responded by saying, yes, Don Cain is actually a professional geneticist. He's a damn good one. He's a friend of mine. And his use of the word phenotype was perfectly correct. Uh, it, it took him days before he could, he could muster up the balls to discipline his, his, what he calls his horde. Well, what was Dill Hunty's response to this? So he comes out and says, I, I'm really who I am. They, they don't buy into it. Does he still defend them? Uh, does he oh, say, oh, my God, they're wrong? No, he, uh, that, that minor incident notwithstanding, he was still like, you know, atheist and pluses, you know, three bags full, rah, 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 it's a great thing, social justice, you know, that kind of shit. And I, I, I was talking with him, and I, I said, you know, what I think an honest person would say here is when they try to do a blind experiment and they get the con contrary result that they expected, uh, a result that's consistent with my proposition, that they would say, you know, uh, you guys have a point, but he couldn't do that. So he just had to keep backing them. So a lot of them actually go into, uh, they try and defend it by um, saying that feminism uh, is just for the equal treatment for women. That's all that it means. Yes. And for me, I, I, and I think for everyone else, we're a hell of a lot more pragmatic than that, that you actually deal populate with populations based on the sort of spokespeople and the behavior of those populations. And when these people have both financially and by popularity elected people like uh, Rebecca Watson... Amanda Marcotte, uh, Brianna Wu, Zoe Quinn, Anita Sarkeesian, when these That's are the de facto spokespeople for uh, feminism, I think it's reasonable to say that uh, they're fucking nuts. Um, <laughs> and and, and to, to actually sort of, sort of portray this as all these people want is for women to be treated as people is is it's just bollocks. I mean, is that, that's just um, a, a weak ass cop out. Yeah, no, one of one of the uh, the rhetorical tricks that they like to pull is. If if you have some position that has say five propositions in it, you know, four of them are reasonable. Uh, Women are people, black should be treated equal, whites, blah, blah, blah. And then proposition number five is something like, and we should exterminate the Jews. And so you say, well, whatever that movement is, here it's feminism we're talking about, but it could be anything. And you say, well, I don't, uh, I'm, not, I'm not on board with that, that movement. I'm not on board with that label. What they'll say is, oh, so you, you have an issue with proposition number one. So to translate that into, into real terms, uh, some guy called into the atheist experience, Matt Dillahunty's TV show, and he said, "Well, I'm not, I'm not a feminist." And the response was, "Oh, so you don't agree that women are people?" As though that is the only proposition that exists within feminism. It isn't. That proposition is unobjectionable by everyone. I don't, I've never met a person who thinks that women 
belong to some other species. I've never met a person who doesn't think women are fully human in all respects. But then you have Same propositions that deal with things like the patriarchy, um, hierarchy, and, and things of uh, intersectionality, and all these other the, all these other um, propositions that get built into it. And it's perfectly acceptable for a person to say, "Look, I agree with propositions one and two, but I don't I don't agree with propositions three, four, five, and six, and therefore I don't I'm not taking the label." But their response will be that you disagree with what they want to pretend is the only extant proposition, which is what Thunderfoot just said, only even more uh, wordy and. Well, and, and I think that's what we saw on um, with Gamergate, especially with the hashtag that kind of popped up alongside it, not your shield, was people that got sick of listening to this that kind of argumentation where the only reason you're against what we're saying about the gaming community is because you hate you know minorities, you, you hate women, you hate gay people, you, you hate transsexuals. Yeah. And they got so sick of listening to that deflection. And so did, again, I mean, gaming is made up of... Anybody can play a game. There's nothing prohibitive about it. Anybody of any type, any ideology, any race, any sexual orientation, it doesn't matter. It's a, you know, it's a fucking game. Blind uh, and, people can't and, play Zoe Quinn's game. <laughs> that's that's very, she needs to check her privilege. That's true. <laughs> that's very able. Well, uh, yeah, ab absolutely. Uh, she created the game that uh, uh, consciously maybe, maybe, discriminates against blind people. That might be. Uh, I, you know, I didn't see that coming myself. I I know it's yeah, it was very it was very um horrible that she she did that. I mean maybe that's why they're depressed, they're blind, and now her game can't help them because she's an ableist person. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's a horribly vicious cycle of nobody being able to get treated. Look, there's not anyone who can't play this oppression of Olympics game. And like I say to feminists when they tell me that uh because I'm white and I'm not obviously gay, uh to some people <laughs> The, you know they'll they'll say things and I'm like look I've done more for gay when was the last time you sucked a gay man's dick huh fuck you <laughs> get, get out there do for gay men honey I do well and that I mean that is kind of the mentality too I, I've seen it in Gamergate I saw it in atheism plus even when Occupy Wall Street kind of got co-opted in other groups it is a, it's an Olympic event of who can be the exist. most oppressed they'll respond by saying that I'm not like I'm pretending to be gay because it's so fashionable or something or or but you're a bot not, <laughs> or sock puppet. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not gay enough. I'm like, <laughs> I can go all the way down. What, I mean, how gay do I have to be? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize it came in degrees, but okay. Yeah, um, you made a video where you're saying that that people and, and by the way, if you want to talk about the oppression Olympics, go to like a, a, a some of these uh, campus meetings for. Uh, Gay Actually, well, whilst, well, whilst we mention Olympic, uh, uh, Prussian Olympics, mm -hmm. uh, we got to uh, at least put out the shout out for the shoe on head video for the. Oh Olympics. god, she's Olympics. awesome! Yeah, Which that was really it good. Was awesome. Yeah, did shoe on head's video was great. Did you, did you see her last video? The what? Oh, that the one with the traffic cone. Yes, yes, she's got the road. Yeah. <laughs> So there's the um, people getting all irate about rape in video games, which, if you think about it, is just so surreal that you're getting worried about rape in video games when the core objective of many of these video games is to kill as many people as quickly as possible. Ah, but you don't understand. And that doesn't that doesn't bother you, but the fact that. Um, uh, someone's modded some characters to air hump things. Um, yeah, the, 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 this this is terrible. You, you don't you don't understand that that rape is actually worse than murder to these people. And by rape, of course, they don't mean just what you think of when you think of rape, which I resent. And I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, but the the video is people air humping, and the person the person doing the article said this is a this is a realistic representation of rape, and it's got like a traffic cone floating over the person's head. So she puts this traffic cone on her head. She starts yeah. bouncing around in her backyard. <laughs> <laughs> you 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 think that's um, you want to talk about how how long and well the, the termites have dying in nineteen in, in the quoting nine, Hitchens and win win win. <laughs> they what? You see how far the termites have uh, eaten and how deep and how well they've dined. It's a quote from Hitchens, but. It, he yeah. might have got it from somewhere else. I don't know. Yeah, well, uh, actually, a lot of his best phrases he he clipped out from elsewhere. But anyway, um, in in the mid '90s, they the the Congress passed a law and President Clinton signed it. And the the case where you can listen to this law being litigated in the Supreme Court is United. Uh, I'm sorry, it's Ashcroft against Free Speech Coalition. And the Solicitor General, a very 
uh, conservative man, uh, Paul Clement, George Bush's Solicitor General, actually argued that all Congress did was ex extend the extant definition of child pornography to include new kinds of child pornography that involved no children <laughs> and no pornography. It was virtual child pornography. This is shit that, that is taken. This is one of the reasons I oppose femin uh, feminists every chance I get. They actually do have some influence. They can get a law like that passed where a person can sit around and create on a computer representations of people doing things that you don't want people doing and claim that that's just as bad as actually raping children and videotaping it. Because there's no, there's no distinction. I, I've noticed with a lot of SJW um, rhetoric that everything is taken to the extreme. That, you know, an offense is a hundred times worse uh, through their eyes. It's not just, a normal person would define rape, uh, you know, uh, with pretty clear terms, legal terms, or they have a moral definition, but they understand what it is. But when you talk to an SJW, it starts to include things like stair rape and, uh, you know, uh, not asking consent to look at somebody or, you know, accidentally bumping into somebody walking down a hallway. Like, it can be all these things, you know, uh, micro-trigger transgressions and all this crazy shit. Microaggressions. Now, I, I've got to share something with you on the microaggressions thing, because us men have been suffering from uh, that sort of microaggressions for years. It's called nagging. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you put forward? <laughs> um, the, you know, there's a joke about that. Uh, this... this uh, this guy goes in to get a divorce, and he's talking to his uh, divorce. This is in the South. He's talking to his divorce lawyer, and he wants to get a divorce from his wife. And his and the lawyer's like, "Was she a nagger?" And he says, "No, but the guy she's fucking is." <laughs> 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 but oh, by the way, have you heard the? Uh, you're from the UK, so maybe you're familiar with this. The the recent proposal in um, the Com House of Commons for there to be separate train cars for women. That's something what? that's put forward, really? Yeah, and I thought, actually, guys, you now, should get on board with this. You, you could label like one naggers only, and <laughs> well, it's like it's like the Japanese uh, transit yeah. system where they've got their own yeah. car you set could, aside. You could put the women's so, trains leaving fifteen minutes later, so they have extra time to you know dawdle around in the bathroom or whatever they do. And you can ride. Anyone in see? Did anyone see Sarkeesian's famous first Bayonetta video? Yes, where she completely got everything wrong. And not only did she get completely everything wrong, she also suggests that harassment in America is so bad that you need uh, women-only cars following such wonderfully progressive countries, and I shit you not, she lists Egypt there. <laughs> Are you serious? I'm not serious. You take a look at it. She suggests <laughs> Egypt as a progressive country that is taking women's rights seriously by going down the route of segregation. It's just insane. I, 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 well, not only that. I mean, can, can you imagine if... Um, you know, let, let's, let's, yeah, uh, uh, the, the black people are so oppressed in America that we, we need to <laughs> have set their own part of the bus. <laughs> this is like the reverse of Rosa Parks. <laughs> I will not ride with those white folks. Yeah, you know, the harassment of black people has gotten so bad that they need their own part of the bus. I'm just waiting for her to jump up on a table and scream, Union! Well, you know, you, you bring that up, but that um, Penny Ar Ar Arcade Expo had talked about setting up a diversity lounge because th this is so weird. They're, they preach one thing, but their their rhetoric always leads back to things we've already seen, like segregation laws and you know prohibitive uh, speech. Uh, so Pax had said, oh, you know, it's really hard if you're um, a minority or if you're gay to go to um, a gaming event. So we're going to create. They created a separate room called the diversity lounge where different people who weren't, you know, white straight males playing games could hang out and feel safe. So they gave them their own back of the bus. What's that? Like back of the they, they, look, they all look alike. You're all the same. That's, yeah, that's very true. No, I mean, if you're a terrible. white male, obviously, uh, like me, you want some pussy. Uh, yeah, obviously, you're, uh, you're going to harass everybody at an event um, because you can't control yourself, so we have to set up segregated areas, diversity lounges, to protect people. Yeah, it's no, just not segregated. That sounds, that sounds a little racist. Too true? Yeah, it sounds too <laughs> accurate. Is, uh, is why they don't like to call it. So that's why it's the diversity lounge instead of the segregated room. Yeah, uh, there's a diversity center at my campus, and I'm like, <laughs> I walk in there, and it's I'm like, oh, yeah, this is diverse. Look at all these white people on the computer. 
<laughs> Jeez. Well, um, yeah, I, thanks for both of you coming out to do this. Um, I, I appreciate uh, you coming out to do the stream. I, like I said, I wanted to talk about kind of Atheism Plus, and I wanted to give Gamergators, I guess, an idea that this has happened before, and these people are amateurish, and they will boggle it up, and that's what we've seen with the gaming press. They're just really arrogant and stupid, and they continually shoot themselves in the foot. And I thought it was kind of good to see that that happened uh, once before, and that they fell flat on their asses doing it, uh, which is kind of, you know, uh, inspiring. Yeah, and, dealing with this. and just like with um, Occupy as well, they infected Occupy. What? Watch Mike Roo's video on that. It's actually a good video. Yeah, if you can um, give me a link. I'll put that in the description, too, of the video so people can check that out. Because um, I think that would be good for them to watch as well, to kind of get an idea of what happened there. Yeah, um, and I would like to you know, just say thank you for giving me a platform where I could finally come out. Oh yeah, hey, you know, uh, it's safe space, right? You know, uh, we don't yeah. want to be too problematic for you. I uh, wanted to protect you from anybody <laughs> who's going to say mean yeah. things. Yeah, exactly, because you know I'm a big pussy. Uh, but <laughs> on, on, on on the note of um, lang language and whatnot, these people do shoot themselves in the foot. But the the thing that works for them is they stay on their message, and eventually, if you hear it enough times, it becomes familiar and comfortable. And these people, not necessarily the Gamergate people, but, but feminism uh, writ large, they, they do have some influence, and they can get stupid laws passed that get people put in prison. So it's important that you pay attention to this and listen to the link. When they talk about rape, and I, re I resent that I have to do this now, rape, child porn, whatever you want to call it, uh, pick a topic, that when someone says that, for instance, if, if I were to learn that a person moving in next to me were a sex offender, what I would want to think of is, oh, this person has raped someone. But now I'm in the awkward position of having to ask. When you say sex offender, do you mean sex offender or sex offender? And I resent that I have to do that. And that's one of the problems uh, th that attends this type of social justice warriorship. It is the bastardization of the language such that terms that should be strong and should have very finite, crystallized, unambiguous uh, meanings no longer do. Yeah, and yeah, like the watering down of rape to basically mean I had remorseful drunken sex. Um, I've been raped thousands of times. Yeah, I know, and for me too. Uh, and <laughs> I think for their work, it was, wonder, it was wonderful every time. Um, I wish it happened to me <laughs> more often. Um, <laughs> I have I have to ask, Mister Aristocrat, mm -hmm. how old is your cock, and what's this notion about the? I was offended that some people asked me about you're giving me a pearl necklace as though I don't swallow. That is offensive, motherfuckers. They, they need to check that privilege. Yeah, I, I still haven't heard the end of that. I, I'm a very naive, innocent person, and so when that got... When I thought I was describing a piece of jewelry, apparently it's a slang term for something else, and so I promised Milo a pearl necklace, and now they're insistent that I deliver that with my, you know, a mysteriously aged dick. So... <laughs> so, so I'm my ambiguously aged, <laughs> aged dick. <laughs> But let, let me just add one, one, one brief thing here. Sure. That, yeah, f following up on what Justicar was saying, you know, mm -hmm. I think it's actually really important that you you do tackle this stuff, and a lot of it goes back to this. It's almost a tautology, but you get the society you deserve. You live in the society that you deserve. If you don't actually uh, do anything, nothing will change, or even worse, that the these parasites that you've been infected with will just grow. If they are left unopposed, then you know, there, there's only one one place that this can go to, and that's that it's going to get worse. Um, now, it's my big hope that uh, when you take a look at Gamergate so far, uh, Sarkeesian has I, uh, played the game, I think, well. Uh, you know, the her central core of her entire video series is bullshit, but she plays the victim on point and she does it well. Um, if you take a look at the others, you take a look at Zoe Quinn, she's an idiot. She's she's like Watson. You know, she, um, and the same with Brianna Wu as well, is that um, uh, I, I don't see these people have a long shelf life. No, I'd, I'd agree with that, and I think that's a, it's a, a good place to, to end it. Yeah, I mean, I've said it before at the start of this, and I think other people share the sentiment, that um, it may, to some people, just be games journalism, you know, but it, it's a, a touchstone for a larger issue, and if you can't deal with corruption, if you can't deal with this kind of influence at a small level, 
uh, I don't know how you uh, expect to affect it on a larger level and in more meaningful ways. So if you can't clean up games journalism, it's going to be hard to say, let's go clean up banking and uh, the government and mainstream media. Yes, and, and this is a point that this is a point that I've made to you know my colleagues who will frequently actually sort of say, "Why are you actually wasting your time with this?" <laughs> and yeah, you know, the the answer has to be that you take a look at uh, how many times this will repeated itself. I, my yeah, my reckoning is this is the third time that an organisation has been infected with this sort of social justice warrior bullshit. And it's com it's taken what was essentially a cohesive and relatively functioning community and utterly destroyed it. That's basically what it did with a, a atheism. That's what it did with Occupy. And uh, now just look at the mess that it's made of the gaming community. And this is real consequences. I mean, you had this in one of your videos, Aristocrat, that there was some games developer who they basically they've now become almost fearful that they're going to offend someone's other kin or some <laughs> shit like this. And, and they've now got to, you know, previously all they had to worry about was making it a good game, a game that people enjoyed, good game with good, art, good artwork. Now it's a fucking minefield for them. It absolutely is. It, it, it absolutely is. It's screwed with the industry and it's screwed with the, um, <clears throat> the readership and uh, the, the consumer base. I know you're trying to get us off. I've got one one last important no, no, thing. No, 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 I'm, trying to, I'm trying to save you okay. from something that you inadvertently have stepped in that you didn't realize. When you said you get the uh, the society that you deserve, I'll add the caveat in there for you for social justice warriors. He does not mean that people in North Korea deserve to be oppressed. He means when you live in a free, open society. Good point. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. In, a, in a democracy. But uh, of talking about. Uh, Financial consequences, because mm -hmm. you know, unlike atheism and whatever Occupy, there is actually an industry here, gaming industry, which is multi-billion-dollar industry. Yada yada yada. How many sponsors have pulled away? I know that Intel walked away. Who else has done that? Uh, Scott Trade, Unilever, Intel, UAT. Uh, that's Ooh. I think the University of Advanced Technology, and then just recently Mercedes-Benz. Fuck yeah. That's quite. A, that's a hell of a lot of uh, advertisers to walk away. Not small ones either. Intel and Mercedes are pretty pretty big. Um, uh, Intel, yeah, and and uh, the pharma. What was the pharma company you had? Uh, no, the the ones so far were Scott Trade, Unilever, UAT, Unilever. Intel. Yeah, there we go. Unilever. There we go. I just put a link to that micro video on um, Occupy. All right, fantastic. Well, thanks again, guys, for coming out. Uh, for everybody who's watched and wants to check these guys out, I have their info in the description. Uh, Thunderfoot, Just a Car, I appreciate you giving me a couple hours of your time here to kind of talk about this. Thanks for having yes, us on. It's, it's been great. No, yeah, it's, it's, it's been good great time. Fun. Thank you, and just to let everyone know, I will be investigating the age of his dick, and I'll let you know when I have some information. That's some investigative reporting you'll never see in games journalism. See, that, that's the <laughs> get-up-and-go gumption that you need to have to be a good reporter. <laughs> Thank you for the team. All right, stream. Well, you guys have a good night, and again, thanks, you guys, for coming out. Okay, cool. We're on air. Uh, welcome, everybody. I thought I'd do a Gamergate tonight stream due to the immense amount of happenings over the last week and being kind of out of the loop, so I brought some people on. We've got the Ralph Retort, Sargon of Akkad, Rogue Star, and uh, Jade, and we're going to be talking about just the monumental victories of the last week because there have been so many it's, it's almost hard to believe compared to the last two months the momentum has picked up uh, magnitudes more than it was previously so does somebody want to start us off what what happened today social justice meltdown what has been going on the past couple of days Just the absolute denial of reality what is going on with them well, that's their typical MO. They refuse to address what actually happens in reality. They love to pretend that things are one way when they're completely the opposite. And I think seeing that in a corporate way is fucking amazing. Watching Gawker blow up is amazing. But literally, right, Feminist Frequency's latest tweet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, it's not a coincidence that it's always men and boys committing mass shootings. The pattern is connected to ideas of toxic masculinity in our culture. Full Macintosh, right fucking there. That was obviously written by him. You know. 
Well, <laughs> have you noticed her approach after the Utah event where she started talking about guns? I know that they've hinted or they've talked about, kind of put feelers out about wanting to make it a culture war, uh, using that kind of language to define it as a culture war. If, that, if you go back and read the, um, I'll, I'll tweet Devin Sutra's Guide to Ending Gamers. Read it. It reads like a battle, like battle instructions. Well, that's that's that's, that's where the that's that's where the money is, though. I mean, I think to somebody like a Sarkeesian or McIntosh, gaming is a springboard into bigger issues, and I think you're going to start to see that over the next couple of weeks as they try to make it into some other issue or something bigger or more encompassing. Yeah, so, yeah actually, I've got well, a the theory about this. Um, well, let's hear it. I, yeah, well, it, of basically how to define it. Um, I actually spent all afternoon writing a script about this, um, and I don't normally write scripts. Um, basically, I think this this culture is effectively it, it really is like Marxist influence, you know, feminist radical feminist Marxist influence, and it seems to be some sort of sort of you know the sort of San Francisco Bay sort of area because a lot of these people do always say Bay Area on the thing, and it seems to be that kind of it seems to be a locus for it, you know. It seems it, it, they always move there and congregate there. And because I mean, we it's it's not a feminist culture, you know. There are, there are plenty of feminists opposed to this culture. Mm -hmm. It's sensible, factual people who are concerned about things that aren't Marxism, um, and uh, and yeah, and so basically they they use all the sort of deceptive means that we've all seen to attain the gatekeeper position. They always talk about gatekeeping. You know, Leigh Alexander's XOXO fishing. She goes, oh, they, they, they make them, they try to be the gatekeepers of gaming. And it's like, well, it's either that or you're the gatekeepers of gaming. And you're the people who hate, you're the people who aren't gamers. So why the fuck would we want you as the gatekeepers of gaming, you know? Well, it's all about, yeah, it's about control. I mean, that's always, that's in their language. That's in their toxic ideology. It's this idea of what a social justice warrior, I've, I mean, people describe them as cultural Marxists. I've heard a lot of different terms. It's a rose by any other name, but they want power. They want prestige and position. And it's it's a con job. It's a fucking, you know, a snake oil salesman. It's a huckster. Yeah, These absolutely. people are, are frauds of the highest level. And I think it's interesting, too. I've noticed over the last, I, I guess, week, I've been out of the loop, like I said, but I have seen people putting up information. A lot of feminists are coming out now. And talking about social justice warriors and starting to <laughs> differentiate that, that I, don't, I don't think people understand how big of a deal that is. If you can get normal, you know what I mean, not not crazy SJWs, but just normal <laughs> feminists to come out and start talking about social justice warriors, you've won the battle. When they start saying we don't want these crazy fucks associated with us. Yeah, it, that, that's the thing. It seems to be like, and I don't know how else to put it, but this kind of like Bay Area culture, where it's it's just it's malignant, you know. It's insidious and malignant, and I think that they have reached enough of a critical mass. I mean, if you watch their XOXO talks, they are unrepentant. I, Leigh Alexander needs to be sectioned. You would, I would never, if I was doing what they were doing, I would never get up and be recorded saying, "Yeah, I'm openly biased. I've got an agenda to push. Sorry, this is a conspiracy." And it's just like, are you fucking mad? Well, isn't it shocking too how? I, when this first began, and I, I said this at the very beginning, these people are two things, supremely lazy and very arrogant. And both of those play into their ability to leave a trail. Just they drag their ass across the Internet. But they will say things no other sane human being would ever say. You have people like, was it Jen Frank at the um, IDGF where she had talked about giving inflated scores because she wanted people to get bonuses? Oh, that was Liana. Was that That's Liana? IGA. Oh, okay. For, yeah, my, my mistake. That was Liana. But you, you have people saying shit like this. Nobody in any other industry would ever say that. It would, well, just think about like what's happened from some just average gamer's perspective. He doesn't really go on Kotaku and all that much, right? So one day he goes on there, and they're on Gamma Sutra or wherever. You know, he's just I'm, you know I've got just got paid. I'm going to get a new new game, and he sees these articles. Gamers are over. Okay, well I'm not going to go to that website. Go to the next one. Gamers are over. Okay, I'm going to go to a different website. Gamers are over. And he's just like, man, what the hell's going on with these gamers are over? It's like, oh, there was this journalistic corruption, and instead of firing the people involved, all of the press decided that none of us exist anymore. Yeah, and how's that working out? Uh, yeah. Stephen, <laughs> St St Stephen Totillo, if you're watching this, how's that working out for you, asshole? You could have cleaned it up, couldn't you? You could have got off your fucking ass and done what an editor-in-chief does, but you didn't, did you? How, how does it feel watching every advertiser get stripped from your fucking website? Is that is that <laughs> good? Is that enjoyable? <laughs> But that's the that's the thing, isn't it? Because what they're doing is they're closing ranks to protect the culture. Oh, it's going to look yeah. How is that going to look on a resume? Do these people think anybody's going to hire them when they burn Gawker to the ground? When Polygon is bankrupt? 
when Gama Sutra is, uh, you know, at a fucking uh, garage sale because nobody wants to touch it, <laughs> do they think that somebody's going to be like, I want to hire the guy that made that happen? Let me, let me, let me hire Patricia Hernandez. She did such a great job. That's <laughs> why they're not. flailing. That's why they're flailing so hard now, though. That's why they're literally just pulling, saying the most ridiculous things. Stephen Schreier said that he compared us to Ebola today, didn't he? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's no normal person who doesn't know anything about. Somebody. By the way, did you know the gamers are the equivalent of Ebola, and they're worse than ISIS, and yeah. they're probably responsible for the Holocaust. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. We're we're. They call us ISIS because we strike terror in them, and they call we they call us Ebola because we're killing their ass. <laughs> Uh, Eichner said we were the mafia today. Also, yeah. they said we're the mafia. Really? Yeah, it's the mafia, not politics. Oh, yeah, we're yeah, we're, yeah. we're a mafia of autistic yeah. people. We're the Lisburgan Ostra. That's we're what we're KKK apparently too. He basically threatened any developer that that had anything to do with the Gamergate and said oh, it God, yeah. What was the guy? Some guy today tweeted, and I, I didn't think it was really him because it wasn't a verified account, but <laughs> apparently it is. It was a uh, the IGD. The yeah, yeah, I'm that's on that one right now. Actually, it's Ernest W. Adams. Yeah, that's he, right. um, he's one of the founders of IGDA, and IGDA is supposed to be—it's uh, supposed to be a lobby and organization for game developers. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it, there's talks that it's supposed yeah. to be a union and supposed to stick up for game developer rights. But right now, he's basically saying on Twitter, if you're an indie developer and you are supporting Gamergate, watch what you say. Your business is at stake, internet is forever. Well, yeah, could, like, could, somebody wow. in, could somebody in chat do me a favor? Could somebody take that tweet and send it to fucking David Jaffe, who has said from the very beginning that these people hold no power and that nobody's job is threatened and nobody in the industry <laughs> is threatened by any of this. Go show David Jaffe that, and I want to hear his fucking response to the guy saying, if you talk or if you're positive or pro-Gamergate, you're fucking done. Okay, this is what he said uh, specifically, Ernest. If you're an indie developer and you are supporting hashtag Gamergate, watch what you say. Your future business is at stake. Hashtag the internet is forever. That's what he said. Yeah, it is. The internet is forever, and these people are not. <laughs> we'll be around when they're gone, and their organizations are gone, and their companies are bankrupt. And it's it's not just him. Uh, Jonathan Blow has actually been on a tirade with, uh, you know, like hacking the NSA databases and also outing out a lot of Gamergate Anonymous, and also threatening aspiring game developers who support Gamergate. He's basically saying, we will out you, and we will blacklist you from the industry. You know, just go to Jonathan Blow's fucking feed, and you can see the whole fucking thing. And see, this is what drives me nuts. Uh, you have people like, don't get me wrong, I like, I like Jaffe. I know people have argued with him. I know he has a position people don't necessarily like. My problem with him is it just seems like he's not... He's disconnected from the reality of what's going on. These people all know each other. They fucking stick up for each other, and they will fuck with your career. And now they're being open about it. They're making statements saying they're going to do that. How can you sit on the fence with that? How can you be a moderate or a neutral when these people are saying shit like that? It boggles my mind. They won't let you. They, they. I mean, look at Boogie. You know, he. Look at his tweets. I saw him the other day. He was like, "Look, I've really, really tried to remain neutral, but I keep getting attacked for being neutral." And it's like, yeah, it's not Gamergate attacking for being neutral, is it? You know, it's. It, it, they, 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 it, they, like they're a hegemonic culture. They know that all of this comes crumbling down if they don't win. You know, they, they can't just exist in a sort of smaller state. Well, yeah, but what, but what's coming crumbling down? That that's the thing I think these people need to ask themselves. Like, if you're sitting on the fence, and you know you're you're worried about it collapsing, what's collapsing exactly? The corruption? Is it the nepotism and the cronyism? Like, you should want that to collapse. You would want an industry, whether it's reporting or game development, that's free, that lets an artist make the product they want to make, that lets somebody produce something they feel good about. But these people, they, they're fucking poison. They're poisoning our hobby. And yeah, I, I, this sitting on the fence shit isn't going to work. And, you know, like, Boogie, I feel bad for him. I, I think he should, you know, I, personally, I would like him just being pro-Gamergate, but he tried, he tried to be so nice. He tried to be so fucking nice and just say normal things, sensible things, and he got shit on by... Look at what they did to him at fucking NeoGAF, for Christ's sake. Exactly. They just tore into that poor fucker. He didn't deserve it. He didn't deserve anything like that. No, no one does. No one no one deserves what they throw at them. It, it drives me crazy, and they're, they're so... They talk about things like hegemonic masculinity. It's like, can we talk about hegemonic Bay Area fucking culture for a minute? Instead? <laughs> because that seems to be the real problem that everyone's having. You know? <laughs> it, it is. It's, it's way too condensed geographically. These people, it shouldn't be like that. It really shouldn't. And 
what uh, you know it, it makes me wonder like what what's the fucking point if you're if you're some kid and you're getting your degree and you're you want to fucking be a game developer look at the shit you got to deal with look at the fucking hoops you got to jump through you can't just make a game you got to agree that white male patriarchy is terrible and you know all this other fucking buzzword bullshit that's been dredged up from Tumblr and all you want to do is just make a video game what the fuck <laughs> yeah it's crazy it's fucking crazy and these the, the, I just can't believe the things they'll say. I just, I just, I am flabbergasted. I've just got so many fucking tweets on my fucking Twitter thing where I've just screen grabbed something insane, just like some logical contradiction or absurdity. I, I saw one of them say, "Well, it turns out you can have misogynist feminists." Then, oh, of course, because it's anybody not... that disagrees with groups that, or group think is obviously tainted somehow. You, you exactly. can't disagree with them, and if you do, you have a flaw. You can't be a feminist and not a social justice warrior. You internalize misogyny. You can't you can't be gay and not be a social justice warrior because obviously that's I don't know what uh, hidden heterosexuality. What would they call that? <laughs> I don't know. But that's that's the point, isn't it? When they say misogyny, they're not saying hatred of women. They're saying hatred of the Bay Area culture. You know, that's that's what they're attacking. If they if they're calling feminists misogynists because they're of a different culture, then. Well, and that's always that. That's been my point with these Tumblr. Like when I started doing the Tumblrisms videos, when I talked about SJWs and that particular website, that was I kept trying to drill that home. It doesn't matter what group it is. It could be any group: LGBT, fucking feminist, gamers. It doesn't matter. These people will fuck it up. They're not part of you. And if if you go against them, they'll destroy you. Yeah. And look look at what's happening to Gawker. Gawker is going to go bankrupt. It's going to burn to the ground. <laughs> I, I can't stress enough with with everybody that. This isn't just Gawker, because all, all their advertising is focused on Gawker Media. That the goes parent, towards yeah, the, uh, yeah, the parent company, Gawker. That goes to the Gawker blog, that goes to Kotaku, that goes to Defamer, that goes to Yeah, the, the basic asshole of the internet. If we win, that's a huge fucking win, guys. You know, we would have avenged fucking the Hateful Eight script when it leaked out, and everything else that Gawker Media has done. So everybody should, you know, take this seriously that we are fucking driving a blow to Gawker right now. Well, yeah. fucking send us a thank you. It's so <laughs> awesome. I want... Yeah, I want I to... I try here every guys. day. I just want that. Just every single day. Two. Two advertisers a day would be awesome or something. Well, you're, you're going to reach that point. I mean, it, it's picked yeah. up... Some it's snowballing to the point now where it was just an advertiser maybe every few weeks, then one every week, then you had a few every day. Um, because they feel every day. Yeah, the more that do it, the more that come out and say we're we're done. We don't want to be a part of your your company. We don't we don't want to associate with the stuff that you're doing. It's killing our brand. You're hurting our market. Um, the more they come out and do that, and again, Intel led the way. I mean, Intel really fucking look at the heat they took from these people for daring to say they don't want to advertise on a site that's shitting on the people <laughs> that buy their products. Yeah, and I think they called them crazy and idiots yesterday. I think yeah. Yeah, I couldn't yeah. believe that article. That was just <laughs> that was a horrible article. That was just who approved that? I just, I guess Max Ray did. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then you got people like what is it, Sam Biddle, that basically yeah. shot a bullet in Gawker. Now he's not working at Valleywag anymore. I, I saw a tweet saying that you know that was a decision before Gamergate. My ass, yeah. he got booted out to the curb because <laughs> he cost some fucking money. I don't know. Do you think he'll come back in two weeks, like Jen Frank or something? Oh no! Obviously, he's got a sterling reputation. Everybody wants to hire the guy that lost Mercedes Benz. <laughs> Please come work in my fucking advertisement. Yeah. Uh. I, I I just you know I I I think the thing that's floored me the most is I, I've been looking through the Gamergate tag and kind of reading up on some of the stuff I missed, and it seems like people are killing it. Like people are knocking this shit out of the ballpark. So I'm, I'm wondering, like, well, there's, like, a little bit of infighting here and there, and there's a little bit of doubt here and there. Like, you guys have... All the people that have taken part in this Gamergate thing, you have crushed a multi-million dollar company. You've, you've stood up against the biggest PR blitz you're probably ever going to see from mainstream media and walked away unfucking scathed. Nobody's done that. Occupy Wall Street fell on their ass. Anonymous didn't... They weren't able to do it. But for some reason, a bunch of spurgy gamers can. That's just amazing <laughs> to me. I, I like the fact yeah. that taking down Gorka is a service to the Western world. You know, there is no one who won't be in our debt after that. <laughs> you know, you don't get as much. Hey, wait, wait, wait. As they're as they're saying he got he promoted. He got promoted and he got uh, moved. Yeah, he to got moved to the main Gorka site. Yeah. Yeah, he got promoted. Wow. To head, he got he got promoted to head janitor. That's what. Yeah, they that, did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was one of those promotions. Yeah. So. Where did he get promoted to? Yeah. I'd like to know. Yeah. 
Well, he's an expert in bullshit. I mean, look what comes out of his mouth. So he's probably good at mopping it up. Yeah, he's the head janitor at fucking Gawker HQ. That's my question. Yeah, it's paid vacation. Yeah, I mean, Gawker was already sketchy as hell even before all this. So, I mean... That's yeah, a, with the interns not being their interns, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they've had a lot of dirt, so it's it's part of that. It's catching up to them. Yeah, that was that was a brilliant decision, Gawker. You know, uh, Stephen, I, I got to hope Stephen Tillow watches this. Yeah, Stephen, that's you. You got a great company there. Don't pay your interns. Shit on your advertisers. Have people pick fights with fucking <laughs> bully victims. You guys are really, you, Stephen. You're doing a great job. You fucking moron. Really brilliant work over at uh, Kotaku and Gawker in general. It's a good job. Did you see the uh, social justice warriors advocating that a charity stop taking money because it was coming from Gamergate? Oh, are they going to are they going to cover the cost? Well, you know, here's the an idea: How about Gamergate donates I don't know fifty thousand dollars to a charity, and then let them step in and say no, you can't take it, and ask the charity instead to say, well, give us it uh, yourselves. They'll never put the money up. Social justice warriors aren't going to cover the difference. Are you fucking kidding me? I think, I think that's effectively what's happening, um, but I don't think they've they've challenged the social justice warriors. I can't remember who uh, was doing it, but it was something like a hundred thousand dollars or something. Wasn't it? Am I am I remembering this wrong? At this point, there's been like the people that have been pushing this have put again seventy thousand dollars, wasn't it, for the finance capitalist? Yeah. You've had yeah. Ten thousand uh, for anti-bullying. Twelve thousand for anti-bullying. It just doesn't stop. It, it, the amount of money that's been just fucking given away for causes that people thought are good, and they keep painting this narrative that you know all these people in Gamergate are misogynists. They hate women. <laughs> they beat puppies. We're giving money to fucking female game development and anti-bullying cha or bullying charities. What the fuck are you talking about? What have you guys done? You haven't done shit. That's it. Validated through right action, isn't it? You know. Yeah, that's the thing. Our fucking actions speak louder than our words. All they've yeah. got are their words. They haven't done shit. Where's your fucking donation to anti-bullying? Where's your fucking donation to female game development? You sure talk about it a lot, but you don't really do anything, do you? Yeah. Should we talk about their actions? You know, the things they do because. You know, if they speak louder than words... They so bitch sure. on Twitter, that's all they do. But what kind of people tries to make a charity give back money? Like, I don't even know. What's your, what, what are they going to show up at the orphanage and take the money out of the, <laughs> or the food out of the kid's fucking mouth? Like, what kind of people are they? <laughs> yeah, there's, there's no depth to which they won't <laughs> stoop. That's the thing. I've, I've decided that nothing they actually do is now... I'm, I'm, I may be shocked by what they say, but I'm not shocked that they'll do it, because oh. they just don't seem to have any standards. You know, apparently someone's saying it's sixteen thousand for anti-bullying, uh, and then eleven hundred for UNICEF. Yeah, it, yeah, it's ridiculous. You can't even keep track of it. Gamergate has given so much fucking money to charity <laughs> at this point. You can't keep a running tally of it. There's just it's too much. It's too many fucking organizations, and we're the we're the monsters that lurk in the darkness. Apparently, according to MSNBC and others, you know we're the fucking boogeyman under everybody's uh, bed. I I got a suggestion for a new charity that uh, Gamergate. No more charities. No more charities. No more? We've done so many. We've done so many. Screw it. Let people do it if they want. What is it? Hey, what well, is it? I, I was thinking uh, once the holiday season gets closer, how about donating to a uh, Wounded Warrior Project? That's uh, for veterans coming back from uh, enduring freedom and Iraqi freedom, mostly uh, guys who need what do you call this? Uh, Need prosthetics, so I think that's that's one of the charities Gamergate can give to if they're feeling like it. So I don't think I don't think that's a yeah I don't think that's a bad idea. Uh, fuck, I, I guarantee you. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, yeah, just just to point out that um, the American government's notorious for stringing their veterans out. Look into it, man. They fuck yeah. their veterans over. Somebody's really saying we need to donate to Autism Speaks. No, we are Autism Speaks. <laughs> that's, what are. that's how we spend thousands of hours in WoW. We, we are Autism Incarnate, and that's why we're kicking their ass. We're dedicated. Well, we could... Uh, I, I was talking to King and Paul about this. We could also donate to a um, human trafficking charity. Uh, I was thinking about Mighty Nepal. Uh, I support human trafficking, Jade. <laughs> no, no, they, they need money to help kidnap children. Let's get on that. That's good. <laughs> you know what I meant. Is it located no. in San Francisco? No. <laughs> oh, good. Sorry. So, I mean, what 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 is the count of advertisers that's left? I, I was familiar with UAT and Intel, uh, with Scott's Trade, Unilever, and Mercedes Benz, but I hear there are more that have come off since then. Adobe. Yeah. Adobe. Adobe. Adobe is basically saying, nah, we won't deal business with them anymore, and we stand against bullying. So Good for Adobe. Good for fucking yeah. Adobe. Uh, Colgate, um, BMW, um, Mercedes, but we're not sure about Mercedes because they said that, you know, they pulled their advertisement and then they paused it for a day and then, you know, brought it back on. 
Um, I, I think there was a talk about Hulu for a little bit. Yeah, well, and I, I, again, it, it just it, this the amount of the amount of success is amazing. Everybody since the beginning was saying shit like, "Oh, you need a, a leader. You need a fucking council. You need a doctrine. You need to police each other. You need to do this and that." The reason this has worked so phenomenally well is everybody's doing their own fucking thing, and if it works, people follow it, and if it doesn't, they don't. It's yeah. just like naming. It's a it works by like collective disapproval, basically. I mean, if you're doing something too many people don't like, I mean, it just doesn't get done. You know, people don't follow it, so. Yeah, it, pretty much. I mean, essentially, it's that. It's it's allowing the group to actually decide what they want to do without forcing it on them. Right. And it lets people be motivated, and when they're invested in something they think is a good idea, they, they work harder for it, rather than being told it's a good idea and then feeling like, eh, I don't know. Yeah. But, yeah, it, 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 I mean, we're approaching the point now, right, where mainstream media has gone on to the next fucking thing. Maybe they're going to go look for that Malaysian flight again. I don't know. But, <laughs> like, they're, they're, they've, they're, they've given up at this point. So Gawker's on its own. Polygon is uh, it's on its own. They're, these assholes are in our ballpark again. So I don't know what they're expecting, but it's not going to be a pleasant fucking month for them. Well, it's, it's sort of escalating on feminist frequency now, uh, tying it back to the latest tweets when... They're talking about school shootings and the latest shootings happening around and tying it to toxic masculinity. So I think we're we're gonna head back on back when fucking Columbine and the school shootings and so they're, they're going they're going back to Jack Thompson. They're they're getting back to yeah. 1999, dude. They're they're gonna dig up everything from Columbine again. Why and, can't they just leave the fucking hobby alone? Why do they have to tamper so much and try? Like, aren't these the same people that made the argument that no, the the the, um, the two different pieces are different? You you can't say that uh, just because I disagree with the idea that violence in gaming causes violence in real life doesn't mean that I can't agree with the idea that sexism in gaming causes sexism in real life. But now they're going to turn and do the oh yeah, violent video game shit. Uh, it's it's just with feminist frequencies tweets and at, at least what you discussed earlier before we streamed. Uh, they're they're pushing this to a national agenda. They're going to bring up the USU open carry thing and why she refused. Uh, they're going <laughs> to, I believe, their next move is to drag in uh, gun grabber issues on this and drag in the NRA and uh, prepare for I don't know. A, a prepare culture. for they, two thousand. Yeah, they they want they want a culture war, but yeah. I think this is why they're going to lose. And again, when you look up at kind of or look at the makeup, I guess, of Gamergate and why it's so phenomenal, is you've got people of every political spectrum. You know what I mean? You've got conservatives and uh, libertarians and liberals. You've got uh, free market capitalists. You've got communists. All of them are saying the same thing, though. They don't want to inject their own political or you know philosophy or ideology into it. They just want gaming to be left the fuck alone. So these people that want to make it into some national agenda, you know, like feminist frequency or whoever it happens to be. That's why they're failing. Nobody. We just want to play video games. Just fuck off. Yeah, it seems to be about like um, a point of principle now, doesn't it? Just sort yeah. of um, a m much more sort of. Um, uh, it's it's almost it's you could almost describe it as a, a battle of subjectivity versus objectivity. You know, they, right. they just everything they say is just about themselves. Every fucking word. I mean, let let me. Let, I'm going to read some out quickly. Dogpiling a group overwhelmingly through volume. Sea lining, pestering a target with unsolicited questions delivered with a false air of civility. Gish galloping, flooding the debate space with an overload of minor, often reworded issues. Gaslighting, preventing false uh, presenting false information with the intent of making victims doubt their own perception, memory, or sanity. Who does that group apply to? What does you know? It applies to them. That's that why they're so familiar with the terms. That's why they use them so much. Yeah, that was that was tweeted by feminist frequency, and it's just like. That is just you admitting what you are. You know? I think, I, I don't know. I, I'm positive, though. Looking at everything that's been accomplished and everything that's happened, we're winning. I mean, we are legitimately winning. Nothing they have done has stopped it. Nothing will stop it. It's just caused it to grow. It's twice the, the, twice the size as it was before they got on the mainstream media. Well, yeah, we, we, get, uh, we get to thank Stop Gamergate 2014 for actually... <laughs> <laughs> They have doubled our traffic. Thank you, hashtag that has failed. Didn't it cause ISIS to come out and denounce Gamergate? Though? 
putting them de facto on the same team as ISIS? Yes, they did. Actually, <laughs> ISIS actually came out and used the stop the hashtag. <laughs> yeah. well, well done, social justice. I'm impressed. Uh, if ISIS <laughs> denounces you, oh my God. Well, many people are on the same team as ISIS. <laughs> I mean, they yeah, so hard you. to be on their team because they're a bunch of fucking terrorists. So, well done. Sorry. But no, I, I'm just... You have to feel happy. I, I I see some people that seem kind of, I, I don't know, maybe a little disenfranchised or a little burnt out or a little unsure. I don't think it's really clicked for a lot of people what the fuck you've all accomplished. You've taken on things that are bigger than you with more connections and more power and more money than you, and you've stomped their fucking shit in from one end of the internet to the other. Nobody has ever done that. That This is unprecedented. You don't think there are guys in PR uh, firms right now and marketing uh, people that teach courses like that watching the shit unfold? This is going to be fucking class curriculum five semesters from now. Like, <laughs> don't do this because you don't want to see your business get burned to the ground. Yeah. Don't fuck with the market. Don't fuck with your customer. I've actually I've been saying for a little while now. That I reckon this is probably their Stalingrad in like a wider cultural contest uh, context. I really actually think that this will be a precedent for other people. Literally, like you were saying, you know, this is this is what the conservatives are going to be like teaching to you know themselves, so they can in their own political spheres push back against this weird culture that just has to be in everyone's shit all the time and suck the fun out of everything. So has anybody really sat down, though, to kind of look at, I think it is an interesting question, why has this succeeded where others have failed? I mean, what what do you think, if you guys had to pin it on something, what do you think Gamergate has done differently or better that has allowed it to succeed this much, where others would have imploded or failed? Why did uh, Anonymous stall up when they were going against Scientology? Why did Occupy Wall Street stall up when it was going against big banks? Hey, um, um, Total Biscuit is in chat, and he wants to get on. That's what um, your chat is saying. Well, are they? F yeah, but my chat also asked me every other day how big my dick is and how old it is. So are we sure that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I know why GamerGate's winning. Uh, basically, it's leaderless. It's just you know the sheer amount of chaos that you know this movement sprung from, and you know the fact that we have no central organization. We're all basically on the same ideals, and we all. Actually, in the realm of Gamergate itself, we all debate and verify each other's issues. We call each other out. Mm -hmm. We don't. We yeah. don't just take each other's word for it. I mean, I've I've been screamed at from you know from the very beginning here. So you know the fact that Gamergate is doing the job that game journalists um, should be doing is you know speaking for the success in itself and. You know, digging up fact after fact after fact and exposing scandal after scandal, that's what makes Gamergate win. And, you know, the fact that we're essentially leaderless, that, you know, they have to target an entire hashtag without, you know, without blaming individuals, so to speak, that's, that's pretty much what has... Uh, was has the enemy shitting their pants because they can't fight the, an entire demographic when it's all solidified on each other. Plus, all right. I mean, uh, 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 I'm sorry. One, one, one sec, man. Um, yeah, Chad, Chad keeps bringing up uh, Total yeah, Biscuit. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm fairly certain they're just fucking with me, but on the off chance they're not, uh, I, I followed him on Twitter. I can send him a DM if he follows back. If he really wants on, I'll send him a, a link to the Google thing. Anyway, sorry, go ahead, Ralph. Oh, no, I was just going to say, uh, I mean, we've had bad press before, too. I think that that's also toughened us up against a lot of this. I mean, we've had media onslaughts not this big, but, you know, with the Columbine stuff in the 90s and, you know, some of the senators, Joe Lieberman and Hillary Clinton, have, have tried to lead stuff against games before. So I think it's kind of hardened us up a little bit. You mean with veterans of these sort of online right. wars? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they picked the wrong demographic right. to attack, didn't they? You know, they, they? Yeah, they really did. Special yeah. confluence of interests and experiences that have made gamers exactly the wrong people to target. Idiots, <laughs> 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 honestly, there's there's such yeah, morons. Um, I can't get over it. Yeah, total total biscuit isn't shy. I see him. Oh, that's cool. Um, all right. Well, I, I can. Is there a way to? I, I don't know. This Google shit. This Twitter guy is asleep. That's what he's saying. <laughs> well, yeah, I know the feeling. My uh, my phone girl quit on me apparently because she couldn't handle 
the sheer volume of people calling the architectural firm, because that's where I work. <laughs> or so I've been told. Um, I don't... I think this is his account. I'll send an invite, try to send one through there. Okay. But, um, yeah, they, they did fuck with the wrong demographic, though. I, when you think about it, I mean, these are... We're people that have, what, we've killed the orcs, we've slain the dragon, we've fucking <laughs> rescued the princess, we've fought the evil empire, we killed the space god. We're used to fighting shit like that, and we're very good at it. And so it, that's all it is on the Internet. It's not real life. We're fucking with them on the Internet. It's a digital playground. They're in our territory. This has been one of the greatest raids too. ever, guys. Really. People will remember this raid... For all fucking time. Immortalized. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, 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 it has been good. Um, <clears throat> sorry. So so uh, I'm just trying to recap the news. So Sam Biddle apparently promoted a head janitor. Colgate leaves. Nissan leaves. Uh, other companies yeah, have left. Adobe. Uh, Adobe. Adobe. Yeah. Um, Steven Totillo is, I guess, what, crying right now? Weeping to himself because <laughs> Kotaku's going under. What What's the situation with... <laughs> Polygon, are they still telling people that um, Shadows of Mordor was terrible because it doesn't teach you how to kiss women? Or what was the article they wrote? Yeah. Something about kiss and to kill or something? I don't I forgot. Some my god my awful. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> um, what I think that's happening in Polygon, because one of the more decent guys, act, you know, he's the founding editor. Uh, let's see, his name's Brian Crescente. Um, he's actually trying to stabilize this position. Uh, at least from what he's been talking about most of the time. The guy comes from a criminal, well, criminal investigations journalism background. Mm -hmm. And the ironic thing about this is the guy started Polygon because Kotaku got bought off by Gawker, and he's one of the founding editors of Gawker. So he bailed from Kotaku to start Polygon and start it right, and now, you know, the same kind of bullshit's happening at Polygon too. So you, you kind of have to feel for the guy when he's, you know, been the founding editor for games journalism in Kotaku and also now on Polygon. And he, I, I don't know. I think he's trying to stabilize everything and trying to fix it from the inside because, at least from my experience reading up on uh, Brian Crescente's work, he actually does real journalism. And I'm, I'm hoping he, he will step up to the plate and try to fix things. Okay, people, I'm. I'm sorry. People keep saying mailbox at uh, Yeah, no, I, I, no, oh, yeah, I'll do it. I'm already setting it up. All right, um, but yeah, I, I don't know. Um, I lost track of my thought there. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, okay. So there was Polygon's doing what it's doing. Uh, obviously, Gawker and Kotaku are in the shitter. What's the situation with Gama Sutra? Are, are their numbers still pretty abysmal? They've got to be, haven't they? They've got to be absolutely tanking. Well, here, here's the thing. Po advertisers are pulling out, and mm -hmm. I checked the traffic rankings for Kotaku, Polygon, Gawker, uh, Rock, Paper, Shotgun, and also Gama Sutra. There's a slight bump going up, but for me, the traffic rankings don't matter anymore because the advertisers are pulling out. If the advertisers are pulling out, they're not getting money from those advertisers. So now you're going to have a higher traffic ranking which means you're going to have to pay for their server costs, which means you have, you know, now you have higher server costs and less income. <laughs> you know, they can have the number one ranking for all I care. If they don't have advertisers, they got nothing to, you know, upkeep that ranking, essentially. So, you know, I, w I, would, I wouldn't mind if Gawker gets, you know, number one ranking, but, you know, having zero advertisers, hey, good on them. Good on well, them. Do you think those numbers are real, or do you think they're inflated as a way to try to push back against it is the... Inflated. It is inflated because it's, uh, uh, it's what Silicon Valley does. Uh, you guys should Google this video. Uh, it's called The Problem with Facebook. Uh, it's a, a, an in-depth analysis on why Facebook you know, likes are pretty much bullshit, and it's an entryway into basically the, you know, the click farming world that happens outside the United States where there's literally a whole bunch of firms that hire a bunch of people to click on your stuff and drive traffic up. So Google that again, the problem with Facebook, 
it's the same thing that, you know, I, I wouldn't put it past Gawker or Kotaku or Rock Paper Shotgun or Gama Sutra to use these click farms outside to the United States to bump up the ranking and essentially, you know, provide fake traffic to them. Yeah, I so. could see that. I could see that happening. Also, uh, welcome to the uh, to the chat, TB. Hi, I'd like to talk about my long-standing axe that I have to grind with minorities. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm a minority. Well, hello, Total Biscuit. Hi. Hello. I hope you're resting, man, because you know the health issues, and you know it's just great for you to come along here. Would hoping that uh, your rest and recovery is doing fine, man. It's it's coming along. I, I'm constantly eating painkillers, which does make the act of debating a little difficult. But you know the challenge is nice after all. I could imagine. Yeah. So have you been following uh, this week's happenings with all the different advertisers and articles that yeah. have come out? I mean, I, I've, I've followed this whole thing since the literal start of it, mm -hmm. and uh, I've read 8chan and Kotaku in action as well as pretty much all the mainstream sites for what three months now, I think. So I've been keeping up with it. Yeah, it, it has been uh, pretty wild. I mean, really, when you think of how far it's come along, uh, especially with, you know, I mean, you've got A-Chan and you've got uh, Kotaku in action really has kind of risen to the uh, to the challenge of people being displaced and not really having a place to go to talk about it. Yeah, yeah, this is, this is very true. And uh, it, it's, strangely enough, part of the core problem. And uh, over the last couple of months, I've been spending a great deal of time talking to people in traditional games media via email. Because I thought, you know, this seems like the best way to go about it. And it came about initially because I was trying to get this panel together. And so we could really kind of nail this thing down. Like, I firmly believe dialogue is the way to get this shit fixed. Mm -hmm. And it was the lack of dialogue in the first place that drove everybody to this extent. And we are now where we are now as a direct result of that. And, I mean, you all probably know the story by this point. When Game Journal Pros was leaked by Breitbart, the guys who were on my panel in the same day basically said, yeah, we're, we're, gonna, we're not going to do this anymore. Uh, because we don't want to, we don't want to bring the heat. Basically, we don't want anything involved. We don't want to be involved in it. And uh, since then, it's just been emails back and forth between various people. And you know what's really, really depressing about the whole thing is that every single person I've spoken to who is publicly anti-Gamergate has been willing to hear me out in private, but in public, <laughs> really. Yeah, but in public, not so much. And I've had some very productive conversations with these people, but. The problem is that it almost seems like they have to put out a certain face, and I think it really is because the mainstream media narrative is this m movement is entirely about harassment. Ergo, if you show even the slightest bit of sympathy towards it, then you will be labeled as a harasser. It's the with us or against us fallacy that's being consistently perpetrated that prevents these people from really engaging with the issues. Do you think there's an element of uh, peer pressure? I mean, when I look through the uh, Game Journals Pro stuff that uh, Milo had put up on Breitbart, you know, the different articles he had put out, uh, it seemed like there was a lot of, at least behind the scenes, um, pressure to keep to the narrative. Uh, you had people like Kuchera, especially, uh, seem to really be into kind of enforcing a hold the line mentality, circle the wagons kind of thing. Kuchera and, is a fucking real life backseat moderator. I, he really don't is, a lot, he? I don't have a great deal of respect for that guy uh, after he went after Eric Kane so yeah, long ago and you know showed his flagrant hypocrisy in the process. And after he wrote that stupid article about ad block, like every one of us who is running an ad supported business model cringed when he wrote that fucking thing because we've realized that you can't stop ad block. The only thing that you can do is discuss in kind of a calm and rational manner with people, like, this is how the business model works, I understand that you find ads annoying, everyone finds ads annoying, but, you know, this is kind of how we pay our rent, but I understand if you choose to use it, and there's not really much we can kind of do about it, and condemning people for it is the fucking worst strategy, because it, it radicalizes people, and this is what fucking Gamergate became. It is a bunch of people who didn't want their identity attacked, who ended up being radicalized, and it got to the point where people who would have never even considered listening to a website like Breitbart are suddenly thinking, maybe they have a point. I mean, and we're talking about a person that just a few short months ago, in the form of Milo, wrote this stupid mm -hmm. fucking article about Grand Theft Auto ra rapists. You know? oh, right. <laughs> yeah, <I> know. <laughs> uh, and this is what I said to these, uh, these uh, trad media guys that I actually know. It's like, do you realize what you've done? Like, do you realize the kind of people that you've kind of driven some of these guys into the arms of? 
<laughs> well, they, they, they fractured the market, and I think that's one of the interesting aspects of this, is they, they created the schism when this began. And it seemed like nobody could go anywhere. There was nobody really willing to talk about it. Nobody wanted to publicize anything about any of the happenings that were kind of taking place. And, yeah, you, you had something like Breitbart. You had somebody like uh, Milo Yiannopoulos kind of step in. And here's somebody who had written articles describing gamers in uh, not very positive terms, and he'd written Don't some worry, articles no. about other things. But he was willing to at least listen to the market. He saw that these people wanted to talk about this, and he wrote about it. And it blows my mind, then, you see these outside agencies writing about it and getting all this traffic talking about it, and yet they refuse to do it, and they're dedicated to gaming and gaming culture and what's happening in the gaming scene. So it really, it highlights to me at least, that there has to be something going on uh, behind the scenes with somebody like a Kuchera, some kind of a taskmaster, somebody using the bully pulpit to really stifle any kind of discussion. When I had done um, Ed Morrissey's thing, uh, he, he had sent out invites to a bunch of people to say, hey, you know, come on and represent your side. Let's talk about this. You know, I'll give you equal time. You can say whatever you like. And he was completely uh, turned down. Nobody, nobody was willing to do it. That doesn't surprise me. I think that if, if you read uh, what, what Felicia said a couple of days ago, there's another point that you can take from that. And that's the, the, she brought up this idea of being afraid to talk about it. And I really think it goes far further than that. Like, I don't think it's a case of just, I'm afraid to mention Gamergate because I'm a woman. I really think it's actually a lot of people are afraid to mention anything that goes against this very loud authoritarian viewpoint. And I, I, I've, again, spoken to all these tribe media guys, and the thing that I brought up time and time again is like, why exactly have you not critiqued Anita Sarkeesian's work? Because here's a list of factually wrong things she said, and here's a list of logical leaps she's made. Because honestly, if, you, if, you know, if you're very reductive about what she's saying, then you can come to the conclusion, oh, I mean, she just wants a more diverse cast of characters in games. And pretty much everyone can get behind that. And a lot of what she says makes sense. Because frankly, she's not the first person to say it. We've been saying that we need better written characters in games and less trope-filled writing for decades. This is not a new thing. Games critics have consistently been saying this. But it's when she makes the logical leaps like the Hitman Absolution thing that really gets me, saying this is deliberately placed here to carefully concoct sexual arousal and allow for... I'm not sure what's the exact quote. Uh, the punishing of the representations of female sexuality. I'm like, um, based on <laughs> what? How are you getting like, to that? Right. How, how do you... How, I mean, that, that, is, that is the kind of statement that someone who has already come to their conclusion makes before they attempt to cherry-pick to support their argument. And it doesn't make a great deal of sense, and I think that one of the things that she does very, very badly is to understand mechanical context, which you cannot ignore in video games. You cannot ignore that at all. It's impossible. No surprise. She's not right. a gamer. Well, yeah, and <laughs> I, I, th I think part of the problem with Sarkeesian is you're, you're right. I, if you came out and made the statement, I want better video game characters, nobody's, who's going to argue with that? Nobody's really going to say, okay. But she doesn't do that, though. She, 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 on the one hand, says something like that, which most people would find agreeable, but then on the other hand says... Um, the reason we can't have this is because obviously everything is terrible in the industry or because the games that you like or the play mechanics that you enjoy represent hurting women or hurting minorities or hurting you know any any kind of a group she it's it's weird it's like a um, intermixture an interwoven mixture of agreeable statements and then just utter tripe you know what I mean and that's why I think people aren't receptive to it and the, personally I think she's a con artist but I, I do agree with you that some of her arguments aren't necessarily bad but I just no, don't buy it that Here's what's weird about this. I, I think most of you know, like feminist frequency, uh, if you look at it deep enough, it's actually a patriarchal relationship with Sarkeesian just being a sock puppet, and everything is just full Macintosh. Because if you think about it, Macintosh is the writer. He's also the producer. So Sarkeesian is essentially just there to be a pretty face and you know to do what Macintosh is doing. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't like McIntosh because uh, I, I've read certain tweets he's put out, and it's very Jack Thompson-like. Uh, it's very video games yeah. are terrible. There was, uh, there was one specific tweet that really got my back up, and I believe there was another one that I saw, but I can't seem to find it anymore. I don't know if it was being removed or whatever the case. And it was, let's see if I can dig this thing up. 
Let's see. You know, Ben Futura just went on a rant as soon as we started our stream. I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure. He, I'm sure he did. <laughs> ben Telling Kuchera everybody that's been here ranting now. for years. If Ben Gutierrez is listening to this stream, please calm the fuck down. You are not helping anybody. God, <laughs> like, you know, we've had some respectful conversations, but I have met you in real life, Ben, and you were pretty cool back then. Can you please stop stirring the goddamn pot? It would be just lovely if you were to do that. I would be very, very happy. I know I have all the steak I want, but if you don't get that salad bar out of my peripheral vision, I'll touch him to murder people. <laughs> yeah, he's so off. He's so off kilter. Yeah, I didn't like Kuchera when the Kane thing happened, and I didn't like his reaction. There was a thread on Giant Bomb talking about what had happened, and he mm -hmm. made an account to go talk to them and got his ass chewed out by all the forum users and actually messaged a mod to shut it down. Like, he's just anti... He, yeah, it, I, I, there, there are caps of it. He, he got an award. That's how you can tell that he actually talked to the moderator. You get an award or something for your first time talking to a mod. And right after he got that award, the thread got shut down, deleted. This is the this is the tweet from Radical Bites that really started to get my back up. It's, aggression is not the same as physical violence. Saying some games are a risk factor and increased aggression should not be controversial. Except it is very, very controversial, like scientifically. And right. You, you will be very hard pressed. There is there was one study that had some fairly tenuous links that said uh, playing video games for a certain amount of time increased the aggression in certain kinds of people. But it was also it, the conclusion that they kind of drew there was that it was the simple idea of the competitive attitude and also the survival instinct kicking in that really caused that sort of stuff to happen. I. And that really is the sort of thing that does sound very Thompson-esque, and I'm pretty sure he's made other statements about violent video games as well. That flies in the face of science, and I strongly dislike it when people do that. And I think that he, that may be the reason why some people are wary of Anita Sarkeesian's videos. I personally am frankly not that wary of them. I don't think she actually has that much influence and in reality, you are allowed to say whatever you want. You know, we approve of free speech, right? Very, you can go true. on, you can go on YouTube, and you can create whatever video you like about whatever subject. And being wrong on the internet is not a cardinal sin. But That's it would be true. nice to have a real discussion about it. And I, I would love um, to see any major gaming website, instead of just here's Anita's latest video, say here's our opinions on Anita's latest video. And I think it was only the Escapist that tried to do that at any point. And that was a fairly short video they did quite a while ago called No Right Answer. Mm -hmm. And outside of that, that's been about it. Well, it makes it, it, it raises an issue of impropriety. Like, you have Sarkeesian putting out these videos, and nobody, yeah, nobody will critique it, nobody will discuss it. It's always a positive support thing. And I think to a lot of people, what that comes off as is it, it just it looks bad when that's the only message that's being put out, when you can never ever question it or debate it, I think somebody was putting around or trying to get something going for, was it GDC next year? To try to get Christina Hoff Summers and Sar Sarkeesian to have like a, a debate. That is unlikely to ever happen. Summer. Summer. Yeah, that, uh, yeah, yeah, Anita will I'm never do it. To that, but she's skeptical about Sarkeesian actually, uh, uh, actually joining the effort because mm -hmm. Base Mom wants to do it as a panel, so it's not just about Base Mom versus Sarkeesian. Uh, credits to Foxy Gun, a uh, veteran with Purple Heart, for getting that set up. But yeah, there's you know the gauntlet has been thrown, and hopefully these guys actually you know make this a big discussion at GDC because you know no one can ignore this anymore. Well, yeah, TB, you you were saying that you tried to get this panel going, and it kind of it, it kind of uh, petered out um, once the Game yeah. Journalist Pro thing mm -hmm. happened. Do you do you see, or do you ever foresee any of these people ever stepping up to the plate and saying, you know what, let's debate it, let let's talk about the issues that have been raised over the last three months, and let's just have it out, let's have a, a debate, let's have a, a I think actual. We're getting there. I think we're getting there because I I think if you if you read the um I think the latest Polygon article that came out, and I'll be keeping a close eye on all of this stuff because frankly, and I'll say this to everybody. For God's sake, read widely. Don't read the same echo chamber bullshit because you will end up with a weak opinion. You will end up with this echo chamber within your own sodding head. You know, you've got to read people that you disagree with. There's no harm in that. Don't be afraid of it. But it was uh, one of the latest um, articles on Polygon. And what it did was it mentioned that there were ethical concerns. Now, it was still sort of leaning towards the this is 
it, you know, there's a lot of harassment going on, but it mentioned that there were ethical concerns, and it mentioned that actually, yes, some people in the movement do have ethical concerns, and that is, in my opinion, a shift away from what we've seen before that, where it was, this movement is purely about harassment, like it was a black and white issue, and that was the narrative that was peddled for this long. And I'm just getting this feeling that people are slowly coming around to the idea that they are willing to talk about it, but they're still shit scared of doing it in public. Absolutely terrified of it. So I, I guess, do you think, uh, kind of watching this on play, and I, and I figured this was going to happen eventually, that somebody at least would step up to the plate. Um, that's going back even to the escapist with like uh, Greg Tito. I disagree with a lot of what Greg Tito has said. Mm -hmm. But yeah. he was the only one, the only one out of this entire thing to go into those forums and say, you know what, this is what I did, this is why I did it, and let's talk about it. And I think that's why a lot of the people, or a lot of people like the escapists, they're going to the forums and talking, they're you know enjoying their content. And I, I don't know why it is that you have a Tito who's willing to do that, and look how it turned out for him. And yet these other journalists refuse to do it. And it feels like the only reason they're even considering it now is not um, because they're feeling, I, I guess, less scared, but because they understand that. This boycotting and contacting advertisers and has an effect on the bottom line. Do you think that even if they come to the table, that the damage is so great at this point that nobody will trust them, or that it, it just it's too much to mitigate? You can't undo this kind of damage. I, I think that you can undo it, but I think that also people have to be willing to accept that wasn't the initial objective to try and get these people to admit wrongdoing and to actually talk about journalistic ethics. Because I, 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 I tweeted a couple of days ago, and I was very concerned about some of the stuff that was being said in uh, Kotaku in Action, where it was people saying, nope, too late, too late. I disagree. It's never, ever fucking too late. If you are looking to get these people on your side, and you're looking to get these people to serve you as the consumer, mm -hmm. then if they offer a sincere apology and they actually offer to realistically come to the table with you, then you've got to let them do it. You have to. Because if you don't, you don't give them a way out, and then all they're going to do is they're going to keep circling the wagons, they're going to keep peddling the same narrative, because so far, at least in the mainstream media, that narrative has been working. It might not have been working with us, but it certainly has been working with the mainstream media, and the more they keep parroting it, we've seen the power of the media, the more they keep parroting it, the more people will actually believe it. And eventually, you know, will, will Gamergate sort of peter out? I mean, it probably. It, it, I imagine it will eventually. Every, every movement has a shelf life. But I, I just dearly hope that they will be willing to talk. And that's all I've wanted from the very start. But it's just been so depressing to see people who are not willing to do that. But I think we might be getting to the point where some people will. And when that happens, then I think we can, we can start to really get away from this idea that, you know, that a section of the movement is about harassment. There's, there's this one thing that I said to them, and I've said to everyone that I've discussed this with in private. Mm -hmm. Look, if you really believe, if you truly believe the, the movement is about harassment, yeah, then... Stop talking about harassment. Start talking about ethics. Because what you do when you do that is you starve the people who are actually perpetrating harassment of oxygen. These people want attention, and you're giving it to them. You're giving it to them every single day. You gave them MSNB fucking C. Right. What? What? It's a troll's fucking victory dance. You it, it really is. Mainstream it, media on a planet. What are you doing? What? Uh, what the hell is wrong with you? See, I don't think they really... I think people, at least the people that I've been paying attention to, have kind of picked up on it. But there there are third parties that are actively stirring the, the pot to try to get reactions. And yeah, MSNBC, sure as hell, uh, is fuel to the fire for that. But um, I, I, it, it's weird. I don't know where this is going to go. When this started, at least my main goal when I started talking about it was I was pissed because I thought they had an obligation as journalists to cover things and to be honest and not to, you know, do corrupt things or collude with one another. And it seemed like it just kept getting worse and worse. And especially with the fine young capitalists, that really, that really pisses me off because you have this group of people that had something bad happen to them that involved journalists and involved uh, game developers, and nobody would report on it. And, you know, it, how many stories like that are out there? Like, I, why aren't they not bothered by that? Why wouldn't they investigate that? I just, the, the latest by William Usher is actually the smoking gun, and it happened at Destructoid. So if, if you guys haven't seen that story yet, you should. Uh, apparently, Destructoid is caught up on reporting that involves a game developer, a live Twitch suicide, and essentially a cover-up. And followed by that cover-up is a blacklisting. 
that happened right inside the Game Journal Pros list. Yeah, see, this this can't be allowed to happen. They they can't. People like this cannot be allowed to wield that kind of power. I know it's just games media. I get it. People say it's just games journalism, but they have an ethical responsibility. They have standards for their profession. No, I'm not. I'm not even buying that it's the only. It's only games media. It, what's the biggest entertainment industry in the world at the moment? Gaming. You know? Exactly, it's gaming. You know, it's not just games media. This is this is fucking colossal. Um, I really think it's important to consider exactly what we're expecting of them when they come to the table. Um, I I do totally agree with Total Biscuit here. It, it, he's absolutely right. If if we don't give them a way out, I mean, I think the fact that they don't have a way out is why they've all gone off the rails and some collective. Just, well, no, I mean, I, I disagree that know, they they had a way out. They could have done what they Grey did. No, no, they, they did. They, they did. Done they, what the they, escapists did. They refused. Well, they refused it. That's just to be thing, kind of devil's right? advocate a little bit there, uh, Kotaku kind of did. Like they revised their ethical uh, policies as a direct result of Gamergate. The problem that I currently have with them, and I've said this directly to the people that work there, is that they have not accepted the conflicts of interest that have been proven. And I'm not talking about this idea that Nathan Grayson reviewed Zoe Quinn's game. This is it's, no, that's no, no. factually false. What we do know is that. He reported on an article that was written by Jared Rosen. He effectively, I mean, he just blog spammed it, really. He just took portions from Jared Rosen's article that was sourced from Zoe Quinn regarding the Polaris Game Jam. And in doing so, plugs her Game Jam and her game. And this happened what could have been 24 hours before Kotaku recognized that Zoe Quinn had started to engage in a romantic relationship. And, of course, we already know that they knew each other prior to that. And that, that simply is you are reporting on a friend. You need to disclose that. You well, it goes it. It, it goes even further than that, though. I mean, you what really angered me, like Stephen Totillo came out and he first uh, addressed the Grayson thing, and I, I I thought it was a line of crap. I you know they all oh, we had a relationship 24 hours after whatever, but at least he addressed it. <laughs> then he addressed Patreon. You know, Kirk Hamilton was donating money to Zoe Quinn, and so he's like, you know what, we're gonna we're gonna draw a line and say you can't personally support somebody in an industry yep. you're yep. reporting on. Well, of Which course. Right, but he never addressed Patricia Hernandez. Yes, uh, so there was this one comment he made, and I don't like the comment because I feel that it's a cop-out. Uh, it was, he didn't even address it in an article, he addressed it in a comment, and he said that he believed they were innocent mistakes. And I was oh. like, Patricia <laughs> Hernandez has been in the game for quite some time, and I don't believe that you believe those were actually innocent mistakes. That That's not something that you can really get away with. And the fact of the matter is that they did go back and retroactively disclose it. So they right. recognized there was a problem, but they won't... It's like, in that situation, wouldn't you push Patricia to apologize? Well, or wouldn't this you, is, like, this write this point, up? Actually, that, that was exactly my point. The, the thing is, you, you are right. They've, they've made lip service concessions, but they haven't changed anything you know what what we're looking at is what we're looking at is required is like systematic reform you know the whole thing has to be reshaped at least because you know everything there there, there is a hell of a lot going on in there that really shouldn't be going on and um <clears throat> agree um, so so basically when when they come to the table i mean a bunch of people are probably going to have to get fired you know well, it raises concerns about, I mean, Stephen Totillo's position is editor-in-chief. As editor-in-chief, he should have oversight on his staff. I mean, he should know this stuff. So it raises either one of two things. Either Stephen Totillo knew all this stuff was going on and he didn't care and allowed it, or he was unaware that this was going on and his staff is out of control. Either way, that makes him look very bad as an editor-in-chief. Like, he mm -hmm. should have come out and issued a statement saying, and this isn't even really, like, Kirk Hamilton with the Patreon thing I think was bad. A slap on the wrist would have been fine. But in regards to, like, Grayson and Hernandez, that's that's a bigger issue. There should have been something more than a, just a hand-waving it off with four or five Twitter statements and a paragraph in the editor's column on Kotaku. He really should have stepped up and done something. Anything would have been better than nothing, Stephen. You know, it just, uh, I don't know what's going on with this well, guy. <clears throat> sorry, it's, I, I just, I swear to God, there's this culture, like, like, like Tobias was saying, that it's a culture of fear that they create. You can't really speak out against it. So the only things we've seen have been really perfunctory um, gestures. You know, nothing, nothing that would actually have caused Gamergate to actually end. You know, because the problem, it's the principle of the thing now, isn't it? You know, this doesn't go for two months over a bit of corruption. Now it's the goddamn principle that they're all involved and they're all supporting this. How can this be going on? You know, how can they be attacking their audience? This is madness. And you know, so they, they've got to. 
it, whatever culture they've generated, just watch watch Leigh Alexander's XOXO Fest um, talk. She is brazen. She is just absolutely brazen about how biased she is, how she's trying to inject her agenda into gaming, and everyone can fuck themselves. Hey, uh, Sargon, <laughs> you, you shared the video of Leigh Alexander's uh, MSNBC interview. Uh, I, I have it linked on the chat. It's it's where she literally goes into a black hole. That, that I, moment I haven't actually where... seen that one, I don't think. Did, yeah, I, I, seen did I share that? Did I, did I share that one? Yeah, you shared that one. It, it happens at four minutes and six seconds, hmm. and she literally just loses it. So I, I have it linked on the stream chat yeah, here. Yeah, I'll, 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 I might have watched it when I was in bed. Well, I, I, I agree with what you're saying, Sargon. I mean, I think the thing that I found most concerning in regards to Game Journal's Pro, um, aside from the feeling that there are people behind the scenes kind of pressuring what you can talk about and what you can't, is I think it was Navarro who said it. Um, well, if they're angry about this, they're going to be angry about the fact that I'm a member of seven other secret groups. So <laughs> that's the thing. Like, are they, is this like high? It feels like junior high school. It feels like yeah. these people treat their profession like it's junior high school. Yeah, well, what, uh, a lot of lot of jokes being made in it. There's, it's the amount of snark and derision that really gets me. I understand that it's it's very tempting to engage in that kind of behavior when you're being dogpiled. And let's be honest, a lot of viewers and a lot of people just don't know what they're talking about. Right. And that's that's fine. But there's only you can only really do that to a point without really starting to get people's backs up. And I've le I learned that in the past. You know, I, I engaged in that fucking behavior, and it made me look like an idiot. And that's now on the internet forever. And there's nothing I can do about that. And it just seems to me that people who have been in this industry for longer than me should kind of know better. Right. It, it, it's really ridiculous when you think about the fact that, or at least, I mean, these are some of these are large companies. Gawker's a, a fairly large company. I'm just floored by the fact that nobody in PR would step in and say, what What are you doing? You can't, you know, Patricia, you can't call people. I'm not sure they have PR. They, I, they are, no, no, they are the PR. That's, yeah. that's the they, they, they have the PR here. skills of a spitting cobra. <laughs> well, they need to hire someone. Nick Denton needs to shell out some money and get Gawk or some PR people because... Yeah. Here's yeah. something that actually uh, affects me and a lot of my peers in indie game dev. Um, a lot of these journalists and essentially their, their PR, uh, a lot of them take advantage of the anonymous jury systems that are in place in the IGF and the Indicate. Those anonymous jury systems in and of themselves are literally a click where you know they can take advantage of their anonymity and they can use the system to literally drive indie game dev. And for me, you know, wh when people talk about clicks and they talk about this industry collusion and it's high school, it's like, yeah, that's that's all well and funny, and you know, that attitude is something that's you know, something I don't want to condone, but when it starts affecting the culture of game devs and people just trying to get in this industry, I take serious offense at it because this is the kind of collusion that I'm trying to fight. And, you know, it's, it's, it's in the rumor mill, and I think it's already fact. The fact that a lot of these game journalists, they go inside the anonymous jury systems for the IGF and in the Indicate, and they pimp out their friends. Well, and that's that's an issue. I mean, one of the other issues, aside from like the consumer's perspective, is the game developer perspective. I mean, you're talking about indie developers, right? Yeah. And you you have all these issues that are popping up with them. I mean, what was it? The I keep screwing this up. Was it the IDGA guy that had talked today and the said? The IDGA yeah. guy yeah. and Jonathan Blow are literally literally on a Twitter rampage trying to you know threaten indie game developers who say, "Hey, we will remember forever." You know, if you support Gamergate, it's going to hurt your business career for the rest of your fucking life. I'm right. Like, uh, wow. That's something that... Uh, that's that, that I mean, internet is forever. Right, but that, <laughs> that's so. something that, that should not be happening. I mean, you can't you can't have a situation where these people wield power and say, listen, if you're not on our side, if you don't agree with what we say, you're gone. I mean, one of Jaffe's arguments against uh, Gamergate from the start was, it's not a big deal. I don't see this happening. And even when you brought him evidence, he's like, I don't see it as happening. When you had people like Leigh Alexander making these horrible statements, kind of standing as a gatekeeper at uh, Gama Sutra. And, you know, the funny thing is, like, Jaffe puts up applications to work at his studio on Gama Sutra. So, like, if you're looking for a job, you're going to this website, and this website's connected to people that are threatening you uh, and your career. So now you have people from IDGA and all these other organizations that are basically saying, if you're not on our side, you're never going to work in the industry. Yeah. That That's can't happen.
I, I think the thing with Jaffe is that like he has been in a position where he is far beyond the influence of any of these people for a very, very long time. And right. outside of the bullshit that occurred with him and Kachera years ago, he's kind of untouchable. And as a result, I imagine he does not view this as a particularly big issue. But I think that indies who are just starting out that don't really have that level of support... That is a big issue, and I fundamentally disagree with this idea that we're going to blacklist you if you have anything to do with gaming again. If you can prove that that person actually engaged in harassment, great. You know what happened when the... Oh God, what the hell are they called? Um, Code Avarice guys the, uh, uh, recently threatened to kill Gabe Newell? Oh, God, Everybody yeah, Everybody yeah. yeah. fucking condemned it. Like, gamers across the board fucking condemned it because that was someone who was actually publicly, and probably not seriously, but publicly threatening someone within the industry. Like, proven. Not even a question about it. It's not guilt by association. Actually did it. And everyone came down on him, and rightfully fucking so. And if a person is proven to be engaged in harassment, absolutely come down on them. Absolutely blacklist that person. But being vaguely associated to a hashtag that people have freely admitted that they don't really fully understand and is about so many different things and involves so many different people and is leaderless and doesn't have a set agenda or manifesto. If you're saying that being even vaguely associated with that is grounds for blacklisting, then I am extremely concerned that you might have the influence to do something like that. I don't think that this IGDA guy does. Oh, and I'm but... sure he doesn't, but uh, statements like this that's, have been that's pretty... made. Yeah, w- w- sorry, we, we support inclusivity? Uh, do we? <laughs> right. It's just, it, it, it's crazy to me that these people, and again, it, it goes back to the hubris. I mean, they're so, <clears throat> sorry, they're so arrogant about it. They'll make these statements and think that nothing happens. You were talking about the snark. I don't know if it's snark from him, if he's just... Um, shooting the shit on the internet, or if he's being serious about it, but... Twitter. Like, it I wish we could just delete Twitter. I know, right? <laughs> I hate social media so goddamn much. I've had to use it for this Gamergate thing. I just... I'm not a fan of social media. Oh, yeah. Social media, social justice, social engineering, it's all in the social sphere. Yeah. But, I, um... Now I understand mm-hmm. why I'm antisocial. <laughs> I think it's... <laughs> see why they're getting so arrogant because the, there have been no real consequences for any of them you know all the consequences they've endured they've effectively chosen you know right. to, to play the victim to publicize this harassment it's all it's all benefited them you know no one's got no one's been fired no one's been ostracized from the group no one's been reprimanded in any way for their poor behavior and you know unethical conduct. Well, I mean, in God, look at it's... Sam Metal. I mean, the, they said he yeah. was promoted. That's ridiculous. Promoted. <laughs> yeah, that's, this is what I mean, and this is why Leigh Alexander. She literally at her XOXO fest said, "I declared gamers are over, and I still have a job." And she was like, "We must be winning, or we must be doing something right, or something like that." And it's just like th- this is a culture war, as they see it. They see it as a culture war. They are trying to take over. And they've got to the point where they realize that there is no one around who can remove them from their positions. So this is why gamers have got to go beyond them, go to the avatar. Well, yeah, that, that's why they're removing the sites. I mean, that's going to be the end result. And it's going to... These people are hurting their own uh, peers. Oh, they're idiots. They're idiots. It's, it's unbelievable. They've got no sense of self-awareness at all. You know, they have no idea how they look to people who aren't in their clique. And because they live in their little echo chambers... All they hear are the same... Uh, it, look at their obsession with the narrative. They're, they're so concerned about the narrative because it's weird that they've got some method in their heads of just ignoring things that are just not... That, that don't confirm what they want to believe. And so they can just go on as a group and all just say, no, 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 that piece of information, that was nonsense. You don't have to pay attention to that. Just pay attention to the bits we want to... to you know, believe, and then as a group, we're all completely justified in anything we do. It's, it's, I, c- I can't explain it. I just, hell, I mean, you'd think if you wanted to make some ad revenue, considering these websites are making fuck all money, you'd want to write as many articles as possible. So why don't you try looking at it from the other side? You know, that's a good way to make a little bit extra dosh. You know, give that a shot. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know. It's, I, I, I do think that eventually at least some sites will be forced to acknowledge some issues like this. And it's really weird that we see IGN, who I view for the longest time as the, the kings of corrupt game journalism, <laughs> actually writing a reasonable assessment and saying, look, yeah, we see this harassment going on. And there is. There is harassment going on. But they didn't point out specifically who was doing it or towards whom. 
There is harassment going on towards everybody. It is associated with the happenings surrounding Gamergate. It is not endorsed by Gamergate, but it is occurring regardless because that's what happens whenever there's any controversy. Unfortunately, controversy breeds hostility, which breeds harassment, whether you like it or not. And you've got to be extremely careful when dealing with that stuff. But I really do feel that the games media has done a terrible job of de-escalation. In fact, they've done the exact opposite. They really have. I've never seen a group shoot themselves so hard in the foot. The, over the everything they could have done wrong, they did wrong. Instead of apologizing or addressing the issues, they didn't. Instead of having open conversation, they censored. Instead of trying to resolve any of these problems, they just kept bringing up more. It's like they couldn't help themselves. They felt so secure. I'm, I'm so, so curious about that. It's like they could have profited from this. If if we're just thinking about bottom line, right? If we took a neutral stance and addressed both sides of the issue and you know, let people fight over it. Yeah. Drive more traffic to their sites. You know, we, we yeah. could be all here looking at Kotaku right now, but we're actually boycotting Kotaku and we're taking away their ad revenue. That's why it feels like it's ideologically driven. Because it, it you're is right. Absolutely yeah. ideologically driven. There's, there is no doubt about it. Because they could have made uh, yeah, they, a huge amount of money. Yeah. Ab- absolutely. They're, 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 such, they're such goddamn fools. But they, no, this is, this is absolutely ideological. Um, there's there's no getting around it. There's no getting away from it. And I I mean I never I never used the phrase cultural Marxism. I never used it. But if you just look into academia, they they do readings of Edward Bernays, the guy who coined the term public relations because propaganda was a dirty word. You know, they, I I literally was speaking to Shira Chess from Digra, and I was like, look, are you actually Marxist? And she was like, yeah, we're all Marxist, effectively. Adrian Shaw was like, what is this? The sixties? Like, Marxism isn't a dirty word. And it's like. It just doesn't work, you know. Everyone knows it, and so it's just—it's just one of those things. It's like, right, okay, they are actually pushing the ideological agenda. I mean, in the playful is political. You've got um, Adrian Shaw saying, you know, what have we done to get feminism into games and push our agenda? And then you've got Andrew Grant Wilson Wilson saying, look, you know, I—I I, I know you're all talking about signal boosting, but what about when? Being publicized on Kotaku is actively a bad thing. What then? And none of them had an answer. They they just did not understand his question. And it was just like, that is, that is exactly, they're blinded by their ideology, and they, there is no way they're going to admit that they're wrong. I so really do, don't believe they're going to. Do you think it's a, a situation of like a fox in the hen house? Do you think that it's one or two ideologues that have convinced the others to kind of go along with the narrative and against their better judgment they have done that? Or do you think that it's... Uh, it's hard for me to imagine that every one of them is like that. I, I really don't. I think it's worse than that. I, I think... I think that these... these I mean, they're all young. They're all so goddamn young. They're all in the same age range. So I think they've probably been sold up the river by the educational system and been given people who were probably supposed to be good mentors... And weren't. I mean, I'm not saying that they're all, you know, died. Oh no, no. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I should, have, I, I should have been more specific. I meant in regards to the games journalists, because I, I feel like a few of them buy into a lot of. Uh, I feel like a few of them are really heavily ideological, and that's what flavors their writing. But I think that they impose that or force that on others through their kind of back channel meetings or their groups, like Game Journals Pro. And it's like a, a, a fox in the hen house. It's it's one or two. Kind of controlling it. Uh, that's the vibe I got, at least. I think, from a person like Kuchera, uh, who yeah. I, I personally really dislike, to be honest. But I think I think that the um, the game journalists are the very bottom of the pile. They are the least educated. They are the least informed, and they are the least important um, from their perspective. Um, from our perspective, obviously, they seem massively important. But they take their marching orders from academia. They, I mean, look at the, the gamers are over. You know, a bunch of them linked directly to Adrian Shaw's article from 2011, saying gamers should die because it's just white <laughs> men. It's it, it, the, and the thing is, because these people are such authoritarians, everything they do has got this authoritarian mindset. And all the people in academia are saying, "Well, I'm a professor of God knows what gender studies course, so you need to listen to me because I'm a professor and I've done peer-reviewed studies that are, have the, are not peer-reviewed correctly." In things called, you know, things called like the the well, the Fembot Collective, where they're peer reviewing each other's papers, and it's just like this this false authority is what they're using to talk down to people. And I think you're absolutely right. I think that it's certain individuals in the gaming press, but that's because they're they're on the bottom rung, you know. It's right. actually, uh, you We've know, going on, on on that topic about their papers. 
it's actually not peer review. It's usually the citations on some of these papers and some of these research, they go back and cite their own papers in the past or they cite papers that come from their own research group and then they publish it to things like DIGRA and yeah. all these other conventions, especially the GDC. Most of the things that say games research on it, they don't actually have a wide depth of, you know, wide depth and wide coverage and they don't actually address other people's papers. They're usually just there to pump out the paper, publish, and say, oh, look, I'm a published researcher. And uh, that, peer, that peer review statement, though, from that Diger group, I, I know it's a bit off topic because we're talking about the Game Journalist Pro thing, but um, when when they said uh, they disliked peer review, that, that blows my mind that somebody in academia <laughs> who writes and researches and does all of this, I, I know there are problems with the system. When I when I did the stream with Thunderfoot, you know, we kind of talked afterwards a little bit about peer review, but... There, it, it just it floors me that somebody would say that that peer review is bad, that they should get rid of it, so you can write whatever you want, and then just use the authority of a degree to basically push forward an idea it was just mind blowing. It's absurd. It's absolutely. I mean, it's it's the pillar of scientific legitimacy. It is what gives science the authority that it has, and they just want to completely subvert that. I mean, I, I, what would Richard Dawkins say? He'd be like, "What? You know, he'd be shocked, surely." And, oh, well, yeah, yeah, most definitely. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. You know, this is these are the sort of people we probably need to start contacting next, really, and be like, because you know, I mean, I've actually got um, a direct example that I'm going to be putting into a video of how they've taken a scientific study that was done by you know actual scientists about um, spatial awareness. I didn't find this research, by the way. This is one of my researchers that found this, um, and he was amazing. Seriously, he's, these guys are, and this this has just been guys saying, hey, look, I really want to help out with this because this is just you know there are some. There is some dark stuff going on, and we all need to know. But um, basically, they, they found this... Um, they, they've got the scientific paper about spatial awareness, and they found that people who played video games a lot had very good spatial awareness, and people who didn't play video games a lot didn't. And it just so happens that video games are... The, the, the sort of video games that improve spatial awareness are far more often played by men than women. You know, it's just the way it is. But it didn't say, that's not to say there weren't any women who had the you know, excellent spatial awareness that you would expect from playing video games, and there weren't any men who, you know, on the other side. And they specifically say in the paper that this isn't a gender issue, it's effectively a practice issue. And this this paper, I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but this paper was cited in a, a Digra paper called The Hegemony of Play, where they literally say the spatial awareness of, you know, the sp spatial awareness is gendered. So it's specifically split between men and women. And it's like, no, that is wrong. That is factually wrong. That is, and it's such an easy spot. You know, it's literally in, like, the abstract or something like that that they state that. And it's just... And no one has fact-checked it. Absolutely no one. And, and this, is, this is the thing. They, 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 they create this bullshit in their little think tanks, and then they pass it down to people like Leigh Alexander. That's why she calls herself a megaphone, you know? Lifshitz, Macintosh, Leigh Alexander, all these sort of people, they don't work directly in the press, or maybe they do, but not very much, you know. But what, what they more are is sort of effectively what we are for Gamergate, you know. We're, we're the ones who are presenting ideas like megaphones, you know. And, but our ideas are effectively peer-reviewed by everyone else, you know. Their ideas are taught top-down, this is how it is, so memorize it and walk in lockstep, you know. Well, I, I, that's why I, I think it's an interesting angle. I mean, with the uh, the idea that some of these opinion, or opinions are informed by research that is not the best, and looking into that research really kind of cripples it. You know what I mean? Being able yeah. to say like like you did, like we looked at it, we looked at the information. They're just they're pulling out a sentence from the abstract and misrepresenting what it actually says, and then it's getting parroted by people writing articles saying that gaming is dead because you're all sexist, horrible people. Oh, that, that article, that, uh, that paper, The Hegemony of Play, had something like 49 citations. 49 <laughs> other Digra papers reference it, and it's wrong. It's incorrect. So that, that invalidates those papers all of a sudden. It's, it's such a just con. It's such a fucking con. It's an ideologically driven con. Well, so, it, it, as lovely as this is, Chad is screaming at us to, uh, to stay away from the tinfoil sargon. <laughs> it's not tinfoil. <laughs> no, this is not tinfoil. This is Operation Digging Digra in Action. There's a lot of Digra people who are actually begging Sargon of Akkad to do what he's doing right now. Apparently Nothing Twitter is down, too. Yeah, yeah Twitter's I, down. I, I, well, I, I did I say that we needed to get rid of Twitter, and now it's being got rid of. So. <laughs> they, they've listened to <laughs> 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 uh, Ian, 
I mean, I'm going to be honest, I don't know a great deal about all of this Digra stuff or anything along those lines, but I do get behind the idea that there's a lot of authoritarian statements being made by games journalists, and they're starting to, well, they're not just starting to slip into reviews, they are slipping into reviews. And I think there are a number of perhaps practical things that can be done to stop that outside of kind of tackling the whole idea of we've got to stop them injecting ideologies into reviews, because people, everyone is biased, right? And... I disagree with uh, Jason Trier's idea that objectivity is impossible because what I believe is the pursuit of objectivity is the most important thing. Exactly. You try and be ob- as Life objective life. as possible. And what a lot of people believe when they, they hear the word objectivity, what they actually are thinking is, can you, can you wear someone else's shoes? Are you able to take away your own perspective, replace it with another, and speak from that perspective? Because that makes you useful to the consumer. And that's really what it all comes down to, isn't it? Is, Empathy. Yeah, empathy, exactly. Is, is your rev- how, how useful is your review? How can you make it useful to a large number of people? You can do it by saying, look, here's my biases. I'm going to wear them on my sleeve. I'm going to say, I like this genre. I don't like this genre. I like this developer. I don't like this developer. I'm going into this review with this particular focus. But what I will also try and do is I will try and look at it from other people's perspectives. I, I try and do this whenever I look at a platformer because I mm-hmm. fucking hate platformers. I'm <laughs> terrible at them. I'm just awful. But I still have to look at them because I, I want to give these guys a fair shake. So I'll try and like look at it from the perspective of like you know what if I did like platformers you know what kind of features would I be looking for there and I think that when you make statements like uh, Bayonetta is sexist I think that that's a a needless authoritarian statement when you could have made a very interesting discussion out of that by saying well some people think Bayonetta is sexist but some people don't. And here are the two sides of that. And then if you want to, like, take a side, cool, but only after you've kind of tried to discuss the topic. You know, because the, the idea of uh, X character is sexist is highly debated. And it's, 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 like not, it's not a right or wrong answer. Like, is Bayonetta sexist? Some people think so. Isn't she? Some people think so. Let's talk about that. You know, that, that sounds cool. And well, right. then let's, let's yeah. remove this from the goddamn score. In fact, let's kill scores entirely. Because if you kill scores entirely, you can be super feminist, uh, radical, social Marxist, <laughs> other kin, headmate blog number 47, and make your reviews based entirely on that ideology. And as long as you're not on Metacritic with it, and you're not affecting people's bonuses and the people's rankings on that site, you can say whatever you want. You can say whatever you want. It sounds fantastic, right? You know, just kill scores. Absolutely does. But can well, I and... just, um, can I just okay. clarify something very quickly? Um, I just, I just want to... just. So the people in the chat know it's this. This is a very small group of people that I'm talking about in Digra. They're not. It's not a conspiracy. It's just a culture. Um, they they all think that they're doing the right thing, and I, I I totally agree that I imagine that a lot of people in as it's filtered, it goes through like people like Silverstring Media and stuff like that. And when it finally gets down to like the plebs and the game journal journalists. Um, no, they are. They, they, you can tell when they're talking about each other, when you're reading their stuff, when they talk about each other, they look down on these people. You know, they, they think of themselves at the top of this pyramid, and they cascade their Marxist bullshit down. Which is kind of um, hilarious. I'm pretty sure Silverstring Media has basically no fucking influence, and like compared to any one YouTuber has more influence than all the Silverstring Media put together. And you know that has to um, kill them at the end of the day. Uh, the fact that they're being replaced by essentially consumer-to-consumer Review, you know what I mean? They're they're getting rid of the PR and uh, <laughs> reviewing and journalism middleman, and it's it's consumer to consumer, and I know that that irks them at the end of the day. Uh, just one quick thing, Sargon, and then I'll yeah, shut, yeah, up. Sorry. I'll shut up here. No, no, I'm gonna no, no, shoot off quite soon, by the way. Just letting you know. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, but to talk about what you're talking about about um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, uh, objectivity and biases. Uh, somebody was linking this earlier, and I've I've been reading through the reviews, and I, I'm floored by this. Uh, it's called Christ Centered Gamer. And if you if you go and read these reviews, they do essentially what you're talking about. They review the game as from a gamer's perspective, and then they review it from their own ideological perspective. Yes. But yeah. they break their score down. It's completely separated. So yeah. for, like, Persona 4, they gave it a 91. But then they had a morality ranking of 84, and they explained why that is. They're so, not the only Christian site to do that, actually. I've noticed that, and it's really quite responsible, because what they recognize is that even within, say, something like Christianity, people have wildly different views on morality. Uh, There are, of course, hundreds, thousands of denominations of Christianity alone that all have different views. So when you break down a score like that, you're actually being, again, pro-consumer because you're being very useful, but you're simultaneously saying, 
look, I'm not defined, like, my writing is not defined by the fact that I am Christian or whatever. It's not defined by that. I can still do a good game review. I'm going to serve both your interests. That's that's fantastic. It, it is. That, isn't that's it? a great it, attitude. And Gorka mocked it. For they, fuck's they, sake. They, they of mocked course they Christ did. Centered yeah, game? yeah, it was a couple of years ago, I believe. Like uh, it was either Kotaku or just Gorka in general. But as opposed to this article that was like, "Hey, look at these guys. How do you do? Isn't that kind of wacky?" It's like you post articles with fucking watermelon butts. In <laughs> Don't start on me. <laughs> But no, no, I think it's phenomenal. I, I was really floored by the fact that these guys can separate that, that they can, they can do both things, they can serve both yeah, purposes, cool. and, and they're completely upfront about it. It's mm. not hidden. It's, here's the score breakdown, here's the game by itself, and here's our personal opinion on it. They're not zealots, yeah. are they? Well, yeah, <laughs> it's amazing. If, I'm sorry, but if you've been, uh, been outreasoned by a Christian gaming website, then <laughs> what the fuck did you do wrong? <laughs> It says everything we need to know about Gorka. Um, oh. Yeah, just... they need uh, Jesus I, apparently. I, I think need Jesus. <laughs> I, I think this website though is it, this obvious. I I I'm, I just I like it. I really really like that they do this. Um, it's a great fact, idea. Yeah, the fact that they can do it, but Gawker Polygon and the or Gawker Kotaku Polygon Rock Paper Shock and Gamma Sutra that they can't. What the hell, man? I mean, there's no reason. You're one, seeing I'll it give working. one thing to Kotaku. It's that Jason Trier pushed them away from scores a while ago. Like, he really believes in killing scores. And I'll give them that. Uh, wait, uh, yeah, oh, Jason Schreier. No, yeah, I just, it's hard for me to take him seriously after the objectivity thing. And then that statement he made on NeoGAF about, um, God, what was it, Dragon's Crown? Oh, he fucked up hard on that one. Like, this whole idea is like, let's stop allowing teenagers to design it. It's like, fuck, yeah, that's not that what the artist is like at all. And there are plenty of examples of that exaggerated art style. And I think it's cool that we can talk about that art style, but simultaneously we shouldn't do it in a, a con... A, is it condemnatory? Is that the word I'm looking for? I believe it is. A condemnatory fashion. You know, let's, right. let's talk about it on its merits. And also just say, look, some people appreciate some of that. I, I'm not a big fan of the Dragon's Crown art style. I mean, fuck, you jump as the Amazon and your arse expands. It's like fucking, <laughs> it's two balloons that send you into the stratosphere. It's silly. Like, it's really silly. But at the end of the day, we should be promoting diversity and aesthetics as well, right? And Dragon's mm -hmm. Crown looks quite different to many games. It's a and gorgeous a, game. Yeah. Yes, I mean, I, I don't like the art style, but I can, I can appreciate it, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, his his take on that was was pretty funny, uh, yeah. and watching him try to to justify it was bizarre. Yeah, and and I think like everyone has said really stupid shit in the past. And I think I oh think god, perhaps, I have all the time. Oh, god. Yeah, and I think you know perhaps Jason probably when asked about it right now would probably regret saying that. Uh, but again, we just like I. I, I think we still kind of get back to the same point. It's if someone is willing to engage, then engage with them. You know, ha try and have a discussion, try and have discourse. Discourse will end this thing. It well, really let me uh, let me ask you this: What do you think? Uh, just hypothetically, what do you think Gamergate could do to get them to to engage with us? If, if we could do one thing to get them to actually come to the table and talk, what do you what would you recommend? What would the one thing be? Uh, the only thing that I can think of, because I mean that's a very difficult question, because like you're asking like what could Gamergate do when Gamergate is a leaderless consumer? <laughs> right, <laughs> right, exactly. It, that's it's like what 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 could the clouds do to make the sky look better? <laughs> Gamergate is um, idea driven. You know, anyone who says a good idea that can get passed around. That, that is very true. Yeah, yeah. I can. Uh, the the only one thing that I would do is that. I think there's maybe a little bit too much of the whole you said something a little bit different, ergo you're a shill thing going around. I think that's potentially harmful, and uh, I think that that ties into the whole it's too late for you to talk to us anymore idea. I really think that that needs to be rejected. There's no doubt that there are shills, absolutely, but what do you do to trolls? You starve them of oxygen. You don't you don't give them ammunition, and uh, it's very, you've got to be very careful not to... Uh, take out someone in the crossfire that really actually might really want to discuss something with you i think it, it to do it you know, take the, take it as an opportunity to 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 win to win hearts and minds and even if you don't convince that person maybe you convince someone that was listening to the conversation uh, it's, it's the good old internet argument principle you never try to win an internet argument with another person you try to win over the people that are watching the other guy's never going <laughs> to exactly that <laughs> never wins you'll never ever convince anybody of anything yeah. anyway, after, after the bail guys uh, thanks thanks a lot uh, yeah for, hey thanks for coming yeah. by I appreciate yeah. it yeah. Yeah. really nice around, to meet you man yeah no problem at all see you around Take have care. a nice one bye bye I, I believe we're I don't know just to I guess jump off on where TV is saying and uh, this whole discussion about bringing them to the table. Mm -hmm. It's been weak 
week 11, by my count. Week 11, they have done nothing, and we're burning their advertising. So I say we just keep going. There, there's no more table at all. That table has been burned down so much, and there's, you know, there, there's so many olive branches that people offered. And well, what about what about the people though that have been silent about it? I mean, there have been certain people at certain sites that you are noticeably staying away from it. Do you think if they were to just come out on their own and say, "Listen, we're not a part of this either side. Let's talk." Do you think people would accept that or reject it? I think I think most of these sites that have been sort of neutral on this and trying to calm this down are doing the right thing because they're just waiting for. Oh, oh, okay. let me let me say it like this. What if the Dorito Pope said, "Hey, Gamergate, <laughs> I want to talk to you. <laughs> let's let's have a conversation." Would would do you think Gamergate should go to the table with the Dorito Pope? Hell yeah! Oh, yeah. Really? Hell yeah! Hey, hey, the Dorito Pope out. I, I don't think it'll ever happen though. <laughs> Jeff Keeley, you need to do that. We will go to the table with you. All of Gamergate will talk to the Dorito Pope if he asks. Yeah, I mean, it, it's going to be on the table of game devs and at least some rational sites in the future. And there, there's already, you know, alternative markets and alternative sites popping up. You know, the Ralph's one of them. And um, Mitch Gamer is also one. There, yeah, there, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of them. There's yeah. a lot of them, yeah. That's the whole thing. Ralph Retort, all of them, yeah. yeah. Establishing yeah, so, an alternative media, yeah. So in, in terms of, you know, bringing Gawker or Vox or Gama Sutra to the table, I don't know. That's that's long gone, dude. But for neutral people, I mean, we don't even need pro, more pro gamer gators at this point. I say we just need to find people who are neutral and, you know, who are questioning the topic and bring those guys to the table. So... How did this? How did this happen? Why is it so religiously themed <clears throat> that everybody? Uh, you've got Christ-centered gaming doing fucking game reviews the right way, and you've got the Dorito Pope is a fucking good guy in all of this. What the fuck is going on on the internet? Uh, I don't know. Uh, Bobby Kotick. <laughs> Bobby Kotick. Bobby Kotick is yeah, been fucking. Bobby Kotick uh, is right, and three point three million dollars. I mean, it's like it's a paradigm shift. I'm I'm just gonna toss that weird big word out there. It's a paradigm shift and it's a reformation, and a lot of this has got people questioning what exactly is happening in the gaming space. A lot of these scandals that are bringing to light are making people question, "Hey, why did I read Kotaku all those years, and you know now it's all a bunch of fucking bullshit?" Uh, so so in terms of what's happening on the web. And what's happening in Gamergate? A lot of people are asking questions, and you know, because they were asking questions, they got shut down by the same group of freaking people. And here we are, week twelve, advertising money is you know burning away. So I, I say we just keep going. You know, I we can, we, we can make this last years, guys. I, I, I'm not afraid. I don't know if I want it to last years. I, I'm hoping it'll only last like one more month, actually. Um, I mean, I don't know. I, mean, I just want a couple people fired, but this this isn't this really isn't actually that unusual. In in fact, it's kind of unusual that this sort of thing isn't happening more often. Um, I mean, the, the Pope has called a crusade on France before. You understand? That, that's that's very true. Well, we could have our Pope call a crusade against Kotaku. If you want. <laughs> well, that, no, 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 but seriously, that's exactly the point. You you get problem cultures that spring up and. Societies do have to sometimes take quite radical steps to, you know, to remove them. I mean, the Pope calls a crusade on France. You know, that sounds ridiculous until you realize it was it was a, a heresy that took root and formed a new culture and was pushing outwards. And so it's, you know, and it was a threat to the establishment. It was a threat to the order. And so that's that's kind of the situation we're finding ourselves in now. And that's that's why I talk about the Digra stuff, because, you know, it, it's just to provide context. I really don't think we need to do anything about Digra, because as soon as we... Oh, don't, don't get me wrong, Sargon. I, I, I like that you're looking into it, and I do think that there's academic influence, and I do think that that touches on a lot of the SJW stuff. But I, I just like bringing it up because the chat always freaks out over it. So <laughs> yeah, no, I was no, teasing no, no, a little. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not even getting defensive about it. You know, it's it's... It's true. It, it sounds like tinfoil stuff, you know, and it's funny. It's like, I, I can't believe a bunch of fat men hating lesbians have caused the end of gamers. I can't believe it. It sounds stupid. You know, we're through the fucking looking glass, but it's happened, so, 
<laughs> w- welcome to the internet, the craziest fucking place on earth. But yeah, that, that's the, that's the thing. It's, it's it, you, we don't have to do anything about Digro. We don't have to do anything about Silverstring because it, you know their declaration that they're social justice warrior, feminist psychopaths is enough that you know any the the extremity that we see is you know all we have to do is defeat that and then then what where are they going to go from there? You know, who's going to be like, oh, you're from Digra? You are, no, no, we're all right. You know, we don't need to do that. <laughs> yeah. Let's just uh, yeah. going to wither and die. Yeah, we, we, we know about your peer review system. Thanks very much. We don't need that paper. Um, you know, so we don't need to do anything about them, but it's important to be aware of them, you know, just because this does have a larger cultural context, and it's it's going to be a precedent for other spheres of life. You know, the right wing are probably thank, thanking them, their lucky stars that this has happened. Oh, are you kidding me? I, I have a feeling there are a lot of groups that, uh, of all different stripes that have been watching this kind of play out yeah. and have been probably taking notes in amazement that this has succeeded and that these people are failing. I, it, it really is remarkable, and I think once it's all said and done with, people will probably, it'll probably hit them then uh, yeah. as to how big of a, a coup, how big of a win this is in relation to almost anything. It, it really is remarkable. That's the only way to really it's, describe it's, it. It's like the Luddites, you know, these, these people are like the intellectual Luddites that are currently raging against the um, the Industrial Revolution. <laughs> you know, this, this sort of thing happens all the time. This is actually really, really normal, you know, and so it just ha- we just have to find a, a place like gaming where it, it stops and everything can be revealed for what it is, and then it can just be rolled back. Well, and I mean, how great is that too? I, you know, people make jokes about the tinfoil or about looking at different things, but that's the craziest thing about this, I think. We're still winning. We could say the craziest shit on earth, and we're still winning. How the fuck is that happening? They, they should be able win. to hammer us. Right, there's no way we can fuck this up, and I know that drives them crazy. Lose. Yeah, the, the, their win condition is when we say, okay, you know what, we don't want to be gamers anymore. That's never going to happen. happen. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, when am I going to ever say I don't want to play games? I mean... <laughs> So yeah, it, we we can't lose. Or they, they don't have a win condition. I uh, I caution on I, I caution on the you know yes of course we're winning, but I caution on the side of not getting too cocky with this. Yeah. Are you yeah. kidding me? I'm gonna be I'm dancing down the streets. Fuck these guys. I'm personally cocky. Apparently, um, they have called the cops on Mike Cernovich. Wait, Why? what? Yeah. yeah so. They just. I'm looking at Twitter right now, and apparently, um, the LAPD has to treat every 9/11 as an emergency, mm-hmm. and so they've gone to his house and. <laughs> oh, okay. But no deaths to when they were I filed a police complaint against him. Oh, yeah, I saw a special web page where people could like quick file a report against him and shit. Wait, what? Uh, yeah. I saw right now, page. like currently, right now, yeah, like, it's happening. Yeah. yeah. This yeah. is ridiculous. That's, that's, yeah, that uh, is getting. This is ridiculous. I'll put the link in the chat. Somebody sent it to me a minute ago. Oh no, but you were you're were talking earlier about don't get don't get overconfident. I mean, yeah, in, in regard, you know, in some aspects, you're right, but fuck them. They're just so they're so arrogant. Why shouldn't we be cocky? That's what gamers are. We shit talk. We should totally be cocky about it. That's our fucking nature. I think, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't forget the way the guys with the sense of humor. You know, they're the fuckers who suck the fun out of everything. Oh, God, yeah, they're just, they're, they're, yeah, it's a wet blanket. They're fucking just, they, they suck the fun out of anything. <laughs> Professional killjoys. I don't, think, I don't think anyone's really had a good laugh in a while either, have they? No, you know, yeah, and that, you got to keep it lighthearted. Yeah, talk a little shit, have a little fun, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, I'd like to keep going with the stream, but my voice is fucking dying on me. Uh, so I, I'm going to cut a little short. Do you guys want to give out like a YouTube page, a Twitter account, so that people watching 4,500 bots apparently, you know, because we have there's nobody's in Gamergate. It's 30 people from what I've been told, yeah. but 4,500 bots might swing by. So if you want to just throw something out there, go ahead. Um, well, they can follow me on Twitter at the Raffertort or visit my site, of course, therafertort.com, and uh, that's it, pretty much. Oh, oh, YouTube, uh, the Ralph 2001. So. All right, fantastic, uh, Sargon. Uh, yeah, I just want to tell everyone that um, some some guy from Sweden emailed me about a week ago, saying that he was working on a piece of art, um, like proper Renaissance style, laden with meaning art, and that's actually one of, that's actually one of the reasons that I was I was bringing up the dark stuff to, to because it's it's a segue the, into that. <laughs> no, 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 because it's, to make sure that you all are aware of the context of what the painting is, because. This painting encapsulates everything about Gamergate. It's one of those sort of 
I, I, I've just seen the, the the rough sketch with some bits painted in, so I don't know how good it's going to be at the end. But the, the sketch is it's just magnificent, and I can't really tell you anymore because I'm sworn to secrecy. But I was allowed to tell you about the painting. Well, um, are you going to share that with everybody when he's done? Yeah. Yeah, well, he's he's going to. It's not my. I, I didn't I didn't suggest it or anything. This guy just literally sent me the concept fully formed and was like, "Is there anything I'm missing?" And I'm like, "Not really, you know." I mean, I suggested some people, but it's you know practically had everyone on there, and it was just like, and it, just so many like fine details and just clever visual representations and metaphors, and it's really it looks really good, and I'm really excited to see the full. Well, I'm kind of hyped for this now too. Shit. Honestly, it's it's fucking awesome. It looks like the best game of Dungeons and Dragons you've ever seen. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Wow. Not, honestly, it looks fucking awesome. And I, I shouldn't talk it up too much because it might suck. But I don't know. You know. I haven't seen the finished product. But I, I honestly, I didn't have any any real input in this at all. And I'm just like, okay. I'll well, I'm, I'm sure it'll I'm sure it'll turn out great. Yeah. <laughs> everybody in the, the chat's going Sweden. Yes. It'll be a Sweden. Yes. Portrait and be great. <laughs> no, it, it looks really good, and I'm I'm really looking forward to him. Yeah. Thinking. Awesome, yeah, yeah. You gotta, you gotta retweet it or share it wherever he likes uh, it so everybody can yeah, see this. Really oh, and it, speaking of speaking of retweeting, do you want to give your YouTube uh, Twitter out? Oh, uh, Sargon, um, I'm the only one. I don't even remember my own fucking addresses. <laughs> um, but the, the thing about this painting, right, is that if it if it comes out well and if it looks good and everything, and I'm sure it will. I've seen you know parts of it colored in. It's, it looks fine. It's one of those pictures says a thousand words thing. Because it will show everyone exactly what Gamergate is like from the perspective of the gamers in just one image. It's so fucking good. <laughs> well, shit. All right. Oh, fantastic. Uh, Rogestar, you want to you yeah, throw uh, Just to link to another stream for people who are interested in going to it, uh, the Extra Life Charity stream is now live. Uh, and I'll, I'll put the link here up here on the uh, stream chat. Um, I, I guess someone wanted to bump that. So okay. uh, another charity stream going live uh, right as this one is ending. Oh, good. Then we won't we won't be uh, dipping into their thing. So they have a, a good uh, a good amount of bots watching apparently again. <laughs> yeah, and, nothing but and real. For, for all the robots and the uh, fake fake accounts and uh, trolls, you can follow me at Rogue Star Games uh, with a Z at the end on Twitter and uh, help help I guess uh, fucking perpetuate the hell. The uh, hellish hate machine that Gamergate is. So. All right, fantastic. Uh, Jade, do you wanna you wanna uh, uh, plug something? Just, uh, I just want you guys to uh, remember to email if you can, and um, it'd be awesome if you guys you know emailed Hulu, Wolfgawker. That'd be awesome because Hulu seems like they're gonna pull out. Um, yeah. And that's basically it. I, I'd agree with that too. It seems like the boycotting and the emailing and the contacting advertisers has had fucking remarkable success. I mean, if you're not doing it, you really you really should try because the the shit that's gone on this last week is unreal with the amount of people that have responded to that. Emails fucking work. All right. Well, uh, thank you everybody that came out to watch. Again, thank total uh, thanks to Total Biscuit for swinging by. Obviously, I'm sure everybody in the chat knows his fucking <laughs> Twitter handle and YouTube, so that should be good. But uh, yeah, we're gonna close it up there then. Right. Uh, thanks thanks for inviting me, guys. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, again, thanks everybody for coming out. Uh, Ralph Retort, uh, Rogue Game, uh, Rogue Star Games, and uh, Sargon, Jade, everybody. Okay. Bye, Bye guys. Yeah. Bye.